Are we, hello. Hi. Did you, that, uh, did you hear that apparently um, there is a Battle Royale mode uh, for Halo Infinite? I thought you said the Lego. I was like, uh... There's a Lego Battle Royale mode. Fair, I, would, Lego. I would be very curious about Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga Battle Royale. Well, what I think, how I would do it is like, I would right? have it be, you don't, you don't get like knocked out of the game. What you do is if you damage other players, they drop studs and the person who has the most studs at the end wins. So you attack players, That'd they drop fun. some of their studs when they take damage and you can how gather them you, up. Yeah, right? to identify who has more or fewer studs. Would there be like a well, little number above that? You could or? do it. You could either be. Shiny. Yeah, you could have some kind of change to the player model. You could have approximations above their head. Um, there, there could be a few ways that you can um, do it. What, so what is it? What if you just I'm get a set sure. number of studs for killing someone? Uh, so that's just deathmatch. What if you got shinier and shinier, and then a beam of light comes above so, you once you're first, and so everyone knows where first is, and that makes it harder so, to be first. I what if the first like... person to select Lego Unkar Plet wins? That seems silly. <laughs> I don't like that. I think I think the first person to select Lego Droidica wins. Yes. Oh, I, that's I, a good, I yeah, that's like a good one. Of, uh, I feel like there's something inherently wrong with the idea you put forward rides from a design perspective, but like, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Like, <laughs> it's because if you, it's because, if you, hang on, Rags, do you say you drop some of your studs? Yeah, not all of them, but when okay, you yeah, take yeah, damage, you, you drop a certain amount Perhaps of your studs. Perhaps a percentage. Studs. Yeah, but I mean, perhaps so a here's, percentage so could here's, be interesting. So here's the problem: if you're fighting people at range, what's to stop that person from immediately picking up the studs? Considering you're far you away, you wouldn't spawn on where you would die. Presumably, you spawn back so, somewhere else. Oh, yeah, I if thought, I thought we you drop studs, you, well, you can. Damage, you got killed, yeah, you can so. take damage and not die, but you can also die. Taking damage makes you drop some studs. If you die, mm. you drop a larger percentage of your studs. So it's and really about a word. Then, right like if you well no you you never you never get like disqualified and may oh maybe every couple minutes at the end of every round the the bottom the like person is disqualified cleaved. that's an idea yeah what so we could do randomly that randomly assigned a different character each person someone has the gonk droid and someone has the droidica and it, it makes it really unfair because, oh, that yeah. could be the special limited time, uh, wacky, crazy, random mode. It's like the gulag. That could be it? Fun, you get yeah. thrown into the gulag and you both get randomized droids and you have to fight. Like Robot Wars. You get yeah. back into the Battle Royale. Hmm. Yeah, that's what it's like. Well, do you, does that sound more fun than a Halo Battle Royale that's apparently happening? I mean, it was something Halo this, was You missing, know what? I was, you know? Yeah, I was about to say, this will bring it back. And so, from what I... From the based on the the rumor, it was developed by a different team that has just sort of been working on. Oh, so it might get finished. Well, <laughs> I think uh, I think the that apparently it's yeah, it's going to be like its own sort of. It's like Halo Infinite, but it's kind of Warzone in the sense that it is it's something of a separate game. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it wasn't a surprise, right? That, that was going to happen, even though they said it wouldn't. <laughs> but, um. But anyway. It's interesting how Battlefield blamed because Battlefield 2042, let's be frank, was designed to be a battle royale, and then I they frankly. course corrected to try and make it a Battlefield game, and then they blamed the low sales on the fact that Halo is a game that came out, and Halo is now trying to do a battle royale mode to get people to come back to it as well. Well, it's um yeah, because I mean I oh, guess the real no. Oh. Well, what we're going to see, I guess, in like next month when that Lone Wolves Season 2 comes out is I think that'll give us a really clear indication of whether this game is screwed, like in terms of uh, getting it already. players back. Ah, uh, you well, are I mean, referring to Season 2 Lone Wolves. I know, it's it's such a great little oxymoron, isn't it? <laughs> are you guys trying to imply that a Lone Wolf and another Lone Wolf, if they were to meet up, they would no longer be Lone Wolves? No, they're a, they're a pack. They are categorically not lone wow. wolves. Anymore. What if what if they don't collaborate? What if they're just near each other? What if they like the oh, title? They're, they're like, no, nah, I'm, I'm a not lone wolf. Because lone stands for like large on. Or maybe it's like a banking thing. Electric. Like we well, like a like a Zootopia thing where you have all the animals in the city and they go to a bank. And they get a they, they lone wolves money. Oh, lone uh, wolf and lone wolf. It's close enough. I, I, I think nobody I will notice. I prefer, 
That feels like a sitcom to me. The lone wolves who <laughs> give out loads to people. That would be a good, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have Instead because of, of shark, pl- attaching wolves. wolf to it makes makes people think like, oh no, are they like lone sharks, but not as maybe mean. But they still kind of hunt down those loans. You know? oh, they're, they're, well, there are lone shark, shark, they're lone sharks, sharks, but they operate on the land. Oh, land think, sharks, right. land loan sharks. So, so, who would be the air equivalent of lone sharks and wolves? I don't know why my mind went to vultures straight away, but I don't think it would be vultures. I I know, mine went to vultures, but it would probably be like, I don't know, would it be an albatross for some reason? You know, lone (laughs) Lone hawks. That sounds. Lone albatross doesn't roll off the tongue, I think, in the same way as lone hawks. Lone hawks. Hmm. Hmm. Lone hawks. I kind of like lone hawks, but. I, don't know. Lone I guess uh, in a sense, because it's the, the implication is it's like predatory. So you know, if a bird of prey kind of needs to be a bird of prey, to be, yeah, 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 lone hawks. So like a, what about what about a lone penguin? <laughs> He'd be the super friendly dude who's like, you know what, you can't pay it this week. That's okay. That's okay. Next yeah, week. But okay. penguins, penguins okay. are predatory okay. animals. Well, Not in my <laughs> world. <laughs> no, they they, no, no, they predate on fish. Well, yeah, yeah, sure, but, but also they friendly, are okay. predated, they're predated on by seals and shit, so, you know, it's, horrifying. it's not like they're at the top of the tree. It is well, horrifying. Well, the lone seals. And also a whole bunch of other animals like petras and orc. Oh, wait, no, orcas are, no, orcas don't. Do orcas eat? Penguins? Orcas are at the top of the orcas motherfucking the seals, food right? chain. They are. Orcas eat everything. The, they eat seals. Orcas are they... apex predators. Yes, they are. They are. Uh, That's why in Wonder Woman proud. 84, the chick wishes she could have been an apex predator <laughs> and then just an instantly <laughs> starts ballooning into an orca. <laughs> on, right oh, on the plane. Okay. Just right there. So the reason why I was wondering if orcas eat penguins is because I wasn't sure about the range of orcas. The range of orcas is everywhere. It's everywhere. It's every single what part about of the fucking land. The Except sea is for- our domain. The only the only places they are in are the Baltic Sea for some reason, um, parts of the Northwest Passage, uh, parts of the sea above Russia, which is often frozen, and um, the and the inland seas like the Black Sea. Uh, no, wait, is, ironic. It's ironic that orcas are not in the Black Sea. Wouldn't they be in the Black and White Sea? Yeah, they would be there. Yes, that would be a more accurate, I guess, ironic thing. But they are largely black. It would have been really funny if Cheetah got turned into an orca, or like a... a, a what if she got turned into like a... Because... Well, what, what are other un, unexpected... Like orky. Apre- orky. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's take a look at a list of apex predators. You know what's a human... You know, you know A human is an apex predator. So she could have just is. stayed the same. Could have just turned into a human. Nothing happens and she's like, what the hell? They're like, it was you. It was within you the whole time? I, I guess the reason why I find there it so funny... There is no secret ingredient. <laughs> the reason why it's so funny is just because, like... Man, like... Like... A cheetah. It's not at the top of the food chain. It just isn't. Yeah, so, a cool. giant otter. You could turn into a giant otter. <laughs> yeah, that would and be I think this one would have been better for it. Very possibly. Um... So, do you guys want to stop at topic number one, or, or I guess that was two topic this number one. one? Would you like to start? I'd love to start topic number two. It's well, okay. no, we had the Lego Battle Royale, then the Halo Battle Royale. Yeah, which is the good... Apex Predators, Lone Wolves. Yeah, well, topic... Halo is like, doing great. Like Twelve. In fact, Halo will come up today. For more reasons than just talking oh, about the show. Oh my goodness gracious! Maybe actually, well, actually, no. Well, eh, it's it's a thing that we. Well, it's kind already of... come up for reasons besides just talking about the show. You fool. Well, I was going to say it's not going to come up for the show necessarily at all, but kind of, but sort of. It's more for a point about writing, which you guys have talked about in calls before, but I don't think we did on NeFap, so I got it in here. But um, yeah, our first topic is going to be a comment I saw on my stream about Lego, and then we're going to talk about Lego because this this comment's outrageous. Okay, I can't handle it. It's destroyed my entire existence. Um. Okay. I want. I want uh, I, I. I. When I was playing the game, okay, I was complaining a lot, and it upset some people. All right, because okay, some people really like this game, and some people mm-hmm. are like you're doing it the same thing you guys did with the Elden Ring. We're like, it's not like Dark Souls. What are therefore bad? Which, you know what? Sometimes older games do things better than the newer games. Rags, do you feel this way about RE4 to RE7 and 8? I wonder. Uh, a little bit. I do feel this way. I- certain amount of mechanics and environmental design and combat and 
just all kinds just, of stuff. Yeah, you know, everything. Have graphics, everything. but anyway, uh, you know, I, I was bringing up some some comparisons. I was like, oh boy, I um, I actually I was trying to explain this to uh, Rags earlier, either today or at some point, but I was trying to explain how Django Fett's jetpack works, and uh, in the new game, you basically it's a second jump. It only takes you forward on a strict path. You can't move him, and it's about a meter and a half, maybe a meter. So you you okay. jump, Fresh. and he just goes huh. And he just does a double jump, but if you jump and then press A, he activates the, the old jetpack, but you can't move him, and he finishes the little, this is a very small arc, and he goes forward, so they didn't really want to give him much of a jetpack at all. And I was like, oh man, I like playing as, as old Jangy in, uh, in, in when I play these LEGO games, because I like him. That's, why, that's what we always called him, we called him old Jangy. Old Jangy. All of, all of his friends would call him old Jangy. And so I was like, wow, I way preferred it when it was infinite, his, uh, his jetpack. And then, uh, in a different portion of the stream, I was giving out some criticism, and I was saying, oh man, okay. you know the true Jedi, uh, collect-a-thon notification-y thing? Like, yeah. if you had had one separated for story and free play, or in the case with this game, I guess, story missions and free play, uh, that means that when you're playing the story version, as opposed to the free play version, you, you, you have a reason to try and collect things instead of blast through it and then do it again on free play where things actually matter in terms of... Uh, being able to unlock everything and collect all the stuff. Now, I said that that was uh, something they did before, and, you know, here's where we are. So, now mm -hmm. I direct you to a lot of people saying this in the stream, and Rags, uh, if, you, if you'd be so kind as to read this comment I saw and I grabbed. Okay, you got it? Right there? Yeah, I, huh? will, I, will, I will begin this reading rainbow. Horrifying let's, comment let's that has look. wounded okay. me. This is for Takotra, the Rat King. <gasps> These should not be capitalized. Um, by the way, there were never infinite jetpacks by default. They were always temporary, and extra could turn them on forever. A additionally, he occasionally mentions having true Jedi in both story mode and free play as separate things. Just to be clear, those didn't exist. It was true Jedi for each level. Very well. This is an opinion that happens to be held. I will now employ the skills of Fringy to look confirm. He like Rat King. He looks like a bug. Fringy, I demand with your eyeballs to open up the stream and tell me what, what's, what's happening, okay? So I'm opening the extras menu. Do you see anything to do with jetpacks in here, first of all? I've got them all locked anyway, so it wouldn't matter. But do you see anything to do with jetpacks? Well, there's, uh, there's mustaches. Well, sorry, <laughs> I think you'll find Rat King. I, I was asked a question. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I don't see anything for jetpacks. No, all right. And I've got everything off or locked, so it wouldn't matter. Now, yes. can the court recognize this is Django Fett and he has a jetpack? Yeah, he's got oh, his blue helmet. All right, he's got let's he's got see. Yeah. Now, the court will not be requested to wait for infinity to pass. However, I believe that I shall use this jetpack until the court is satisfied with the hmm. assumption that the once upon a time jetpacks were indeed infinite. I don't get the impression that he's coming down at any point in time until you release the button. That jetpack. Are you using a controller? I am indeed using a controller. Well, just to be, maybe you should just set the controller down and put something on your button, and then just leave it there for the entirety of the stream. You, you, you know what? I didn't even need to uh, hold a button. It's actually automatic. The only it's thing is, toggle? it makes a little noise. <gasps> oh my god! He floats. Forever at default. Oh Can you believe it? What if, there, rat king, what if you find out there is a time that? limit? What if that's what you discover? It's like it only lasts for like half an hour or something. Half an hour. <laughs> well, the thing is, I can't leave it on all stream, even if I muted the sound, because I got I got to prove the other thing now. All right, this is a full <gasps> investigation oh for the court, and I feel what? the judges are satisfied on this particular point. Yes. I I'm I'm digging no, this. I think you need to let it run for the amount of time you're claiming. <laughs> I understand it is not indeed infinite. You gotta show everyone infinite. that you're that right. <laughs> Lego Star well, to be Wars. fair, this is gonna be relevant when we start criticizing the game. Because, <laughs> like, I, I believe they have indeed done these things before. So... But, um, alright. They float now? Yes. Yes, they do. Well, they used to. Not anymore, right? Oh, um, I suppose... Uh, they, they did take it out, but I didn't test every character with a... A potential flight only Django's. Um, oh. Yeah, my bad. 
Anyway. It's fair uh, enough, I suppose. I know I haven't satisfied the court fully, but it seems that mm. the job was done to some degree that can at least come close. Now, to boot up. By the way, were these games, or were they not, played thoroughly on Super Chat Catch-Up as of recently? I'm, I have it... I have it on good authority that the only thing you play is Simpsons Hit and Run. <laughs> That's a lie, and you know it. That's not true. That's impossible. Lego Star Wars. Oh no, it's playing the main theme. Stop it. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, so we must, we must prove. Was there ever an iteration of these games in which you could get True Jedi for both story mode and free play? Now, if I simply go over here to the episode four levels and hang out in the entrance, can I uh, can, can, can I get a confirmation on what is on screen currently? Can anyone can anyone confirm? It, I see it looks uh, like a new hope. Yeah. yeah, we have a new hope, but it looks like there's a story meter that's glowing, and there's one for free play as well. And it looks like they're two separate things. But I believe I have proven my point. Oh my goodness. Look at it. <laughs> to go sure they're acting he's in the chat. He said, he said there's nothing on screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have um, very faint memories of playing this because it was on GameCube a long time ago. I know, like seeing it, I know I've played it, but I don't remember playing it. You know, it's just, it's kind of one of those games that you know you've played, but you can't remember playing. It's, it's funny, that um, weird sort of I'm not sure I have any of those. I, I played the fuck out of them as soon as they came out. They're like the Lego games to me, but I'm more than willing to yeah. update. I'm not going to have to be Crotchety Old Man. Unfortunately, I shall be playing the role of Crotchety Old Man today as we talk oh, about boy. um this video Back game. Back in my days, Legos were deep so, in. Um, New Lego game came out, and it was weird because uh, I was wanting to play it for a while, and it kept getting delayed, and I was like, what's going on? Gimme. I didn't really look into the production, I was just waiting. And it comes out, and I'm like, woohoo, time to stream. Um, hmm, how should we, what, what should we do, Jay? Just, like, random complaints, and hopefully we cover most things? I mean, I think, I guess we should start on the story. That makes, because that's how the game expects you to do it, right? Oh, well, episode 1, 2, and 3 had terrible stories. Episode 4 and 5 had really great stories. <laughs> 6 was so-and-so, and then when the sequels hit, Jesus fucking Christ, what happened, guys? They redefined pain. <laughs> they, yeah. they wanted to so make there you go. Stories, stories. stories summarized. Um, okay, so like we have to kind of set how this works first. So the, the way it works in this game is that there's an open world for, uh, what is it, 16 planets, 19 planets, something like that? I can't remember. Um, um, a lot of planets. A lot of planets. Get yourself your, your big old fungus world. Uh, I don't have a visual for the this. The open worlds are, like, me mid-size. There's a few, like... Say, well, would you describe them as open worlds? They're not hub worlds, right? They're just, like, they are levels. Um, uh, I mean... Well, well so, I, I don't know. That's if you can see, this is the Gungan City, right? And it's quite large. Right. And you can go in all these places, and you'll have, like, you know, ten quests around. And this is like someone's like, oh, I lost my mop. Can you get me my mop? I'm like, okay. Ah. Go to check around and find a mop, bring it back to them, that sort of thing. Um, okay. You know, and, and so uh, you got a series of them, and, and the, the story is housed within them in, in terms of, uh, you know, when they were making this, they were like, well... If we make the mission, we make a mission out of them going to uh, the Nabu surface and avoiding all those spooky monsters, then in that case we'll have to get the player to walk from that surface they dropped down to at the beginning of Phantom Menace to the Gungan City to Boss Nass to the Unabongo, I think they call it, the ship. Um, I can't quite remember. But, the, you know, you get in that and that's how it activates the mission. It's like it, it makes it feel as though you're in the world itself, moving through. Unfortunately, this created problems. Okay. What problems do you mean? Well, it's an interesting thing to, to ask. It's like, you only have five missions per film, and to give you an idea with the Unabongo one, it's like, I'm probably exaggerating, but it really doesn't feel that way. It's like a minute long. Um, and then you... I timed the most of the ones I timed with three minutes long. Okay, we'll go with Whoa, three then. Whoa, calm down, Slowpoke. And so, you do that, and then it's like, now you're in Theed. 
Go walk around Theed and follow the directions until you find Padme. You kill some droids. It's kind of just like the movie, but um, it's awkwardly obvious that it's the open world vision. Right. It's not. That wasn't really Padme. That was a Lego Padme. Double. That was. It was. That was a stand-in. Kira Knightley. Kira Knightley. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, here she is. Look, and I was just like, oh. Hello. Um, and I was thinking of walking around Theed, uh, and then I was just like, but that's not my goal. My goal is to get Padme out of here, because it's not safe. Got to get to the hangar. And so I ended up just like, okay, and I just, we walked to the hangar. I think there was some droids to kill in there, or something, and then I just walk up to the ship, press A, and it's like, starting next mission. And I was just like, this is a bit jank and clunk. Jango! Feels like it's a little less control, but okay. And it's like, now we're going, there's a little cutscene, and we're in Tatooine now. And it's like, oh. I think the second mission actually happens is the pod race one. Uh. Oh. We are like, moving quick. Yeah, I was just like, huh. And you know, you, when you get to Tatooine, you can go and talk to everyone, you can go in little shops or rooms, solve some puzzles. But I was like, well, but the story's saying I gotta go see Watto as Qui-Gon, right? That's my story mission. It's like, so... And so, you know, I, I was more compelled to do that, especially with the knowledge that a lot of puzzles can't be solved until I unlock characters. So, right, yeah. so... So really... actually, my experience with this is that it's the first time I decided to wander around and try doing a side quest was that I was in Theed. I, I, met, a I met, like, a character there, and the first thing I needed was C-3PO, who I didn't have. So it was like, oh, I guess I'll come back to these later, and I didn't try any of them again. Um... Which, by the way, that. I'm fine with that. I've always been fine with that in the Lego games. I play through the story mode, grab the story True Jedi if I need to, depending on what game I'm playing, I guess. Um, and then I and then I do free play mode. And in this, I was kind of confused. I was like, what are we? What's what are we dealing with here? Like, did I ignore the open world for the most part then? Because they represent like free play in a sense. I was like, I, I kind of guess so. So I'll, I'll yes, happily confusing. play. Yeah, I was confusing. like, I'll happily play through the story, but then. I kind of killed the game by doing so. What do you mean? That pod, you know what, it's better, I think, at this point, because again, we're not going to be doing a, a huge, enormous breakdown, all right? But I think one of the best examples is going to be one that Jay's been through as well. But let's I've, I've played through the prequels, by the way, in terms of story. I've not done A New Hope yet. That's all right. Um, where does the Attack of the Clone shit start? Like, like in the story, um, or oh no? Do, do you mean do you want me to do you want me to recite the uh, the beginning of the Attack of the Clones? Uh, well, sto give story me, missions. Give me one sec, because you fucking kidding me? What are the odds of this? I open up all of my vods except the one with Attack of the Clones in it. Nice. <laughs> so you start you start with Coruscant as um, have me on the landing platform. Yeah. Well. So yeah. You may as well, if you want, just start describing that and what the problem is while I get a visual for it. <laughs> So you start as Padme um, on the landing platform, like right at the beginning of the film. Because uh, here's the thing, they, don't, they stick quite closely. They, they go for pretty strong realism within context for this LEGO game. And they stick quite closely to the actual events of the film. And they include most of the events of the film. So you start Padme on the landing pad um, when the ship blows up uh, and her decoy dies and Kira Knightley is no longer in the film. Oh, damn. Then, you move, uh, then the, your first objective is to go to the Senate building and talk to Chancellor Palpatine, as happens in the film. Padme goes and talks to Palpatine, and then a cutscene plays of you. So you walk all the way to the, the Senate, and then a cutscene plays with you talking to Palpatine. And then what happens next wait, in the I, film? I'm pr to, hmm? to, to bolster you, right? Let's, let's, oh, wait. Maybe this isn't a great example. I was just going to say the, the walking, what it's like. There's a better example I have a little bit later. The, the next. The next thing that happens is um is the perfect example is um well I mean not maybe not entirely uh, it's um not representative of all of them but the next section that makes you RP walk with Padme is Obi Wan and Anakin to her apartment. Oh, I love role plays. Right. Yeah. So you were saying um, we got the cutscene with Palpatism, and then is it in that scene? Then that your next. Right. Right. Then your next objective is to RP walk with Padme uh, to her apartment, which takes a while. Um, yes. And you've got dialogue going on this whole way. Apparently, I'm roboting. Uh, uh, just a little here and there. I'll throw um, us in uh, 
Singapore, just in You know, people are going to be joining UFAP and they'll have no idea why that's going to be the solution to just help to Singapore. Yes. So you um, walk to the department um, and then the first mission happens, which takes three minutes and it's just sort of meh. Um, I could just pause you. So I just want people to look on screen. This is what Jay's talking about with the RP walk. Look at this pain. This is maximum oh, speed. No, why, don't, why, yes, why, why, Gears of War. Why, oh, <laughs> man. Well, lots of games were actually not just Gears of War. Unfortunately. Oh yeah, I said it was the only one. Yeah, that yeah. No, I know it's just there's an implication. I swear like, to ah, God, yes, if it Gears of War thing where the characters at any point, slowly, not just many if, games. If only they they need to just be pressing their heads like there's a the earpiece, and that will complete the beautiful uh, cinematic yeah. wonderment that is these moments. Well, it's just you know what I love is when I just have to walk and listen well, to characters talk instead of watching a cutscene or just playing a game. <laughs> I can be more forgiving of it if the dialogue is particularly story-driven, yeah. like, like really important, and so they're trying to do this to be like, please concentrate on what the characters are saying. This is repeated dialogue from the films. In fact, some of oh, it is melded yeah. together. Melded together? What do you mean by that? They'll, they'll take like three scenes worth of them talking, and um, I, I don't know better to explain this than basically being like, um, you know, he appears on Mustafar, and Anakin, like, says, you brought him here to kill me, and then Obi-Wan will go, only a Sith deals in absolutes, and then he jumps oh, at him wow, and attacks. Oh, wow, we are... Like, it would man, do that, that way. Is a, that is abridged. Um, they do it throughout. God damn. But, um... That is very abridged. But yes, car carry on, Jay. I'm just, you know, just... <laughs> what happens next? So, in Padme's apartment, you get the first mission, which is Bounty Hunter Pursuit, um, and it's three minutes long. Where well, you are chasing, you're chasing Wessel in her little car, little space car, and you just have to shoot at it until it falls out of the sky, and that's it. Yep. Oh, right. cool. There's no, are there any um, other cars around? It looks like it's just an empty area. There, there are other cars around. Um, they are above us at this point ah. in the in the mission. So, like, what is the gameplay here? Oh, <laughs> you very, just shoot very at Wessel, and you shoot at Wessel, and you don't drive into stuff. It's kind um, of like the Unabonko level. You, you move, you move uh, really slowly as well. Uh, you do move really slowly, you, yeah. Well, wow. that makes sense because you're not trying this to catch her. Enthralling. This looks really enthralling. I died uh, uh, more times on this level than like any other. I didn't even know what was killing me. I was getting confused and I was just like, alright, whatever. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm still winning. <laughs> I couldn't tell what was damaging me on this level either. I think... I think looking back at the footage, it might be um, debris falls off her ship and hits you. Oh, okay. But I couldn't, I couldn't tell while I was playing. Um. So after that, you uh, you get a mission as Obi Wan. So after that three minutes, you get a mission as Obi Wan to go and talk to Dexter Jester. So you um you walk to Dexter's diner, uh, and then. Dex is like, oh, Obi-Wan, I'd love to talk to you, but um, I, I'm, I need help waiting tables. Um, so oh, he, yeah, before, he'll, before he'll accept talking to you, before he'll, like, he will talk to you, you have to bring an item of food from every, like, like you, know, you see them on the council there on the stream. Um, you have to talk to each patron in the establishment and ask them what food they want, or they'll, they'll just tell you, you don't have to ask. And then you have to go and find that piece of food on the counter and take it to them. And you have to do that five times, I think. This is no kind of, like, challenge. This is literally just... Like, it's hard to call this a challenge. It's just, There's like... There's no fail state? No. Well, yeah, because Kirby in the I... Forgotten Land has, like, a little mini game where you, uh... You serve food to all of the Waddle Dees in town. But uh, there's there's difficulties. In the what all these mode. nuts? <laughs> oh. The reason why there's difficulties is because the 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 whole game is built around mm. serving them as quickly as possible to make sure that they're happy. But also, of the items that are available for you to serve to them, they don't tell you straight away. Sometimes it will be a silhouette that comes into focus. Sometimes it will be a silhouette that pans up from the bottom. Or, uh, it, it, yeah, like, there, there are little things that you have to try and account for. You need to be fast, but you need to identify what food they want quickly. Otherwise, you're going to fall behind, especially when the dinner, the lunch rush happens. You know, just adding difficulty, like, just fight, making it a game, really, you know? Like, a challenge. Making mm. it a game. Because well, um, this isn't any different, this isn't any different from the previous objectives we've had, which is 
walk to a place. This is again, this is just walk to a place on a micro scale where the place is very near and you get very a few objectives very quickly strung together. Oh, I need you to go and get that thing for me. Oh, I need you to go and get that. You still walk to the counter, then walk back to the tables. It's still just walking. Well, yeah, it's strange well, as well because it uh, didn't happen in the movie. No, you don't, you don't, it's totally okay to invent shit, I think, 100%, but uh, they don't invent shit yeah. much. They don't, they don't invent uh, much let's, at all. You don't remember that? That was an it was a this... scene. It was in the collect. It was in the the director's cut. The George. The, it was in the Lucas cut. Uh. George Lucas felt that it was really integral to his vision that when Obi Wan arrives at Dexter Jester's diner, um, that he uh he put on an apron and he started serving people, um. So all the dinerverse, you know, you know we need yeah. we need <laughs> the dinerverse. Uh, yeah. If we compare this to stuff that they added to um a little game called. Star Wars, Lego Star Wars, the video game, uh, which came out in 2005, they, what they added to Attack of the Clones was, for example, on Camino, where there's a long section where not much exciting happens in terms of, like, active gameplay for a while. What, you know, you, it's just a lot of characters talking to each other and walking around. How, how do you adapt that into a game? Well, there, they added it so that Django has a load of droids that he uh, sends after you and attack, uh, they attack you. So that there's, like, enemies to fight on the level. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, you know, I think we're all in favor of that kind of change being made to a Lego game adaptation of Star Wars. It's not like it has to be a super serious, super RP faithful thing, right? Nope. And uh, so it's just it's just worth highlighting. It's like, oh, we have invented a game here, and what is it? It's a matter of just you know A to B to C to D to E to F to E to G, and then you can carry yeah, on. Yeah, A B C D E F G are clearly like yeah, like this isn't even optional. Uh, Confusion. And I think a better way to describe the monotony would be A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Because saying A, B, C, D, E, F, G kind of makes it sound like it's more complicated. Um. Mm. And so what is the challenge here? Is the challenge that you walk from one place to the other, or...? I'd say the only yeah, challenge in this is, is as, as someone as says, been... I want Jawa juice, and it's like, oh, will that be the cup with the green stuff in it, or will that be the cup no, with No, it shows the... you a picture of it. In that case, there is no challenge, unless you're blind right. and deaf, I guess. Well, unless the pictures uh, don't come into focus clearly and you have a time limit, like, you know, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, a game that is, like, also made for pretty, it's pretty accessible, but it's still got challenges, you know, because it's a video game. Well, what well, yeah. is next? So, after you've done that, uh, you, you have a scene talking to Dexter, and then you, uh, you have to walk to your ship, um, which is all the way back at the Senate building, to get to uh, Camino, because Dex is like, us ah, Camino. No, sorry, I'm wrong. Wow, That's, skipping over so much it, of the movie. It never happens. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, you know, that would be that would be nice, isn't it? If you could just go to Camino next. No, then you have to go to. Uh, That's what happens what... in the movie next. Is uh, yeah. he goes to the the Jedi archives to check uh, uh, Camino, like about Camino, oh. learn about Camino. I just want everyone to make to sure that they're staring at the screen to see how long that takes. What Jay just said. How long it takes. So you walk to the Jedi Temple, um, and then you go and you f you find a thing in the Jedi Temple, and you go to the archives, and you open the archives, and then Yoda talks to you about Kamino. And he's like, um, he's like, oh, it's gone from the star charts. And Yoda's like, well, go there anyway, and it'll probably still be there. Um, and so then, having done that, you walk back from the temple to your ship, and you go to Camino. So, is the gameplay here that you just go to a place to, like, talk to someone, yeah. and, and then, then you go back to well, your you ship? Well, you start to get worried, you know, when you're playing it for this long, and you're like, man. It's gameplay, technically. Well, yeah, technically, because yeah. I have to interface with the game, I have to interact with the mechanics, like, walking and stuff, to yeah, and talking to people to, to progress, mechanics, but I'm like not really... Walking. I'm not really doing anything, right? I'm not. I'm not applying any level of skill or knowledge that's uh, helping me progress. You know how, like, I know uh, we we don't often get into the weeds of just like the basics of games, but you know, like when you're playing a first-person shooter, like centering the screen on the thing you need to kill and then pressing the button to do it and making sure that you don't die in the process. It's like, well, you know, that's not something that you can sort of just passively do. Like to say, so you need to be you oh, need you to mean? be doing things to to get to can... go forward. And you can tone that down in terms of difficulty. If you're making a you game for kids, you can, can make it so that 
you know, the area of the, you've met, maybe you've got like a, a shotgun type weapon that's also not got like a very particularly limited range. So there's a, a wide angle where your uh, weapon has area of effect and the enemies aren't particularly challenging. And all you have to do is get the enemy vaguely in the center and press the button and they die. You know, that's... Mm -hmm. You can absolutely you, find ways to can, have the core challenge still exist without alleviating the gameplay itself. This is in run. There's plenty or to be can, critical of, but um, it's constantly making use of mechanics. Mechanics that yeah. there's a hell of a lot of fail states in that game, and even the last levels I think are pretty fucking difficult for the average child to be able to complete. Um, mm -hmm. And so you could be like, yeah, but that's aimed for what, like 13 plus or something. And I'd be like, um, yeah, but then I'll just. Well, maybe, but, like, like the, the core mechanic of how you even move around has, like, complications to it. Well, you know, this game is, is so padded with almost, like, safety and handholding that it's just, like, to complete the story mode, you may as well just watch the movies. There's not much point. Um, well, yeah, because what, like, I, 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 I'm, I'm not getting a very clear impression as to what the game is. Which is very different from like the old Lego games where it's like, well, you explore the level, you get your studs, you fight the bad guys who are there, you explore the level um, with whatever characters you have to try and unlock things. It's like got a pretty clear loop. A lot of it is about exploration and collecting items. I'm not getting, seems here like you just sort of do things in an abridged version of the film, like where a lot of context is missing. Well, as you can see with um, this, uh, uh... I am now at Camino. I've met yeah. Lama Su. You then go to Camino. And now you have to walk slowly. Please, if you with keep her, an eye right? on the subtitles, this so, is all dialogue from the films. Um, like, no, I believe that there's a piece of dialogue added where he says that he needs to give you a tour of the cloning facility. Hmm. Um, oh, and so. so then you go on an RP walk tour of the cloning facility as he says dialogue from the films. I, thought, I thought we moved okay. past this, like that we. Why can't, why, dude, Infamous in like 2009 has the thing where like characters will talk to you on the phone, but you can like run around at full speed and like still play the game and sh and fight enemies. Like why, why can't we just, why do we, why do we have to do the slow walk? I thought we got past this. I thought, I thought we moved past this. Well, yeah, this. as well, like, this is a fucking kid's game. Like surely if any uh, target demographic that you don't want to force to have like a five minute, 10 minute dialogue rp walking section where you just focus on the story is a lego children's game where your target audience <laughs> probably doesn't have attention span for this kind of thing or care about the story particularly well i mean so maybe this is like a contentious take but i kind of have the perception that walking sections like this are very much cheaper versions of like proper cutscenes because you don't have to do like full animation of everything. You just have the characters walk through an environment, um, yeah, instead of having to be like a fully animated cinematic. I'm cool um, with a healthy balance if it means that I get to look at what I want to look at. I don't think I could deny oh. that what you're saying is true because I think it just is. Like I think it takes less work to make these theoretically, but, but there, is value, yeah. there is potential value for sure. Um, yeah, like look at this place that you're part of. Like, for instance, I, I said Gears of War a little uh, kind of mockingly, but at least, for instance, in Gears 5, right, there is a section that begins with you in this long kind of walking, talking section where you go through like this town. And then at the end of the walkie talkie section, it's like combat and things attack. Oh no, how bad. And you have to fight your way back through all of what you had walked through earlier and things are changing and now there's enemies and stuff. And you could sort of look, you could look around. Oh, I look at this place and look at all the things. And so that there's like some, Wait, I was there's something fuck. that can be done. I even tried to kill Boba Fett, the child, just because I was like. I was wondering why you were trying to kill a child. You always kill children. It's, it's just like. Well, if you kill him and not his father, he can't be an orphan. Yeah. I guess um, something that might be worth talking about that's already been mentioned is um, games will communicate to you uh, through the way that they're designed expectations uh, as to what you can or can't do or what you should be doing. Um, so, like, for instance, if you, I've always, Breath of the Wild is such a strong example of that because the opening communicates so clearly. You're in this open world. You can do whatever you want, go wherever you want. There are four things you need to do. Uh, actually, you don't need to do them. You don't need to do them, but it's a, it's recommended that you do before you face the final boss. But you don't have to. You can do whatever you want. Like that sets a clear expectation in people's minds. 
yeah. about the way that they're going to engage with the game going forward. When you communicate to them, oh, you can climb things, you can cook foods that have different attributes, uh, like keeping you safe in the cold. Like all of these things communicate to the player an expectation of, oh, I can go around and do whatever I want. I, in fact, I am encouraged to explore. That is what the game kind of wants me to do. Um, exactly. It's 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 um, th this is really important in terms of influencing how people play because here, it seems like it puts you into these really big environments. But in story mode, it tells you exactly where you need to go, and you it also I mean, it quickly identify. Very, not very specifically as well. Like the waypoints are very close to each other. Uh, right. You don't go far. Like you, you can basically always see one. Uh, go here now. Go here now. Go here now. Go here now. Go here. Right, like a sat nav, pretty much. Yeah. Um, um, what you've said as well is that you will find if you explore in story mode that there is so much that you can't do. Because you well, yeah, as, as in, yeah. Lot, that you'll just so stop the first time I was, I decided to stop and explore was, oh, I can't do this yet. Okay. Yeah, same. And then right. I didn't really bother with it again. Uh, okay. But like, you know, you guys are familiar with Attack of the Clones, and it's like, so then what? It's like you get to uh, Django's that, room yeah. cutscene, then he runs and away, fight. and so you finally get gameplay again. It's a boss fight with Django. Um, yeah. And this is over pretty quickly, that scene. Mm -hmm. And then, I think that would be mission... Yeah. Is that mission yeah, 2 or 3, fighting him? I don't even know anymore. But, it does get a little bit mind-numbing. Um, Alright, well, just look, you want things to do, so... so yeah, you... After, oh, yeah. yeah, after after the RP walking on Camino, I mean, it picks up, you get you get more of the levels after that. It's It's... it's it's, it actually might be more levels than just RP walking places at that point. Um, but it's... I mean, then you have the droid factory level, which took me fucking ages, not because of it being content, but because the frame rate was 13. Um, oh, yeah. Well, to be fair about the RP walking thing, right? It's like you're Anakin and uh, Adme on... Is it Naboo? Then you have to go to the hangar to travel to Tatooine. Then you have to go to Watto. Get a cutscene, travel oh, yeah, from yeah. him. Yeah, so the Tatooine when the mission different area of Tatooine. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So um when the mission is go to um uh, the, the the droid factory, right? You're switching perspectives from Obi Wan to Anakin and Padme. So it's an ideal opportunity. Like the, the you can start them at any point in their story you like you like, right? As a developer, you have that choice. You can Say, oh, right, okay, we want to make a, a level that involves Anakin and Padme, uh, that, a romance level on Naboo or whatever the fuck, I don't know. But, like, let's say they want a level in that place, and you can start them there. The first level that they have you play as Anakin and Padme is the droid factory on Geonosis. So they start you on Naboo, and then they're like, okay, now go to your ship, now fly to Geonosis, now um, walk to... Um, now go and walk to where Shmi is, or and now go walk to the Tuscans cause, and find out that she's dead, and then walk back to where Shmi is, and then walk to the droid factory. Are you oh, no, sorry, yeah. you don't go. Yeah. Why is it... Really? So they could just start you at the droid factory. They could, because the narrative is split. So... Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, if anywhere this game has been advertised with the amount of time it takes to play the content... They're like, wow, wow. So, there's 16 hours of story content in this game or whatever. Um, the one I want to bring up, the classic, I made everyone aware of this one because I just couldn't believe it, but uh, good old Revenge of the Sith. Gosh darn, just as bad. The whole the prequels are bad as far as I was concerned for uh, the Lego's approach. Um, Somebody said when I said the sequels were bad too. Someone was like, "Were you really expecting it to be good when it's the sequels?" And I was like, "Yes, this is a game. Well, a game yeah, you can yeah, fucking do whatever game, you want." Yeah. yeah. Um. God, I'm trying to remember how this how this even happened. How when when this does this uh... happen to me? So I, I think I should have solved my robot thing issues ah, there. By the way. But yeah, you do Emperor versus Yoda fight. Obviously, that's a mission, and then. Uh, Obi-Wan is on Coruscant with, uh, Padme's, like, bodyguard guy? 
think that's that's your player too. Everyone's like, why wouldn't they have done Bail Organa? You're gonna just pull a random guy because you have to make it two? I, like, I don't know. Well, I guess he bailed. Nice. Uh, Bail Organa uh, was just in the um in the uh, oh, Yoda fight. Right. Oh, he was Yoda's friend. Oh, okay then. Yeah, maybe that makes more sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Give Yoda a droid. I don't know. Well, they usually do. You have every character a droid. Uh, yeah, now the free will of Carson at this point in the story is just like the, there's random troopers everywhere, and it's like they will shoot you because at this point in the narrative you're like evil or whatever. But it's just so awkward because it's still you can tell that's all they did. Like this is the yeah, opening. Yeah, because otherwise, open world. It's like oh yeah, put some troopers there, and make them hostile. Because well, I mean, be... this feels like a prime opportunity to maybe have a stealth mission here, where you have to try <gasps> and evade them by like you know avoiding their sight lines, distracting them by throwing peb, uh, studs and stuff. You know, uh, like just some that's variety. Not happening, no, no, they can only no, only repeat it, the mechanics they've already built, which is people uh, shoot at you. But you run all the way over okay. here. You go up and you're like, Padme. This is the point in the film where Obi-Wan is like, Anakin is evil. And she's like, nah. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the cutscene, you switch over to her. You play as Padme pregnant, of course. Yes, yes. And uh, she's she's with C-3PO, I think, is her, is her friendo in this. And I was just like, all right. And so began my pregnant adventure. Pregnant with C-3PO. Uh, I... Oh, yeah, I just noticed that that's how you access missions is... I think you could do it through a main menu anyway, but I was like, let us begin our adventure. Come on, past me. Get through that door. Excitement Get to the awaits. fridge. Egg pickles and ice cream. Consume. Oh, you're sick again. Go to bathroom. Um, this is necessary, okay? Yeah. Okay, so what are we I'm, doing now? I'm, I'm... Why do you have a gun? I'm Padme. Alright, that's fair enough. Padme pregnant, pregnant with her pistol. Yeah. Padme, Padme pistol pregnant. Um, gonna let us play to appreciate. All right, so she's like looking at for a pregnant chick. Only twenty feet, really, between like every time that it's like, ah, you're on the right path. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, that's where you need to go. Not like in you know, in Ghost of Tsushima, in the open world, uh, they actually did away with a waypoint system, and you could press a button, and the wind would point you in the direction the wind would blow and the trees would uh would blow in that direction oh that's like, super cool oh, okay Nature. this that's, is where yeah, I like need that's to how it works in japan yeah um, that's right that's right they don't need to just put like the no oh space. so so you just walk to have you yeah, just they, walked they, to the ship? they wanted me to walk from your apartment to a ship for some reason okay which why wouldn't it have been scene? that you played as Obi-Wan doing a stealth mission to try and follow Padme? You know, like those standard tracking missions like in Grand Theft Auto or like L.A. Noir, where you have to follow someone and not be seen? Yeah, why wouldn't Assassin's that be Creed like the gameplay? Game. Assassin's Creed, lots of games. Why, why wasn't that what they did? So uh, they put me in... Because those would have mechanics. Forest space, and then I have to choose Mustafar in my galactic menu. Okay. Go to Mustafar space. Jeez, mm -hmm. yeah, watching this game. This this game has less mechanics than a Pet Boys at 8 p.m. You you thought about that one for a while, didn't you? <laughs> no, just now. Just now. Okay. It had to it had to it had to be free. <laughs> like, all right. Bus space. And this is part of my favorite element of all of this. There is a particular okay. part in space I have to fly to to start the mission. Um, Instead of just well, at least it's close. Right there. Some of them are not close. They are fucking frustrated. Okay. But um, I suppose if someone said, "Well, the idea is that you don't, you know, you, you're specific in what you're trying to access." It's like, yeah, but they have this other mechanic when you aim at a planet and it loads up and then says "press A to c confirm," just so you can skip uh... the the thing. But they did didn't do it for the start mission one, so it's just this weird thing. But yeah, you mm. know, I activate that. Another cutscene. Almost okay. done with my journey as this pregnant Padme. So, like, what do you mean? Well, <laughs> I've well, when you mentioned that you started playing as preg, or when it was mentioned that you started playing as pregnant Padme here, I was like, oh, so in in terms of this the you know the movie, your role is to just walk to your death. <laughs> Pretty that's much. That's your that's yeah. your pur that's your purpose as playing as pregnant Padme oh. in this game. So, like, there's in Ratchet and Clank uh, A Crack in Time, uh, what that game does is you can actually fly around in your ship to go to the planets, whereas normally in the old games, you would just have uh, the list and you fly to those planets. But uh, in that game, 
you could go to like specific systems that would have a planet or two in them but between those planets uh there'd be like a bunch of like little smaller worlds or outposts or asteroid belts that had levels and stuff that you could go to and, and play around on can you do that here where there are like places that you can go to in these star systems to do things like optional challenges and whatnot it's just it's just the planet in each star system so like what's the point why don't you just put like a list and just take me right there why do i have to well i mean there is occasionally stuff to do in space um, what like not random bullshit that flies around yeah like like, but there's no other places to go right i mean so sometimes it's like a um uh, the one I played was above Geonosis, I think. I'm not, I'm 100%, but it was like um, a time trial thing where you've got to fly through certain rings. Oh, I honestly like that challenge. Um, a time trial where you have to fly through a ring and then fly through the next ring and then, you know, until your time, uh, before your time runs out. Oh, you got options for, uh, you, you can do the, the Ratchet and Clank a crack in time thing where you have flat out levels scattered across uh, space. Um, you don't have to do that, because I'm pretty sure that's the only Ratchet and Clank game that did it. But I mean, that's just going above and beyond to include more content in the game and have some like variety. The, in story mode, you can beat up Anakin as C-3PO. Because if that was a thing that happened, just well, so wait, amazing. I, I, think, I think we that cutscene felt really short. Um, also, uh, that conversation. he accidentally <laughs> knocks Padme Depending out. Depending on your creator. Which, by the way, okay. they change a lot in these cutscenes, the kind of important narratively. It's it, it's not necessarily a problem or anything, but it's just like, man, some of these things aren't portrayed quite right. I think I mentioned to you guys, but um, Obi-Wan, almost, a couple of times in this final fight, is, is like, Anakin, please stop, you don't have to do this. And it's like, That's no, 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 like no, no. Obi-Wan whole, was coming to kill him. Obi-Wan's That's coming here that's... to end his life, not to be like, Anakin, yeah. please. It's so awkward to be like, you can't just change that. Uh, like, like Atticut accidentally knocks Padme out by dra- grabbing something on the cake, and it's just like, okay. That changes a lot, though. It's, it's just, like... yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about a lot of them, because I'm just like, what's what's the point here? You're making your own story? Because, like, I well, guess you can if you want. It's but... meant to be a meme, right? But still. But, it's well, it's like I said, some of the changes story. don't even line up that way. It just sounds like someone who didn't really know what happened in this film, trying to create bits of dialogue just be like i don't know he says please stop and because anakin's the evil one right mm-hmm. so um yeah i was the, the prequels um it, it was just foreshadowing well, kind of at least mola as soon as you get to the anakin obi-wan fight you have gameplay right I kept getting so fucking annoyed that they interrupted me to tell me you can't continue until the droids jump over a bunch of platforms and press a button. I was like, no, thank you. So, uh, by the way, but at um, least the button, you at least you can press the button. At least that works. I canceled your ground pound to so, start um, that. Thing. I feel like you <laughs> must uh, must explain yourself there, Jay. Sounds like you're being a sarcasm. So. You guys, you guys, you guys have played video games before. You know how I sometimes have. you have it. Um, a situational ability, right? Or a situational... You know, most buttons, most uh, most games have like an interact button, right? Where you interact with the thing. Mm. Yeah. But So like open a door or whatever, right? But yeah, for well, you know, efficiency, if there's nothing nearby to interact with, often that button will be also tied to another inter- uh, action that you do if there's nothing nearby for you to interact with. Common game design stuff. And that's the case in this game. Because you know, uh, efficient. Uh, and not only that, it's, it has to be. You you can't separate the the key bindings. Just to be clear. Um, so, uh, as three uh, PO, for example, that you've got your three PO's like ability is he can break into like two pieces. He can separate his legs and his torso, and that can like get him into smaller spaces. Nice. Yeah. Um. So. You can also interact with panels as 3PO and you can like press buttons and stuff and, and interact with technology because he's a droid. Yeah. And that's the same button. Um, and, I, I, and you know, sometimes playing a video game, you go to interact with something and you realize, that, oh, you weren't near enough to it. So you, uh, you, uh, you did your action by mistake. And oh, well, that's, you know, mistakes happen. So that you then go nearer to the thing and then you, um, you actually interact with the thing you're trying to interact with. I can't actually tell what makes the difference in this game between interacting with the thing and using the ability. Um, I squared myself up exactly 
on the like there's a little circle that shows where you need to stand to use the panel. I was exactly like lined up with that facing the panel. I pressed the button and I don't use the ability. I split into two. Um, my record is um, eight failed attempts at using the panel before you before I actually get to use the panel. You know, I press the button eight fucking times, split in half every time instead of using the panel. And every single time, the prompt saying, press E to use this panel is on the screen. I don't know what made the difference for the last one where it actually worked. Uh... But by the time it did work, I was convinced that actually the game was unfinishable and I, I, I was I, facing I a wall had, where I just couldn't get through. I had this trouble here and there. But with the clips you've shown me, uh, you had a lot more. <laughs> and it looks like I may have gotten lucky or you got unlucky. But um, yeah, it's pretty awkward that they've got the special ability button is the same as use panel button. And so any special ability makes it so we can't well, use that, panels. No, but that, that shouldn't be awkward, though. That shouldn't be awkward because in, in, when a game is designed well, when the prompt is on the screen or you're in the, the area, like, you know, the original game has this um, where as a bounty hunter, you can... Uh, throw bombs, or you can maybe like press a lever, and that's the same button. But if you're in the vicinity of the lever, you press the lever instead of throwing a bomb. Um, um, people want to clarify: works fine. Is it the difference between pressing and holding? It is not the difference between pressing and holding. <laughs> I tested that. Jay tested. What a loser! I, if and if it was, it should also say. Press button to hold button to do this rather than press button to do this. Um, yeah, so, um, hmm, does that kind of summarize the issue with how story mode works? And I suppose. I suppose technically it could be um, hold to, to break apart, hold to split apart, but I, I don't think I was holding it unless it's incredibly sensitive. It's like, oh, you held for 0.2 microseconds, you held it. Um, kind of illustrated it with Attack of the Clones, but I felt this was present in basically all of them because they necessarily have to fuck the pacing depending on where they choose to place their levels. And I, um, when I played Force Awakens, which you can see here, I was like trying to guess where they would do their missions, and to my surprise, they made a mission out of Finn rescuing Poe. I was like, whoa, if you put one of your five at Finn rescuing Poe, can you, can you see what I mean when I'm like, I'm picturing the, the timeline of the film and you need to put the yeah. five dots in an equal spacing apart from each other. If you put one right at the beginning with how Force Awakens works for its, um, you know, its action-packed scenes and stuff and where gaps are, I'm like, oh, you probably should have made that one a cutscene and pushed the first action scene maybe to the village where Kylo yeah, attacks. Yeah. Maybe make that the first one. Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure in the Force Awakens Lego game... That, that is the first one, and you can even make the ending to that then, um, him getting rescued or something. Um, maybe even combo... See, this is the thing. I'm trying to make it all longer, but the thing is they weren't allowed to make these very long. Um, so it's like, you could go with the village, you could go with this, you could go with uh, when Finn first arrives or crash lands, maybe make a space battle is the first thing, but it's like, okay, fine. And this mission was pretty normal. I was just like, okay, so what are we doing next? Um... Play as Ray, and I think the next one is the um. Oh, they had to make they made me collect scrap, twenty pieces of scrap in this big play area. It took a while. It was some of the most time wasty shit, but I did it because you know I'm I've got integrity. Love the craft, okay. yeah. yeah, I love the craft. Integrity. And so, once you walk around, activate enough cutscenes, and do all the schnizzles, you get into the the spaceship battle sort of portion, which I was like, this one makes sense. I suppose it's an opportunity, but again, the problem is like, man, we're two down now out of five, and you obviously thinking. I was thinking ahead. I was like, they obviously have to make a level out of Ray fighting Kylo at the end. What are the other two gonna be? Like, well, if one of them would probably have to be assaulting the base, um, Starkilla. Both of those happen like within the same real time of ten minutes before the end of the game. So we've done two. Two are gonna be right at the end. Where's this third one gonna be? And I assume Takodana. That's the thing, I think that's probably where you're going to want to aim for it to be, but uh, you complete this little mission, you go up into space, you travel over, and then Han grabs you as it goes, and you get a mission. Is the Rathtars one. It's like, it's not that it doesn't make sense to have a Rathtars mission. You, you can definitely make an action-packed thing out of that. But that yeah. would mean, then, 
We've not got a mission now oh between boy. the Wrath Tars and Assaulting Starkiller Base, so how are they going to deal with that? Okay. And we right. get... By the way, the Wrath Tars mission might be the best mission in the whole game. Um, it is just like nice. an actual LEGO game level. Like, it, it's a series of rooms. Some take puzzles, some take enemies. Some of it mixes and matches. A lot of it requires different characters to help push each other forward. It felt like playing a LEGO game. Uh, hmm. And it's, it feels so weird to say, right? Because it's just like, why do you care so much? You're fucking... You're not a baby. And it's like, I don't know, man. I play a lot of baby games, okay? Simpsons Hit and Run. Mario Kart Double Dash. These are all baby games now. And, and I think Baby they're games. real good compared to how bad they could be. And I would prefer them to not be bad. For people who were my age when I played the original LEGO games, who are, who are playing games now, they deserve a better class of mechanic. Alright? And, um... Pod race is best level? I mean, maybe for vehicles, but I'm talking about this, this sort of... Uh, this kind of standard LEGO approach that they did throughout the, uh, the prequels, the originals, Indiana Jones, you know? The way that when everything was crafted to go uh -huh. through as a level with uh, the story characters, so they give a nice amount of puzzles that the story characters can solve, but then they'll add a whole bunch that only, you know, Django Fett can solve this. And it's like, but he's not with me right now. And it's like, aha, come back in free play. And you're like, oh ho ho. Uh, this one came the closest. And it makes me wonder if this was one of the first levels they worked on or something. Well, um,. I'm, I might be getting that impression from Force Awakens as well, because I genuinely am wondering, what if all of the levels are packed so tightly at the start of the film, because there were originally supposed to be more of them, Could be. and these, they had these finished, and then they realized how much they were going to have to crunch and cut down content? Well, because, I mean, it, uh, we've all, I'm, I'm pretty sure all of us here have read, or at least heard of, the report that uh Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Not... Um, oh, okay, all right. So anyway, right, you, you get out of there with the Raftar's thing, plays cutscene of you escaping, then it's cutscene... Oh no, you travel to Takodana, land, Maz's castle, you have to walk to the cantina. I think there was a cutscene with Snoke, too. Walk into the cantina, get your cutscene. You have to pr play as Rey and, and so just solve one or two sort of free play puzzles that... By the way, can you see the puzzle on screen right now? Yeah. You have to spin three things and then c connect them all up. It's like the closest this comes to having something that may be difficult. As long as you upgrade yeah. it once, you can skip them. You hold A. Oh, why would you do that? <laughs> I don't know, maybe they were... I don't actually know. It's so weird that you could use your points that you gained by playing the game to make it so you don't have to engage with mechanics. It's, it's very... Mechanic, yeah. It's like one of the most, yeah, I don't know, like that's one of the most common puzzles in the game. You can just pay it, and of course I used that. I was like, yeah, I guess so. Rafe picks up a lightsaber, gets a cutscene, then you exit back up, and you have a battle with FN2199. Do you guys remember him? He's the guy with the uh, that is electric name. thing. Yeah. Actually, guy. Well, he's, I know he's one of you guys' favorites. Like, don't give me bullshit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, he's no, I mean, is, he's no Babu Frick, but he's, he's, you know, he's up there. He's not a part of a level. He's a part of free play, A and B sort of movement. So it's very odd, right? Because this is the thing. I'm coming out of Maz's castle, and I had a, a position at this point that I would probably engage with trying to get true Jedi. Um, and that means that when that comes up, I'll try and grab it so that it can get me more studs, so that I can get more stud multipliers, and it can just, it can just help me. But if those stud, true Jedi is off, that means I'm in free play trying to get to another mission. And so when they do this shit, where they pretend I'm in a mission, almost, it's like the camera angle's like, oh look, there's some cover here, there's some troopers, what are you gonna do? I'm like, you can't trick me, game. I know this is free play. This is a lie. So I'm so just I gonna walk to right past you all. Yeah. Like, why would I care? This isn't the, the mission. And as, as Han, I just, yeah, I'm just like, where's the mission? Get me the mission. And of course, um, spawns this dude, which can feel a little cinematic, can feel like you're in a mission maybe, but look what happens and look what how this game is made and the boss fights at this point they all run the same and I'm starting to wonder if they are just forms of delay because they had so few mechanics to actually delay you with um, but at first I was like trying to actually hit him because I thought we would be in the standard sort of way they do it with lightsaber foes, but no, he's just a guy with more health that's that's it. And so I was just like, oh, well, it's probably better I just shoot at him then. And then, uh... Yeah. Oh. Oh, this... no. And then we get a cutscene. To be fair, that's basically what happens in the movie. Yeah, so... I guess that's nice. 
<laughs> they're faithful with the gameplay. Uh, yeah, Wait, the cuts need to go up. Uh, cuts seem back down uh, to that planet they're on for the resistance. Oh, this shit was pretty entertaining. When I landed, they had, like, cutscene dialogue between Poe and Finn. Look how far away they are from each other when they're just having a casual conversation. They're not even looking at each other and the lip sync isn't right. It's just like, <laughs> okay. Oh, the, there's no attempt to do lip sync in this game. Well, do you understand, though? It's, it's, it's components of a, of a overall whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, Finn and Poe are like, you know, oh man, it's so good to see you. It's like, welcome back. It's like, I thought you were dead. You know, all this stuff. And they're just standing meters away from each other, not looking at each other. It's like, okay. I f I'm feeling it, you know, I'm really f feeling the warm fear. This doesn't feel at all like a very rushed uh, thing where you're just like, I don't know, put them there. We'll do stuff. And then it's like, well, now you got to walk inside the, the base. Otherwise, you can't activate the cutscene. And you get to fucking slow walk behind Poe, too, which is wonderful. Because how else can we pad this out? And I knew this was going to happen when I did the Rathos mission. I was like, how are they going to fill time between this and the Starkiller base mission? Which is obviously where they'll have the next one. And it's just cutscene after cutscene after walking after walking after really small pathetic puzzle that you can pay to avoid. It's just like, what have we become? What has happened? Yeah. Hmm. You activate the ship, you land on Starkiller base, you have a Snoke cutscene with Kylo, us getting into the base, and then the mission begins. And this is pretty funny. I'm faced with my mission. I get my true Jedi. And what is my opening fucking bit of gameplay? A bunch of barriers spawn with a bunch of people shooting at me. Cover shooting, everybody. Just what oh, I play boy. Lego Yay. for. And um, I was like, I ain't doing this. Fuck this. Where are we going? And then it said, you have to kill 30 troopers to move on. Oh, no. 30. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, so, yeah, no. you, just, you just shoot. Just keep on. Uh, eventually, I... Just upgrade my blaster damage in the little RPG light tree thing, which makes things a little faster, so that's nice. I now I'm starting to see the upgrade tree, it's just a way to make everything faster. Mm. Not like, oh cool, I can do this now. It's just like, no, it just gets me through the game fast. No, you get to do you you don't have to do as much. We sped it up for you. Um So like I think some people will be like, oh come on, like you, you, you said the Rathos mission was good. They can't have missions for the whole game, so I'm just like, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't, I, it's because we're going to get into the problems with production. But, like, what this is, what it exists as, I'm not to, I, I said this on the stream, I'm not trying to aim it at people who made this. I'm just talking about what this is. And it is shit. Um, it was a struggle to get through story mode. I did it just yesterday, actually. I completed uh, Rise of Skywalker. It was as embarrassing as the film. Some stuff they improved. Oh no! Um, if I can give you an example, actually, nobody spoil in chat. You all know what I'm talking about. They Somehow, take, Palpatine returned. They, they they take certain narrative plot points, if you will. They, oh wait, actually, it could have been when I was just because yeah, I did half of TLJ and God damn it, back a sec. Um. There are ways, let's, well, so you know the Palpatine somehow return thing, they actually have that line in here, and it's sort of a different part, it's kind of confusing, but they don't really meme it up. Oh, you know what, let's look you at meme? this first. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's take a look. I wish to explain to you guys, I, this will come right. relevant later, I just want you to appreciate this first. Convincing Luke in TLJ, press A to continue. Let's continue this, what happens? Press A, come on, you can do it. Who is that on the left? Oh, that, that'll be Luke, yeah. What? There we go. So, Wait, um, that, that you're, next you're to Ray is You're greeted with this image. That's Luke? I feel like there's other things to be addressing right now. I'm oh, sorry, I was just... Oh my... Um, okay. Uh, uh, nice. Fucking do it. Fucking do it. Milk that cow. Milk that cow. So, uh, Pregnant Padme, milk that cow. This is this is here. Yes, right? yeah. this is a finely crafted fetish game. Bit bit weird. Uh, the, 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 they put the effort in to make this all happen. Now, let's talk a little about stuff that maybe didn't happen. When you play Return of the Jedi, you get a good old mission to uh, to approach Jabba's palace. You go in, solve some puzzles, 
fucked some people. Be a true Jedi. Done, done. Second mission, just the blow up the barge. Though you don't actually blow up the barge, you just fight Boba Fett in a boss fight, then you fight Jabba in a boss fight. We can talk about that in a sec. And then, um, you're done with that one. Third mission is the speeders. We're definitely going to talk about that one, but not yet. Fourth mission then, because I was like, wait, we've only got two left. And, um, this was before I'd clocked on more fully with the five. I think I was just busy being annoyed by something else that happened, which we're going to get to. Uh, mission four, which I didn't even realize was a mission, actually. You can see it in the stream. I only realized toward the end. Was uh, Chewie and Wicket in, in Ewok land. The uh, good old Moon of Endor. And, um... It's, it's, you know, getting to the, the base, destroying the shield generator, and it's like, wait, so that's four missions. Now to go to five, and that's uh, Luke, the Emperor, and Vader. And once you complete that, there is simply a cutscene of everybody shooting out of the da Death Star as it blows up. It's like, oh, we didn't do that. We didn't have the gameplay of blowing up the second Death Star, the literal climax what? of the trilogy of the original Star Wars. I, okay, but what we did have was Luke milking the cow things. You made sure to put right. the important stuff in, yeah. I guess. Picking and choosing our battles, you know, like maybe including the climax really? of the original trilogy as a little gameplay thing. Like, that would have been cool. Uh, like, you have the mechanics, you have flying sections. Why would you not have that, like, an actual difficult little run through the, uh, Death Star? Man. It was pretty shocking, um, their choice. There's a lot of choices that you do wonder about. In fact, uh, you, you're in prison in TLJ. You find DJ, he breaks you out, you get a little bit of gameplay of trying to solve this like weird thing with, with security officers, and then you get onto those horse things, and then it's a cutscene, and then we leave the planet. It's like, oh. I mean, I don't like TLJ, but I would have expected you to do a mission where we're riding those things through a bunch of streets, have to jump over barriers, avoid gunfire or something, you know, standard, yeah, but makes nope. sense, yeah. Gonna skip a all that. A Potterace-esque section. Exactly. Uh, but no, no, you don't get that. Um, it, and you start to sort of, instead of wonder, like, why would you make this choice? You just eventually are like, man, this game was fucking rushed, wasn't it? You, you had choices going all over the place and rationales all over the place and they're all just conflicting with each other because you had different levels of speed and, and ability at different points of production. And so now it's just sort of like what you had is what you have. Um, mm -hmm. Because quite possibly my favorite puzzle in the whole game, it just randomly shows up in the middle of TLJ. Um, to illustrate how fucking annoying and stupid this all is though, by the way. You... Okay. When you arrive at uh, good old Arc 2 in The Force Awakens, this is actually better. So the final fight with Kylo Ren in Force Awakens, I don't really need to go over more detail in terms of how that works mechanically. The level is fine. I fucking love it. reminded me, by the way, do you remember when Rey's got the choice to actually end Kylo's life and then the world parts yeah. so that she doesn't yeah. have to make that choice? <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, you, you, you leave, and it says level complete, which is the last level, and so I'm like, why am I not looking at credits right now? What's happening? And it's like, you're back on the base. Like, so, okay, and you mm. walk, walk into base, plays cutscene of you finding where Luke is, and you're like, yeah, okay. And it's like, now you gotta walk to your Falcon. You're like, right, you get in, fly to whatever planet this is, space, and then you have to go to Arc 2 space to then fly down to Arc 2, and then this part... You land, and it's like, now, go speak to Luke. Now just watch where I have to walk when this game could have played a cutscene. Instead, it desired me to do this. Which, is, I thought for a second that I would just go... They did this in the movie! She arrives at the planet, and then it cuts, you know, to her getting yeah. to Luke. Because you don't need to watch Rey fucking walk extensively. But, um, yeah, you just sort of... And, and I couldn't... I, I, I just, uh... It's so funny to look back on, because I, little did I know, because I, I thought that this would be the worst of it, per se, um, in terms of walking. But you've already seen loads of the walking you have to do in this. But, um, There's a lot of walking. You like uh, Ray's little run there? Looks a bit weird. It's very... <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she holds it to the, her stick. She holds she it is. too steady. <laughs> <laughs> the angry lady. <laughs> the uh, the points are behind you. It's telling you to turn back. Is it? Isn't it? Not quite. The, the oh no, they're in front the... of you now. 
Yeah, like he gets confused sometimes, but here's the uh, kill upward now. But I was like, oh my god, the Jedi Temple, the sacred text, let's destroy him. But uh, it doesn't let you, unfortunately. Disappointing. They even have a cutscene for that later where uh, Luke like slips and falls when trying to burn the temple and then Yoda's like, ugh, oh, idiot, and burns it himself and it's like, okay. Just a shit uh, of the film, I see. Well, I, do you like the humor in this game, Walla? You a fan of it? Well, I uh, think there, when I'm watching it... Oh, you go first. I guess I was going to say, like, the, the, we're almost done with talking about the main problem, I guess. I guess this is the main problem, the empty calories in this game. And I feel like <gasps> we've proven quite a bit of it, but then... See, look, I'm finally going up now. And then... Get so up and up and up like and up and up and up. And there's Luke. We did it. Sweet. And it plays a cutscene, and then the game's over. And it's like, why didn't you just do all of that in cutscenes? Why did you make me do all of that? What was the point? Yeah. And you realize, like, well, it took time, didn't it? <laughs> like, great. But um, then you do Finn and Rose in the Resistance for a while until you eventually go back to Rey and Luke. And, like, the first mission is following him down to his hut, to then watch him get into his hut, to then break out of his hut, and then you follow him all the way back up to the temple place, whatever, follow him to the, the milky people, the, the, the cow milking people slash facility, whatever the fuck he's got set up there. A lot of it is done, look, with the slow walk. You're not allowed to walk fast. Until he walks fast, and then you can you walk full of fast. Oh, oh. Yeah, oh, it's how, yeah, this is uh, one uh, of the three lessons. Oh. And, and, and Red light, like, green light. Why are we running now? What, what's the, what, what are... <laughs> Like, what's happening? I think he slows down in a second again. I was just like, no! <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty fucking bizarre. But yeah, we're walking all over Arc 2 again. And it's like, but why? Well, um, you can't just you know, be you, there. But you needed to walk more. I wish to highlight to you the best mission. So I keep chasing him around, keep walking all over the fucking place until he finally sends me Um, to... Wait a minute, is this soon or is it late? I want, I want it to be shown on screen, because it's that much better. Alright. Yeah, look, if you insist on following me, why don't you make yourself useful? I've lost my milk bottle. Go and find it. What? <laughs> I've lost my milk bottle. The porg stole my... the little shit. What else is he gonna drink oh, his milk out of, if not his milk bottle? You collect the milk bottle, I must walk along Arc 2. Again. This isn't like a this isn't like a speed trial, right? You don't have to actually catch up with the pork. It eventually stops, I think. Or it drops the milk bottle oh. just in this little villagey area, right? So yeah, see he's dropped it right oh, yeah, here. Like... I was following the thing and then I got confused. I was like, wait, where did it go? Because the, the mission's over. He's dropped the milk bottle. And it's like, oh. So now oh. I have to pick up the milk bottle and walk back to Luke. Jack and Daxter is an open world game where you have a mission where you have to um, chase a little creature around the place. Uh, it's actually quite challenging because it's quite a fast creature and it has a set path that it goes down. And um, oh, there are loads of ways to make you get the game it by like learning its path. Like this, this particular mini game. Well, I mean, I find Jack and Daxter to be a really interesting comparison between um, with with um, for this game. Because it is open world and it does make you walk everywhere yourself, um, but with with some fast travel, you know, which would be this 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 spaceships, right? But other than that, you have to um, walk everywhere yourself. And, and Jack and Dexter, it's these little portals in each major area. There's one in the middle of it. Um, but Jack and Dexter never has, you know, the walking slog. A lot of things it's... don't, because it's a really fucking sloggy thing to do. Uh, but anyway, that should hopefully prove, quote-unquote, that, that that's the state of um, the story mode. Dare I say, mostly non-gameplay. It's mostly traveling and walking, which you very boldly, 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 boldly shared on a tweet, Jay, and you got uh, I deleted that tweet. Re responses in my head. I haven't got any pictures or anything, but some of them were like, Oh, God forbid we connect, like, 
gameplay levels with traveling. And um, I, think... I got I got bored of the discourse, so I deleted that tweet. <laughs> I just... Doesn't really matter. I'm just using it as a sort of way to start it up. The, the, uh, the coward. You made a comparison with uh, green and red to show gameplay versus travel, correct? Yeah. And um, um, what was the ratio? Would you say? Well, no, I I, I have the numbers for you. Oh, um, in it took in 40 minutes of uh, Attack of the Clones, I had six minutes of gameplay, which is staggering. Wow. Uh, for a Lego wow, game as well. Uh, now you know I didn't. I wasn't nerd. like I wasn't racing to the objectives or anything. But um, I also, uh, you know, was I was just playing the game normally, pretty much. A couple of times, I, I, a couple of one time, I was like, oh, I've gone to the wrong place, so I went to the right place instead. Um, one time, like, uh, I I got confused about a mechanic, and that delayed me for a couple of minutes. Uh, and they didn't count that as gameplay, but you know. I could um, just highlight as well. See, I, I d did the cutscene where he's like, "You went straight to the dark," and it was just a torch on the floor, and I was like, "All right, I'll grab that." And just, uh, yeah, I would play this in. Oh, I can play this in higher speeds, can't I? Uh, no, she can. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So this is my mission. I got to go to the the big anus on this island, and of course, the big anus is located in such a place that requires me to do a lot of walking to get there, because every Sort of subsequent event on Arc 2 is just on the other side of the fucking island. That's just how they do it. It's so convenient because it makes it so that there's a lot of walking. And a lot of people say, in defense of this, well, why don't you engage in some side quest stuff? And it's really just not the dynamic that suits this at all. When you have a cutscene that has Luke being like, good god, you went straight to the dark side and raised like that cave, that, that island cave. What's in there? What does it do? I feel drawn to it. And he's like, you, sh you shouldn't go there. And then the game is like, end of cutscene, go to the cave. And you're like, okay, but I want to now do side missions. Like, I guess you could, but what about the people yeah. who want to do story mode? Yeah, and on the occasions that you think to do side missions, sometimes it'll be like, no, come back later. Yeah, sometimes it just block is... You can uh, be if in that's the case, then why would we ever bother? Why wouldn't you just do it straight I away? Feel... Go exactly where you need to go. Very much so that this game encourages you to run through story mode. You unlock all the planets as a result. You unlock a whole bunch of characters. And the, it seemed built, purpose-built, I would say, to be you run through story, then you run again with th free play, able to have all access to everything, run around, and it's a bit more fun. While story mode's more restricted, but it has more of a purpose, a narrative, as they say. So, brings us to um, what I thought, yeah, was like the, the best puzzle in the whole game. And it happens to be when Ray is... Uh, Doing a weird mind meld thing in the bottom of the cave, and I didn't—I had no idea what the fuck was happening. You can see here, this is what you get when you go down there. You've got like two reflections. There's two other rays, but they're in different areas, and they require different things to do in order to complete their puzzles. You control all three at the same time, and so you have to move them in the, the correct order first. And some can involve jumping. Neat. Some can involve uh, just moving up, down, left, right, in the right directions. You have to walk into walls while they don't in order to push them further than you would go. You have control in two of them right now. And they got to do like different puzzles each, but using me as the controller in the main room until oh, I unlock the portal. They did. Have you ever played the Swapper? I was going to say, I'm pretty sure there's a game that does this uh, consistently. But that's it. It's done. And I was like, oh. Okay. That was a neat little section, though. It's possibly the best puzzle in the whole game but that's not it's not ranking very high on the puzzle scale but it's probably outranking every other puzzle i've played and i played a couple of ones that you said were pretty good so i think that i had a decent selection to choose from but that one was the most my brain ever activated it went whoa, whoa. oh and then back <laughs> to sleep uh i mean i think i'd say that's probably a step up from pretty much any puzzle in the original game to be fair because the original game doesn't have uh, complex puzzles in it or anything well, the thing is the... Wait, um, Luke is a boss fight? Yes. This was very fucking sad to me. I have to fight Luke as Rey and defeat him. <laughs> oh no, I want Abby to lose though. Exactly, it's the same <laughs> shit. And I was just like, why? Oh no. Um, yeah, uh... So, story mode is mostly padding. Um, now if I... Wow, that was easy. That took like... Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's all really, really, really easy. And 
we could go over that quickly soon as well, but I just want to go over quickly. A lot of people were annoyed at me, because they were like, why are you not putting on mumble mode? Why are you leaving the voice acting on? So my logic for this is they put a lot of work in, theoretically, for the voice acting, and they've made it a conscious choice to make it default. This is how the game runs. I wanted to experience it as they've intended. And the other reason that I guess I just didn't articulate very well, that mumble mode... The, the, the cutscenes are created with dialogue, and as far as I know, they play the same cutscene subtitles, it, except instead of hearing, you know, I don't know what to do, you'll hear, mumble, mumble, mumble. Yeah. It's like, so okay, it's... Um, I could put on my mumble, but I don't see why I would. Instead, I'll try and appreciate what uh, they, they're going they for. To do, yeah. Because I don't okay. want to outright say... Yeah, if, they aren't built, if they aren't built from the ground up with mumble mode in mind, then you just feel like you're... The, like you're missing stuff because they should be saying actual words. They're not. Yeah, and, and it's like, what what did they do with this new system compared to the old? And um, I would argue, like seventy five to eighty percent of the dialogue is unchanged from the movie in these cutscenes, and so a lot of it isn't jokes. It's just, uh, you know, Anakin, we we need to take care of the senator, but I want to find her killer, Anakin. We will do as we've been instructed. Mission. Take a Padme to her apartment. Like, okay. That's, yeah, that, that was all logistically like necessary, I suppose, to justify the mission, but... Um, a little element that, uh, that Jay talked about in new LEGO video create, uh, about charm. This game yeah. feels much more rigid, and the dialogue does not help, because it's mainly just a recreation with blended cutscenes, there's very few jokes, and even fewer jokes are made with the dialogue. The dialogue is just mostly the stuff you've heard before, and oftentimes delivered worse. Like, a lot of people in stream were just like, Jesus Christ, like, that sounded so much worse than the movie version, even for the sequels, because I think that the most heinous, which I know Jay and Rags would have heard it, I don't, I don't know if Ringy has, but, um, Qui-Gon Jinn's voice actor. Um, the rest Awful. of them... You get a, a range of like, oh, I can hear you're impersonating the voice, but it's not very good. And then some of them, you're like, okay, that's pretty close. The Obi Wan one, yeah, yeah it's pretty good. Ones. Jar Jar one was yeah, fine with fine. me. And, and so you, yeah. you get like the the Misa Jar Jar, you know that sort of shit. And then Obi Wan is like, hello there, yeah. like like, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, this is all good enough for me. Obi Wan, uh, sorry, Qui Gon, like, oh, we they must hit you go right, down right out of the gate. The Gun right out of the gate, they hit you with the bad one. Lando I've heard that here. voice in commercials before. I don't know. I can't remember for what, but I have heard his voice in commercials before. Apparently, uh, the guy who's voicing him is like a big Clone Wars voice actor, and I think they kind of went with like a lot of Clone Wars actors for this. That's what I'm understanding. A lot of people are telling me that. They, they brought them in to do this all. Um, and I'm starting to wonder, it's like, just apply the sort of restriction crunch shit to all of this. They probably brought them in because they're all reliable to do Star Wars voices and just threw the rules at them and were like, just do the lines, fucking record them, record the lines. They probably didn't even know the context for these lines. Um, and you, you might say like, well, how would they not? It's Star Wars. And it's like, I mean, the guy who's voicing Qui-Gon Jinn clearly had no fucking clue who Qui-Gon Jinn was. He doesn't even bother trying to impersonate any inflections from uh, Qui-Gon's dialogue at all, which is a choice you can make. Um... But uh, it's just this funny moment where I'm running through Gungan City, and I think, like, you know, Jar Jar's like, we, we still gotta go this away. And it's like, yep. And Obi-Wan is like, is there anything that doesn't excite you? And it's like, heh <laughs> And then Qui-Gon is like, come on then, this way. And I was like, who the f what the fuck? And I was like, who, who's, who's a part of my team that I do? And I was like, oh, it's Qui-Gon. Like, yeah, he's just, he's just sound a little weird. Um, so you have voice actors that are distracting. I don't know if any of you guys have heard Kylo's voice actor. Uh... Yes. Holy uh, shit. Oof. Where you have, oh yeah, that was funny. <laughs> where you'll have, um, you know, let the past, let the past die. It'll be, let the past die. <laughs> it's like, what? It's not, it what? sounds like you and your impression of him. <laughs> he's so nasally though, he's, he, they like try to make him like a nerd. Uh, he sounds okay with the, the, the filter, the mask filter, but when he's Yeah, the filter makes it, it better. Yeah. You must join me, Ray. You're like, oh, oh, this sounds this sounds real off. Um, yeah. So, in conclusion, 
uh, I don't know why they bothered. Um, they didn't really achieve much of anything. The mumbly cutscenes with uh, visual humor throughout all the older games, it's just, it's what everyone says. It's way more creative and way more interesting and way more charming. This... I'm gonna say, I did, I did find a lot of this funny, though. I don't know, I, I wasn't I, I have been finding much. a lot of... I think um, I... Particular examples okay. twice. Are you true? Um, I've been finding the the one that the, I guess it's just because the one I most recently played through, right? No, not because it's any particularly standout, but I, I I laughed when I was like approaching Anakin as Obi Wan, ready to kill him, and before he starts fighting you, he just does some like weird sexy dancing. Yeah, like the shoulders just like wiggling him. That was one yeah. thing I pointed out early in the stream. It was weird. I was gonna say like, that, what that was more doing? weird to what me. What is this? Yeah, I, like I this is it's funny. Well, do you think that it, it's um, the impression that I get is that they really throw everything at the wall with like every single cutscene and everything? Like they'll just throw everything that they can do that's like zany and wacky. So like if it's not all landing, it's like it's that, is, that, that is a lot of it. Didn't uh, the other one, the one that actually though the one that stuck out in my mind is um is with uh, Dooku. Um, I, I think you guys will probably think this one was funny. Was that's, when Dooku that's my was. my favorite um, death, by the way, if you can see on screen. <laughs> I just saw that. For really playing again, that was so epic. Just. Uh... Oh, I'll wait for this. <laughs> oh, I see it. Gubbins, Gubbins. Oh! Oh, there goes Obi Wan. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, carry on. So um, when it's it's in uh, Revenge of the Sith, when um, you remember in Revenge of the Sith, when Dooku does his little forward flip when he's going to fight Anakin and Obi Wan. Yes. Yes. It's, it, um, it just exudes Christopher, sorry, uh, Christopher Lee energy. Um, in this, they have it so that he um, instead of just flipping, he starts by doing like a pirouette on the banister on the balcony rail. Um, and then there's like a little drum roll, and then he does the flip, and then there's a little bit of applause, and he bows. And I'm like, that's funny. That's fine. That's, that's, fine. that's the kind I of stuff I'd like I... to see more so, I guess. Just um, adding well, a layer of I charm. found... Because it's riffing off the actual events of the film, rather than do, just doing something random and zany, right? It's... Hey, yeah. he does a flip here, let's, yeah, there's, let's there's make it so that from, it's like... As a person who knows the films as well as people who don't, I think. Yeah. Well, so I uh, I watched one of the cutscenes where it was um order sixty six. Like he says sixty seven, and they do a dance, and it's like oh wait no sixty six, and then they kill like the Jedi. It just feels like this weird tonal. Yeah. They have problems with we that have throughout this. We have jokes everywhere. We they, have yeah. to have. Jokes. I don't know if there's an instance in this entire jokes. game where they don't undercut with a joke, and you might be like, well yeah, but they're trying to be light hearted, and it's like I don't know, man. Some of this stuff like. It just comes across as it just clunks your game because you're like trying to portray someone being murdered and then they like go, and you're like, okay, I'm not sure how to feel as an audience member right now. Like, I, I don't, they know. Do jokes. Uh, don't they do jokes in the death scenes in the original? I don't know that. I'm trying they, to think um, of any. Well, so I don't know that they always ruin the t the, any tension that they were drawing from it. I thought that there were times where the characters in the original like felt pensive or, or, or sort of. Uh, reverent uh, uh, here and there. It might be um, that they, they ruin it all as well in that one, but I just don't remember that happening anywhere near as often. I'm remembering the one that stuck out in my mind right now is when you have um, Luke uh, just after Vader dies, he goes into the, um, the shuttlecraft to leave the Death Star and he closes the door and Vader is still on the door and he just like slides into the ship. Yeah, it, there's there's definitely going to be times where they did it, but I don't know. This this game, um, it felt like it was not nailing the balance very well. If if such a thing is possible, can I? Can I? I don't know if you could pull it up because I think this will be difficult for me to describe. At the beginning, the very beginning of episode two, before you even get to do the gameplay, you have Padme's ship coming into Coruscant. Can you can you pull that up, or is that going to be a bit of trouble? Well, so if. That's funnily enough the joke I was going to go with. Um, but there's a setup for that joke. Assuming you're talking about the same one as me. If you're not, um, I'll just do the setup anyway. Well, just if in we're case. Both, yeah, if we're both going to talk about it, I mean... Because the setup's in Phantom Menace, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. But basically, like, when you are trying to get peace with Boss Nass, and they do the, the thing from the movie where he's like, 
Boss Nass, we want to do blah 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 blah, and then she's like, I am actually Padme, the the, the real one, and then Kira Knightley's like, oh shit, okay, I guess we're revealing that now. In this, this game, a whole bunch of people start saying I am Padme. Um, almost like I am Spartacus type of situation. I'm trying to fucking find the cutscene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here it is. Um, and it ends with an old man, bearded man, saying, I am Padme. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, I, I was like amused just by this as a sort of just absurdist bit of weird things that happened. Um, does that inform what you're trying to reference at all, Rags? Oh. Mine's before that. Oh, well, you I'll see, do this I was gonna... quickly then, because I just did the setup, but you, I'll get yours ready as well. But basically, at the beginning of Attack of the Clones, when Padme arrives and his ship gets blowed up, um, it was the most I felt in this game. Uh, I, I wouldn't oh, want no. to say what the you reveal is. But yeah, so you got the emotion. explosion happens. Really, really sad. There are deaths, and Padme runs up to see the uh, the decoy, and it's the old dude. <laughs> that's, like, that's kind of funny. <laughs> he was the one who died for it on the opening, you know? Just just a nice little bit of continuity, okay? I felt bad for him. I didn't understand who he was or why he was in the game. I think it's just random. Uh, I, I, I don't know. That's part of what's funny to me, is I don't he understand it. Man is so different from a, a, a young, you know, lady, you know, I guess. They're just so Making so him bold different. and bearded. Type yeah, that's the almost. absurdity of it that makes it funny. But I didn't, I didn't even realize that he yet. was supposed to be the decoy. Like, yeah, yeah, I just didn't know who he was. Because it's yeah, the same. Not her. It's the scene in yeah. Attack of the Clones. It's like one to one, except instead of being an actual decoy, it's just this old dude who's like, ah. Anyway, what uh, what one were you talking about, Rex? So one that I would like to point as an example was it had me in the first half, and then they don't have a sense of comedic timing. And so it kind of ruined it. But we're talking the cutscene as the plane is a, or as the ship, Padme ship is about to enter the planet. Okay. That's where mine is. Yeah. Yeah. This here. So let this play so that people can kind of see it. And then you'll know what I'm referring to. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't want to skip any more forward in case I jump over it. Is it inside the ship? Yes. Okay. Well, so I'll just let it play. I'm sure. Ship come comes up. in. Right here. That. It's so nice and subtle. And then they keep thin this part, right? Then they keep going with it. I like the idea that the ship does that spin that it does. And then we cut inside and everyone's just sort of like a little off balance because it did that weird spin. And then they get back to business as normal, but they keep they keep it going where he covers his mouth and then the other guy gets a bucket and is like, oh, you were so close to a nice, subtle joke that I really appreciated. It's kind of interesting. Kept just, it going. I wonder if the nature there as well with it working is kind of like Jay was highlighting with the, uh, the pirouette. Um, that it's that spin is what happens in the movie. And so you, you play and then, off. Yeah, and, and then in the game, yeah, they're like, oh, we actually did spin and everyone's still catching their balance from that totally unnecessary, unnecessary spin, spin that we did for no reason. You know, I really, I really liked it. You know, I, I really like that kind of thing. You know, if it would just, if they would have just stuck to it instead of really kind of going too far with it. Um, but I think the other thing that just made me smile, it was the do it alarm clock. There was something that oh, was that just. That was, that was funny. just, this just, just was like, I, I just, I, I laughed. Oh, I didn't laugh. I, I think I smiled, um, which is the most this game has ever gotten out of me. Well, and, and yeah, it, so to make it clear, some people might be like, so it's not all bad then. And I'm like, no, 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 we're dealing with a shit ton of time. And the time that's spent oh, yeah. smirking is like 2%. It's ridiculous. I mean, yeah, speaking I, yeah, of, I've never um, laughed watching the I mean, stuff like, from Mahler. I'm not done yet, but it's still. Only, yeah, only smile twice. Um, if this is your, if this is your, um, the 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 thing you want from the game, go and watch a comedy, like for real. <laughs> or go watch Adventure Time or something. You'll, it'll be a way more fulfilling experience because it's, I, you know, I'd say tonally some of the jokes are pretty similar, but. Any, oh, Muller, I've been meaning to ask you by the way, since the title crawl was on screen, it reminded you, reminded me, even I'm the person who has to remember. Um, Yes. Can you skip the title crawls? I don't know. I never... Because I decided to just read them out. I don't think I tried to skip uh, them. Yeah, Jay Mahler's an entertainer. Yeah. 
But um, I don't know. He doesn't skip title no, crawls. He doesn't people, skip title crawls. People are saying no, aren't. Oh, great. <laughs> I think the way they originally did it was you couldn't skip it until you'd seen it once. Wasn't it how that did it? Or um, but having going back to the um, complete saga very recently, um, you can just skip them whenever you like. Ah. We'll see. They knew how to do it back then. They they didn't know how to do it. I gotta back get a drink now. Y'all keep talking. Um, so, difficulty, we should probably talk about that briefly, I guess, then, is it, or, or, or something, because a lot of this is going to be focused on around how easy everything is, but I would rather refocus the conversation to be, like, how, uh, straightforward and then non-existent everything is, actually. Um, cause you, someone in chat said as well, like, should I be buying this? Like, I need to know because it's my cousin's birthday. I was like, I think kids will still like this, right? Right? I mean, my biggest worry would be that kids would find it boring with just all the walking everywhere. Maybe they'll be entertained enough by the fact that they're in a Lego world? Potentially. It, that might I be don't, enough, I don't know. I don't really know. The, the, the problem, I suppose, well, the, the answer, I suppose, is that if you watched, and you could still watch my streams on the game, you should be able to sort of judge if this is the kind of thing that person may enjoy, I, I'd imagine. Um, I'm pretty damn unimpressed, and I wouldn't recommend anyone play this, really. I would be like, go play the, uh, the Complete Saga before this. This thing is good. Um, and from what I hear, there aren't really, like, bad LEGO games. Uh, this is, like, the first one that I'm seeing everybody, at least in my stream, were willing to say is unfinished, broken, buggy, and uh, empty. Uh, the mm. other ones seem to get... A, you know, at least a decent... Uh, I, funnily enough, a lot of people were saying the best ones are ones I haven't even played, so... Which ones would that be? Uh, a lot of people saying saying Lego The Clone Wars apparently is really, really, really good. I've heard good things about that. I'd be curious in trying it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I didn't play Lego Batman 2. I played 1. I like 1. But, uh... I heard that it's like um, the complete saga and Lego Star Wars 1 and 2, but more um, depth to the mechanics, which... I mean, yeah, that would be great. Is that... I, I want chat to confirm or deny that for me. Oh, yes. Lego City Undercover, apparently. Like, the, the actual oh, sort of Lego yeah. Lego game. Yeah. Yeah, that one's good as well. Um, which, actually, I don't know. It just feels about right now to sort of segue into talking about, at least for a little bit, the... Uh, got a summary here. This is from Thunder in the Discord. There was, there was an article, but I just don't think we're going to be able to get through the whole thing. So instead... We'll read a summary of the article to get a little bit of information here. But you got uh, untrusted engine, completely new. Execs refuse to use Unreal Engine for this game to avoid licensing costs. Must have been frustrating because they will use uh, Unreal Engine for future games from now on. Mismanagement. Changes in management happened. At least 40 people have left Traveler's Tale Studios since the start of 2021. Game directors didn't seem to have a clear vision on the game. Director couldn't seem to decide on what mechanics to go for. Would change their minds about the mechanics at times. Devs were told to strive for 85, reference to getting at least an 85 on Metacritic. With crunch, 80 to 100 by hour work weeks were not uncommon. They like to emphasize a lot on crunch that happened during development. I was more interested in the go-ons beside that. And that's not to say that crunch wasn't an issue here. Development sounded like a horrible experience at the time. Um, the engine stuff, though, is the really interesting part, because that means that they had to rebuild LEGO. And so... It would have been arduous enough to sort of get all the stuff you're familiar with from the previous LEGO games, let alone having mm -hmm. new stuff. And it looks as if, so like, this, this sounds pretty harsh uh, almost, but from what I've played of the game, I might go as far as saying it's like, you're almost halfway to completion. And you'd be like, what? And I'd be like, well, all of you, we're still missing a lot of features. A lot of the campaigns are pretty empty. What a miss. And... We're we're in we're in dire need of lots of stuff, um, and it seems like you know it seems like you've maybe got well I guess that's probably worth a while bringing up then what are the bugs, um, because maybe someone who hasn't got any clue what we're talking about what needs a bit of a, bit of a listing of some sort so uh, easy one to go over first is the game uh, crashes. In fact, um, I don't know how many times it's crashed for you Jay, but it's crashed for me like six oh, times. It crashed me once um, over the course of. Uh, about six hours. Really unfortunate. Um, the last crash made me give up. I didn't didn't want to play it anymore, especially if the game's not going to allow me to. Um, 
So, we got that. We've got, um, apparently a well-known bug that hopefully they're gonna fix. Which I should stop boot up now. Everyone's referencing it, so I feel like it's time. That speeder I level. I think I even know this one. Oof. Good old speeder level I referenced from, um... You guys remember that original trilogy, don't you? No. No? I do! I was gonna say, Rags does. Rags is cool. I do. Absolutely, um, I do. I'm very cool. Oh, fuck. I'm it, since it loaded up here, I'm gonna have to do this first, okay? Put a, put a pin in the speeders for a second. I arrive in, all right. in Bespin. I get with all of my people, we're escaping as Chewie, Lando, Leia, you know, and it's like, we get to the Falcon, and it's like, Chewie's gotta repair the Falcon. And you're like, oh, really? Alright then. And then it shows you this whole landscape of fucking barriers for doing chest high walls, covered shooting. It's, it's bad enough to do this shit at all, really, in this day and age. I'm so tired of it as a, as a thing that was ever relied upon. Um, but there are ways to I make it- I feel like it... a lot of games try to do this, and it is a very- I don't know what it is specifically that makes a final defense against an overwhelming force seem really tense and exciting. Um, but, yeah, oh, I, it's, no. it's a dang- you're playing a dangerous game. You're playing a dangerous game. Well, while we're talking about that, I'll just let this play so people can oh, appreciate no. the incredible gameplay. This, by the way, is the majority of the best bin levels time being sank into this portion. Um, and you can imagine oh. you, to yourselves right now in chat, you're thinking, how did they develop this? This is genius. So what you need to do is basically lock us all into a particular restricted area. As you can tell, by the way, I'm walking into invisible walls. I can't go any further than that. Um, oh. So it keeps pushing me back. So yeah. What you then do, once you've locked us in, is you put a spawn point behind the little corner there so we can't see them appearing, and then you have a little door open and close based on when they get close to it, and make them hostile to the player. And, um, yeah. With those simple tricks, you can create the best bin level. Wow, nice. Pretty mm. cool, I think. Um, I was, I there's was no, right. So there's no, like, chasing down hallways as... There's a little bit of that at the beginning of this level, but you get out here not... It doesn't take very long to get out here. And remember, this is all like a level that's designed for you to run around in in free play. And now it's like, we need a story mode. And it's like, uh, give them this corridor. And then lock them in this area so they can just do a bit of a horde mode thing. And then tell them they got a cutscene and they did it. The best bin level. You know, like... They didn't give a fuck. Or at least they didn't have the time to give a fuck. But, uh... Yes, you can be rewarded with such incredible... I can't tell if Maul is being sarcastic or not. You can't tell. You can't tell. <laughs> yes, he is being... Yes, look at the screen. What do you mean, Rags? I got a hundred... How long does this section go on for? Holy shit. Well, so this is me pausing to rant to the audience because I'm upset. <laughs> like that I'm having to do this. Um... <laughs> But yeah, I got a I got a combo score of 156 there because the game is so impressed with my ability to shoot stormtroopers, I guess. Um, but hey, it does change up. Look, he is Boba Fett. And then Leia says, "I really don't like that bounty hunter." And it respawns me all the way over here, so now I can't choke ball deck them. They have to, they can just pour out into the cover. That makes the gameplay so much better. But uh, yeah, you nice. just have to point and shoot a Boba. And he'll die eventually too. Bespin level bad. Okay. Bespin level very bad. Um. Anyway, it let's... seems so uninspired because in my Pathetic. head I'm already thinking of all the cool different things you could do. That's built into how the like the Bespin scene should be an escape mission because you know film, and it's and it's tense because you're trying to. You, it's not about fighting stormtroopers. It's about getting out. It's an escape level, and. Yeah. You're you have to you're you're constantly getting shot at from behind, and you have to turn corners, and they're coming and they're coming and coming for you, and that's where the excitement comes in is just trying to get away. But this even, just doesn't seem. Eh. I'd even take what they did in the original, you know, just a series of rooms with puzzles and enemies, and yep. then then you escape. Um, but here they did this, and it was a nightmare. Uh, so fast forwarding a little. Um, getting us over to Return of the Jedi. First of all, this just bolsters the whole thing about the fucking difference between replay and story mode. You do the Jabba's Palace thing, and all your characters get captured and put on the barge, and then this weird thing happens where the cutscene plays and Lando and R2-D2 are just outside Jabba's Palace while everyone else is on the barge. And I was like, wait, what? Wait a second. 
narratively, you guys were on there. What are you doing? And they're like, we gotta get on there. Is Max Rebo on there? That's what I want to know. I think he is. Um, oh, nice. So I, I was just like, what the fuck's going on? And this is the game's attempt to square away your ability to just jump into free play open world whenever you want between levels. Because it, it didn't know how to do that. It was like, how do we have them all on the barge, but also able to just run around Tatooine? And it's like, well, I guess that there's got to be ways to do that, right? You could make it two characters that didn't go on the barge. You could even have it be two piggy gods or whatever, I guess. I don't know. Just, just whoever. They're it's called replay. Gamorreans. Show some respect. I, I, they I, fell off a cliff. After Boba. their performance in Book of Boba Fett, I don't think I can. Hey, they fell off a cliff for Boba. They did. They died so that Boba Fett could live so, or, or something. To show again how rushed this is, it's like, you go down this little, little hill, and you're like, okay, here, I guess? As Lando and R2, and then you just press A on the uh, little notification area, and onto the barge you go. It's like, what? What is happening? Like, why Why did you build it this way? And it's like, well, because, again, just, they run out of time, so shut up. Um, one of the freezes I had, by the way, was I was fighting Jabba. Um, I'm going to try and find it because it, it amused me. I, like, I literally take his health right down to, like, the, the victory the cutscene plays. Come on. How am I getting this unlucky? Oh, this will be it. Just, just watch the moment this happens. <laughs> oh, no, okay. And so I was like, wait, so do I pass? It's like, no, you have to do the whole fight again. This fight is bizarre. First of all, why am I fucking boss fighting Jabba the Hutt when the game is so limited on content as it yeah, is? Yeah. It's like, I'd understand yeah. throwing this in if your game was filled with stuff. But this is a bit weird. Yeah. Um, okay, I guess we're doing this. The way to beat Jabba is to beat up Salacious Crumb until he gets so fucking freaked out that he jumps on Jabba's face, and then Jabba's too distracted to defend himself so that you can hit Jabba. Very strange. I don't know why they decided on this. Um, also, my chain as Leia got like tangled in the ceiling at one point. It was uh, uh, quite funny. But I'm only explaining this to push us all the way over. To, oh god, I had to run around as Luke for ages all around the open world just to talk to Yoda, to talk to Obi-Wan, to talk to someone else to finally activate the next uh, mission. Oh, and I guess Wait, where even is that supposed to be? Where are you... This is amusing. This is I had to go to Endor space to go onto the capital ship to get my mission to do every. You know how it works in the film. They 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 have to lead the strike team to get to the the generator. And I'm like, I'm sorry, Admiral Akbar's capital ship is floating outside of the moon of Endor right now. Is that what you're telling me? With the fucking Death Star there, oh, yeah? yeah. Uh, I feel like you may have fucked that one up a little bit, but you couldn't be asked to fix it because you were like, eh, I don't know where they were in the movie, shut up, let's just, just shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And it's like, okay. Because, believe me, that doesn't fucking work. They went to Endor, they went to Endor on this ship. They didn't do it on the capital ship, because that would be pretty fucking stupid, wouldn't it? Um, but whatever, call it a nitpick, that's fine. So, you open up this level, Rags, you may be familiar with this site. Yes, I am familiar with this site. You, you really challenge. like this one a lot. I love this one. You played it a lot. Yeah, Your I can tell you really liked it. First challenge, defeat all the stormtroopers in the area. They provide you plenty of chest-high walls in order for you to uh, utilize them to Ignore. your needed yeah. ability. Everyone's favorite. And once you've cleared out the area, they had a couple of respawns. You get into the speeder section. Now, um, uh, I will simply play it. Fringy, give me your um, your your analyst desk analysis of, of this from a gameplay perspective. You're an expert okay. in the video game world, so just tell me. I'm going to play it and tell me what you think. It's not just, like, straight path the whole time, right? You've got to, like, turn? There are parts where they split it into two options and you can choose either left or right, and then you will continue going forward. Uh, Matt, you know, like, it, maybe if there were more obstacles, or if you needed yeah. to, like, turn left or right, like a hard left or right, or even... Yeah, a like a Gradius or, game. Or if you were That's faster, like if you were going much faster, then the, the few obstacles that there are might be pose a bigger challenge. Well, what if, if it were, like, you remember the, the you you bike section hit. from All in a row. Quadrant? Oh, yeah, like in the original, you mean? Yeah, like maybe a series of little flap sort of things on the floor that you have to hit all in a row. 
to unlock. Yeah, that was a great cat. mechanic. That could be a that thing. That was a you really could do good that. mechanic. But, I mean, like, I guess I'm not sure what would what we're doing here. Like, if it was like, um, man, I'm gonna put it on times someone... two speed now, so you can continue. Well, there was to... a corner there. Yeah. Well, so um, I would like to make. The audience aware as well. Can you see the little tutorial on controls at the below my character? Can you see that? Ah, yes. You move and yeah. shoot. Uh, Those so are your that is a lie, as, and I'm sure many of you pointed it out immediately. You're like, "That's good. There's got to <laughs> be." There's only two buttons, Waller. That's ridiculous. There's obviously more controls than that. Well, it is a lie. Yes, it is not as much as they're saying it is. You can't move the L stick wherever you want. Or it's simply backward. left yeah, and left right, right, and that is it. Because. Uh, if you could go at different speeds, that might be interesting for challenges, or maybe you want to get behind enemies to shoot them from behind, or you want to yeah. speed up. You, like, like in like the original the version of the level. Where Leia, yeah, where Leia specifically slows her speeder bike so she can get behind. Yeah. Or where the, the troopers do it too. They're like, oh shit, and so they pull back so Which that is... they can shoot in front of you. Well, that is implemented there's a, there's in the original version game. of this. Yeah, a great wow. game I know of called Lego Star Wars 2 or <laughs> Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, where that's exactly how it works. Oh um, my goodness. This game has an 83 on Metacritic. Well, so, it um, it's time control. to be a little harsh here. Um, we're stripping this down. Remove all of the aesthetics. What are we dealing with here? It is hold down one button, and then maybe hit left, right to avoid the bigger colors that come at you on screen, but you don't have to. You don't really have to do that. You you can. You don't really well, have no, to. Well, no, because if you, if you die, you will just respawn, like, right where you are, right? And you can just Pretty continue. Much. Yeah. Um, just like, what, it is what a, it seems like a very stakeless game. Oh, well, yeah. For yeah. Vegans. Um, now, uh, Fringy, you may be curious here. This is not going to be curious for me and Rax. We're fully aware of it. I don't know if Jay will be. Jay, I probably told you about this, but um, going on yeah. for a while, isn't it? Yeah, this is going on for quite a while. How big is this forest? How big is this planet? Enormous. I mean, you should be out of the forest the Forest by now. moon, okay? It's just forest. Oh it's God. all forest. Um, yeah, it was like you got to kill it's one the more. Star Wars planet convention, yes. You got to kill one more scout trooper. And I was like, so where is he? And then I see, I see the sentiment in chat as I was playing. And I was like, what is this? And some people say it's bugs, bugs, bugs. And it's like, oh, come on. What is it actually? And some people are like, before? oh, this is a known bug. This level sometimes just doesn't work. This level sometimes there's doesn't a problem. Work. There's a problem with the the generation of the the map ahead, where it just that, like loops it. I guess. Well, so the big problem is there's a scout trooper I need to kill, but I can't. Um, so he that's, won't spawn. I so think it's like, a matter oh, of him either not spawning or getting tangled somewhere, and he despawned, or he was killed and he didn't count. Or something like that, you know. It's just, like that's terrible so i just uh yeah that's that um that's terrible so, well you know a bug happens it happens every once in a while that a bug you know is it's you know you just restart and take care of it and it's all good i mean a bug where i have to restart the whole level because i can't you just so i reset uh, and go back base go back to end or do this wonderful part of the mission again where i have to just shoot stormtroopers endlessly until it finally fucking says time to go to the speeder and here I am okay. at the speeder. Yep. And uh, the all too familiar line of three out of four stormtroopers, it's like, oh no. I hope I hope uh -oh. there's another one that's gonna appear. Surely we'll be alright. Uh, yeah, oh, you there he is. Excellent. Says, uh, yeah, safe. So you got five. Oh, zero out of five. Okay. We gotta just get these next five. It'll oh, be fine. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come uh, on. Yes, this this spawned a lot. Uh, basically, because there's no reason not to hold down the gunner. Like, just shoot everything. You keep getting studs. So, people started saying pew a lot um, because that's all they heard. Because I didn't have much for commentary, as you can imagine. I was oh, running yeah, low yeah. on uh, pew. Yeah, it's enthralling we were having fun in chat. Yeah. Pew pew pew. Yeah. Pew. Uh, By the way, have we talked about how bizarre it is that it just lets you run into trees? Well, it's weird, right? Because they look like obstacles, but then you realize when you destroy them, you get studs, and then you can just do, you can do extra damage by running into them. And so you may take a hit, like you'll lose a bit of health, but ultimately, like, it's worth it. Seems like trade. Yeah, yeah that's, when... that's how it came across to me. So I was like, I guess I'll just hit them. Even if I die, like, whatever, I'll respawn. So. What well, am yeah, I supposed so the to do? The death penalty die? is the death penalty is losing studs. So does it give you more studs for hitting them I, than it does for dying on them? I asked this question. I didn't test it, but I'm assuming they've covered that because that would be pretty exploitative. Uh, 
Body is um, fucking for we got away with. Why would you assume that they covered something? I don't know, Jay. I have faith in the humans. I believe. They didn't cover press the button to make the thing <laughs> pressing the button makes happen happen. Don't be so mean. Well they've been very not, nice. Well, you know, you. I it's it's not like I don't imagine it's the fault of the developers. Like they seem to have no time to make this, um, compared to the amount of time it actually takes. Yeah, I noticed this in chat while I was getting a drink. Did you guys talk about this thing while I was doing that? Yeah, the crunch. Yeah, just and the, the, we'll, we'll go back problem. to that yeah. here and there because I, I think okay, that's probably going to be the last thing we talk either. about anyway, right? Like the the huh. conclusion. Um, but you may have noticed, like this is at times two speed. It's already taken way too long. Yeah. Uh, so what's happening here? So like, what are you meant to be doing? Seems that it's bugged again. Right, like, because it says navigate the forest, but it has, like, the four. Yep. It, you gotta get four more people, but there's nobody, so. How many attempts right, did it take you, Molo? It was three. Uh, I got lucky, That's but... Too, too, too many. At least it was a fun <laughs> section, so you enjoyed it. Yeah, thank the goodness this was the level I was repeating, you know? Yeah. If it was gonna be any one of them. This wonderful gameplay, um, and yeah, yeah you, maybe you could have chased the porg three times. I would have. I that, that was that was shorter. That, that was fun. shorter. Yeah, yeah, I was about to think. Jeez. The porg is shorter. Uh, and and you know, people in chat were like, uh, "It's a known issue. All you have to do is turn aim assist on, and you will be able to uh, pass the level." <laughs> no, <laughs> this is real. Uh, and yeah, apparently this, in, is, this in, is just a common bug that's been shared on different forums. So like. Surely they knew about this, right? If it's so common that it's just a well-known well, one that people... Are it makes you wonder, right? You well, got a worrying quickly, feeling quickly. where you're like, so did you guys did play you the know? campaign or did you piece it together and then release it? Like, right. no pun intended. Because, well, I wonder, I wonder if they just played it with aim assist on. <laughs> or alternatively. Are, are you saying, wait, are you implying that... Well, like, well, what? alternatively, it would be. Um, aim assist is the default setting, by the way. Um, yeah. When that's that's another oh. thing. When I um when I popped up when the game um, when I started the game for the first time, it's like, would you like to look at the accessibility features? And I was like, oh, I don't need any of those, so I skipped it, and it turns them all no, on by I'm default. Well, so I guess the other alternative, which hopefully isn't the case, but is possible, is they knew about it, but they had a deadline. Oh well, yeah, they, they would so hopefully they fix it, it as soon as they can, and then fix it, yeah, as quickly as possible. So um, that's always a possibility. Like, I I do I do want to question. So in, in terms of a a game like especially like this that's designed for like all ages of kids, right? It makes sense for there to be those accessibility features like auto aim and auto block and stuff, right? Huh? Mm -hmm. How do we feel about the fact that it asks you, it prompts you, would you like uh, to look at the accessibility features menu? Um, I assumed that I wouldn't want them because I don't need any stuff like that. So I said no, I'm I'm good, and then wow, it turns them all on by gay. default. Not fantastic. I suppose that's on you to realize their odds so that you could then. T I had no like, well, idea. I didn't know, I didn't that, know uh, what they were, though. Like, I just didn't look at the menu. I didn't know what kind of. I assumed that maybe with the accessibility features on, it would be even easier to. Apparently, auto deflect was like, that's an accessibility feature. I had no idea that's something I could turn off. I, I, yeah, I neither did I. It's too late now. It's also now, not but... listed in. Um, I've also looked in the menu. I, I couldn't see it listed. Uh, apparently, it's, it's tied to the auto aim. Oh. For this, uh, um, I thought this bug was because yeah, bottom line. So I just want it known that this was a level they decided to make where it was that shallow, and they did not decide to make destroying the second Death Star a level. I just I don't. This is way too mechanically shallow to be like anything. Well, this thing I you guys. Oh, you know, this, this is like a good alpha version of the game. I was gonna say no, I, it's. No, I, we're not. Mm. We're not anywhere near completion, but we can work with this. This is the base. You can absolutely work with it, but I mean, in its current state, it's like there's nothing there. It's, it's not really anything. Um. You just move left and right and shoot things. Oh god, that was making me motion sick. There, the spinning. There's lots of smaller. Jay is allergic to neat tricks. I am, it's true. Uh, apparently that dialogue, you know, thing I was talking about with what Qui-Gon said, that Anakin said, someone said it's definitely prompted by death, and it's supposed to be referencing Anakin saying Jedis can't die. That's what Qui-Gon's doing. But again, that still doesn't work, because he hasn't met Anakin. Um, 
which means that they just have sort of flavor dialogue play just whenever. And you might be like, oh god, you're really picking on that? And it'd be like, that would have been nice, wouldn't it? It would have been nice if they restricted certain pieces of dialogue to match the timeline, but never mind. Yeah, di yeah, you have well, you have set dialogue that will play in certain sections. I mean, another Pretty thing that simple, um, yeah. so there's a as soon as you this just stuck out to me as soon as you uh, get off the ship as Padme at the beginning of Attack of the Clones, there's a clone trooper NPC standing there ready to give you a quest, and I'm like, you shouldn't exist yet. Yeah, it's just oh, like, that is weird. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a reason he's not there in the Phantom Menace, but like, they just sort of—I mean, they must have—they must have made a decision to not have him spawn until a certain point through the campaign. But they got Maybe it too early. Maybe they just don't know. I mean, they had to. Have, like, they, they, I mean, but they ripped all of that dialogue and put it in, into the game. Mm, yeah, the people they, who made Halo didn't play Halo. The people who are making Last of Us—they probably don't give a shit. All about of the Last dialogue you know describes the the clone troopers being made and brought to the Republic is in the game. Yeah. Oh, you. It just, so you can't, you can't even square it off with maybe in the game. It's different. Um, it's just funny because, like, they had different eras to make the hub world for. The Coruscant in Phantom Menace can't coexist with the Coruscant in, you know, Return of the Revenge of the Sith. Like, they're, they're two very different Coruscants. So it's like, how are you doing this? And you're like, well, just shut up. Go from A to B. It'll look like Coruscant, okay? Like, I think when I was playing um, Revenge of the Sith and Order 66 was happening, like, during it, you just sort of hop out for a moment as Obi-Wan and someone else, I think it was that bodyguard guy, and it's a bright day, and you just chill and you walk into the taxi, and you're just like, this is as Order 66 is happening, as it was that nightfall and all the troopers are going around the city to fucking go into, the, like, the Jedi Temple gunning. It's just like, the atmosphere is just gone. It's just like, yay, let's go to the next place, everyone. It's like, okay. Order 66! <laughs> and, you, yeah, it's more than just um, a complaint about tone. There's just not any effort to uh, have the world around you match, because the story Oh, missions... they do one thing. They put, they put clone troopers trying to shoot Obi-Wan um, in yes, the street. Yes, they do spawn random clone troopers to shoot at you in the open world, that is true. Well, what I'm wondering, does Coruscant change if you're playing during the, um, if you go to Coruscant while you're playing the original trilogy or sequel trilogy era? Are there like stormtroopers around, I guess? To be honest with you, Jay, I'm not going to find out, because I am not playing any more yeah. of this game. Um, I mean, also, I've just, I'm probably going to like cycle around these sort of streams just to see if I can, anything else I can talk about, but you're on Kashyyyk during the war, and you got a mission to help random Wookiees, right? Some of them are uh, trapped by being held at gunpoint by droids or so, some... Because this is when, you know, this the droid war, not when Order 66 happened. And one of them is, like, there's a guy hiding behind, like, a wall, and you got two ships, a sort of... Uh, or, I can't remember what they're called, those droids. There were a lot of problems with this segment, and I'm wondering which of them that you're going to bring up. So I get onto the thing, and I kill them, and I guess I can't appreciate this as well without um, sound. Um, but I destroy these guys, and then I'm like, wait, oh, these ones aren't real. Whoops. Yeah. And then I'm like, man, it's gotten quiet. I was like, is the war over? <laughs> Did we win? <laughs> like, I was just like, you won. Well, like, yeah, there, there are no, there are like no NPC troops around. It's nothing. It's, 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 it's I even believe the original it's game. I believe it's broken. The original game has um, just a beach section that you walk through, and it's constantly spawning clones and droids. Yes, you're right. It is because like that's neat. not actually that hard of a thing to implement. Um, this is an active war zone in which you must rescue the Wookiees from the incoming droid attacks, and it's just like the droids aren't here. And you're like, oh, okay. So we can go home. Well, there's random droids here and there because I don't even want to talk about the AI for like guiding these fuckers. It's it's super awkward. So you're just like, well, uh, oh, cutscene, next thing, like, ooh. Um, another good example of this was when I fought General Gravus. Um, and how am I gonna find this? When does that happen? But before the Kashyyyk battle? Yeah, you should know. You're really smart. Um, oh, there it, it is. is. So, um... The thing that struck me so weird about the Grievous battle was how long it was as a level compared to like anything I'd played up to that point. 
Like the boss fights are usually yeah, I remember like, well, I, well, I mean, it's the like same boss fight four surprised. times in a row. Basically, yeah. They they made this one really long, and it's just like, okay, that's fine. And like you know, yeah, there's, you... there's not there's not more content though. It's just you fight Grievous four times, uh, and yeah. it's the same fight every single time. So can you see what's happening in the background here, guys? What what is going on back there? That it's the war between oh. the clones and the droids. Can you see it? Oh, there are no droids. Oh, yeah. Droids didn't spawn again. Let me rewind it so you can see a better view. But um, yeah, I think oh, there's, no. a, there's bugs in this game. I mentioned it in the tweet I put out. It's like, uh, why is the droid army not spawning? <laughs> like, why do they keep fucking it up? Um, super awkward. Yeah, I guess I was trying to fight Grievous and I was just distracted by this fucking moonwalking in the background. I was like, what are you doing? And they're all awkwardly jittering around and shooting at nothing. And I was just like. I think they had a plan to have droids and clones fight each other here, but uh, it didn't work. I'm gonna have to go back and look at my footage to see if there are any droids, or if I just didn't notice this. I don't think because I remember it being either. like severely you can keep underpopulated. The uh, the clone ships flying around, but you can't see any droid ships. It's kind of like that. The Grievous fight is the same thing over and over, considering that he would probably have way different moves based on the amount of limbs he has left. And he goes to different fucking places in the movie, and you have a vehicle portion. Yeah, the, there's no, there's no point where you're on the dinosaur and you chase him. Like, there's no chase sequence. No, you just kill him here. Yeah, I was baffled. Um, uh, th this was the point where I was like, this game might, might be broken. Uh. And I can't believe I'm saying that about fucking Lego, man. I just can't believe it. Well, here's the thing, right? It's the original version of the Grievous fight. Uh, not that varied. Um, it's pretty similar in that you fight Grievous on a platform, and then he, like, runs away to do a thing, and then you have to solve some puzzles to get to him, and then you go back to the platform and fight him again. One of the fucking shortest levels in the game. He has, like, ten hearts of health, and you have to hit him ten times to beat him in total. It's... It's not... But this, this you have to hit him what? Like, oh, I mean, God, he has four health bars and they're all pretty big. Probably like 200 times, a rough guess. Hmm. The one in chat just reminded me, by the way, uh, of when I should have known what I was in for. Um, the opening level with Qui-Gon and good old Obi-Wan. Uh, this, was, this was what set me on understanding what I was in for. I searched everything in this opening ship and I found nothing except studs, and I thought that was really strange. I was like, there's so many other rooms, pathways, and corridors, and everything. It's like, why, why is there nothing to collect? Well, they're and not filled with things. And yeah. yeah, there's no locks, there's no scanners, there's no secret pathways. I was just like, that's very unusual. And someone in my chat said, this isn't a level, and I, I sort of like brushed it off in my head, like, I don't know what they're saying. Yeah, like this isn't a level, but you know, in, that sort of thing. In retrospect, I now realize like. Oh, what they meant is that this is, like, literally not a, a level, it's just thing. some kind of holding sort of level in terms of walk through it to, to make sure we match the movie, but at the same time, yeah. not do anything, because it's not really... Well, you fight level. you fight a few droids in here, that's... that's. A, I mean, this would be the, the one that, like, if this was the only one like this in the game, I'd be much more forgiving to it, because I'd be like, oh, it's a tutorial space tutorial. where they're just... Yeah, um, yeah. Just an empty room with some enemies in it, and you walk from one side to the other, and you engage yeah, with some you, of the mechanics you, for the first time. Yeah. This is your um, character. You can move around, jump and everything, and maybe... And it teaches you how to break through doors up. and stuff. Exactly. And, and you have the option of it being super straightforward, so in your second playthroughs, you can just, like, bypass it. Or, if it's your first time, you have all the time that you want to sort of him haul around and check things out. Yeah. So that both, it works both times, both the first time and on subsequent playthroughs. Basic anyway. game design by someone who's never designed a game. I've just fucking played them. So you, I know you, what I like, people. Get close to the end of this mission. Like, hey. neato. Uh, once you, these doors, by the way, you only have to do a little cube uh, square most of the time to actually break through them. Um, I thought it would be yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, it's real funny as soon as I realized that. I, I thought what they were going to do was make it so that whatever you cut is the hole you have to use, but no, they just break the whole thing apart no matter what you cut. Anyway, this is the end. You're supposed to just jump into the ship and get out. And I was like, okay, this is kind of interesting. And I was like, I wonder if there's a secret, right? Like, could be. Um, and then I noticed something, as you guys might have already as well. So, what's going on? Wait, they're all shooting the ceiling. 
Huh. What are they, why are they doing that? Is there a, is there an enemy that spawned up above the roof that why? What are what the fuck are they doing? Why would they do that? That's really funny. That is bizarre, but it's funny. But <laughs> well, that um, is weird. I'll tell you a bug that I experienced playing this game is that I halfway through, um, and you'll you'll be able to see this in my playthrough when I upload it. Um, I'm uploading one of the one of the films every week on my second channel, uh, and when I fight. Um, I'm on an Anakin, Anakin Obi Wan fight. Just about halfway through, uh, C3PO flies across the screen. Just in the foreground, I don't know what caused it. He just appears in and then flies away, and I have no idea why it happened. Nice. Funny though. Um, what else I, we got, Jay? <laughs> um, I mean, we've not talked about free play really, have we? That's the part that everyone says is good. Um, you wanna? What have you got for that? I mean, you walk the, the the areas are big and they've got lots of challenges in them. A couple of which in each area will be neat and like have some fun stuff going on, right? It's not it's not devoid of any content, but at the same time, um, I think having played through every challenge on Camino, um, at least that I have access to without like going off world, right? Um, because some of them are like go to Yavin Four and I don't have Yavin Four yet. But um, in terms of every challenge that I have access to on Camino, I'd say that like two of them were cool, maybe three. Um, the rest are just like walk over here, find a thing, like go to a person, talk to them, and you know we've already had a, a, maybe enough of that content. You know, maybe it's time to do something other than go to a place and talk to a person, watch a thing happen. Hmm. What, or you um, can do it some more. You you played a bit of free play before story, right? No, I played. Um, I played some free play after I think I finished uh, Attack of the Clones. I did some free play to see how it was, and um, the first I got really lucky with the first few challenges I found. They were like all the good ones on Camino. There's like this. Um, I was about to call it the Kaplunk Machine. What's that actually called? Oh, um, Uncarplot. I think it's closer to Pachinko, but I'm not actually sure what the machine is. Uh, I know, like uh, this is, like machine where you have to make a ball go into a hole, and there's like these pegs. Oh, and stuff. ski ball! Oh, oh, you're talking well, about plinketo. It was not ski ball. Plinketo. plinketo. I don't know what it's actually called. If there's the name, but, uh, but yes, Mr. Plinket. Um. Anyway, that that game was like it was neat, right? Wow. And it, it would did, only took did, like nice. Well, it only took like 30 seconds, but I was like, hey, if this whole area is full of little challenges like that, that's going to be really fun. And I see the appeal of this game now. I see like where the actual point of the game is. It sucks about story mode, but you know, oh, well, right. We've got all this now. And the second challenge I played was like this little platforming game. And, you know, it's like good movement controls and like clear platforms that you have to jump to that are reasonably spaced apart. It's like, oh, that's cool. You know, another cool little thing that you have to do. Um... And it made, yeah, it made sense to me. And I think the third challenge I played is this one where you have to direct clones through a little maze by, by opening and closing different doors. And it was like, yeah, clearly like a lot of effort was put into making it. It's not like the most mechanically challenging things in the world. But again, it only took like 40 seconds. It was just a like just quick little thing where you've got an area that's set up just for this challenge. And then you guide the clone through the maze. It's like, yeah, that's really neat. Um, and then there's this other one where you use the force um, and you have to use the force to guide objects around um, and it's a time trial and you have to guide you have to, it's on screen right now actually um, it's a little time trial where you have to gu um, guide yeah, objects using the force uh, and it, it was neat and fun and then I think I picked out just by coincidence the f only four like actually the only four challenges in the entire area that have anything to them the rest are walk to this place, find this person, follow the quest markers until you get to this person and it will take you all around the whole place. Or, um, oh, use your turrets to shoot some birds and there's like no fail condition at all. You just sit on a turret and aim at them until they die. Or like, uh, well, what are some other ones on Camino? Um, well, the one I'm showing right now, I guess, where you have to use the force to move it through a little snaky pattern there, and get a key, uh, that, and then you have that's to... One of the, that's one of the mechanically interesting ones, I thought. 
I mean, well, in this one, is we have to time the jumps correctly to not get zapped by electrics. Like yeah. That's something. That's the, that's the one I mentioned is one of the four good ones. Wiping this across the ground to... This was a bit awkward, actually. I'm not entirely sure if this is what I was supposed to do. I'm guessing it was. Oh, you have to you have to drop it on each one of them, I think. Oh, that works, though. Well, I mean, I only had like okay, three seconds not. left, so I'm not sure if that was the way I'm supposed to. I, I did it by picking. I did it by picking up each one and then dropping it. Hmm, okay. Well, um, yeah. Uh, these puzzles sort of exist, and they're fine. Um. Yeah, uh, it's kind of hard well, to sort like, of. I'm not concerned with these, right? These are these are fine as far as I'm concerned. It's just that they're, they're like ten percent of the content and free play, if that. Well, because a lot of the the stuff is you you know you need to talk to this guy, and this guy's like, I have a thing. Can you get it to this guy? And then you have to go look around until it goes. Oh, the guy's in the area, and you look around, talk to a few people, and it's like, I am the guy, and you're like, Yay! And you pass something like, Thank you. And you're like, Woohoo! Someone else would be like. Oh no, did you see over there? There's these people doing this thing, and you go over there, and there's a bunch of chest high walls and people with guns, and you're like, eh. I don't, I don't, I don't see any of those ones. I got one. But I did play the, um, um I, well, is that the one where you have to go to Yavin 4? Because, um, I didn't have Yavin 4 unlocked yet. No, the Yavin 4 one's like, where they, there's like, I'm exper I want to experiment on a weird monkey creature thing, and it's like, okay. Yeah, the monkey creatures are the ones that pop up the knee high walls, I thought, or the, the chest high walls, knee high walls. No, so you get the monkey creature from Yamafo, and then that means that Yamasu has it, and then he creates hybrid clones from that monkey. And yeah, the, so I didn't things. have that challenge, because you need to oh, play right. the Yavin 4 one to get the... Uh... Right, well... But, yeah. What I did play was all of the other ones where you just have to wander around and find stuff. And I mean, did you play the Yarl Puff one? I love that his name is Yarl Puff. I don't think yeah, I did. Yeah, I was going to um, say, hearing you say it's funny. So, um, that one is um, a mission where you talk to um, Yarl Poof and um, uh, you find him and he's like, hey, people keep uh, insisting that I'm actually someone else, a, um, a Kaminoan called Rala D, I think is their name. And then uh, Yarl is like, can you please go to um, Coruscant to see, if, um, to see what's going on? So you walk to your ship, you fly to Coruscant, you go to the Jedi Temple, all followed by all, all with quest markers, and then you walk into the temple, and then there's a Kamino in there called Rala D or whatever, and you're like, "Hey, what's up with this shit?" And he's like, "Oh, sorry, my bad." Uh, and then you fly back to Kamino to talk to Yarl Poof to be like, "I've solved the issue." Oh, that's nice. It's a solid, fun. That's. I'm glad they got that all squared away. Yeah. Say so. Um, yes, I'm happy as, for him, Jay. as has been mentioned in chat, I actually uh, gave up on doing free play when my game froze. Um, I tried to stick it out, lads, okay? I just got really bored. And then the game died. Why? I don't know, man. I, I, I think it was when I got to that cover shooting section again. I was like, I don't think I can do this. Oh yeah, it froze once before that too, when I traveled through to a different area. I'm, I'm really confused as to the amount of praise this, guy, this game is getting. It's like, are you guys not bored? Like, I don't understand. Yeah, that does seem like a question to ask. Like, aren't you aren't bored then? Yeah, doing, so like, this sure, is exciting to you. Surely pretty, pretty graphics and LEGO nostalgia can only take you to like, through the first like, 24 hours of gameplay. I don't understand how people are carried through this whole game, uh, especially when they're saying, yeah, you know, uh, Galaxy Free Play is the best part. And it's like, you have to finish the entire story mode to get to that. It's like, how, how are you getting that far? I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to finish the entire story mode, but like, um, you have to finish, I mean, you, you know, you, you unlock it by completing the story mode, right? So I assume that most players at least have played at least one film before getting to that. I just, I don't understand how people are still going. I I'm mostly motivated at, motivated to play it at the moment because I'm recording it, I'm uploading it, and I am probably going to critique it. Content brain. Yeah, I'm I'm playing it because of my content brain. I'm yeah, <laughs> it's meta is yeah. Um, if I. If I didn't have a YouTube channel and I had 
some other job, my brain would genuinely be annoyed that it took me five hours to realize that this game was the way it is because it means I can't refund it on Steam. That would be my... That would, that would be how I felt. Hmm, interesting. Um, is there anything else? There's probably other things we could talk about. Um, the game bugs out pretty funnily by here. Just, um, I saw this, this is funny. Like, progress to the next section on your horses. By the way, the fucking, uh, the, the First Order are given horses in this section too. Apparently, someone told me in chat, I didn't even notice, but uh, yeah, I'm just shooting and running as good old Finn here. And then, uh, I think we get to the next section where you're just supposed to shoot things until you can you do other things, but it just locks me in and you can't do anything. Um, it's a bit buggy. And what happens when you shoot him? Oh, let's have a look. What With your bow and arrow that you have in this space battle. Hey, she had one in the film, okay? Shut up. Yeah. I was the film yeah, I was super... making fun of. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that was the that was the gift I kept on giving right there. Wow. Hmm. Nice. Pew. This would be the section where you switch between people who are like, I'm dealing with these guys. You take out those snipers and then you have to swap to the different character that has the longer range weapon so that you could, you know, so that there's a meaningful reason to it. That's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. We're having a good time. We're out of our minds. Well, it's funny, you know what's extremely polished and clearly looks very finished in this game is the graphics. I wouldn't be surprised that a lot of it is... Because, <sighs> like, lighting and things like that, they just, they, they, they kind of, as far as I'm aware, they, they happen by themselves once you program the lighting and you have all of it down in the game. As you put things in the game, the lighting just it does what it does. Um, but yeah, I guess if I, I'd have to really pay attention and look and see how much of this is maybe recycled assets or recolored things like the cover and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it's a nice looking game. It does look nice. It does look nice. Gleams. Hmm. So, what are you uh, thinking, Mahler? Well, how much have you... Played, Jane? Uh, I've played a uh, the first three films and a significant amount of free play. Not a, well, a mid amount of free play. I played um, some of the missions on Coruscant and all the missions on Camino. I had access to. Well, I've done the story for the three trilogies, and uh, it was all pretty embarrassing and thin. Um, I, I I guess I could do free play, but I just don't know what the point would be really. Uh, I don't enjoy collecting in this game. Love of the craft. Oh. I don't know that the the game really benefited from being open world. I know that this isn't the first Lego open world game, but um, this one seems to be the least uh, refined, um, especially from what I've seen from people saying in chat. And then uh, yeah, we're just dealing with a level of lack of polish. That um, I think th th this game shouldn't have been released yet, um, but it had to. It was already delayed. They yeah. delayed a lot. Yeah. And so that's essentially what we've come to realize is that this must have been a nightmare production. Development team probably went through hell, and um, you can see that almost in playing the game. However, it's getting through the roof, sort of. Uh, Which means it's going to happen again. Yeah, it's not. Very well, might. It's unfortunate well, that not that this isn't being addressed and highlighted better. You know, like the it's, yeah, it, it seems like it's pretty evident uh, from playing it. But it seems like everyone's just like, there's a lot of sentiment of like, why the fuck are you being so critical of a Lego game? Shut up, it's Lego game. Like, oh. Yeah, it's Lego game. Oh, I thought you. Were, <laughs> they they 
I played 50 bucks. I paid 50 fucking bucks for this Lego game. That's why. I paid 50 yeah. bucks to, to go th to get six minutes of gameplay and 40 minutes of gameplay time. But also, like, all of the praise it's getting doesn't seem to align with... Like, you can't simultaneously say it's a kid's game, you shouldn't be criticizing it properly, while also, like, giving it reviews to the same standard as all other games, and, like, giving it high praise. Yes. Sorry. It's on the same pedestal as like Godzilla movies where it's like, it's supposed to be bad, shut up. It's like, I don't think you actually believe that. Nah, I don't think so. Oh, DLC underscore title, I remember seeing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have, wait, one more, do you want to show that? Oh, uh, do you have like a clip of that? Uh, I thought I sent or you a picture, yeah, if you can find the picture. Shot. I mean, yeah, so that's the first thing I, I was confronted with when I opened this game um, was, I mean, first of all, an advert to buy DLC, not a great sign. Um, but then it said, like, hang on, let, I don't think I have it. Um, it's the beginning of my first episode um, where I will... Uh, yeah, I, I opened the game and it's like, click, uh, click here to buy, and then it just says DLC underscore title. Oh, great. They don't have time and uh, yeah, they don't have time to add that in the game. I wonder if the game is is finished. Wait, sorry. Um are we do you say you're going to look for the image? I I said I couldn't find it. Okay. I believe. Or maybe I just forgot to say that. <laughs> I had a I had a quick look where I thought it was and I couldn't see it. Is there anything else about the game the depressing? Um, talking about. I'm trying I mean, to think of like because a lot of people will not be happy with this coverage, but I don't know what else I could do to help out in that regard. You know. I I, I guess we could cover the core gameplay, like what it actually is like when you're playing. They improved the lightsaber boss fight combat or whatever. in casual combat, right? You agree with that? Yeah, I think that's an that's an improvement. Um, they removed Kylo and Rey's kiss. So that that's good. That's hilarious. This is how they portray him giving her life, by the way. Ah. Uh. Seems to imply they could have been both happy on half health bars, but oh well. <laughs> I do like that. Well, it's just like the movie, he disappears too fast for her to be able to do anything about it. Let me heal you, but no, I've disappeared. <laughs> oh no. Uh... So I have to go into the void now. The, the dark void that is Disney. Um, talk about the boss combat, yeah, and sure. All right. Yeah, you had more of a controversial take on this than I talked to you. Didn't like it, Ooh. but I, like I don't it. think I had the. I don't think I have the hang of it properly yet. Um, it's been instinctive. Well, here's the thing, right? Because you can just beat any of them by spamming lightsaber throw and then, um, like doing the quick time events, which is what I've been doing. Um, so I haven't really bothered to learn the proper mechanics because at no point has the game incentivized me to. I will make an effort to learn the proper mechanics at some point so I can actually like get a better grip on what they are. But I mean, at the same at this point, every boss fight for me is spam lightsaber throw, and then yeah, sometimes there are quick time events. What is your it's, take on them, one blow? I think I said to you that I was mostly okay with them until it got repeated ad nauseum. Um, and then I was like, actually, this isn't very good. Um, it's annoying when you've got uh, a true Jedi active and there's things to destroy in the room. And it's like, yeah, well, you got to navigate over there while the camera is locked onto a person who's in the center of the room or whatever. So it can be really awkward in that way. 
Oh, I hate the ca I hate that it locks the camera on you. I don't see any utility to actually doing that. Like it, it, it forces you to look in the direction of the boss. Um, why can't I just look where I want? Maybe that could be an arrow pointing at the boss, or maybe just I'm in a small room with the boss. I can find them. Like I don't need that. Do you have any suggestions for why that actually might be useful to have as a feature to lock onto the boss with your camera? Make it feel more Maybe intense. it's trying... I was just about to say that, yeah, the boss is always in view. You can't escape the fact that he's there. It's not letting you get him off your screen, which might, in their minds, add to the intensity of the fight. And I've been course... praising the camera, like how it lets you look around everywhere you want compared to the original games, except when there's a boss fight, and I don't... Just that, yeah. yeah. Sh shumbo. Shumbo. I thought when I was using the lightsaber stuff, that I was like, oh, combat's improved then, right? Like, we, we're getting all kinds of things, and this is just a microcosm. But I realized, like, in retrospect, they give you a decent tutorial on the lightsaber combat because it's something they completed mechanically. There's not much else in terms of mechanical tutorials in the game. Because uh, everything else is stuff you've either seen before or uh, a simpler or it's version. It's so simple. Yeah. Mm. Um, that's the only one where it's like, yeah, you can hit them with, you know, normal strike, but then you can hit your jump button, and now it will act as a hit up while you jump. You can hit the force button, which will use a force move on them during the attack, and you can combo these up in all different ways. So I was like, oh, that's really cool. That's about it for the updates slash, you know, positive changes of graphics. Hmm. Chat, how did you I mean, there's feel more, about there's this more game? There's ex more explorable open worlds, I'd say, as a positive change that you can, that there is more map to explore. It's not huge because there's not much more to do in it. Well, there's not much more. I don't think there is more to do in it than the, in the originals, but like, I guess it is positive that there's more area to explore. So so hard to grasp with anything for you guys, isn't it? It's like valuable. Well, look at chat. You got lame, floompy, yeah. pain, yeah. trash game. Game sucks. Throws popcorn at screen. Wait for a giant sale. Certainly not Elden Ring. Star Wars is worthless. The LDR, it's bad. Don't no like genuinely. I think this game wastes your time more than your money. Just don't buy it. Yeah, actually, I think you're right. Don't. I don't. I just don't. Just don't get the other ones. Any of the other ones, probably. Yeah, get the original Lego style. Oh, okay, well, get uh, the complete saga. Sorry, someone's at the door. Give me a second. Um, I guess I guess that does it. Does it? <laughs> I guess so. What are your hopes uh, for the next one? I don't the think I'm out. To play it. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, unless we see like, oh, we've made major revisions and we've given the developers all the time they need. Yeah, right. I'm not Turns playing the next one. New friends, it's roofers, but that's all right. What? What is? What was that? Uh, huh? Rags. What was that? Well, you I just, just like, came back and was just saying some like gibberish while we were talking about the game. No, no, it's fine. It's all good. Just some roof. Hey, no, he, well. the people who arrived at his home were not new friends. They were here to fix his roof or whatever. Oh yeah, I mean, to be fair, um, you know, Rags wanted to express that, but um, there is uh, when you left, the conversation carried on. So yeah. that means that when you come back, they speak and yeah. then you speak. It means I can't hear either of you. Oh, okay. You know, a dramatic character. I think we should fight on. for the right to speak. Yeah, just shout really loud. That'll, that'll make whoever it Whoever wins... No, no, I think we should have a cage match, and whoever wins gets to say their thing. I've already said it. Fuck. Oh, I can't remember what mine was. I think I might have said done. it. It's, it's fine. All wrapped up. I've, I've said every bit. All these delays now. So I guess we should go to topic three. Uh, yeah. I Lego game so. bad. Sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, 
What, it, what even is, is topic next three? Gonna topic, be good? topic three. Well, oh, is this going to be no, our? I, I hope it isn't going to be our next controversial take. I hope not. Hopefully, it not, shouldn't but... be. Well, you know what? I can break well, it up just with one. This is this. I didn't know where to put this exactly in our timeline of discussions, but it kind of relates to discussing video games on streams, right? But uh, any of you can take this. I don't know who would be funniest to read it, but it's it's a real great comment I saw after we'd recently finished the Elden Ring stream. Just give that a little little look and read, see. Hmm. All right. Let's see. This this appears to be a YouTube comment. Yes. Made by Inaki. Pertiera. Mm. The the dynamic of so this is about the Elden Ring thing, okay? Yes, yeah. The dynamic of this discussion was kind of broken by Theo's inclusion, and not because he didn't praise the game, but because everyone who liked the game seemed incapable of contesting Theo in any manner besides with either silence or a weak rebuttal without much substantiation. It seemed as if a good chunk of others were intimidated by <laughs> Theo's directness. I really like the concept that we're all like, Theo, uh, sorry, Rags, you've been replaced. You're not the scary one anymore. By Theo and Theo is now the college. scary one. Theo what if, will be the what one. If this person, what if Theo was just correct on a lot of things and people were just like, huh? So that's the, the flaw, I suppose, in their analysis. They don't realize how much um, myself, Metal, and Fortier agreed with Theo. Um, it was, it was a lot of time. I think I even said that at some points. Like, Theo would say a thing, and I'd be like, well, I don't have anything to add to that, and I don't have any criticism of it, so anyone else? And he'd just be like, not really. Um, Maybe like, like an obligation that Elden Ring needed to be defended against well, Theo's... You know, yes. Something? I think people have that perspective when they have certain topics covered that they want, like... You know, they'll say, like, you didn't have anyone on to defend, blah, 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 and then we'll be like... You ever say this about Batwoman? <laughs> like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, yeah, but we know Batwoman. Oh, you're bad. gonna it's like, oh. you're gonna get in trouble for comparing Batwoman to Elden Ring, one boy. Hey, I already said I loved Elden Ring. You can't you can't? Yeah, I love. Well, you I you said Batwoman. you love Batwoman. Batwoman. Yeah, I do though. <laughs> so. I do love Batwoman. I'm unapologetically. I, I love Batwoman. It's great. There's no show like it. I hope it lasts forever. Oh, no. oh there, there are a few shows like it. Uh, All the bad shows. The bad shows. Which I suppose will lead us nicely now, somehow that was a nice transition, into talking about um, Moon Knight. Oh, here we go. Moon Knight. Moon Wow, Knight. it but feels it like it's fresh in my head. Yeah. So, <sighs> um... It's a show that came out. It's from Marvel. It's about a guy yeah, who looks like is. a moon running around killing people. And we went from Star Wars. Wars to Moon Knight, both of which star Oscar Isaac. Yeah. Watched, That's exciting. The quick vision is we watched episode one and was like, that was neat. And we watched episode two and we were like, that was not neat. And then that we watched episode three and we were like, goodbye show. It this was is, nice knowing you. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Um, um, that doesn't mean we're not yeah, going to finish it. It just means that the show's... I have now. no faith that there'll be anything worthwhile about it now. Yes, so. I have no confidence whatsoever in this show. It is sad, but it has turned, unfortunately, into the very sadly familiar Marvel sludgy nonsense where stupid, idiot, dumb, asshole characters and a horrific plot that makes no sense all combine together to undercut any semblance of good music and good acting, and it's all just so painful. And we've been here before, and here we are once more. Uh, uh, here we are again. It's a little it's weird. It's such a pleasure. We're probably going to do a full episode to cover the show, um, which means it's like, how much are we going to talk about now? And it's like, well, probably just the a, a brief sort of summary for anybody who has no idea what it is, and then um, we'll just go over like broadly what what rose and fell um the story it, it just it just uh, at first covers a guy called Stephen in britain acted very well by oscar isaac living a normal life very well except for the fact that he's got weird things going on that we as the audience don't quite understand yet for example like he ties himself to a beam in his house when he goes to sleep and i don't and i don't even know if the show knows Hmm? So in the like the first episode, right? We can tell there's clearly something up with him. 
because of his routine. But I don't know if the show really even knows what he's supposed to have. Um, because when when you watch it, the way that I feel that he behaves to having other voices in his head and other stuff like that, it almost seems to be just like that he doesn't that he's not aware of it or that it's a surprise to him or that he's not used to having this happen ever. Like he takes the precautions for it, I think, because the show, the people who made the show want us to think that. But I don't think he's really like I think the show's confused as to what it's trying to tell us is actually what he thinks he has. My guess from having seen three episodes is that at this point he genuinely has no clue that anything is happening when he goes to sleep except maybe he does move. And so sleepwalking a bit. He yeah. puts this scenario up so he can tell if he slept walked in the night. And I think that that's just supposed to be our sort of pull into being like, that's strange. Anyway, moving on, you know, like, and then it'll come up later. He lives a very average life. Oh, and people are asking me, like, what do I think of his accent? It's like, it's the same take as as. It's, um, it is fine. It passes the test. It's just very generic. That's all. It just comes across as a very normal attempt to do in the British accent, um, which isn't really a problem. I don't want to be too critical if someone just... Uh, focusing on what is easier to understand so that he can focus on his acting as well as the maintaining that normal accent. He's, um, character is a bit of a pushover. Um, he tries to push back here and there, but he's mostly taken advantage of. And we only get this for like 10 minutes, and we, we were hoping we might have gotten even a whole episode. But, um, whole episode, he but then wakes up do that, yeah. in a distant land, and his jaw is like broken but he puts it back and then he starts getting chased and he's running through a town and bumps into the i don't think it's unfair to say it's just the villain of the whole season doing like a group get together where he's Coltman, yeah judging people based on whether or not they're, they're 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 good or bad so that they can be blessed or killed i guess um and like we see one guy and he's like you're a good man and he's like woohoo and then we see an old lady and he's like you're a bad man and it's because of things that you will do not because of things you've done um which is already enough to be like okay but it's so weird that he just like sort of stumbles on this and then they realize he's there which by the way was one of the things we because episode one has some stuff we like but um he it does he's among a crowd and there's suspicion that he might be there and so they i think he asks for everybody to kneel well, he says something in a different language, is it? And then everyone kneels except him, and he's like, oh, bugger. And it's like, hey, that's a good way to yeah, do it, actually. Funny. Well, I think. Um, and so he's got a scarab in his pocket, and, and this guy is like, give me it. And uh, he, in an attempt to actually give it to him, he keeps preventing himself from doing it. It's very bizarre to us, obviously. And then when they finally almost get it off him, uh, he, like, phases out and then phases back in to Can see I everyone around again? him is dead um and so this was like does that, ever, does that ever come back up again what now his body just like no yeah because i was about to say that could have really probably come in handy in a lot of other instances somebody taking control of his body but it just doesn't happen this seems to be a one-time thing oh if yeah i'm not remembering incorrectly yeah, I guess maybe we'll get more just... st oh, no, I don't know. maybe when the well, knife is at someone's neck he's he's pulling it back but it doesn't look like that's happening in a sense, like they're fighting, I don't know. Uh, but I think you're right, like it doesn't seem to come across more. It just anyway, seems like they forget about it. We having a bit of meta knowledge are like, oh, cool, this is like, uh, you know, the, the other personality sw swept in to save him because he was, he was about to lose the scarab and it's important, right? And then, he, and then he's back in control, but he's just like, what the fuck's happening? And, you know, action scene takes place where he keeps phasing through pieces of it every time he's in maximum danger and then phasing back to have, you know, he's a, a having won the fight sort of thing. Um, there's, there's like, a lot of plot armor um, and some conveniences here and there, but I was still pretty invested in this Steven guy. Trying to understand mm -hmm. all this, all, these wacky A lot adventures. of this is carried by our interest in Steven and Oscar Isaac's acting. Yeah, a lot of it. He, um, and he does wake up um, after several moments from that whole action scene back in his house and you're like, oh, everything is normal. Heads back into work, even though he notices his, his fish has a, a repaired fin compared to not before, right? Or something. Did they do anything with that? I don't remember. I'd have to rewatch it to know what the point of that was exactly. 
You also I legit don't think they do anything with that. I think it's another thing they seem to forget. He also had um, a date, uh, but he missed it by like three days or whatever, and he didn't realize until he was there, which was a bit tough to swallow. Like, you didn't know what day it was until he actually sat down on the chair to check his phone to see if he had like missed calls from it. I was just like, that's that's very weird. I saw people discussing this on the subreddit. Someone was like, I find it ridiculous that he didn't manage to find out what the day was even from looking at his phone. And then someone was like, some people don't have the day on the on their phone. It's just like that's a lie. Come on, like I'm not even going to appeal Everyone to that does. directly. I'll just be like, you can't you couldn't have like spent this long and not discovered what day it was from anywhere. It just seems super you unlikely. You see all the texts and you check them, and if you're interested in a girl and you're texting with her, you're just part of you're you're kind of you're checking to see if she and said she anything to you. Come yeah, on. she would have called and he would have checked. So just, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't. It's a really good moment for his acting. He he basically yeah. is coming to realize here his whole life is getting ruined by whatever the hell is happening with this uh, second personality. I think this is specifically where Fringy was like, he, like we're, we hope we get more time to learn who this guy is and they don't just jump into plot stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. so he's I, I a think really think good actor playing a character them. you really feel for. I think the problem was that the fact that we had that opening action scene, like that we had that at all, kind of got me a little nervous. Um, that we weren't going to be going as slow as I would have liked. Um, felt like we were we were already moving quite quickly. Yeah. He starts seeing the spooky yellow man figure, and he's hearing voices in mirrors and stuff. And it's 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 a guy called Mark. Runs yeah. and runs and runs. I think yeah you. Meets right up with the 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 Skeller man, and then he ports over to uh, a bus, and he's just like, "What the fuck?" Then he looks outside the bus, and the fucking the Skeller man is right there outside. And it's just like, <sighs> it's it's almost funny rather than stupid, I guess. Like, cause it was sorry, funny <laughs> rather than scary, but also, yeah. Yeah, he's just there. Hello. It's like, okay. I'm not super well realized either. Like, it's pretty bad CGI, um, which is a persistent problem in this show. Yeah, there's some, there's some <laughs> moments. A lot of wank shots and like bad compositing. Like, like when we were when uh, like the, when we were watching episode three and there was the guy he's looking over the cliff and there was someone down below. You yeah. don't have to show us that. Oh yeah, like I I get it. Bus, That's a very. Oh yeah, that's mm. right. Because he's following him. But like the work. Wouldn't even need to get off the bus then. Yeah, I figure, unless he just walked back, he got off on the next stop, and we needed Judge to show him being worthy. ominous. Um, yeah, he goes to work, and then Villaman shows up. He's trying to explain, like, to be chill. And then he does a judgment thing on him. But it, like, it results in conclusive, right? That's essentially what he gets. Yeah, it doesn't work. And, you know, there's a lot you can take from that. Maybe it means that of his two personalities, one is condemned and one isn't, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but... I don't know. We sort of move on, and um, he's in the the night shift. Then he's almost surrounded by all these cult members, and he's given this test that he's seen kill people before. He knows this is real now. He knows all this stuff is going on, but he just carries on his shift until night. Just like, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, and then a creepy, crazy CGI dog shows up. Doesn't look so great. Yeah, none of them Egyptian do. Uh, yeah. And then, because he's desperate, Mark says, let me take over. He does. Beats the thing. Does his little trailer shot pose. Yeah. Moon Knight. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, by that point, it's like, okay, there's problems here, but, like, it's hard to say a lot because there's still a lot of information we don't have with POV. Yes. So, we have, it could all this be... is a lot of setup. We still need a lot of answers. We still need a lot of things explained. We can't quite comment on some of this stuff yet. But we're very intrigued. We are. Sure. We we like our protagonist. We like the acting of it. We're we're interested. Consider us interested. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Legit but, interested. Like we really kind of wanted this to be good and for us well, to have a course, cool story. Moon Knight's a cool character as a concept. He's got a cool costume. It, yeah, he's, he's cool. It was indeed. Ben. Cool. Then episode two, um, that when we watched that. Well, do either of you want to describe the events of episode two? I so like 
uh, doesn't he um the the like he he goes back to work um after like he almost the perception that that was like some crazy vivid nightmare he goes to work and there's all this damage from the jackal uh, and then he asks the security guy to review the footage he's like yeah because some crazy shit happened they review the footage and it's just steven running around and nothing there uh, that is meant to imply, like, that the jackal is, like, invisible or something, or its presence isn't known. Here's the problem, though. Um, I don't want to jump in ahead, but later in the episode, he has to fight another jackal, and, like, it clearly exerts an influence on the world. Even though it's invisible, it, like, interacts with objects, it, it destroys cars, it hits things. So, like, even if the jackal is invisible, its influence should still be seen on the cameras and it would be inexplicable. It would just be things getting knocked over by nothing. Mark running around and things getting destroyed. But, like, the conclusion of this is, ah, Steven vandalized. He, I don't know, he, he, he went nuts and he, like, destroyed the museum. Doesn't make any sense. Um, but then we have a part where they're looking at the footage and we see Steven walk up and look at the camera, but it's clearly Mark because... Oscar Isaac is a great actor. Unfortunately, the writers don't have faith in the audience to interpret that because Steve, it's not me. It's like, oh, thanks. I Yeah, I knew that. But then you told me because you don't have faith in me to understand what's happening. Um, you have this amazing actor who communicates it very well. And the show's yeah. like, we have to tell the audience explicitly what is happening because they're so fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. Then he gets fired. Um, and then he, uh, isn't that, after that, that's when he goes to the, uh, storage lockers, right? I can't remember how he finds that out, but he goes to the storage lockers. Um, and I guess this whole time, I think it's, there's kind of a question in the back of our heads of, okay, so, we got Khonshu, the, the, uh, the, the god of the moon, the one that he's been seeing, the spooky guy. And then we got Mark, who we've seen at times as, like, exerting influence in the, in the world and trying to communicate, like, what? Why is nobody telling him anything? Now, it might be like, well, I don't know if, like, how DID works in, in, in the real world, but in this show, it is it is a mechanic as well, because, like, the characters will interact with each other by talking through mirrors and reflections, and there's some capacity to, oh, you take over, no, you take over, but then also fighting over it. It's, um, it's confusing, I think. Uh, it's unclear exactly how these characters can communicate with each other and then especially once we get to the storage locker and mark and steven finally have a conversation throughout the whole thing it's like why are you guys being so obtuse like why isn't conchu telling him anything why is mark not telling him anything clearly like wh why can't they just talk to each other because now i might be like well they they wanted to leave him out of it it's like well the problem is that he's not he's he's now like he's now a part of this He's looking into things, he's digging around, he's potentially messing with your plans. Like, surely at this point, you need to talk to him. It is um, frustrating. It is very frustrating. We're in that Disney sludge world of everyone in the world is a stupid idiot. And it's frustrating. Well, yeah, because what, um, because instead of just being like, oh, sorry, you weren't meant to see any of this, you really want to know what's going on. I mean, no, you got to walk away and let me uh let me let me deal with it. It's like man, I feel like all of this can be solved by just explaining things to him. Like you really need to explain things to him at this point cuz cuz then after this point, like when he's he's going through and he finds a fake passport um also like this is something I might point he finds a bag, it's got a little scarab thing in it, but it's also got a um it's also got a passport and the passport has Mark Spector's name on it. Later in the episode, Stephen gets arrested and the police are like, oh, they're fake police, but they're like, oh, Mark Spector is like an international criminal. So it's like, wait a minute. So wouldn't it make way more sense for the fake passport to be Steven rather than Mark if Mark is like a criminal? Who Could it be argued some... that they're lying about that? I guess it could be that they're lying, but that means I thought that they didn't know that there were two personalities at this point in time. I got no clue. I thought the confusion about that and like the idea that there was a guy called Mark could be a lie i don't know but in any case yeah like he, he grabs a bag he's like no 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 i don't want any part of this um i'm gonna give this to the police um and then Konshu tries is like spooky he's like boom, 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 come to get you 
turning off all the lights, and then Mark runs out, and um, he falls over, uh, and this woman on a bike is like, "Oh, hey, Mark, uh, get on, um, 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 let's go." She says she tracked his phone. He called her in the last episode, um, and as they're like riding back to his house, the whole conversation is so stilted. Really? It's like this is highlight though the the end of that scene. It like does a freeze frame and zoom and then it cuts and he's outside. Yeah, yeah. We know we noticed that it and it stood apart is I don't recall that ever happening before or after this. I don't remember yeah. that happening in anything Marvel's made. It's weird. It is yeah, it is very strange. It because it happens and you think you don't think it's a stylistic thing. You almost think like the camera fucked up. So in chat, someone says, you guys seem weird with how you sometimes expect characters to be explicit, but other times you want them not to be a few minutes ago. You got mad and said, that's not me. Right. So the problem is that the matter of being mm. explicit here is that if you don't tell him what's going on, he's just going to destroy everything. Like he's the going character to, yeah. in this situation is compelled to be explicit. He needs to communicate clearly with this character, not for my sake, but for the sake of his own objectives. Conversely, I don't need him to tell me that's not me. It would be better if we could just see that communicated. And like, I don't see how that's confusing at all. The the situation yeah. demands clear communication from a character who I'm supposed to believe is pretty competent. Yeah, like was, has some level. Say, like, not trying to be they... mean, but why would you assume that our perspective is everyone should always be completely explicit? Like, why wouldn't you have a Are better they... faith interpretation, which is they should be as explicit as they know is needed? Yeah. I, are they comparing? Us saying what what the script is telling us as an audience to well, what I, two characters I, I, in the no. world should be telling each other. Oh, no, I, I just think it's like a, a a just clear misread of what was being said. It's it's easily the, yeah because like, Mark the, needs to be communicating very clearly to another person in this world because that yeah. person will fuck up everything he's oh, trying to do if he does not do yeah. that. That's what's he's, that's what's he's, clear in this situation. Not telling him anything ain't working. Like he's not he's listening. To, nor should you expect it to be. For the audience's sake, I guess, is, there's no reason why you'd expect that plan to work. Of just shut up, whoever this is, give us back your body. It's like if any of us heard yeah. that, we'd be like, you, are you kidding me? What the hell what is does happening that even to me? Mean? And yeah, and like, if anything, I think that you would um, you would push that person to consider opting to go to a mental asylum, which is what he does. Maybe. Yeah, um, maybe that's even a better choice. And to comp that pre previous example, what we're talking about is he already knows he sleepwalks, he's been hearing voices, he's pretty sure there might be someone else controlling his body. He sees on the camera an event that he does not remember, being that he walks up to the camera and looks at it. And then the guard is like, that's you. Or whatever. And then and then he's like, that's not me. And it's like, no, you, you probably wouldn't say that, because no. you can only look crazy by saying that. You keep that to yourself, because you're like... Yeah. I don't remember that happening. You know we know happening. he doesn't remember that happening. Um, yeah. So it's not for our benefit either, though. I think that's why the line is there, to make sure the audience knows that he realizes that isn't him. But it's like, we know. We know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like, the woman picks him up and through very stilted dialogue basically says, I'm your wife. Very bad. <laughs> like, in terms of just... You know, the com it's so clear when we're, like, relaying exposition here. She wants to she's like, boot him off the bike, if you remember as well. Yeah, that's right, which um, doesn't seem to line up with what she wants to do later, because she's specifically coming to him to give him divorce papers. So, like, I don't know why she would boot him off when she needs to give him that. And also has some level of investment in the, um, in the, the plot, the central plot with, like, the scarab and everything. Um... And, like, for whatever reason, she just doesn't seem to, like, realize pretty quickly that even though this is Mark and looks like Mark, it's clearly not Mark. Yeah, like he's something is wrong with him, clearly. Yeah, wrong. Like, it, not necessarily that it's a different person, but, like, you know, something is wrong. wrong. Yeah. Like, I don't know why you're getting so mad. Well, I can understand being mad, but, like, I just don't understand, like, what her problem is with him specifically at this moment. It feels confused. People just don't behave General like vague people. anger. Yeah. Like, people um, don't behave like you would expect a human being to behave in these situations. Mm hmm That's a persistent problem, I feel, with, like, a lot of the new Marvel stuff. There's not um, much time to rest or explain. It's more so, like, boom, 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 boom. And the fact that we boom onto that motorcycle and then boom into his apartment, and then she's, like, before we can even settle, because she talks about his fish, and they're just, like, casually talking about bullshit for a little bit, interested in what music. 
And I remember us all being mm -hmm. like, what the fuck is happening? You've both got so much to explain yeah. to each other. You're both, yes, you're not acting like rational humans. You're just being weird for, you're being strange and slow and cryptic for the sake of the audience. And it's I just, know, no, yeah. none of you should be behaving like this. You, you are acting bizarre. This isn't how any person would actually behave. He's got so None many things to sense. ask her, and she would have so many things to ask him, especially with the accent and the change of demeanor. But, um, mm -hmm. like, everything is bizarre. Nobody's really saying what they should be. And then she serves him fucking divorce papers. Um, which is like, I think, of all your priorities, you should have different ones. And this was before we found out, by the way, that she's fully aware of Moon Knight. Um, the plot. But you, you, yeah, the is this so? Is this scene better or worse than the divorce paper scenes from Marriage Story? I'm gonna mm. say worse. But think, yeah, you think this is worse. Just okay. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure though. But I'm getting that feeling. Oh, we can never escape our Star Wars actor references, can we? Oh my goodness. Mm hmm Um, and then to police show up, and they're like, "Hey, we need to talk to you, um, buddy." But then uh, it's Layla. That's the new character here. She's she's uh, taken the, the 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 scarab out of the bag, I believe, and then yeah, and then hidden outside. And like we could tell immediately, it's like these are evil cops, like in the cult. They're not like real police officers. They're they do some smug. Weird. They do some smug looks. Yeah, yeah, plain also, clothes, like... weird looks. It's just mm -hmm. mm. cops don't show up to your house without um, a uniform. It's just the. Don't, don't, don't do that. And also, I guess it's worth noting, like, in this scene, Mark has interacted with Steven and be like, don't tell her anything, you know, keep it to yourself. But he just up, kind of let Steven, like, be taken into custody. It's really odd, yeah. like, no. Um, no yes. Based on what we learn, yeah, but Khonshu, Mark, their ability to communicate with Steven seems Khonshu to be... in particular is the one that I can't get around. Like, it, like yes. at least Khonshu with, like, Mark and Steven... A... They have to fight yeah. sort of for control and there's the mirrors and stuff, but Conchu seems to be able to appear anywhere at any time and he doesn't tell Steven anything. Yeah, I could stare at you on the bus, but when I really need you to fucking do something that's integral to my plan and my whim, I'm just not going to do anything. Or again, I'm going to remain stupidly vague and cryptic mm -hmm. that in a way that will not help you at all. You are a thousand, you're, you're a god that has existed for thousands of years and you're a dumb asshole. Kind of. Um, and it's annoying. But yeah, the, then the cops take him to they take him to the cult. Uh, they've got like this weird little commune, and then um, he goes and talks to Ethan Hawke uh, while Conchu's sort of chilling out, looking <laughs> at him, just on pillars and stuff. He's just sort of sitting there, not doing anything. Um, and then uh, <laughs> like they're there and they have a conversation where basically what oh, I Ethan just Hawke explains. Quick mention, because yeah, I don't know if you know about this. Um, this this part here happens. I think without subtitles, I can't really illustrate this properly because I can't remember what the language is. But basically, she said this girl says something, and then um, Stephen says, "Is that Chinese?" And then Ethan Hawke goes, <laughs> "Mandarin," and it's like, "Oh, okay." And she continues to talk in it. Apparently, what she said was on the level of any stereotypical insult, um, like level of making fun of a language. If you if you understand what I'm saying. Like, um, in, mm -hmm. in the same vein as when people no. say, like, I'm speaking Welsh, blah, 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 and it's just like, huh. um, they basically, like, was it? it was all made the fuck up, and you know who highlighted this first, apparently, anyway? Did you, did you, did you wait, so, wait, just did? so we're clear, on the same page, someone in the show who was supposed to be speaking Mandarin was just gibberish that sounded kind of like Mandarin? Um, I think there were some words that could be recognized, but a lot of it was basically gibberish, um, Someone put out a tweet like, uh, about okay. this. Um, good old Simu Liu. Really? He was like, someone needs to fucking get them a better Mandarin coach, or something like that, and then someone else picked Simu up Liu on it. Simu Liu was the, uh, he was the, um, the guy who played chong Chi. okay. Um, That's embarrassing. Yeah, and a lot of people started sharing this, and they were talking about how fucking insulting and stupid this is, and I was just like, how does this mistake happen? I thought this would be one of the things that they would definitely not let happen. 
Yeah, well, the, I mean, the shit you do to bow down to the Chinese, you think they... Well, no, it's just, <laughs> how How do you even make that mistake? Just get someone who speaks Mandarin, like, who knows the language properly. Or don't guess, have anyone speaking it, if you don't have like, anyone who can speak it. Have it be German or some shit. So I don't, I don't see, the, I don't see the, the point in a creative process where someone goes, oh, we don't have anyone who speaks Mandarin here. Oh, just make some sounds. Well, so you, you guys remember the um, the sign language, the amount of times sign language people have gotten in when they're not actually sign language people and they just fuck around. I wonder if the, it was yeah. as simple as that. Their coach for this language, they were like, you need a coacher into saying one line. And then they were like, yeah, sure. And they didn't know. And so they just Googled it, read out something, and were like, uh, this, 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 this. And then she tried to repeat it and it just became horrible. I don't know. But I guess they just insisted it had to be Chinese being spoken here. It couldn't be German. Well, I guess German it's because they wanted the Mandarin joke, right? Because it's less likely. Like, if you said it's German, they couldn't do the thing of, haha, that's not what it is. Because Mandarin is not Chinese. Oh, that's Mandarin. Because uh, it's Mandarin and Cantonese. Out. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if you can't get someone who speaks the language, maybe just don't do that joke at all. That's insane. Uh, yeah. I can't believe that that's something that happens in like a major multi-million dollar production that like the most widely spoken language in the world that you could just get like one person who can speak it. <laughs> just say, yeah. That's pretty nuts, actually. Yeah. In any case, they are, they go they go inside and they have a conversation and it's like pretty I think I think it's like this just adds on to more of the this is a Marvel show, isn't it? Because it's like a conversation about this particular cults like belief in Amit, like one of the Greek, uh, not Greek, Egyptian gods and the notion of justice, but like basically minority report justice, like preventing before it's even happened. And like Stephen asked a pretty obvious question. Wait, so what if like a kid, like if you predict that a kid is going to do something bad in the future, you're just going to kill them? I don't like that. And like he, like Ethan Hawke doesn't really have like a good answer for this. It's like, this is insane. Dodge this is your entire belief system. Yeah, he just kind of sidesteps it completely. It's like, I don't, like, this is not, this is not a deep conversation here. This is like the surface level of this conversation about preventative or like, you know, justice after the fact. Like, this is so shallow. It just reminds this me of like in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Hmm? Yeah, this is the, the obvious question that people will ask you that you should be prepared to have. He does not have and does not even attempt to answer. Mm-hmm. When and he then, is like, surrounded by people that supposedly you have convinced to be in this cult, and I'm uh, yeah. this whole time I'm wondering, just tell him what you told all those other people to convince them. And I mean, it's it's kind of funny because this conversation that he's trying to be like, yeah, I'm pretty chill, and then all of the cult people just start standing around him ominously. Yeah, like, and they <laughs> turn it and they look at him, and it's just yeah. uh, like there's no attempt to try and even make the cult seem not evil. No, they're super duper. They're definitely they're evil. It's like, no evil. question. Ob they're obviously um, evil. And then, like, this is all because at this point, there's like a nice reflective uh, plate or something right next. And, and, and like, Mark's like, come on, you got to do something. What and then, uh, Conchu's. Con yeah, there's a lot of. Sh we'll see that in the next episode. <laughs> and then, yeah. they're like, Conchu's like, summon the suit, you fool. Or like, you get out. Some it's like, what? What? Like, he has you no idea what you're talking about, dude. Like, you haven't told him anything. Um, there is and then, a oh yeah. yeah. Well, I, was just uh, I guess say. there was. You go ahead. I I think I might have even forgotten what I was gonna say. I so, got lost in time. so this point, yeah, there's the plate. There's a lot of reflective because that's how they talk to each other. But then Layla shows up and she's like, "Hey, you're looking for this scarab, right?" And all I can think is, "Wait, how'd you get in here? This is like a <laughs> compound that's full of cards and stuff. How'd you get in here? Do you have track of the phone again? Is that it?" Yeah, I guess. I guess. Well, as we know, guards disappear whenever it's convenient, so maybe yeah. she just got in that way. And then she talk, she's like to Mark while they're surrounded. It's like, all right, get the suit. And if, naturally, Stephen is like, what the hell? I don't, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, and thus begins. No one tells me anything. Yep, including you. And then thus begins a nonsensical action scene where, like, for some reason, most of the cult members just sort of stand around. While these two run about, and meanwhile Ethan Hawke is summoning another jackal, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty it's pretty stupid nonsensical action again. Um, and then yeah, I want to go like... show that hand because okay, just 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 before you move on because it's uh... uh yeah. So um, Moon Knight uh Moon Knight actually was shot 
I, I know that uh, they shot, like, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, and She-Hulk last year. Moon Knight was shot last and came out first, which I think explains a lot about how bad the visual effects are. Like, uh, this in between a lot of what's been reported on, that, like, there's a massive pileup, basically, with, like, visual effects studios. There's so many productions coming out and not enough studios and people to keep up with the demand. They're like you've got this massive backlog of films that are just like waiting to get their stuff done and, and tv shows feels like it explains a lot about how bad this show's visual effects look they look really pretty bad for what was probably a very expensive show um and we have the typical thing that we see in a lot of stuff now the cgi backgrounds and places where you feel like you should lots just of be compositing yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but uh yeah they're they're in this room they lock themselves in but then we realize oh the jackal it's like invisible oh no it's invisible she, layla can't see it and then it pushes steven out the window and as he's falling to the ground he summons his own suit he is mr knight which is a change from the comics where mr knight is his own personality but it's just steven uh oh and also he drops the scarab here and the jackal <laughs> is it put on pause for a bit yeah, the jackal just pauses for about a minute but, or two. Mahler, the jackal is always on pause. Nice. Nice. We fucking did it. And yeah, so mechanically yeah, like, speaking, this is Steven using the suit. Is this? Mark using the suit is Moon Knight. Knight. Yes, and Steven is Mr. Knight. Like I said, different from the comics where Mr. Knight is his own person. Steven's yes, and Steven. It to be clear, so yeah, so the power, the the ability to have a suit is given by Khonshu. When Mark uses the power for the suit, he's Moon Knight. When Steven uses the suit power, he's Mister Knight. That's right. And Mr. Just, Knight, just to be clear, because I can understand why that there might be some confusion. Knight's a bit more cringe, unfortunately. Uh, a little bit, um, yeah. Yeah, um... uh, I, apparently. Uh, fans of the character are pretty disappointed <laughs> that like this is who Mr. Knight is because I'm pretty sure Mr. Knight's meant to be like very sort of suave and I thought that's, that's what I assumed when I first saw the yeah, look I before the season the I was like that guy that personality will be pretty cool hopefully yeah but he's not because we're not we're not we're not going as far as like in the comics I think he's got like four or five distinct personalities here we maybe three because there's an implication of a third one but it's um yeah it's not as complicated um, which feels weird considering that as a TV show, you've actually got a lot more time than you have in a comic book. Like they don't spend it on the things that mean things. Like, oh, we're going to spend all this time with the protagonist. Let's devote yeah. a, our first episode to really establishing who this is that we're going to be following around and being with with all this time. Nope, mm -hmm. we're plot, 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 plot. Kind of, yeah. Because yeah, here the 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 jackal is on pause, but then it attacks him, and then we have a really awkward fight where he's fighting the jackal, and it's it's pretty bad. And then we see that he's like Moon Knight. It, it, he's he's quite strong. Um, it's Mister Knight, but like not well versed in fighting. And then the fight goes out into the street, and cars are getting destroyed. And it's like okay, right. So the jackals exert influence on the world. So this should have been in the security footage, but I guess not. Yeah. Um, and. As they realize civilians are in danger at, at this point, Steven's like, all right, Mark, yeah, you, you take over. And then we have Moon Knight, and he, he does the, the big trailer shot where he pulls his little um like boomerang things off of his chest plate. But the funny thing is, is that Layla tells him to run away, and so he just kind of puts them away and then like climbs a building. <laughs> so like he only pulls yeah, them out. Yeah, it's weird. Trailer. It's a trailer shot, and also it doesn't look very... It looks weird. Like it does look he... weird, because it's like his hands have to clip, because there's nothing to grab, really. It looks like his hands just uh, sort yeah. of clip into his chest a little bit. Yeah, I, I, It's very strange. They, he, at the time, would have just made a grabbing motion at his heart, essentially, and then they were like, yeah, we'll take care of it. and they're like, we'll fix it in post. Yeah, we'll take yeah, care we'll of it. Also, we'll fix like, it in post. The Disney I don't know why there is a lot of, like... Like, Moon Knight is, a lot of the time, it's, like, CGI when I feel like it could just be, like, a dude in a it suit. It needs to be a suit. Yeah, it needs to be uh, a suit. You have the yeah. you have Disney money. You can make a suit that looks cool. And it's not complex. I'm especially sure Mr. Knight. He's exist. just wearing a suit, you know? I think and the so suit... The mis it's, I imagine it's the like, suit it's bindings exist, and... Yeah. It's just His eyes can be CGI white. 
Like, I'm not sure what it is. I think that there are suits that definitely do exist. There's just a lot of, like, also CGI as well. Um, but then, like, they're running on the roof and he, he, like, impales the jackal. And then he realizes, oh, I dropped the scarab. Uh, and then Layla sees that, that um, the, the uh, uh, Ethan Hawke picked it up. Oh, and he just killed some dude for some reason. Yeah, he just Stone kills Hobo the hobo. Did you mention, by the way, the um, in the middle of their fight when they both got rammed into walls? Um, him getting it done is okay, but her getting it done is really not. Oh, yeah, right. She gets rammed into oh, a yeah, wall. Oh, yeah, she should be dead in this fight. The Jackal's a yeah. big, dumb, stupid idiot. Just like it's everyone like, else. Moon Knight be super strong, but she's not, so, like, that should really hurt um, her. Yeah, she is that. just a human being. Well, yeah, just give it she a sec to so, copyright. We'll yeah. get there. Yeah. Also, I need to use the loot. I will be right back. It is kind of funny when it like picks people up and you're just like, so what's it doing with them? It's like, nothing. Yeah, just kind of picking them up. Um, maybe I was a fool to think this, but I thought that we were going to have a really low stakes story that isn't like super duper crazy in terms of world implications and everything. But um, as we will discover in episode three, that was that's not that's not what we're getting here. That's not what we're doing. Um. Wait, have you have you played it? The part where she got like tossed into the wall. Oh, there. I don't know if. Well, you know what? I'll do it with the screen up so I can find it first. Mm hmm. Um, I don't know if it was before or after when he's. This part maybe. Oh, well, I mean, it was I'll before. Just it. Back. Now, just on the thing of like them dropping the scarab and he picked it up. Um, just so that we don't forget, for whatever reason, like, Moon Knight decides not to just go back to the compound and get it. He decides, like, ah, no, alright, it's a lost cause. This is a mother box <laughs> moment. Hmm? This is a mother box moment. A little bit, yeah, because, like, you can just go back to the compound, and as we'll see in episode 3, Moon Knight's kind of unstoppable. Um, he could have easily gotten it. But yeah, I get, the Scarab just, should take precedent over up. the Jackal. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But because it's the it's the key to everything. It's like the thing that because the scarab is a compass that leads to the tomb of Amit because I want to resurrect her, and that's that's bad. Basically, it's not going to be. There, good. I found it. It was way earlier. Huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, they both get tossed yeah, by the jackal, cool. and uh, oh yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're in that trouble. That does stuff there. to you. In fact, I wonder. That, um, yeah. he'd be he'd have the the lesser hit right because the car. Presumably cars, hit less than yeah, the you want to get run against a car, not a brick, a brick wall. wall. Yeah, I cars guess. will give a little bit. Um, and again, the ja it's the thing that the jackal is like. This woman is just like harassing you. Just fucking kill her. Just break her neck and be done with it. He, it's got her grabbed, and they do the thing where they have someone grabbed, and they don't just fucking kill him. It's a jackal. Yeah, it's just. It's like this num, thing num, is num. a ferocious gotcha. beast. It, it's just a killer. What are you doing? Are you trying to? Mm. Uh, what is you what are you doing? You, uh... Um, but yeah, no, so like Steve, uh, Mark is there. He's talking to Stephen because there's a mirror in the place that he lands, uh, and they're having a fight. And Stephen's like, "I don't like this. This sucks." And 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 then Stephen's like, "Nah, shut up!" And he smashes the mirror, and then Konshu is uh um, like Konshu is a uh, he's just like, all right, you you you're a prick, and you're gonna you're gonna help me out, buddy. We we gonna we gotta we gotta keep working. You know, you I own you. You gotta work for me because Konshu's an ass. Because these characters <laughs> don't know each other, don't know that. Um, and then uh, then then they're just in Egypt because he's tracked the cult to Egypt instead of just going and getting the scarab. <laughs> That he night. even found himself a big old bottle of booze in Egypt. Yeah. Yeah, it feels very, yeah, um, luck. like, now that you have For a fuller rookie. understanding of everything, he is, like, a opening to, yeah, things are gonna get crazy. And, and I had no idea why he was even here at the end of episode two yet, but episode three just tells you, yeah, he's following the cult. He wants the scarab back. And it's, and it's just like, this so makes no just... sense at all. He was right next to the cult. Just in go terms get of it. The town, yeah. And, and clearly, like, you can get in there and fucking kill Ethan Hawke if you want to. Because what we will see, like I said in this episode, is um, Moon Knight is kind of like unstoppable. He is insanely powerful, um, to a level that I don't 
maybe someone can help me out because I've only. I mean, a he's the second most powerful person in the show. You might say. Behind, yeah, aren't you? Or? That's well, what I was getting at. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get. To well, that. you might say. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, we're speed running this a little bit because, like I said, we'll probably speed running longer this. coverage in three or four weeks from now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, in episode episode three, that's that's where up. To. So after episode two, it was like, oh no, <laughs> like that was just the general feeling. Oh no. Yeah, definitely um, a big oh no. We are we are we are teetering. We were falling off of the edge, and they needed to that we we were past teetering. We'd fallen off the edge. Episode three needed to r roll at a reflex save and grab that ledge and get us back to safety because we have fallen off of the ledge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does not do that. Um, well, hey, since <laughs> I did one, you did two. Can Rags do three? If he wants to, sure. Um, or do I'll you have want to, me to open the episode again because I'm not. I'm not too good with like the summary stuff going through. Because from I guess it's the way my way. No, it's all good. Yeah. Well, I was, I was doing that one all from. I was doing that yeah, one all from me memory. Me actually, I just was trying to pull all of the stuff. That yeah, I, could think I of. gotta. Yeah, from memory, uh, I just don't think I can do it. Let me do a. Yeah, sure. Is it on my downloads? It puts it. It says it put into a weird spot. Yeah. Yeah, because someone was asking like, so wait, who watched this? It's like it might not be clear just because of how we're explaining it, but um, we all did except Jake. Jake's we all did. Is a bad I did not. That's why I offered, I've I offered, said though. one thing in the past hour. Yeah, I. Yeah, so we would go to watch it together, and then we did something else. I can't even remember what we did, but we. Something I think fun. we talked about other stuff and then I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so let me pull it up here. All right. So we open with previously on blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay. Oh my goodness. He's in Egypt. There are the pyramids. They are big. Isn't that incredible? And our first scene is kind of neat. We have, what's her name? Layla. Yeah. Ba -da 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 -da. And she is getting a fake passport made and and the, that's cool you see this lady and she's she's got her computer box and she's making all the changes and she's putting all the fake info in there and she's dragging and dropping and she's got the stampers and the clampers and the, the she's making a fake passport it's a really cool little scene to see how she does it the problem is that these two people are talking to each other and they're telling each other all these things that don't need to be said. And it's just really clunky and expository. And it was like, meh, but at least the visuals were cool over making a passport. That's neat. That's the, not the coolest thing in the episode at all. Definitely not. We have so many cool things to talk about. I, I forget what they even. Here. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Uh, let me scale it forward. She gets her passport. We get a Marvel oh, logo that doesn't fucking ranks. mean anything no. anymore. Yeah. This is so picky. These criticisms can be lobbied against any show. Um, no, I know. Can't. So, um, that's not true at all. That's that's not true at all. That's absolutely not true at all. These are not picky. These are very. These are plot. We're actually. Um, these are titanically important to the plot and to. Okay. Well, here's a, here's a more pertinent question. So, like, when Stephen is attacked by the jackal and then falls to the ground, why does the jackal just choose not to attack him for a minute? Can you give me a reason why it wouldn't do that? And if you can't give a reason, can you explain to us how that's a nitpick? Yeah, like how it's not consequential or that we should yeah. just ignore it. Or that the how... story wouldn't be improved if that was changed. I'm waiting. Let's see. Yeah, I, I am curious, and this isn't even talking about the scarab and all the other things. This is just Everything that one, else, yeah. one decision they made. Why does the jackal just not pursue the thing that he needs to do? Why is that? What happens? He sort of disappears for a while. Well, so people in chat who aren't the person who said that have given a lot of uh, good ones, like fake tension. Or he forgot. <laughs> well, yeah, because uh, yep. we need time for the character to explain to us what's happening with Mr. Knight. We can't mm -hmm. have him fight, even though you could have done both. You could have, yeah. It's not binary. You have lots of choices when it comes to storytelling. Hmm. I like this. Have I you mean, considered I... it's a dub Marvel superhero show? It's like, what do you think our argument is right now? Yeah, our oh, argument yes. is that it's that a is dumb Marvel superhero yes, show, but yes. you know what? Like, I have, I, I think that uh, 
superhero shows can be great as well uh because i don't i don't know i don't i don't undermine an entire genre of storytelling maybe that's me i'm just saying it's picky yeah our criticisms are never it's a superhero show Here, here it is um i'm just saying it's nitpicky because great shows do it too not that it's terrible criticism for example the nazgul do the same thing in the lord of the rings but we don't criticize it when what I think they're talking yeah, about like, Glenel Fields. They they hit the um the catapult not catapults, trebuchets, and then mm-hmm. we don't see a lot of them. And then when the Witch King leaves to head toward the Rohirrim, we don't see the Witch King for a while. Um but obviously you're just supposed to assume they're attacking people. Yeah, yeah. just because it's part of the that, army. Because this is the thing, the jackal is solely summoned to attack and take that very beetle he's done it before yes and you pushed him no, out the window that's nothing... almost gg you've almost won and then he just stops. yeah go get him there's no just, barriers uh, between the jack well, yeah, and the was... knight and that's his singular task there are no other players in the field there's nothing else that he would be doing because hmm. that's his is, one we're, job we're sitting there watching steven but like somewhere in this world there is a jackal it's pretty close by it's like uh, in the building and it's not doing anything what is it doing if we weren't, if we didn't have the camera on Stephen and we had the camera on the Jackal, what is it doing that it takes a minute to yeah, just come down don't and kill him? When they're off screen, they don't stop existing because the camera's not looking at them. Yeah, the j- the Jackal lacks object permanence. It would seem that way, <laughs> but it it's and not. Also, it this is nitpicking word. Physically. It's not a nitpick. There's well, so nitpick. many things it's that we've important. talked about where the plot completely changes. Because maybe it would have made more sense that he would have lost the scarab if it fell out here, if he wasn't, if if he was attacked immediately and didn't even have a yeah. chance. Yeah, he notices sort of the scarab. Out. He tries to get it. He can't. The jackal's attacking him. Mm-hmm. And then maybe maybe he tries to go back and get it later, or there, there's something. There there are reason. If if the end result of this scene is that the scarab is in the hands of uh, cult man. Then there are ways to write that. You can do things. You have a lot. You have options. You could change the the the, the modifiers of the fight and the players involved. I mean, have there are all kinds of things you could do. This is what writing is, right? Mm-hmm. But they just don't do it. They just say fuck it, whatever, and that's that. Um. I also saw someone say, "Oh no, they're expositing while doing menial tasks that that have to be done at some point." The horror. It's like. Man, I, I want better dialogue. You can have your shit dialogue I, yeah, if you want, I but have, I want better. Uh, I I think that these writers are entirely capable of doing that. Um, I'm sorry that you have such a low opinion of them, unlike me, that I think that they are entirely capable of writing good stories. I'm a big fan um, of dialogue. That's that's a that's a that's, that's a you problem you have to resolve. Anyway, yeah, there, there's. Three. Oh, sorry. What? Characters <laughs> yeah, sitting but... around just telling each other things that they already know for no reason other than to tell each other those things they already know. That's just... People don't generally do that. People no, don't... I... Yeah, people just don't do that in the real world. I don't have... I don't... Uh, like, whenever I meet my dad in the morning on a Thursday for breakfast, I don't go, ah, yes, it's my father. My father is here. And then I get in the truck... And he says, ah, hello, son. And, you know, that, that sort of thing. Like, it's just not the thing that people do. Mm-hmm. And it's, I just, I don't like that it's presented as some binary, that your only choice is, like, that, to have people say exactly what they mean and communicate everything, yeah. like, exactly as they intend. Oh, hi. What's wrong, My Layla? You look so yeah. distant. Or you exactly. look sad. What, what's on your mind? What's happening? Or she says, I know that things. look. Because they exactly. it shows it shows that they've met each other before and they've done similar things like this before, but something is particular this time, and that something was weighing on Layla's mind. You're like, this shit is, I mean, this shit's off the top of my head, and it's better, you know. These people are getting paid God knows how much, and they get all these budgets, and they just, and it's just, I will tell you everything that you know. Ah, yes, I also know these things as well, but do not forget this thing that also we both know. Well, yes. I mean, it must have been thought about, right? You've got to wonder if this is a deliberate decision. Are they trying to appeal to people who are just like double screening and not really paying attention so that anyone can really just take in the information without really giving a shit about the actual, you know, story? Maybe. Is this a, is this, is this, is this a deliberate to decision obvious. to help it be sludge? Hope it be well, there sludge. are ways to be oh, no. obvious that aren't this 
clunky, right? Well, as said, I haven't seen it, but it seems like it seems like writing one on one stuff. Surely they can find someone capable of that. Surely they're thinking about all of this stuff, but we know they're thinking about it from the perspective of making more money. I just don't think they care. I don't think they they don't feel a reason to the idea that you get and why change who your writers are? Why why shoot for higher writing standards? People eat this shit up. Why change? Mm. You know, I think it's just that attitude. There's there's no pressure for them to get better writers. Um, uh, next scene, is, unless then, then, you know, you know, don't be too upset, yeah. everyone who enjoys this show. We'll do a deeper dive. Go over. Yeah, I will. We, I will rewatch it and give it all of the notes so that yeah, we'll watch I can make you some stronger. We're trying to cover all the bigger arguments broadly because. Um, we still got Sonic 2 and a bunch of other things to do. I'm already three and a half hours in. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, boy. So, anyway, Rags, continue. What, what, what in the world is happening with episode three? What's going on here? Okay, well, after we get our passport made, we cut to the desert. The deserts are great. Our cult is out in the desert, and they're following the scarab. Walking around in the desert on the scarab, on foot, just having a great time walking around. And the scarab points him to where the tomb is. And they're like, oh, my goodness, we found her. And there's a guy, he's got an MP40. That's kind of weird. That's all right. Um, they're very, very happy. They're very, very, yay, we found the tomb of Ahmed. Hooray. And now that scene's over. So they're doing the thing that we knew they'd do. Okay, gotcha. Excellent. I'd say Here the only are. thing to bring up is just like, man, they traveled all that way. And, and Moon Knight hasn't caught up to him. All right. No. But that's because Moon Knight, or shall we say Mark, because Mark's in charge now, right? Mark is running on rooftops. He's Assassin's <gasps> Creeding styling it. It's very impressive. He loses his hat, but he doesn't pick it up. I that's okay, though. He can get another one later. This is the very same rooftop that um, Fennec was fighting those assassins in the first episode of Boba Fett. It looks it's similar because cool. they are not in Egypt. It's uh, <laughs> it's or at least that green screen. The rooftop down. of mysterious also, location. Also, I don't know. I don't know what this building is, but it se this seems like a strange building. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what that does. That, that's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's up. Um. So, Mark, he confronts these guys on this rooftop, and. Uh, they 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 have shiny knives and they have this shot where he throws the knife up in the air and then the camera looks down and it's really strange and I don't know why I don't know. I think the idea he is that they're these... supposed to be a little silly like like because Mark is like making fun of him for it I think. But remember these are the same guys that we end up having a bit of drama with in a moment. You know it's not. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kind of it feels weird. Um, but also they they they're chasing down a guy and they kill him. And yeah, uh, that's how Mark the scene starts. Like, why? Yeah, why'd you kill that guy? I or oh, I had I was gonna talk to that guy. What? Who was that guy? Uh, so this is the stuff. I I need to rewatch it fully to be able to fill in stuff like that. If we just keep keep moving, because there's obviously a part that we all want to get to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's he's fighting he's fighting these guys, and they have knives, and they don't stab, but they slash a lot, which is how you fight with knives. And he licks his knife, and that's fun. <laughs> and then Mark punches him because he licked his knife, and it's very, it's very odd. There's not even anything on the knife to taste. It's just very strange. It's intimidating. He fights right? him. Yes, it is very intimidating when you lick your knife. It is, it is very intimidating. And one of the one of these three and guys is poison kind of damage. Being, mm. I hope not, not to his tongue. I hope. No, no, anyway, no. Your saliva is gooey, so it inflicts poison damage oh, from the cooties. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's right. Mark can get we yeah, maybe Mark's gay. Who knows? Maybe that's why they're getting a divorce because it turns out he's gay. I don't know. This this is the deep lore. Um so one of these guys that Mark is fighting is a young guy and he, Mark seems to be really a lot softer with him because he is younger and a, in a kind of a young guy. Which is like, "Okay, I guess like, that's something you do." Um and as the fight draws to an end, Mark gets one of the guys and he's got a knife and he holds the knife to his throat. And in the very shiny knife reflection, Mark sees 
the 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 now dormant uh or the now the the in the hidden away Steven and Steven's like nah don't kill him and then oh my goodness what happens Mark he, he gets tucked away and then he suddenly reappears in a taxi oh what happened he's all of a sudden in a taxi this is not where I was a moment ago that's very strange that's odd he's visibly confused he doesn't know what's happening so he gets out of the taxi when he notices at the bottom on the road, leaving the building, are, are the guys that he was just fighting. W wow, okay. That's strange. One of the, the young one even kind of looks happy. I don't know, maybe they didn't know he was supposed to be acting. I'm not sure, it's strange. But well, I think one then of them Mark says, says, like, you let us go. <laughs> yeah, Mark, Mark, I, he gets out of the taxi to chase him down. And they're like, oh, you let us go. And Mark's like, no, no, tell me what I want to know. And then there's a chase sequence. And then he chases him again. And they run and they run. And I'm scrubbing. And he goes through the market. And there's Tim Pool, but he's buff. And he's on a bicycle. And he's got a basket on his head. And he runs and they, he knocks over rugs. Because like, oh, no, this Mark guy's chasing us. We don't want that. That's very bad. And he fights him. And he, he punches him. Wait, Rags, I got to pause you. Someone chat said, why is it a yes, problem please. he licks the knife here, but not in Arcane? Explain yourself, Rex. W which part in Arcane was there a knife There is a guy licks? who licks his uh, thing on a, on, a, on, a, on a knife, and it even draws a bit of blood. He he licks his, he, like, on his tongue? Mm -hmm. He cuts his tongue on the mm. knife? Yes. Oh, I can't, I, I legit can't remember that scene, so y'all have to take over. Um, well, uh, off the top of my head, I, I don't take complete issue with him doing it in Moon Knight. I think it's silly, but it got him, like, punched, too. So he's just a low-level yeah, criminal. Yeah, him for it, yeah. Um, in Arcane, uh, he's, like, a presumably a, a tweaker of sorts, right? Um, and he's a low-level bodyguard of Silco. I don't think he's going to be that smart, the guy who does that. And then um, he does get his attacks ready. It's not like he's caught off guard as a result of doing it while this guy is. Um, he attacks after it. Like I said, I don't really take big issue with it. Um, you'll be fine. No, it's just, but that's okay. The the correct thing happens. Mark takes advantage of an opening, and he fucking punches him. So Mark chases him. Mark gets one of the guys, and he puts him up against a wall, and he says, "Who is number two working for?" Yeah. But then there's a there's a mirror. There's a lot of there's a lot, yeah, of, mirrors a lot of mirrors around. A lot of mirrors here. Then Stephen appears he's like hey mark what's up you don't don't hurt him or whatever let him go and then another another cutaway mark all of a sudden is not here instead mark is on a plateau on a desert overlooking moss espa and he oh no he is he has stabbed this guy that he was just holding up turns out he just stabbed him with a knife which is the correct way to use a knife you stab people with a pointy bit and the guy's dead. How'd you know oh, no. that? It seems as if Mark has killed one of the guys. And now the only one left is the young dude. Yes. And he goes to the young dude and he's like, yo, I want to talk to you because I need to know some stuff. And so in a stupendously horrifyingly stupid move, Conchu's voice says, take him to the cliff. Instead of using his knives to torture this person efficiently into varying degrees of pain, he instead takes him to a cliff, which is torture that's based on a threat that is dumb because if you can't, that, that's not how you torture people. Batman that's not, did it. If you, yes, uh, Actually, no, wait, Batman didn't do it. Well, he, he, Moroni, he dropped until his legs fucking broke, so <laughs> I guess Batman oh, did it no. a bit different in uh, Dark Knight. But it, it begins, I think he does it Maybe. to the, the fat guy. Um, yeah, well, so I find this interesting because, uh, Mark seems to be uncomfortable with doing anything with this guy because he's young. And he's like, oh, okay. But, um, at the same time, just, um, it, it was interesting because when we were watching it, we were like, ah, don't take him to the edge because if you lose him, you lose him. Meanwhile, if you chop yeah, off and a now finger, you don't learn stab, right? slice, whatever, you can, you can keep going and Arnold did do yeah. it. But to be fair, it wasn't Arnold holding them by their foot with one arm because that film is hilarious and awesome. Commando, okay. Everyone should see it. 
Yeah, it's it's an all or nothing threat, but you can't actually uh, to to get the info you want, you can't let the person die. You you can't like threaten to kill them because the person knows that like there there's no there's no way to escalate it. This is all that there is. I'm threatening to drop it off, drop you off this cliff, right? Instead of using the knife to cut and stab and take off fingers and all that sort of nasty stuff. Which I think this um, gets worse the further along the episode you get with how important this is, what this represents. So, yeah. I mean, we may as well just talk about it now a little bit. Amit coming back represents, like, potentially the end of the world, right? To, um, We're talking like millions and millions dead. Yeah, billions yeah. probably are dead. Uh, anyone who does anything that's bad is going to be preemptively killed. No. So, Honshu lots of people is the only god who is invested currently in preventing that from happening because the others are not aware of that being the case. Yeah. This guy, it may sound ridiculous, but this will turn out to be true. This guy, his info, would be enough uh, to, to tip the scales, the gods. So, um... It is know. very important that he gets this information, right? It's, it's, this is very important stuff. He should have enough to work with even without it, but he certainly believes this to be extremely... The, the truth isn't even as important as how he, important he believes the information to be. But the but hipster cultist man, he's like, no, Ahmed's great. And then he cuts the scarf and he falls down. And then we get some Resident Evil 5 CGI because we don't we because our stupid idiot disney human brains are not capable of processing what happens when a human being falls off a big fucking cliff it's very important that we extend our cgi budget to show you a very poorly rendered body that has landed on the dirt far below it's very important that they show us that oh i right? think it's funny i didn't even Shot notice that the first time around because i was so distracted by conchu yeah. again i was like there he is it's see all... he's down there None of this is Looking. real. It's yeah. all fake, except for, except for Mark. Look at that. Like, God. But okay. They might even have CGI'd Mark. Fuck it. You never know. I decided at this point, Maybe. you never... It's just, I didn't even have, don't even come in today, Oscar. It's fine. We'll just take care of it in post. Whatever. All right, talk about the shiny um, sign. <laughs> oh, yes. This, so, because mirrors are the pathway for communication between the person inhabiting the body and the person who's kind of dormant in the body or who's underneath it, right? The active and the passive characters. It just so happens that they come across a, a metal sign that is out at the top of a plateau on a desert. And you might think that it is super rusted and worn away. No, it's actually polished like a goddamn mirror. And this allows for Stephen to communicate with Mark. And isn't that amazing? Just like the knife, because as we all know, all knives are polished like a mirror. Uh, it's, it's very, very shiny. It, it was very distracting when you see things they, like this. They need mirrors to communicate with each other. I don't know. Seemingly. Because it seems to be. Like... Honshu so, can talk to him whenever we want. Yes. But, but it looks like... like like, does that make yeah. much sense? With we, we talked about this, but how much reflection happens in everything? Um, well, yeah, because it's in people's eyes and water. You could have some sort of reflections on cars. And so, like, like if he was to look at his watch, I guess you could show up and then be like, "Hey, hey, hey!" And then as soon as he turns it away, you're like, oh, "No, no chance." Oh. Uh, why doesn't he carry around a mirror? Because he doesn't want to talk to Stephen, even though they really take. Way too long that. to be cooperative with Steven. By the end of this episode, they're actually cooperating with Steven. Yeah. It only forever. took three episodes, and the world is at stake, and it's, it's fucking frustrating. And also, yeah. having, like, a mirror that he carries around could be, it'd be could be a comedy. It's like a phone, essentially. I want to talk to the other one, and he's like, don't you hang up, and then he closes the mirror and puts it up. And then maybe you even get a little muffled. I don't know if you go that far, but it'd be funny. Um, I don't see why they can't just be voices in in the head, you know. I don't know. Well, I it's it, they, maybe, there's a lot of stylistic stuff they some, can do that they don't do. I guess the thing is, to some level, it's like cool that you thought of the mirror thing, but the problem is now it's like you're relying on it so heavily that is it, it's is like, it though? It seems like such a cliche way for like a mirror seems like the the cliche way to get uh, alter egos communicating with each other. Um. 
I mean, they do. Uh, the only example I can think of is Spider Man, but I'm sure there's loads of stuff that does it. Um, someone said they don't need reflections to communicate, they can talk to each other at any time. Have you got any references? Because I can't remember if there is. Well, maybe, yeah, that's, I the think they need maybe that's the case in the comics, but certainly not what we've seen so far in the show that I can think of, unless I'm forgetting. I can't, yeah, I can't think of a time they've talked to each other without mirrors, but um, it might have happened. But what I'm noticing anyway is in scenes, suddenly they'll be in a place, it's like, wow, there's a lot of mirrors everywhere. It's like, nah. But then when they don't need mm. to talk to each other, there's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, so th uh, so th this is the part where they gotta summon the uh, the gods, right? That's uh. Oh yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So uh, we enter. Oh no! What are we gonna do? You idiot! Held you held that guy off the cliff. Oh wait, that was my idea, but you still did it. It's your fault. Anyway, we have to we have to go talk to all of the other Egyptian gods. Very casually, real. dude. It's like yeah, all yeah. the other. We we were like, oh shit, are we gonna be seeing this? Like yeah, yeah, you are, but you know, be ready but, to be underwhelmed. Um, wait, no, sorry, don't skip ahead of the the moon. Don't. Oh yeah, that's we, kind of funny. Well, we're, we're yeah, that, that's yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, we're here. Well, it's because on the footage is so, so like Kodshu's like, all right, so I'm gonna send a message so that the gods know that I want to have a chat with them, and it's like, all right, so what what does that mean? Uh, what it means is causing a lunar eclipse. Like he can just do that. Now, hang on. Um, I would, yeah, right. So you you would, I think, I think the the really prom the big question would be, what 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 have you just done? Like what yeah, did you just do? That's um, not. That doesn't so, follow. There are two explanations for what this is. The one explanation is this is all an illusion. Like there is no eclipse. It's it's fake. Like it's an illusion that he's caused. Now I don't know what that means logistically. If he can cause a, an optical illusion that creates a lunar eclipse that cascades like and Everyone's blocks out this. The... It's not a lunar sorry, eclipse. solar eclipse. Yeah, I don't know why I said lunar. It is solar. Yeah, sorry, solar eclipse. So if he can cause a solar eclipse. Um, and it's an illusion. I don't know how that works logistically, but if it was not real, then, like, Doctor Strange is, like, absolute... Like, all the heroes are gonna be like, wait a minute, how... Like, what the hell? Holy crap, this is insane. Um, we need to investigate this. That is the lesser of the two terrible things yes. that this means. The second one is he moves the, the moon. He actually moves it. Um... Now, I hope I don't need to explain how insane that is in terms of the consequences of just moving the moon. And um, unfortunately, it so, yeah. seems I like that... based off of everybody else's react Because this is not... Th I don't think this is a vision because everyone in the city sees it. Everyone in Giza sees this. Like, all the townspeople react to the fact that this insane cosmic occurrence just has just happened. This might make sense to a culture who hasn't, you know, doesn't fully understand what the moon really is yet. You know, a very primitive culture who see who was maybe seen this won't uh, make sense. A, a to solar any eclipse. This is shit. This shit's fucking so, bizarre. There's a thing here. Well, like, well, so, I mean, I'm talking about like, you know, let's say you're like you're you're incredibly primitive, right? You've you've you just see the moon as a thing that moves through the sky, and one day you see it go in front of the sun, right? Um, but any like, culture that understands how to predict the movement of like us, the moon, you're not given. Yeah, you're and understands that the moon credit. is a body. You can't be surprised by a fucking eclipse. No, we we know when they're happening. Yes, you can't. You when cannot be surprised by it. Yes, I'm pretty sure we know when they're happening. Like decades from now, um, like, that, like hundreds of years ahead. Possibly, like, possibly absolutely. Even, yeah. This stuff is um, yeah. So like this is a so, very predictable model. So if if Konshu was like moving the moon, this is insane. And if it's an optical illusion, it's still insane. And sh now Moon Knight cannot be ignored by the broader MCU. There has to be some acknowledgement well, of him by like Doctor Strange or whatever the governments are that are involved or any number of heroes. They gotta. He's doing they, this they to, to then get an invitation. Like the 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 gods like will demand uh, Konshu's avatar enter the, the chamber of discussion or whatever because of this. Apparently it's I'm significant. Himself because that shit costs money. Um, why does it have yes. to be their avatars? That's the thing. Why, why not just Conchu show up? I think Conchu says he doesn't want to, right? But then he's totally there when they have the discussion, you know? He's just walking yeah. through Mars. Yeah, he so. does... 
Yeah, I, I think it's just so that they don't have to animate all the gods. Maybe. Which well, is yes, if you're going to splurge on your CGI, this is where you do it. If yeah, you're so, going to do it. So I guess make the point clear. They go into this like, it, it seems like it's in the pyramid. They like, say they, it's they in they the Great portal. Pyramid, which is fucking well, we just quickly highlight that right. On his way to the right. meeting, it's just bright again. Yeah, it's all of us. It's all bright again. I guess that lunar eclipse was like lasted what a minute, which they don't typically last that little time. But, How long did uh, the solar eclipse last? Sorry, solar. Fuck. Um. Yeah. It, it Call lasted. it the eclipse. Um. But yeah, they they go through these doorways that open, leads to the pyramids, and you just see like regular people. And it's like, oh hey, I'm like the avatar for the gods. So like the gods speak through them. It's not the actual gods. Pretty lame. Um, it's kind of very lame. It is actually. very lame. This 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 part is Dude, staggeringly lame. This is Osiris. This is like the so the Egyptian pantheon is batshit insane. It's incredible. They got uh, all these weird ass stories in crazy creatures that have all these adornments and symbols, and they're very regal. And I mean, they were. They were these things were worshipped as deities for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. The Egyptian timeline is staggeringly long. And, and, and if someone says to me, that's just his avatar, it's like Osiris talks through this man, okay? <laughs> it's, yeah. This is all we get for Osiris. Um <sighs> and they have a conversation about um basically Mart's or Conchu's like, hey, um, um, the, 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 um, that guy, Ethan Hawke, he's evil, he wants to resurrect, uh, oh, Ahmed, yeah. and they're like, wow, that's serious, let's get him in here, and essentially you can boil this conversation down to, do you want to resurrect Ahmed? Nah. Okay, well, you, okay, you're free to go. Like, that's essentially the Yeah, it, this is another frustrating part of the, of the, of the show, where instead of just telling these gods... That oh yeah he's got this big evil cult and he has the and scarab he's the and scarab. he's outside of the tomb yeah and he's doing an he just doesn't right now he mm -hmm. just doesn't like I I don't get it why I don't understand why they make all the characters stupid dumb idiots I don't well, yeah, get there's it fucking, there's so much evidence to prove it but just for some reason Mark just doesn't and say Conchu anything just don't say anything yeah this is um an incredibly difficult scene to make when you're writing because it's like right. It's all on me now to represent the Egyptian gods and how they fit into the MCU. Every word they say will have massive implications because these guys would have been around this whole time. Everything I say and how everything I have them say and do is super important. And like, if you draw from everything you see in here, it's like their capacity to view Earth is limited through basically their little avatar people, from what I understand. Seemingly. They don't seem to give any explanation as to why their power seems to have waned. They don't seem to... It's, a, it's that weird middle ground of I'm a god and I want you to know that I exist and respect me and love me, but I'm not just gonna like show up and say hi. You know? It's like, oh, that's kind of awkward. You're kind of a dick. Uh, and the gods of Egypt here, they're sort of presented as that, like, oh, they stopped worshipping us, they don't worship us anymore, and they seem to be sort of, like, upset about that, but then they say, all we do is observe, and that's just what we yeah. do, and, like, well, so, so why have you been hidden? But they are concerned time? with Amit. Yeah. Yes, but, they're concerned with Amit, like, and they want to observe so, humanity. Were you not concerned with Thanos or Loki or Ultron? I guess or, not, like, even though the concern with Amit is millions dead. I can tell you an event Ultron happened recently that killed dead. a lot more than a million. Yeah, well, it's, it's the same issue with Eternals, right? It's like, oh yeah, we we gotta we gotta protect humanity, but we can't like stop Thanos from killing half of them, even though it actively opposes their mission of having enough people on. Ah, whatever. <laughs> it, it, it's the same issue here. It's like, why why aren't you, you just introduce the pantheon involved? of gods into the MCU? And there's just and no well, and we'll remember, talk about it. They're introducing the Greek gods in uh in Thor to be promptly killed seemingly by uh gore the god butcher so we just mm. keep ballooning up that uh that pantheon yeah so when you have like again when you have the, the ancient egyptians a civilization that spanned thousands and thousands, thousands and thousands of years like it's mind-boggling how long ancient egyptian you know civilization was right we have there's nothing to compare it to there's nothing to compare it to 
you you think that the way that they depict their gods and how religious that society was and all of the things that they did and the reverence that they treated these 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 entities and the way that they were portrayed it sucks to see that finally sort of represented in media like this and they're all a bunch of dumb fucking asshole losers it sucks you 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 expect something interesting and cool like oh yeah i can see why this civilization worshiped you for thousands and thousands of years it's like mm. no they're just dumb idiots yeah. sucks um because they they call in cult leader man and he just does like the most normal sort of i'm not evil you know what mark yeah, is kind of crazy and as someone's pointed out in chat, he has a tattoo of Armit on his arm. Like, he has a walking just, stick it, with Armit's like a warm face with the, the crocodile the handle. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like, also, there's the aspect of it takes. I guess it takes. Maybe there's some confusion here. Does Kanchu not open up the door to go talk to the gods? Because if that's the case, doesn't that doesn't that mean that Amit uh, uh, Amit has to open the door for Ethan Hawke? How does Ethan Hawke get here? They How is he an avatar of there. Amit? He was a no, he's prior not, avatar he of Conchu, right? Conchu. He's not an avatar of anyone. He's just his own oh, guy. Oh, okay. So, Presumably so you, can, you can be brought here. The door you don't have to be an avatar to be here, God. I guess. Yeah. Okay. All right. But yeah, that he's just like, yeah, Mark's kind of nuts. Um, and, um, he's not well, and they're just like, yeah, okay. Um, you're Mark does the worst body. thing. He he flips yeah. out in anger and tries to punch, uh, punch him. cult man. Well, just... Conchu does, I guess. I don't know who. Yeah, which it, meant to be. Uh, it better not worse. be Conchu because I. It probably was. Yeah, it Conchu. is even worse because Mark is just a guy, but conchu has been around for many, 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 many thousands of years, like all of these people, and the. There is not one ounce of sagacity that you can pull from any of these people. They're all just a bunch of dumb fucking idiots. And it's like, what have you been doing? I just think, it, mm -hmm. so we, so to, to recap, we were very shocked that this was the drama at this point. Two and a half episodes in, and it's all of the Egyptian gods have a council with our main character, and they're asking him, is there actually a cult trying to raise Armit? And, and we know, it's like, good God, there's so much proof of this. Yes. And then they're like, I don't believe you. Anyway, bye. Nah. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm really? gonna present no actual evidence, and the gods don't like say anything. I mean, they were trying to find Amit's tomb, it's, it's right? It's literally like have, a room full of idiots. The Egyptians it's a have room eyes full of on Amit's tomb. Can they just go look at? Presumably, that. Well, no. Remember that she was buried in secret. Even they don't know where she is. Oh, that was that, uh, that's uh, horseshit. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I mean, but okay. If what the does show it mean says for them so, to be buried like, in secret? Okay. Who knows then? Because wasn't there like that map that they found? The map later on that leads exactly to where it is. That oh, causes the, the insane thing that yeah. we're going to talk about um, at the end. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, there is there are so many sources of information. But you wouldn't even need any of them if you just had a rational conchu and a rational mark explaining. Mm -hmm. There are lots of ways to prove this that go beyond my word against and the his. Stakes in this, are extremely high in this council yeah. right now. Like this is a very important thing that I'm claiming. Yes, and they'd be like, yes, and you'd be like, why would I be motivated to claim it falsely? you imagine what exactly do i have to gain i'm trying to tell mm -hmm. you guys about the end of significant amounts of innocent life yeah billions Please dead probably investigate this fully this man is planning within the next few days presumably to raise armit uh to release her from whatever the fuck situation you do you not think it's worthwhile to keep an eye on this person check out where they live to oh, look at his walking stick yeah someone, someone i believe this enough to risk yeah Someone's pointed out in chat that the cult man, Ethan Hawke, would have been transported there from Armit's tomb, presumably. Oh, he was you're right. Dead, yeah, that's remember? where he was. Well, when so, the like, eclipse happened, I, he was digging, so maybe he walked away to make sure that... I mean, so it's like, what are you doing in the middle of the desert, my dude? Like, Especially digging with your whole cult, when this guy claims your cult's trying to raise Armit. Hmm, this is what I'm saying, like, the gods mm -hmm. are just like, nah, I want definitive proof or I'm gonna go back to sleep, because I'm so busy in my life, apparently. Doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's this such a time... damn shame. I've, I've got a love of, I, I got a lot of like appreciation, and I have a, a, I really enjoy like ancient Egyptian culture and the imagery and stuff, and to see it finally portrayed like this, it just so shockingly bad. It's, it sucks. It just sucks so much. Go play Assassin's Creed Origins.
So anyway. So anyway. Where were we? Uh, let me open up my thing. Let me scroll past this stupid... I think they give Contra a warning, they got, right? They got They're the like... roof, right? They got the roof of the pyramid. That's how the pyramid interior is, where they have, like, the, it's staggered upwards. That's, so that's, that's nice. Maybe they probably did it by fucking accident. That's how... Because architecture's... Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, but, but let me scroll through the meeting of the minds here. One of the god avatars meets him before he leaves and i guess the other gods they go around a corner so i guess the other gods of egypt don't notice um and she says uh, what is what what does she say i legit i just i legit can't remember so what she says so this is the problem now um when we saw this egyptian god scene my investment plummeted all the way down to negative numbers um yeah, definitely. So what we'll have there. to do no is guess at some stuff. It, she puts him on the trail of Thing. He meets up with Girl. They go to place. Egypt. And I guess he's still got his phone on him. And there's this friendly person. <laughs> Turns out friendly person isn't friendly. Yes. Cult man arrives. Because <laughs> I can't <laughs> remember why any of this happens. I will, I'll, I will rewatch it, I swear. Um... We will, but it legitimately is just I by was, this point. I was very upset. We are so demoralized, uh, and there's they, seventy what they have million. Here is, uh, they're looking for the map. They've got like a map in this place, and and Mark is talking to Stephen through the because Stephen knows all that. So he's like, ah, Stephen's the brains. He knows all the e Egyptian stuff. They can work together. But then, yeah, they they get stopped and held at gunpoint. And then Coltman's like, oh hey, look at my crazy power. And then fucking like. Mark just disappears, and then he's up on, like, the roof as Moon Knight. He just, like, they all have their guns pointed out of he's there, and then, like, he just disappears the next. He's on the roof. That shit was pretty um, funny, yeah. That was really funny, because it's like, dude, how did he disappear? Oh, yeah, because Ethan Hawke blew up the you know, sarcophagus, and then we have an insane fight scene where, like, Moon Knight is just killing all of these dudes. And when we were watching it, a thought that we had was, these guys are, like, they're just bodyguards. Like, you're... You're trying to steal from this guy, uh, like, as far as they're aware, you're, like, a hostile person who's come into his, like, house, his land, his, uh, his property, um, and, like, you're just killing these guys, like, killing them all. Yeah, they don't they're deserve real... to die, they're just doing their job. You showed up, you seem to be the, the weird aggressors here, you're, well, what, I, what are you doing? What I'll say is, the show almost had me in terms of his trying to do something with this, yeah. in that Mark... Seems to very much not have a problem with killing them, but Steven does. That seems mm -hmm. to be, and so it's like, oh, so they are doing something with it. It's not the fact that they're not acknowledging that, you know, they came here to steal something, they were then captured, and then they were attacked by the bodyguards when they start running away and, you know, trying to attack back, and then they start killing the bodyguards. Steven takes over when he's seen enough brutality, let's put it that way. And yeah. uh, this, I realized, was the final thread that I had left for this show. <laughs> I was Steven. like, that's yep. pretty great, actually, that he takes over the body out of his passion for maintaining a principle of please stop fucking killing people. I like that. That's neat. I do. That's good. But then um, what happens is a bunch of them start impaling Steven. He's like, oh, 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 no, okay, okay, take over. Okay, kill him, basically. He doesn't yeah. say kill him, but like, he basically rescinds control so that Mark will then kill them. Um, and it's like, oh, damn. All right, well, that's gone. Yep. That thread is gone. So, also, you can impale Moon Knight with all of these, like, spears, and he's fine. <laughs> he is so strong. And you know what's odd as well is that this is, like, a pretty big character moment to force yourself into and take over Mark because you refuse to accept that you, you have to kill killing, innocent yeah. people from your point of view. But, um, it's kind of like a funny. It's like, time out, everyone, time yeah. out. Oof, oof. Okay, Mark, take over. Yeah, it's, it's like, like wait, but oh, no. this is what happens. He gets stabbed, stabbed, and he's like, take over, please, and Mark's back. And it's like, but, yeah, and then, but, but I thought, but... I thought, yeah, I thought you were invested in protecting them. Not that much, though. Not that I mean, much. he might have been inconvenienced. But yeah, look, look um, at that spear right through him. We, we, uh, we skipped what a over. shame. There was, there was a part where um, Mark uh, protected Layla with his cloak while they were getting shot, and he flung all of the bullets at the bad guys. He just flung them at them. Oh, you know like what? I think I got it right here. There you yeah. go. 
we got a that is a thing that it. happened in this show right there. Yeah, look at that. I. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> what could you say? You know. What yeah. can you say? Um. It's it, yeah. Also, also, by the way, this I know oh, this is a pet dude, peeve. Look at the CGI. Like, Right, I mean, it, that, so yeah, this is not, supposed oh, to be a that's cloth. Bad, yeah, like yeah, it is. It is not it behaving like as such. It looks like the cloth of like Batman in Arkham City. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's so hideous. Oh, that's oh, oh. oh wow, that's bad. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, God. oh no, that looks bad. That looks really also, bad. also it's weird that this, this ancient Egyptian power gives you this kind of control over bullets, but that's okay. I don't, I don't know what this is, Rags. I don't know how you could possibly sorry. launch the bullets fast enough from that standing position to actually work as bullets. And yeah. that they hit all the guys, it's, inter it's, it's, well, it's, it's all dude, just it's so like in The dumb. Simpsons when there was that film about the Homer Simpson who caught the bullet and threw it back in between <laughs> and killed him. <laughs> Except this is real, it's not a meme. Um... Also, I was about to say, this thing does the, uh, the, the thing that annoys me that all the Marvel stuff does, the stupid, like, I know it's not nanotech, but it might as well, the nanotech helmet that comes off constantly, the mask comes off, it's stupid. It goes, I hate it, I hate it, I'm sick of this as a trope, that the mask, it's the same reason why Chief takes off, John Halo, sorry, takes off his mask in the show. It's like, you can't have, you can't have them in the costume all the time, or have them emote purely with all of the costume, and we gotta get it off at every possible moment. It's stupid, I'm sick of it, I hate it, I hate that, I hate it. Can we just stop doing that, please? The stupid nanotech helmets. Yeah, and yeah, he deals really well with bullets, but uh, the spears, uh, they can pin him right mm -hmm. down. Yeah. Yeah, we could stab through him with our spears, but our bullets don't do anything. Yeah. Of course. I suppose, well, so uh, people would probably make the argument, I suppose this is the argument, that um, those bullets actually are going in him, but he heals? And I don't know if they, it's like Wolverine no, style? No, the, the cape caught, the cape well, the catches cape... him. <clears throat> Correct. Um... Yeah, so if he's stabbed from behind, I mean, the pressure of a spear is different from a bullet, but I, I, I don't understand. They just go right through like, him, too. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, How do you I, kill Moon Knight? How do you kill him? If you can you stab do? him with a spear and it doesn't... I thought, like, Moon Knight... Now, help me out, people who've read more of the comics. I thought Moon Knight was just, like, a regular dude. In terms of his... He was, like, like Batman equivalent as a, as a guy. Um... That's what I've heard. Not that he's like insanely immensely, or that, or that, like, depending on the lunar cycle, he'll get stronger, but that he's just a regular guy. Man, not supposed um, to go frame by frame with this. Yeah, look at that. Oof. It looks a little drawn on, kind of. Looks pretty bad. Mm. Because you needed to take his mask off. You couldn't have just had him emote with his eyes. You got to see that face all the time. Gotta have their armor come on and off with nanotech. Can't just be like some armor that stays on oh. constantly. I'm so Dude, tired I, of it. I really feel like Marvel genuinely resents all the comic artists who decided that the heroes should wear masks. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know that they resent them. I think it's just the stupid thought process of I need to see their face to understand how they're feeling. It's the reason why. Because like No Way Home was like the peak of Spider-Man taking off his mask. Like at least in the other films, they'd usually have the the mask be damaged. And that's why it comes yeah, all off. Three of them like, pulling it, it off all the time. You, yeah, and that one, they're taking it off constantly. We got to keep seeing their face. Um, well, it makes yeah, you wonder so if the whole point of the mask is for identity, and then they're they're not keeping it on as much in that film because the identity's out and they're in a different universe. It's like why even have them then? Well, because th that's what people Branding. like and recognize from the comics, because those are the actual costumes that they wear. So you got to still keep doing the costume, even if you have actually a level of contempt for. Yes. Them being, it's because it's, it's, it's typically is not are. anything but uh sort of generally know. you have him with his mask on all the time except for like very critical moments well, so it's that's like, what i'm saying it's like, is there anything is there any point to his suit other than hiding his identity generally that's the point is to hide the but i mean i would imagine that having a mask is good in terms of like not having wind and shit and all the dust get in your face nice obviously the like, I, Stark suits right. had more, but typically speaking, like 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 Tobey Maguire's one was just for his identity, right? Yeah, more so than anything else. Yeah. Um, but it's just uh, I I I don't know. Like it's yeah, we 
I, I'm, I mean, people in chat are pointing it out as well. It's to remind people, big name, yeah, yeah. big name actor. Um, it's a constant reminder of them. And I guess it's just like lame because there are characters who do have. I I like the, I mean, <laughs> the hot take. I like the designs of a lot of like Marvel and DC characters as they are. I, I don't I don't need to like see their face. I'm happy with the costume. I like the costumes a lot of the time. They're cool and unique. But, like, the more that you have the stupid... And especially here, it feels like the nanotech really doesn't work because he's wearing a hood. So it's like a hood and mask stuff that manifests and disappears. It just looks weird. It really does, yeah. But um, I, it's magic. Can't like, use magic. That, that look, but uh, but it's, it's just like there is no difference between this and the nanotech. Like, it's the same thing, and I'm sick of it. Um, I, I preferred it in, like, Iron Man 2 and stuff where... The helmet would like pop up, but he'd still be fully in the armor. Whereas now, like, we gotta get the, everything off. We gotta take it all off. Um, we can't the naked. Try... Talking about no. Halo. Well, not. I mean, Halo. It, it counts as well, but it's just um, it's it's this trend. Can't keep them in there. It was one of the cool things about the Iron Man presentation with the. We see him in the suit and like the big with the holographic. That feels like a good compromise rather than having to take off the thing all the time especially when if the tech and like the armor provides some sort of protection i'd be keeping that and on you like, are a constantly. squishy fleshy person underneath yeah yeah more like ant-man and the wasp on, right when they constantly is it because like remember in the first film how he could like remove the face part but he would still have the helmet on but like we don't want to do that anymore because i'm pretty sure i i wonder if they even shoot with costumes that have helmets anymore or if they never do it because they constantly want to have the actor's face, and then I don't know. I'm I'm just sick of it. It's um, but it's never going away. It's it's become more and more and more common a thing. Um, it's, yeah, uh, fight is one. Yes, because the of fight course, is one. Innocents are killed. Characters are assassinated. Kind of shenanigans. I have to rewatch it because maybe there was more to it. As to whether or not Maybe. this was instigated entirely by our characters, so. I don't know. Um, I don't want to be too so. harsh on that because I really can't remember. Uh, but I oh. do remember what's soon to come, which is the fact that they can't quite yeah. read this series of pieces they've got to make this map to Amit's tomb. That's, that's what the point of it is, right? <laughs> or am I crazy? I uh, yes, that's right. Well, it's it's maps that because uh, what they realize when he talks to Stephen and passes control over to Stephen is. These are, it's a sky, it's a star map. Um, it, it'll show us where Amit's tomb is based on where the stars are located in the sky. Um, the reason why he does this, by the way, is he rips the, uh, he rips the uh, side view mirror off of the car uh, instead of just going over to it and talking to Steven without destroying the car. Oh. And then they assemble the, uh, the star map in the Dirt in like the sand rather than on the illuminated hood of the car. <laughs> I don't, with his, I don't get remember, it. He with does his back the facing worst. the source of light, meaning he can't yeah. see. He can't see because this is the middle what of the, the hell? desert. There are no <laughs> other. Yeah, why did you? Um, it's bizarre that he does this. Yeah, all of those things because uh, like you don't need to rip off the mirror thing to explain to Stephen that you're swapping bodies. First of all, mm -hmm. secondly, it was laid out on the hood. Oh, damn, why would you want to get sand all over your fucking map and your tape? You fool! But, yeah, so it's they, just like they, a weird thing. I don't. It doesn't serve any purpose other than just like it. a thing you do. Yeah. I don't even know what they were trying to get us to do with it. Like this is a little nitpicky, but it's just like you're you're just being stupid. Oh, well, I'm happy to concede uh, it's a I nitpick. I still don't feel like it's unfair to bring this up. It's so silly. It's weird. Like, why would you do this? Why would you get sand all over your tape? And why are you doing this in the dark? <laughs> I don't understand. They are. Uh, they why create are you the map idiot? here with all the sand on it, and then yeah, they're like, oh, this is star maps. Um, yes. so it, it was like drawn from where Amit's tomb is based on where the stars were there. And so what they realize is, oh, wait, the stars have moved in 2000 years. Now, I'm not quite familiar with this. I feel like I learned about this, but I've Do they say 2000? Well, I mean, I think it was something like 2000 years. I'm pretty I think, sure I think two, they say 2000 years. They need explicitly. where they were 2000 years ago. Um... Now, okay. seems so, a bit recent. So, so I'm going to ask people in chat to help me out here. How much do the stars move in the span of like 2,000 years? Is it enough that they would be uh, like unrecognizable as constellations? Um, 
I know that it happens, but I know I don't know how long it takes for these things to change. I figured it would be millions of years, not thousands. It, um, so the stars. So we it, we're gonna have to. We'll be a little bit more specific, right? So a good example here that they don't bring up in the show, but they should, is a good go-to example of how the stars can move relative to us, right? The ancient Egyptians, they had a North Star. Their North Star was not Polaris. Their North Star was Thuban, right? Because the way the, the Earth is on an axis spinning around, right? And that, that the pole star will be whichever star happens to closely enough line up to the, the point of the pole's rotation. Like Polaris, the one we have, it's getting, it's getting a little bit more accurate every year. And then it'll start getting a little bit less and less accurate. And then eventually, in a bajillion years, we'll have, you know, and eventually we'll have a new North Star. I guess That's just what, how it kind of works, right? To make it clear, the reason why this is the case is because the night sky is space. It's stars scattered across the cosmos. It's every, it is not like, the sky is not... Like, the sky changes depending on where you are. It changes depending on what planet you're on. It changes depending on what system you're on. It's not like a plain, like, flat thing cast against the sky of the planet. It is space. It is yes. our ability to look into space. Now, I know that we all know this, but I don't know that the show does for reasons which will become very clear the show as we is... proceed. The, I, it's confusing because the show... I... You almost don't know what the show doesn't know based on what it tries to do. I don't know if the show is confusing the very, very slow, if at all perceptible drift of the stars apart from each other, yeah. or if the or, show thinks that it's the way that the the, the Earth is tilting that mm -hmm. changes the perceived location yeah. of the stars in the night sky, which is different. Because Oh, wait, here's, here's, this is cool as fuck, all right? <laughs> Hoover Dam. Mm-hmm. At the Hoover Dam, which y'all should check out if you're ever in the area, anyone watching, it's cool as shit. The Hoover <laughs> Dam was finished in, I don't know, like the 20s or 30s. I, I forget, right? When they finished the Hoover Dam on a plaque, uh, of, uh, it's, a, it's a floor plaque. It's this big thing on the floor that you could walk out and it's, a, it's outside. It's by the big Art Deco statue they have to commemorate its completion. There's this huge plaque that is the night sky. And it has all of these stars set up on this huge plaque on the, the floor that you could walk over. And there is a big inscription that basically says that this is the this is what the night sky was when we finished the Hoover Dam. All of these stars, this is where they were when we finished the Hoover Dam. And the idea is that it, it's really kind of telling the, the mentality of the, the people who made it at the time, right? If humanity destroys itself in a nuclear holocaust, if one day there's a, there's something and humans leave the planet Earth and it, it's all gone and everything turns to dust, right? A spacefaring civilization or humans, a, a new civilization of humans find it. They can go to this place and by looking at this plaque where all the stars are, even if they don't know our language, they can look at those stars and they can know the date that those stars mean. Because... Mm -hmm civilizations get smart about this sort of thing well so, it, was, uh, it was the thing that they put on voyager one right they put on that gold plate that had information that they hoped would be understandable and comprehensible regardless of who found it um the, because i hope that now? the print voyager one it was the carl sagan yeah it was yeah, the, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. gold thing that's got a hum a man and woman it's got some information on it that would point to where earth is i based on mm -hmm. information that would be generally comprehensible provided that maths is uh consistent um which like we have every reason to believe that it we, will be yeah yeah if, what's the best we can do right it's the best yes, that we can it's really the best work we can with do. so um clarify um, um this is more of a question when they stood on top of Amit's tomb they looked up and went boom 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 put that on a map and much. went this, this is where the tomb is cool these guys find it 2000 years later unfortunately wherever that constellation is right now if they line it up, then it will be changed a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And I was just about to say, like, even if, because Rags, you were just saying that that one star is moving closer per year or whatever. If Pol they're off even Pol by Polaris, yes. If they're off even but by a couple its... of meters, right? That that is a problem because you're trying to find the tomb you want to be as exact well, as possible. 
not there because Pol- that's not Polaris's location relative to other stars. That's Polaris's location relative to the true center point of the axis of the Earth's rotation because the Earth's on like a twenty-three or something degree tilt, Gilt. and yeah. so there's there's a point in the mm. sky that's the 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 axis point around which the Earth seems to rotate. But Polaris is damn me if close I'm wrong to it as well. Depending on what time of year it is, uh, because of seasonal cha- and position of Earth relative to the sun, that that changes right over the course of. Well, could we uh? Maybe because because we're all thinking it, and there's several people in chat who are already thinking about it. Should we should we let everyone else who doesn't know know what the other half of this scene is? Right. So yeah. So what what happens is they uh they're like, oh, this is two thousand years old, so we we can't use this. This isn't going to help us. And so Konshu is like, oh, I got an idea. I got an idea. It's a real um, banger, guys. So. He he and Steven are like, all right, now do what I do, which is some vague hand gestures. <laughs> and what they do is they reverse or rearrange the night sky to look like it did 2,000 years ago. And this is accompanied by quite a, quite a display of what appears to be a reversal of time. The, the stars spin around rapidly... It's very kind of grandiose. There are some Everybody components to be aware it. of. The first being, Konshu warns that by doing this, they will get their answer, but he will be encased in stone. Or yeah, sand this is or bad. The gods, the gods won't tolerate this. Yeah, um, like this is a big bad move. Konshu's doing this so they get their lead, but Konshu will be yes. imprisoned as a result now, of this. Now, for whatever reason, yeah, for whatever reason, now, the gods really don't like this. So, now, remember how we talked about with the solar eclipse, that one of two things could explain this. Either it is an illusion or things are physically moving. Now, again, I don't know what it means to cast an illusion that changes the night sky, but the second option is for everybody who's here. But obviously, um, this is much, 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 much worse if they are physically moving the cosmos, because that's what is happening Yeah, because it seems like everybody can see this. Everyone sees the sky freaking out. Yeah. Like it, they yeah, they look. they make a point of showing us <laughs> like, that everyone in it. the city looks up to the sky and goes, "What the fuck is happening?" Look, look at this. Look at this. And so <laughs> this is the first thing about the illusion theory. I'm like, well, so not everyone on Earth is seeing this, right? Presumably, because if they are, that's catastrophic. But if they're not, yeah. that means Conchu can control who can see it and who can't, theoretically. And and also it means he is a caster of illusions on a pretty intense well, scale. Well, I was going to get to um, that, but my point was, then why doesn't he limit it to just the two people who need to see it, not this everyone? So it's like, I don't... Th- yeah. Basically, I chat, don't think it's a- we up forever trying to figure out what the fuck is happening here. <laughs> so I mean- this is a cool way to... All th- we Konshu could have said because I was saying earlier, right? This could have been a really cool way to explain some star stuff and ancient Egyptian stuff to the audience because either Stephen or Konshu could be telling Mark and Layla, right? So, oh yeah, the stars don't stay in the same place; they actually move a little bit. Uh, Konshu could have said, "Oh, I recognize this sky. This is the night sky of you know when we reigned yeah. in Egypt. This is the way that the stars looked. I know the I know these skies very well. I'm the god of the fucking moon, so yeah. I know the sky pretty well. It's kind of my job. It's what I do. Um, and so he could have actually a reason to converse with them and explain to them these things. But so, he doesn't. I just, I just want to ag- acknowledge that. everyone in chat who's saying, aren't there apps for this? Yes, there are apps for this. I, that's something I guess with... they don't get a signal or a phone out in the desert. Oh, what a great reason! Like, just saying, it's like when we watch, I'm trying. I'm trying. They don't have a good signal. They don't have a good signal. There's no just, signal in the desert, Mahler. Come on, Conchu's not it. the god of wireless. Think about if this is not an illusion, and everything is being moved around. So stars that like blew up in supernovas are being reformed. Um, they're all moving around. I guess the photon, because remember, the stars that we see, it's a glimpse into the past because light speed, it's not like, you know, it's not instant. So like photons are probably, must be going backwards, right? They must be in order to have the night sky be as it was before. You would need the, the light that existed there before to reverse and travel back about 2000 light years equivalent in order to make all of this happen. It doesn't, 
I don't see how this can possibly make any sense at all. And if it is an illusion that calls upon, I guess, presumably memories Khonshu has, why does he not just know these things? Like, how does he cast an illusion of a sky that he doesn't remember, if that's possible? Like, what does it even mean? Are these powers bound to Earth in terms of POV of Earth and this particular location? Like, what... It, I I don't understand how it can make any sense whatsoever, like, no matter how you look at it. And, of course, the world must acknowledge this. The night sky just, like, moved inexplicably on its own. Like, surely Doctor Strange is getting involved now. Or any number of Avengers or heroes in this world or governments. Yeah, so, um, and the Super Chatters came I'm in back. saying there's a third option here. They could be moving Earth back 2,000 years to fit the star alignment. This is insanity. It's like, yeah, that, that is, would... Yes, that would be pretty insane. Too. That would be arguably... So that would kill everyone on I Earth. I think out of the three um, possibilities, that is the worst one for the state of humanity. If you spun Earth 2,000 yeah. years back... Like, would. What does that yes. even mean? You'd just be spinning Earth. You need to move the solar system too, and all the stars, because yes, the stars because are objects. Earth's the, tilt, Earth. Yeah, Earth's tilt itself doesn't change the position of the stars relative to each other. No, it just so, changes the um, actual position of the stars in the night sky. Be clear, right? When we talk about how we analyze stories with inference, they don't tell us the mechanics of this. They give us lines that could mean lots of things, and we get components that could mean lots of things. And so it's like, well, it didn't spin Earth because everyone would be dead, right? And it's like, well, I don't know because I don't know if this I don't show know if they knows know that. that. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's yeah. the same as with the snap, right? Planets move, so if they're teleported exactly where they died, they're just going to teleport into space. It's like, I don't know that the films acknowledge that, really. I'm just giving him the benefit of the doubt here. Like, this didn't destroy the world. Maybe it's an illusion, but I don't understand the breadth of the illusion, and I doubt. Yeah, it's if it was an illusion, how come the people in the city can see it? Why not just limit it to the people there? And it, if it's an illusion have, that uh, is cast like this through Conchu's powers, does that not just mean that he has all of this information in his brain somewhere? Like, how do you cast an illusion of something that you don't know about, like that you don't have information on? Like, what does that even mean? And if that's a power he has, damn, he should be casting illusions all the time. Yeah, it sounds like a pretty basic cool, D&D uh, shit. You can't cast yeah. an illusion of something you don't know what it what it is. You gotta mm -hmm. know what a thing is I, to cast an illusion of it. This is the thing, man. I, I wish I could ask the writer what they're telling me is happening here. I I, we legit do not know. I don't, we I have don't to try to cover know. all of our bases here. Either way, it seems to be really bad. Um, what are we? What, what's what? Are, any theories, chat? Because <laughs> I just like. Do, do you think there's anything that proves it to be a definitive way? Because I just don't know. Aren't you even said he remembers that night? Yeah, we could have had a way cooler scene where he reminisces about the night that he saw yeah, that and exactly. something that happened. Or... This is the point the where we learn. Guy. This is where we learn about the Egyptian gods. You've been around, but you're not around anymore. And you seem to be upset that people don't worship you, but you don't seem to care about popping in to say hello to humanity. Why are you weak now? How come you're just observing? All of these, this is your point for Kanchu to explain, or literally reminisce to himself almost, because it's been so long since then. Even for his, in his scale, this has been many, many thousands of years. This is a point where we have some character for Kanchu, which would be cool because he's a really very he's a very prominent actor in this story. Yeah. Uh, but they don't. Instead, he casts this mind-bogglingly massive spell, the scale of which is just we we don't even know. So, so and some it's bring, all just terrible. Brings up the thing that we have talked about: the gods having severe consequences implies it's not a simple illusion. Now. That, I think, is a strong argument, except for if this was applied to the entire planet, every human is able to see this as it happens, that probably is good enough to lock him it's away. Pretty big. Yeah, probably this big change, this is a worldwide phenomenon that humanity is going to be investigating and will never forget. This is one of the, this that may be one of this. the most well, so, important, yeah. Yeah, um, this should turn up now in all the other Marvel films going forward, but it won't, obviously. Yeah, it won't, because we don't. Because this is, remember, this is the Marvel Universe. If something like this happens, it means some crazy shit's going on. Um, kind of like how, because, well, remember though, this is like, because in Eternals, um, fucking, like, a, a big celestial just pops up above Earth and is like, hey, I'm here, and then disappears. It's like, dude, 
all of these crazy events happening after. It's so great that Cap just abandoned the, the present, <laughs> like, while all of this crazy shit's going on. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, this happened, and, uh... <laughs> and, then, and then Conchu gets locked up, yeah. Yep. So I guess they have no Moon Knight powers anymore. Presumably, and... Aren't you said before they did the spell that you need to get Mark to break me free? Like, oh. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Ethan Hawke gets to go back to the council place him. and basically, like, gloat a bit. Yeah. How did Ethan get here? They invited they him, I guess? Him yeah, they were like, you were right about Conchu, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. You and, were and right, he was the, casting an illusion This is what I mean about the something. fucking gods. It's like... Everyone, everyone, get on the phone. We gotta get to the council. Oh god, what's happened? It's like, Conchu, Conchu, he's, he's fucking rewinding the sky by 2,000 years. It's like, well, why? It's like, I don't care. We gotta punish him. And you're like... Well, Just punish him, yeah. Did, but aren't you at it all just, curious? Does it not concern you that... Yeah, like, don't you don't you wonder why is Conchu doing all this stuff? What He's clearly very concerned about something. Enough to where he's willing to get in God prison to explain this to yeah. mortals like does that not concern you at remember, all you told you know? him you told him you'd lock him up if he did this again he did it anyway so what yeah. does that tell you about he Conchie? clearly was convinced that it was worth it that yeah. should be warrant because you're just sitting on your asses doing nothing for thousands of years yeah. so uh yeah just so, i don't know just for the sake of entertainment if, if there's any pressure like? you should be getting it's that the show is pretty bad um <laughs> it's I uh, I feel like if you'd listen to us explain episode one and then episode three back to back, it's like, how is this the same TV show? It's like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I we have jumped we quickly from the story. Well, remember, Isaac said that this is a cat more of a character study. No, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not. not. It's very plot heavy. Um, I I thought we were going to get a low stakes, low level, more intimate story, and it's just not what we're getting because it's big. No, we jump straight the into world. this massive galactic plot yeah. where the fate of the billions of lives and the planet is at stake. Yep. And mm -hmm. I don't even really feel like I know our protagonist or any of the rules about anything that I'm seeing. Because the problem is with what just happened in this episode, we can't, the, the broader universe can't not acknowledge Moon Knight. Um, he can't continue to be somebody who exists in his own little neck. Like, Daredevil is cool. low-level enough that it makes sense that he could be, like, ignored, even though I'm not sure that he really would be. But, like, he could be left to his own devices more so than this dude who's moving the night sky. Remember, um, in episode two, that fight they had uh, is in front of, like, a series of just normal people. people. Yeah, that's right. Like, you're telling me none of them- like, like, so, the Avengers will be aware of a guy called Moon Knight now, if not, maybe they don't have his name, I don't really care, but they'll be aware of a guy wearing a fucking costume beating up things in- mm -hmm. uh, this is Egypt, right? I can't remember- Wow, no, this, yes. this was- it was in Britain oh. and then in Egypt, yeah. we- well, Britain, yeah. Like- Like- I, Look at this bus, you tell me, like, nobody on this bus had a phone? Yeah. I just recorded everything that was going on here. It's nuts. Look at them all. Because he was even remember, um, you you'd have reason to pull out your phone even earlier than this when there's this guy in a white suit going like, oh, just, "I'm gonna yeah. knock your head in, mate." Exactly. You'd be recording that in this day and age. Oh, there's so many people everywhere. Yeah, like Moon Knight's done. He's he's already opened up to to the world, and then he's just doing cosmic level shit anyway. Why what the, the hell? fuck? Huh? What? Hi, Jay. Just, I, ha I heard all of it when I was getting my food. Just, what the fuck, man? Moving the night um, sky, yeah, that was pretty uh, crazy, huh? It's just like not just moving. like it's not just like a painting above us, man. No, I know like... exactly. <laughs> it's space. I think that the it's writers might the think that. Like, that's, uh, well, that's a legitimate concern sorry. that I have. The writers might be so ignorant of the the world they live in that they think it really is just dots on a sky. I think. I, the problem is I don't want to jump to that conclusion, but it's hard not to. Yeah, it, it, like that's just, a real possibility. It feels so much to me that there is a failure to recognize that the night sky is just our ability to see. Like it's what we see of space, the the thing that we're in. Like it's it's space. It's everything. Yeah. There's literally everything in space, as Rick would say, and like. And because, and of course, think about it this way, because remember, 
what we see in the night sky is a very, 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 very small part of not only our galaxy, but then if you expand it out, like in terms of the universe, fucking like infinitesimal that we see with the naked eye, but of course we have telescopes and we got the Hubble telescope and stuff in space and the new one that we can see a lot further. We can see all of that. Presumably the changes they're making to the night sky are influencing galaxies that we can see that are like 13 billion, like redshift, what's happening? These... <sighs> We, we can't ask these questions because I don't know that there's going to be any explanation that explains any of it. That, like, the night sky is a reflection of stars as they were, depending on how far away they like are. A, a don't ask like, questions show, you know? Kind of. This is, this is absolutely a don't ask questions <laughs> show. This is, please, God, do not ask any fucking questions. It has to be an illusion because it can't. Like it I, has I, to I be. My, my brain keeps defaulting to that. I'm like, brain, you know how much they screw things up, right? And I'm like, no, I know, but the, it can't be. It has to be. I don't know what rules I'm working with here. Well, think about it this way: if he can move all anything the, out, if he moves all of the cosmos by doing this, how is he not like the most powerful character in the Marvel universe? Well, I, I get, even even <laughs> even then, even if we accept that, oh, he just is the most powerful character in the Marvel universe. And he can just rearrange Again. the cosmos at will, right? That's not going to change the night sky for years. You know, everything's going to... No, it's some, not. Something's, uh, the stars are going to change one at a time, well, depending so on how far what, away they are. That's what I said, uh, Jay, is that he would have to be, like, reversing the photons, like, out of... Like, and popping them back into existence, the photons that already arrived you know on Earth from all the way out in space. I really feel like it's almost unfair to make the people aware of this, because that's, like, tiered or in terms of how poorly written this is, they can wow. barely get past to you. I specifically mean the people who wrote this. Like, I really don't want to be mean, but doing this fucks everything up in so many ways you have no idea what you've done, and you haven't explained what you've done. You've just done it. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's it. But yeah, just... The idea that what we see in the sky isn't the stars as they are, it's the light that came from them reaching us. I don't think they've thought about that at all. Well, yeah, it's... It's, um... It's just... It's like they had a... Because... I bet what it was was, isn't it clever that the stars have moved? What if we moved them back? Like, that, that oh. was the first thought. But then we didn't go to the second thought or the third thought, which is, well, wait a minute. What does this mean logistically? Well, wait a minute. What about physics? And then you just, I, uh. They don't know what the word physics means. You keep saying red and, shift, and like, that is... would matter? Yeah, pr it, yeah, it would. Like, it's, it's invariably going to have an impact on that, because regardless of whether you only care about the ones that you could see with the naked eye, in order to move all of these around, you would have to be moving all of them. Which means that you would have to be moving... Like, sure, it's not consequential, I guess, if you think about it on, like, some... This is what I mean. I don't even know what it means to, like, consider all of these things in this situation. It's insane. Like, surely everybody can agree that it's insane, regardless of whether it's an illusion or he's actually moving all of space. Of course, the latter of which is, is like, much more catastrophic, but... I just, like... I... This... All of this happens after they make it very important that Stephen tells Layla that the Egyptians basically invented astronomy right, and our astral navigation... Like, they, mm -hmm. they put a lot of focus on how the Egyptians came up with a lot of this stuff and how smart they were in terms of the, you know, stars and things. So the fact that they say that and then Kantu just does this. Yeah. It's like, what do you, what do you, what, how do you link these two things together? It's, it's very, it's very strange. And, um, you think about the options they had as writers, right? They were like, we could have it so that he, he puts up his hands and then you see that the camera zooms into the sky and you see the stars just moving a little bit and he's like putting them in the place they were 2,000 years ago. It's like, But that wouldn't be interesting. How else can we do it? It's like, the fact that everything is spinning around them in what looks like a circle, it's just like, are you, are you implying that we're reversing time by the days? Because, by the way, we yeah. don't see any, like, sunlight, do we? So it's just the nights? Yeah, seemingly. So, assumedly, he's, he's, yeah, he's not. How does that work? And what about, remember, our star, you know, the sun. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, so, I guess the sun doesn't also, move. No, the sun would have to be moving, but keeping it. It would its, have to be moving. It would have to be moving. But it has to be absolutely. keeping its back, or it's, it's to the back of Earth, or to the back of where they are, because the sun never shows up I here. Guess. I don't understand. Yeah. Also, it's funny that. 
It's funny that she has a computer that just knows what the fuck to do with this. Well, um, yes. She just has a out. tablet and it knows what to do. I could, I, you know, again, Rags, I'm just like, why even bother with addressing these bonus bits when we just cannot, for the life of us, fucking understand why the hell they did this and what it means. I just, I'm so lost at this point. It's like, the idea of hanging on to any threads of continuity is just blown open by this moment. I have no idea what any of this is. And I can't believe we did it again. In a it different can. way. Like, they keep figuring out new ways of doing, like, grand cosmic bullshit that ru ruins everything. <laughs> Can't just tell a story about a guy and a thing, and maybe it's a, it's just a, it, it's local and it doesn't have that many characters, and we get to learn who they are, and maybe it just we can't do that. It has to be this massive, cosmically cataclysmic, world shattering end event, like all the, oh, man. It has to be bigger, and the problem is that it just starts leading to this problem where every single time it has to be the biggest like i'm pretty sure the lowest stake thing that we've had so far was well i guess it probably was one division right that probably was the lowest stake thing that yeah, there's just, been in um, phase four the 1200 lives the nice and low stakes yeah nice low stakes thousands of people because everything else falcon the winter soldier was like massive like global consequences in terms of politics loki was everything all of everything yeah Black Widow All was that the whole ever world. was and John ever Chi will was the be. Whole world. Uh, Eternals no was home. the whole world. Was no Way Home world. was like the multiverse, basically. Um, I don't. I get. Oh no, Hawkeye, right? Hawkeye would be the lowest stakes one. I, I forgot. We didn't watch that. <laughs> it's the one we missed. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the lowest stakes one. Apparently, um, we get really unlucky with the ones we choose because, as far as I know, Hawkeye is the most seems grounded. Like Hawkeye's the strongest. Yeah, but like, ah. <laughs> oh. Like, just, uh, and then we look to the future, it's like, what are we doing? Multiverse of Madness. The multiverse. <laughs> Thor's hey, probably you know gonna who, be a big deal. You Black know who Panther. would be a cool, a cool, like, oh, what are they calling them? Um, alternate characters, what are they calling them? Variants, variant. that's the word. A yeah. cool variant to show up would be Ed Norton Hulk. That'd be neat. Well, I'd be like, I, think, hey. I think that uh, Ed Norton Hulk is canonical, still. Yeah, well, this this would this would explain this would this would, would explain you know why he looks different in that film. It's a different universe. Almost film, as though yeah. the canon for this sort of timeline doesn't include the Incredible Hulk we saw. That's from a different timeline. Yeah, the um, one in our timeline would just replace him with Mark Ruffalo, but we never saw. Yeah, that. The, yeah the one yeah, in I our timeline would be exactly the same, but with Mark Ruffalo, which you know is. Is, is then the what, case what anyway, we, right? Like, so, yeah. So, what are we doing with that? It's not canon. It's not canon that he changed Iron Man? his face from Edmund to Man? Mark Ruffalo. What about Iron Man then? What about Iron well, Man? Well, Iron Man, there's this? Iron Man. Tony Stark Iron Man that. exists in that universe as we know him. No, no, it, Brody. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, that's yeah. That's a good yeah, question. Exactly. You want to make Iron Man one? Like, oh well, it did happen, but it was Don Cheadle, not well, Terrence Howard. So, I mean, the, I mean, that is. That is supposedly our assumption, right, as viewers, that it's always it's been... the same person. Yeah, we're yeah just that it is the same there. person. And that they, they've not canonically changed their face. And now wait, the multiverse wait, wait, is in here. Wait, why couldn't you make I the same it... argument, though? You, well, well, that's what I'm honestly, you can. Like... You could make the same argument, but it feels wrong. <laughs> which is why I want to be consistent. Well, it's just a bit of, like, goofy, nerdy headcanon. Yeah, right? no, I know. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah they're just, all, like, they're all different, the very person. similar universes where the same thing happened, but... Like, one person maybe looks different. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we are encountering that, because in, in the trailer for Doctor Strange, we've got, like, three versions of Doctor Strange. I think even four, and they all look like Benedict Cumberbatch, but with Loki, we got a shit ton of, like, different Lokis. Yeah. They look totally different. Um, I guess, that, you know, both are possible. I guess. Well, yeah, because in Infinity, right, I guess there'd be, like, plenty that look exactly like you, and also plenty who don't look like you at all. Yeah. If you had an infinite amount then there would be an infinite amount who look like you and an infinite Yeah, exactly. And an infinite yeah. amount who don't look like you, who look like any other well, this is why it, it doesn't the argument doesn't work. There's like, oh, of all the villains to come and fight Spoodum and we know them all from the movies. Like, yeah, that's possible. We've literally yeah, it's just, possible. like a, a meta yeah. convenience, but it doesn't it's not really a convenience at all. Mm-hmm. Aren't you guys excited for the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Oh. I know yes. I am. I mean, mm -hmm. they've heard us talk about this for ages. We were hoping Moon Knight would be good, uh, as you just saw that. 
I think if they were, were going to say what's the biggest flaw of Moon Knight, it's like, is there even a question? Like, it's... It's the, it's the plot. Um, it's insane. That is hideous. Um, yeah. I still don't really know Mark. Steven, I feel, mm -hmm. is, is, is floppy right now. Uh, at best. Yeah. Turn him into a bit of a joke, feels like. Yeah, I wish that um, all of episode one was Steven's perspective. And then mm -hmm. it would have been really cool to do all of episode two to do the episode again, but all of the Mark parts instead. Mark, yeah. We were hoping that they would do that, and it would and be really maybe fun and clever. We learn about both of our characters a decent amount. We mm -hmm. could, we could that way. We could both jump, sort of jump into the plot and explore who we're going to be doing that plot with. Let's spend the time. But instead, because... we got all of this. Dude, how cool would that have been? We, are, with we like, are only half. Oh, sorry. If someone, if there was a scene they did where like Mark and uh, Stephen are fighting over the body while talking to fucking Layla, whoever, a character. And then in episode one, you get only half of the conversation. Then episode two, you can put it to, to, you know, you could have someone could edit them together to make the conversation make a hell of a lot more sense, you know, because it's like, you'll keep hearing things out of context on both episodes. Like, that would have been really cool. Since we've had the hint in this of a third personality, how cool would it be if we, we did that cutting of these two together, but some small stuff was omitted, but yeah. it was so small that you don't appreciate it at the time? And then it all sort of lines up when uh when we get our third POV, which it seems like we're definitely going to get a third POV character. It feels um, as though um something like Hawkeye, you could have someone experiment with it, I guess, in terms of you know creating content and stuff. But this felt like the thing that definitely you'll have is you got a, Egyptian gods uh, uh, for you to pilfer for your story, and then you also have just like it seems to be irrelevant compared to the Avengers mainline. You know, like, Hawkeye mm -hmm. is very connected to all of them, but this guy is like, got his own story, Brandy. he's on his own, he's in a different part of the world, and he's got his own pantheon to deal with, as well as all this history. It's just like, you can do whatever you want, film it however you want, stylize it however you want. I think that's the problem, right, is if this one is not really anything, then the, I didn't really have much reason to expect anything really great out of, like, Black Panther 2 or, like, Good she God, so it's like, oh shit, that was like our chance, really. I guess they could surprise me, like these other Marvel projects, but this was the one that was best poised to be really cool. And it's not. So I'm, I'm not, I don't know, I, I don't really have much reason anymore to be super optimistic about what's coming out. It's lame. Um, yeah, uh, we will keep an eye on the episodes as they come out and once they do i'll rewatch them get some notes ready and we can do an episode uh, going through this in more detail yeah. i don't know that by that time we will have any more information on what the fuck just happened in that scene i feel like they're not going to mention it again but we'll see i think that'll be the end of it yeah we've already mentioned some things that just don't come up again like the goldfish growing its fin back just seems to have happened oh no the that's whole... a different goldfish is what it was that's a different oh fish. was it yeah. I th oh, is so that what it was? I might oh, have missed okay. the detail. I thought um, it was like the fish chat were, died uh, and um, because... Yeah, that's what they were saying. That yeah, like, okay, and, like, and so Mark in an attempt to appear as though everything's the same as he bought another goldfish. Yes. But Mark would have ripped the fin off that bastard. Also, uh, I think that, um, that... Yeah, and then from the first episode, how he doesn't have control over his body, that just doesn't ever pop up again. And it would have been very useful. On multiple occasions, I'm sure, but it just doesn't really ever come up again. They have played very fast and loose with when they can take over each other. Mm-hmm. Very annoying. Also, my computer turned my fucking mic down. I only just noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. I'm able to hear you this whole time, at least well, we have. So. One person in chat said, why do you sound so quiet? And so I was like, hopefully everyone could hear me up to this point pretty well. I heard you very well. Okay, well, that's good. Uh... Shall we move on to yeah, the please. last of the main topics? Oh, right. Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic! Story. Yeah. Yeah. Now, all we really yeah. need is... We're just going to react to you, Freddy. That's basically it. Okay. Well, wait, do you want, like, a summary of the film? or I don't or think you need to go to... too too heavy into it. Just, just well, maybe a Whatever quick summary feel, of the plot, and then how good was the movie? 
Yeah, I'll do the summary of the plot. So the plot is Sonic is chilling out with his buddy Tom uh, that he met in the first film. He's hanging out, but he wants to uh, he wants to do hero stuff. He wants to go out there and be proactive and save people. And we see that at the beginning of the film that he's like in the city trying to, but he's he's reckless. He's irresponsible. His uh, it, it seems like he's more so motivated of being a hero partly because he thinks it's cool and stuff going out there. Tom is telling him, Sonic you know, homecoming. Tom is like, you know, it's being a hero is, is about being responsible for other people. You gotta, you know, you gotta look out for other people and you don't pick the moment when you're going to be a hero. That moment picks you. Um, so then uh, Tom and his, his, his uh, wife go uh, to Hawaii because uh, her sister is getting married. Sonic's on his own. Uh, but Eggman, who got stranded in, uh, in like this alternate uh, crazy weird mushroom world, he's back uh, with Knuckles the echidna played by Idris Elba, um, who's very good in the role, but we'll talk about that later. And uh basically uh what what what's uh the central plot oh uh the central plot is that Knuckles has some sort of rivalry with Sonic that is derived from uh like the past in the world that Sonic used to live in before he became he came to Earth. Um and he is looking for something called the Master Emerald which is like an immensely powerful artifact that if you have it, it makes you super duper powerful. There were wars back in the weird and the alien world that they came from. And that's what they're after. And that's what Dr. Eggman now wants, because initially the, I think the plan was just to kill Sonic, but um, the plan shifts to we're going to get the Master Emerald. But Sonic, while he's fighting Knuckles, gets saved by Tails. And then they, uh, they get a map that goes super duper crazy and it tells them to go find the Master Emerald. And so that both of them, these two teams, are on a race to get the Master Emerald. They go to Siberia, where they find a compass, um, and then they they go down the slopes, the mountain slopes, having a big battle. Um, Sonic and Tails narrowly escape, but Tails is seriously hurt, and uh, Knuckles is also confused by the way that Sonic is behaving. It's like, why is he? Hmm, like he's he's saving his huh? Like he's acting really odd. He's not acting as ruthlessly as I would have expected, based on what I've heard of him. Um, and, uh, th they escape by basically getting into a wedding, um, using these rings that they have that teleport them all around the world. Tails is really badly hurt, and Sonic is like, oh, well, I, I, this is my fault. Like, Tails got hurt because of me, because I wasn't good enough, so I'm gonna go and do this on my own. I'm gonna go and stop the bad guys on my own, um, which he's able to do because the temple that they're looking for, that the compass leads them to... Uh, just so happens to be pretty close to where Sonic ended up by pure chance because Tom went to a wedding in Hawaii. They go to this temple, they find the Master Emerald, Sonic and Knuckles have a fight, and while that's happening, uh, Eggman gets the, the, the Master Emerald and gets super duper duper powered up, um, and the temple starts to collapse, and Knuckles gets pinned under some debris underneath water. Sonic goes to get him and saves him, but Sonic can't swim. Um... And then Knuckles comes down and saves him. And then the two end up on the beach and have a conversation about friendship because Knuckles is confused as to the reason why Sonic would save him when they were opposed to each other. And Sonic's like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to let you die. That's not something I'm going to do. And Knuckles is like, hmm, I've been given reason to reconsider my grudge against you and just my perspective on the world. Let's team Disney up. Disney was writing this show. That's literally what the dialogue would be. <laughs> <laughs> think the dialogue isn't like that in Sonic the Hedgehog I would, too. <laughs> I would literally be yeah, you've literally given Character me reason writing. to doubt the thing that um, I am. <laughs> but uh they uh they use their little portal to go to Green Hills, which is the town that Sonic lives in on Earth, where Eggman assembles this crazy robot using his Chaos Emerald powers. Um Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles team up. They fight Eggman, they get the Master Emerald uh out of him, it breaks apart for some reason. And then it splits into the all the seven Chaos Emeralds. Whoa. Um, and Sonic is stuck there with the robot coming down on, uh, coming to get him. He's there with Tom and his wife, and they're like, we're going to stick together because we're family. We're not going to leave you here. And then he uses them uh, Chaos Emeralds to go super Sonic and then destroys Whoa. the robot. Whoa. Um, wow. And then, the burger and then after he destroys the robot and Eggman is presumed dead, he releases the Chaos Emeralds and they go off into space because he realizes he's not ready yet. That moment will come soon, but he's not ready for this kind of power. Um, and then Sonic Towers and Knuckles are playing baseball, uh, but Knuckles isn't super familiar with the baseball. He's never played it before, but he's having a lot of fun. Um, 
and then uh, that that's the end of the film. But <gasps> as the government people are scouring the uh, the wreckage of the Eggman robot, they mention a secret project fifty years ago. Oh, <laughs> I know what that is. And then we see this strange facility, and sitting there is Shadow the Hedgehog. So he's oh gonna be in the next one. God. Shadow the Hedgehog, Edgy the Hedgy. He's gonna Sonic play him. 3. I don't know who's gonna play who's him. Who's gonna play? I want to know. Nicholas Cage. I, I'm definitely gonna be there God, watching it, that. It's honestly like it's never like it's it's always been tragic, but it's never I feel been more tragic than it is right now that Christopher Lee has passed on. <laughs> Fucking, I mean, my Charles guess would Dance. be that they're probably going to get Keanu Reeves or something. I can easily see that. Keanu Reeves feels too obvious. It does feel Chris too Pratt, obvious. Chris Pratt, that's the most obvious. No, no, stop it. Chris Pratt, <laughs> need... Chris Pratt feels like no. Obviously, that was that would be a joke. Yeah, but uh, but I mean, who knows, right? Uh, but I, I guess uh, yeah, that's those are the broad strokes of the plot. The TLDR is the plot's pretty bad. Um, <laughs> but the character work is fine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd call it good, but it's 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 mostly like there. Um, it's 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 really straightforward, but it's functional, which is worth something, I would say. And it has a theme uh, that mm. is actually like reinforced consistently in the story with events that make sense. Oh my God. Um. So okay. yeah, it's kind of like a three or four out of ten is probably it's somewhere there. I I don't know what I would say, so, but I enjoyed it. I liked it. I didn't laugh at it, but there were lots of parts that made me smile. Um, like when I saw Sonic Tails and Knuckles standing there doing their hero pose, ready to fight Eggman, I was, I was like, this is fucking cool. This is like, I like this. This is really neat. Um, and I mean, when we talk about video game adaptations, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is far and away one of the more faithful video game adaptations. At least I guess if we're appealing to some vague general idea of like, um, a kick guy spoiling movie this that was your mistake my friend like you should have known that we were going to be talking about this what, in what detail talking about? he started off by telling you what the plot was from the very beginning yeah. like Why when did you, you decide around? that he'd spoiled enough <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was that was like, on you i i trust me like we talked a lot more about the nitty-gritty of moon knight than i just gave you for sonic all right like that's, we are uh, we yeah, kind sonic was the better of, of the two apparently I, 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 you know what? It probably is. Like, I, I, in fact, I think it might be because, like, at least the characters are relatively consistent and it has, like, a theme that is reinforced, uh, decently. Um, what was that? Yeah, so break the, the universe in Sonic? Well, so the big, the big issue that Sonic the Hedgehog has from plotting is convenience and, um, the general speedster issues. Sonic is incredibly fast, but his powers are used incredibly inconsistently. The clearest example of this is uh, when they're in the, the temple that has the Master Emerald. Like, Eggman's standing up there, he's about to get it, but he's doing the hero speech and like, haha, I manipulated and used you, Shadow. The whole time I'm there, I'm like, dude, Sonic, you could like Knuckles. grab that before, before, yeah, Knuckles, yeah. All I was thinking was, you can grab that before like, before Eggman could blink. Like, you you can get that, but you've just chosen not to because we forget that you have these powers. And, like, the, the speed at which he goes is, like, sometimes he's hyper-fast, like, Quicksilver, X-Men Days of Future Past fast. Other times he's not that fast. Um, it, and then that just causes, like, plot issues. It's a pretty standard one. Um, convenience being things like, uh, the clearest one is that um, Tom goes to a wedding in Hawaii. Like, he, he goes to Hawaii for this wedding. And um, he has a ring that he used to teleport then. Sonic gave him one that he could use to teleport back. Um, unfortunately, while they're in Siberia getting chased down the mountain, Sonic loses all of his rings. There's an avalanche, and he needs Tom to use his ring to get them out safely. And that's what gets them to Hawaii, which is in relatively close proximity to the temple that he needs to go to, that, like, Eggman and Knuckles found because they got the compass, not Sonic. It's like, shit, man. If they went on, like, their honeymoon or they had their wedding in, like, Florida or, I don't know, like, Egypt. France or Spain... Or just anywhere else, you'd be fucked. Like you'd, you, it'd be over. Like I, Eggman would get the Chaos Emerald, kill Knuckles, and destroy Green Hills. Um, so it's super lucky that that's the case. And there were other examples of that too. That um, there's like a dumb plot sequence where they try and where like they get captured by the government in Hawaii, and um, the girlfriend uh, or like Tom's wife and and uh, the woman, uh, her sister, like they they get tails um uh, equipment. And they use it to fight the bad guys, and it just works exactly as they need it to when they have no idea what it does. And they probably could have killed some people with how recklessly they were using it. But it's like, yeah, 
it's 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 wonky. It's quite wonky from a plot perspective. Uh, how's it doing? Do you know? Uh, it's it's the biggest video game opening ever. Uh, wow. more so than Uncharted. It's making a lot of money. People really like it. Well, uh, they've already I'm not greenlit. surprised it's doing better than Uncharted. I feel like Sonic's Before... just got some kind of this this allure of power to it that's just very approachable. Probably. Well, so because uh, yeah, the films the films made a bunch of money. They've already greenlit a third movie and a Knuckles spinoff show. Um, wow. With Idris Elba. Yeah, they are. Uh... Um. Oh yeah, that's right. So we're talking about the characters, right? So Sonic's central arc is um that he wants to be a hero, but he doesn't really have a great understanding of what it means to be a hero. And it's like what Tom says, right? You've got to be responsible for other people. Tails, who I think is pretty flat in this film, doesn't have a whole lot going on with him. He's much more a prop in Sonic's story, whereas Knuckles feels like he's his own character with his own stuff going on. Like, through Tails, he finds a friend that he doesn't really have because he never kind of had the capacity to make friends as, like, a little blue hedgehog in a human world. Um, and while he's off doing the hero stuff in Siberia, Son like Tails getting seriously injured leads Sonic to the erroneous conclusion that like in order to be responsible for other people, it means to be on his own and to like not endanger anybody by doing everything on his own. And that nearly gets him killed. Um, and so like the realization by the end of the film is that being responsible for other people doesn't preclude him from having friends and working together. It's like a really straightforward, simple arc, but I think it's effective. Um, Meanwhile, Knuckles is, uh, and I think I've said this a few times already, I think this is the best version of Knuckles, like, in anything. Um, I definitely prefer this version of Knuckles compared to the Knuckles you typically see in the games, who's like a doofus. Um, here it's like, he's naive about the way that things work. He's a little bit, he's not like, he's not hyper intelligent, he's not like Tails, Tails is super duper smart. Like, Knuckles isn't like a genius, but he's not an idiot, and he's definitely bound by, like, core principles, like, uh, you know, he he has perceptions of, like, honor and integrity um, that are kind of, like, core drivers for him. Uh, and it's the reason why it's, like, he finds Sonic confusing because Sonic is doing things that are, like, not strictly pragmatic or, like, he's operating in a way that's honorable in a way that he wouldn't expect considering they're meant to be adversaries. And then it's just, like, yeah, coming to the realization that it's, like, it's not quite as simple. The world isn't quite as simple as he's made it out to be. And that he can make friends here. And he's just naive. He's not stupid. I like that as a change. And like, when we're talking about having gravitas for characters in a story, like that Knuckles the Echidna played by Idris Elba has an oddly high level of gravitas. It's like, he does a good job. I, uh, I, I like, um, I like, uh, Knuckles in this film a lot. I really liked Idris Elba's playing the character. He's my favorite part of the film. Like I said, though, Tails is pretty flat. He's basically just a prop. And um, or, or he's more so a prop in Sonic's story than his own active agent. And um, Eggman's just kind of fun because it's Jim Carrey going nuts. It's like getting to go wild and um, and have fun with the character. It feels like he's really having fun with it, and it's fun to watch him. Like I said, I didn't laugh at this film once. I think the closest I came was the dot 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 thing, but otherwise it's just like yeah, it's fun. It's quaint. Lots of uh. There's lots of references, though, which I'm not sure how I feel about that. Lots of, like, pop culture references and, um, like, Sonic like, is constantly referencing movies and, and, and stuff, but, like, modern, nothing from the 90s or anything. Does he reference Sonic 1, the movie, as a movie? No. <laughs> um, oh, okay. That would, be, that would be weird, but funny. So you at any point say, ha, 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 one! No, no. But, but like, well, so one of the ones that stands out is, like, when Knuckles is chasing him on Siberia, he says, oh, great, the Winter Soldier. It's like, this joke doesn't make sense to me. Like, is it just because we're in Siberia? Because there's nothing about Knuckles that's Winter Soldier. Um, he, he's, he doesn't have any crazy memories. He's not, like, mind-controlled agents. red. Maybe. Yeah, but, like, I don't get the reference, is what I mean. It just seems like a, oh. it doesn't. Other than it's in the winter. Is it just that he's red? Winter I feel like Soldiers. that can't be it. Well, he's also he's also a mammal. Uh, well, no, he's a uh, what's it called the specifically? Oh yeah, that's monotrim? right. He's like a monotreme or something. That's yeah, right. that he's doesn't even monotreme. Echidnas, echidnas are their own little weird fucking thing. Um, maybe it maybe the Winter Soldier is a monotreme. An echidna. Well, maybe the Winter Soldier is a monotreme. We don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's not a big deal, I guess. Uh, though I. 
I guess uh, something that I've been thinking about a bit is uh, I rewatched some of the because I've been thinking about uh, like the Sonic games that I like kind of in the wake of um of uh, th- this film and thinking about it like Sonic Mania had these really cool 2D animated trailers that were like you know rooted in the old school classic like 90s Sonic um I uh I I think I really like that version of Sonic a lot more than like the modern Sonic and uh I guess there's a part of me that's like man it'd be really cool if we had like a 2D animated like I know that they made one in the 90s but like a 2D animated rooted in the classic like Sonic um sort of art style like that style but I I guess that's kind of never gonna happen (laughs) like uh um yeah Sonic 2. Do you have any questions or because there's nothing else really that I got? <laughs> I I just yeah man I I don't know I just don't know what to ask about Sonic. Uh, how's Jim Carrey? Oh I I uh I I liked him. Um, I thought he was fun. He's he's having a good time. Uh, he's he's to, pretty straightforward. Of... He just wants to take over the world. Like, I'm trying to not, think of what question like... I can ask. It's more specific, but I don't know. I know it's called uh... Mania Adventures. I meant a film, though. Like, I know that they made Mania Adventures. It's really cool. I'm just saying I'd like more of that. Um, but I, I guess we're never going to get that, really. Yeah, I'm trying um, to... I feel like there's a question to ask, but I don't know what it is about Jim Carrey's performance, I guess. Like, what? It's, uh, it's... Well, because it's, um, it's different from, like, Eggman in the games, generally. Like, um... He's much more zany than Eggman typically is. But I like it. He's not zany? Well, he is a little bit, but he's not like... um, But here they sort of dial it up. He's definitely not doing lots of crazy like spins and stuff. Are they giving Um, him a belly yet? No, he's got the mustache though. Hmm. Are they gonna? Are they gonna make Jim Carrey gain shit tons of weight for Sonic Three? Apparently, apparently, so. Jim Carrey said that he likes the idea of actually playing like fat uh, Eggman, but he's also apparently said that he might be retiring, which um, I'd be really upset if they didn't get him for the next one. I'd like for him to play that role again, even if that's the last time he does it. Um, well, I suppose that does it for that, and we can move on to the quickfire the round. TLDR. Surprise well, the TLDR would be that uh, if you if you like Sonic the Hedgehog, you'll probably enjoy the film. I liked it. Um, yeah, but it's 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 definitely got like plot problems, and it's not like it ain't some high art or anything. All right, like it's it's, it's pretty straightforward standard film. But I mean, I guess in the current landscape, something that's going for uh, a really simple, straightforward thing. It kind of does okay. Mate, that's worth something, I guess. But uh, yes, yeah, my, uh... Sweet. Well, um, I'm going to get a drink real quick. I'll be right back. Wow, Ugh. getting a drink when we're about to start the quick fire round. Quick fire. No, that's not how it works. It's like <clears throat> I, I start up a thing and then I show you a thing and then you guys say what you too think slow. about the thing. No, it's not slow. that. Slow. You're being slow. Not that quick. You're, you're doing it so fast. Ridiculous. All right, topic four, Halo. This is pretty bad so far. Oh, is that that is the topic? It's, yeah. Like, no, but we could spend well, as long as it takes for Rags to get back to talk about it. Oh, well, yeah, but the problem is now I'm two episodes behind. I'm not caught up at all. Yeah, you haven't um, seen his ass I yet. I well, I have because people have <laughs> posted about it. Like it's uh, it gets around. I've seen a clip as well where apparently one of the Spartans. Like, they remove these emotional regulators at the base of their spines, and so she uses gun oil to dye her hair red. Um, <laughs> Metal sent uh... me that. <laughs> now, I imagine that there are a lot of problems with that. One, like, I'm pretty sure gun oil is not hair dye, it'll just wash out. Two, it probably smells really bad, and three, it's probably very flammable. Um, <laughs> Sorry, the main <laughs> problem with that is it's cringe. It is cringe. Um, now, I, I, I yeah. Uh, just, I oh, man, that's show. Like, like, I, I was, like their emotional inhibitor breaks or whatever. They go through an emo phase. Well, it's just um, if 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 we know because we do know this, it, we see it in the show that they have a pretty good ability to track what's going on with the Spartans. Can they like not know when an emotional regulator's been removed from their body? Is that something that they can't keep track of? Because surely that's like a problem that they're not going to be chill with. Um, also, I don't remember that being a thing in, in Halo. I always thought that, uh, generally it was just the Spartans became this way 
through like really intense training and an attitude that they cultivated as a consequence of it. I never like that's not or, or is that or is that just some like extended law thing that I'm not familiar with? I have um, never come across that, but I'm not that deep in Halo. Well, I've I, I did, it just wasn't the, no three of the yeah. Games. It's a, it's a, it's a show thing. I thought so. I thought so. Yeah. Um, I hate that. I uh. But I mean, and, and people keep talking about how they keep removing Chief's helmet. We talked about that with Moon Knight, but I mean, I rewatched some cutscenes from Halo 3 because I was rewatching the uh, Oh Brave New World documentary from Bungie and I saw lots of cool stuff in there that reminded me of the games. There were so many times in the games when Chief emotes just through body language and he doesn't say a word. Um, I, I, it's You can have him in his armor all the time and you can even have him talk more than he typically does in the games and you can still have him emote. But, like, they didn't play the game, so they don't even know that that's, like, something that's possible. Like, just because, I don't know, like, a lack of imagination. Like, you can't just... Because a lot of the time, it's, like, Chief will just put a hand on someone's shoulder. He'll throw, like, a, a nod uh, towards, like, an ODST. Or, like, when um when some, or when or someone gets killed, obviously, like, in the games, you usually see it pretty clearly in his body language that he's upset. Um, Like, Chief is definitely a human being, even though he is, like, a, even though he is pretty close to a blank slate. There is so much characterization that comes from Chief. The big one being that he does care about other people. Like, he is not cold and detached from the suffering of other people. He wants to protect people and help them and make them feel better and put them at ease. Like, Chief emotes through yeah. body language, but we just decide that he can't do that. We need to see his face constantly. Otherwise, we don't know what he means or what he believes. I, it's, And I mean, especially when there's, like, no reason to take off your helmet, like, in so many of these circumstances... Like, you want to keep your helmet on and your armor. It's dangerous territory that you're in, like, in this space station. Someone could snipe you. They can't do that if you're wearing armor. I mean, I guess if they landed a headshot in its video game world, but... Yeah, I don't know. I gotta catch up. Um, but I have very little optimism about that show. Pretty painful. Why do people keep honest. making bad things? Well, so the really fun because part... Because people keep liking bad things. I say it's fun, but it's not. Um, Halo got renewed for a second season before the first season premiered. I wonder if they think that was a mistake because it feels like the engagement with they the do. show is like... It's, it, the engagement is, is way poorer than I think anybody could have expected for a Halo show. Um, like, you see videos on YouTube that get uploaded like directly from Paramount. They have pretty low viewership. Um, all of like Paramount's the, own upload of the entire yeah, episode doesn't give. I think had like in a day it had like less than a hundred thousand views. Yeah. A Halo yeah, television show, less than with a budget the in excess of hundred million episode, dollars. Yeah. yeah, and the marketing's been insane. I see it on buses and shit everywhere. Ads like it's, clear, it has like we have more popular YouTube channels than that. <laughs> What's only like, Halo? It doesn't, uh, well, Halo as a brand has been. That was I was getting real sad when I was watching that Brave New World documentary. It's like, dude, Halo like Halo was dominant and cool for a long time, and now as an IP, it's it's it has way less value than it used to. Like nobody really cares anymore, um, or at least it feels like at this point, like nobody really cares. And the Halo show just um, I, mean, I, I think know. Infinite showed that there's interest in Halo. That the 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 game's there, problem there is, was just keeping people playing the game it's but because people it's absolutely have the interest in halo no yeah, if they made a really cool halo show people would have watched it they would have shown up oh, oh pardon me but they didn't make that well and it's just, yeah that's a teaser the new fab to come one day i'm sure mm -hmm. um but it's now however else. i'm just going to show you guys some stuff some of it's cringe some of it's interesting for other reasons who knows what you'll we get? Don't do this, cringe, this was shit on the interweb. I, I would be cringe. I, I like get to give you guys some cringe here and there. You, you guys seem to enjoy cringe, this so I'm sorry, cringe. but you, you know, it may, maybe I'm wrong. Cringe. Maybe this stuff isn't cringe, and you agree with it. I don't know. I saw this posted on the interwebs, and I decided to keep it for good oh. old this. Um, I, 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 I feel it's welcome for anybody to give a read there. It's a little fun fact, fan theory. Um. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, really? <laughs> the fan theory seems to be source Walt Disney Studio Motion Pictures. I guess for that picture, but yeah, for the image. Yeah. Ray only defeated Kylo Ren in their first battle because he expected her to be trained as a Jedi and better <laughs> at using a lightsaber. Her lack of skills threw him off and let her get the <laughs> upper hand. 
which so, is of course what training does. That's how training I, works. The, the least <laughs> trained actually wins, contrary to popular belief. Harry, I've, this has brought a video to mind that I want to show. Uh, it's like 20 seconds, so let me find it and put it in the chat. Yeah, here, here we go. Um, this is this I feel is just this video on its own is the perfect response to that. Okay, wait, because we're gonna need to watch together soon enough anyway. Links. So let me. Sure. Uh, oh my I'll goodness! Get you all strange. in. Jump, jump right in, folks. Get comfy. All right. And I will play whatever this is. Scalagrim, by the way. Great, great channel. Scalagrim, and it's called the un the ultimate Scalagrim. unbeatable fighting style. This must be. Come on, yeah. and Talk about wards. Wards. We All seem right. to be missing someone. I'm in. Yeah. There we are. All right. Do it. Convoluted techniques like the spinning attack or the reverse grip. Some people try to argue that they are useful because they are unorthodox because they will confuse the enemy and then they will get the upper hand because the opponent doesn't know how to deal with it well correct that is mm, mostly how heard. combat works i believe uh you remember the batwoman yeah. episode she had that weapon that no one would ever use that's precisely why she used it mm. yes that's why it worked really well against someone hitting her in the head with a vase yeah well that that's the weak spot if you will so it was the very head, clever yes the, very clever yeah. that they used that almost yeah. worked Almost worked. Well, I guess in that case, I've just invented the ultimate fighting technique. <laughs> to be fair, who's beating this? Nobody. Nobody will ever beat this. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's right. Gonna, yeah, he's gonna make he's gonna it dominate. He's gonna. Dominate. He's gonna. I'm trying to think like a clean. So he's gonna mop the floor with, or he's gonna mop sweep. Up, yeah. Make a clean sweep of the competition, or he's gonna. I don't know. There's something there. There's something there. No. Um, to kill them. Seems only natural that I, that we're on Star Wars vaguely. So um, you know, I released PFA Part Four, and there were different comments here and there on different forums about the nature of the video, even on the video itself. Um, oh. as, as, who would like to read this? This is a comment about that very video. Anyone welcome TFA to give part a four? Yeah, Well, it's about TFA Part 4. I'm not sure if it was on TFA Part 4, oh, but hey. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just read <laughs> it. the first video. part, yeah. yeah. Wow, this is uh, Vlastimil Kadra. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. I strongly recommend author of this video to seek professional help. <laughs> Only someone with severe mental <laughs> issues can make a two and a half hour video about seven year old movie. True. Everyone normal, when they see a bad movie, they are disappointed, sure. May even, maybe even angry that they just spent a couple of hours of their life watching bad flick. <laughs> but I feel like this needs an accent. But in the week or month, they no longer think about that bad experience. Sure, they remember that that particular movie is bad, but why should they waste their time because of bad movie? <laughs> they already waste more than enough. So normal people moves on. <laughs> Only someone who is mental still wastes his her time to keep talking about how bad that the movie was. Even though seven years later, everyone knows and no one cares because that's what normal people do. <laughs> like, where's the oh, lie? Man. This guy's right. Yeah. Shouldn't be talking about TFA anymore. I really, but, uh, that was this seven is, years yeah. ago, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a lot of that was a lot of truth bombs and not a lot of time. I will say that. I like that he said remember. You know they remember. This is, this is sure the same writing style as that copy pasta that's like all women born after nineteen ninety three know is eat hot chip and lie. <laughs> it's, it's, it eat it hot might chip, be the same person. Take phone and lie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, Vladimir Vastili over here. He's had a he's had a tough life with the ladies. So he's just trying to help me, and yes, I appreciate I'll... that. Um, yes. So meanwhile, while he is trying to help, 
There was a good old forum that's like, Mauler uploaded again, and then someone had a top comment that was just like, why would anyone watch this, though? And then, uh, someone else was like, well, what's, what's even in this that it takes this long? We got this little back and forth right here. Yeah. Nice. They got little quotations. This is an assumption of what's in the video. Well, uh, in Star Wars Episode Seven, Rey has rights. And considering women's rights weren't a thing until the 1900s, it's unrealistic. Considering Star Wars is set a long, long time ago, which makes this film political. Why did 60 people like that? Well, because that's... It, Cause it, to be dumb. fair, that does sound like something that would turn up in my videos, doesn't it? Why... I, I mean, it must be fun and easy to argue with a non-existent person. Uh, <laughs> Like, like, wait, what? <laughs> I don't think I've ever said, like, I, they made it political. Ray doesn't have rights in episode 7. Exactly, that's the outrage, I think. The true outrage. She's, she's just like a scavenger who, like, works for, for like, like, basically <laughs> as a, in, in, in basically indentured servitude for scraps of food. Kinda. Yeah, fuck this car. Exactly, so I would have found it realistic. And then you got laugh the my ass off person. what? And they're like, you haven't watched a single Mola video and it's obvious. Negative and 37 37. people dislike that. <laughs> they were like, of course we have. This is exactly what he says. Well, He's... no, because they follow it up with a great one, which is why would anybody watch want to watch a Mola video? It's like, how do you have this circular Every sort of logic time. where like you could you could always justify everything? Wow, Mola said this, lol, no he didn't, you haven't watched it. Why would I watch it? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> Like, man, it must be nice to live in that world where you can simultaneously never watch anybody's content and dismiss it as dog shit at the same so time. Like, it's clearly a joke. It is a, a joke, but it's the, the underlying element of the joke oh. is this is what I do in my videos. I talk about how yeah. things are getting too political. Yes. People really need to understand that jokes can imply things and like yeah, they have an I underlying thought, sentiment, like, just like any just other kind of speech. It's kind of like it's just a prank, bro. Like almost, it's just a joke, bro. It's like, well, hold on, what what are you saying about well, something? Well, I mean, the, the joke isn't that like the, the the aspect of like not understanding this being a joke, right? Would be someone reading this and saying, and well, that's, saying I, I can't find that quote anywhere in the video. Exactly. This is this is misinformation, right? And then you'd be like, oh, that's clearly a, you know, it's a joke. That, um, yeah. Well, and and if everyone in the room laughed, and then one went. It's so funny because it's the complete opposite of what he'd say. They all be like, "Huh? No, no, it's funny because that is the kind of shit that he says." And then someone else exactly. is like, "Is it?" And then someone else goes, yeah. "Do you not know who Muller is?" And they'll be like, "No, I have no idea. Does he? Is this? Is he cringe?" And he says stuff like that, and they'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." If someone went, yes. "Did he say literally that?" They're like, "I don't fucking watch his videos to find out if he literally said this quote." Like they have that moment happen, and they're just like, "That's fine." I don't watch it, but I know what's in it. How is this Mahler's fault? Um, you know, it's it's a never-ending. Well, that was. It's like there are um there are people in the like I don't have enough time to keep tabs on everyone in the world. There are people in the world that I assume if I got to know better, like the kind of stuff they did, I probably wouldn't have any respect for it. But I don't go around writing shit about them. Well, it's just, like, it's weird how people, how many people are oddly comfortable with coming to pretty harsh conclusions about not only Mauler's work, but his character based on, like, nothing. Stuff like, that they haven't seen, seen anything. Yeah. Or, like, something that they heard that isn't even true. Or, like, a really warped retelling of some sort of events. It's like Chinese Whispers is very much a thing that happens on the internet, big time. Like, I don't know shit about Rush Limba. I assume that based on what I've heard about him, I wouldn't like him, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know what well, kind of do thing he says. Do you often go into comment sections yeah, talking about I Russ Limbo and go, "Ha, <laughs> right, right, right. Russ Limbo, what a fucking loser!" <laughs> like, yeah, you know? don't do that <laughs> shit. Um. So again, on the topic of Star Wars, this is something that someone linked in the subreddit. I just thought it was funny in terms of an arc. All right, and we've all been on this one. Okay, everyone's familiar with this except for a few. Where you watch Force Awakens. And you feel a certain way, and uh, let's just let's just see what that way is. For N no anything to this particular YouTuber. This is just a funny thing to have as a comparison. In Japanese and English is incomparable. It's completely alien, and you have to always change your way of thinking. But I remember sitting in this pub and talking to my friend Wait, Natsuki for hours on end. I may have gotten the wrong timestamp. I don't know. Hang on. <laughs> oh no. 
Yes, I did. I was a minute out. Gosh well, darn. Everyday life in Japan, 10 essential questions answered. This is the video where... Yes, yes, uh, don't worry. It's a particular snippet. Channel, we, we of which the it. results will be announced in the next few weeks. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button if you want more. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas. And for the record, The Force Awakens, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. It was pretty good. Definitely worth watching. See you all soon. So it's just like, yeah, five, this is nice. a good old-fashioned normal. Then, oh, they link another this. video from this person a, a little while later. Um, well, I guess because like it's, it's a weird subreddit post. I think it even said like he went on an arc or whatever. But uh, oh, I love Star oh. Wars, but it's only ah. two. It was thirty thirty five fifty five in this. Gosh, it's so difficult to get right. Boy. Okay, the same dude. He's on like a little little podcast, I suppose. Wait, I can say thirty five. What did I say? Thirty five fifty five. Yeah, remember. you did 35, say that. 55. Okay, good. Uh, we are dying. That'll. This is a very purple room. That'll. This is a very right. purple room. It's very regal. It's very. <laughs> I, don't, very I, I don't dislike it. I don't dislike I it. Like I yeah, it's purple it's purple a meat. fine. It is a fine shade of purple. I I approve mm -hmm. of the purple. Very good. <laughs> Imagine Star Wars. Arrived late. The Django jetpack bit was the pettiest thing I've ever seen on on Eva. <laughs> My dude. This is that was the pettiest thing you've ever seen? Oh come on. Fake fan detected. Do, do you think they took the court thing seriously? <laughs> they were like Maul is treating Rags, Jay, and Friggy as judges. This is the lowest I've seen you fall. <laughs> you... Hey, oh, hey Maul, you're being pretty petty right now. The funny thing is the dude who made the comment was in on like seemed to be aware of the memes. Like, don't worry, you'll be okay, Super Chatter. Don't worry about it. You're gonna make it. I believe in you. Anyway. Wars, but good. It's not petty to call. Oh. It, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh! Did we miss it? Did we miss There's only two films in the series that are good. The first one, the second it's one, true. came out in 1977 and 1980. Oh, wait. Oh, and episode, episode four and five. Yeah. yeah. When you say first and second, I yeah, thought you meant yeah, episode no, one and two. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, dude. I, I love the first and second film, all the yeah. prequel memes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're pretty good to be fair. The prequel yeah. memes are the best memes at the whole but, um, he swallowed. He swallowed a pill of some so kind. I just, I just thought it was amusing when I he saw it. He swallowed the like, purple pill. He just said, like, yeah, the fucking. Uh, oh, I love Star Wars, but there's only two good. films in the series that are good. <laughs> it's like something I mean, happened along the way. You can probably find several clips of me out there. No, same for me. I'm, I'm, I'm sure because as I was saying, a lot of people went on that arc. Well, they, it was been strange. They do. And Force yeah, Awakens. Yeah, that was the same for me. I liked it when uh, I thought it was really good when I first watched it. But Although, that was a long time ago, I'd have to rewatch it, but I might still still stick to Rogue One being good. I I've not seen it since it came around. out. I've but... only seen it the once. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I don't know. About Probably good. not, but maybe um, if I was gonna gamble on one of them actually being good, it'd be Rogue that One. That might yeah. be it. I mean, uh, it has... do we do we all do we all like remember it as good because it actually is? Or did I it do like the same thing as The Force Awakens, but it's not as significant, I, so it's a state escape criticism as much. I don't think I've I don't think I think of it as good ever. I thought I only ever thought of it as the strongest one. Um, don't mean good. I mean, yeah. it's, it's been like, too long since I've seen it now, five? so I'm my opinion sure, on it's yeah. so fucking worthless that because I just mm -hmm. barely remember most of it. I didn't um, hate my life after I saw it, so it's got that going. Well, I didn't it. hate my life after I first watched The Force Awakens. Well, it was a nice yeah, time, but the thing yeah. is that Should thing was purpose-built like... to make you feel nice when watching it. Mm -hmm. We should do a, a watch, and, and Rogue One wasn't. Rogue One was sort of like, yeah, uh, sort of grim in many ways. It was a bit slapdash. Yeah. A bit. Well, um, I mean, I'd be curious, I still want to, I'm still really curious about what the original cut of that film was. So, um, hey Jay, do you want to take this one? So a small comment, all right? I just, I feel like it might sure. have a bit of a punch with you reading it. Uh, gotta get that tone right, okay? All right, what, what kind of tone are we looking for here? Whatever you choose. And don't worry, I will explain the context of this quote after you read it. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I heard a single actual criticism. Just chimps howling and asking for the oh answers God. to questions immediately, Lamau. <laughs> EFAP, this is some objectively shit content you're putting out. Get it together, lol. Yeah. I wish we could see the dislikes on this video because I know it's fucking bad. So what is okay. this video? Right. Also, so, you can see the dislikes very easily. I was about to say, first of all, he could if he wanted to. Or he, I guess Caleb could be a 
girl's name, theoretically. Uh, I don't know. They, the, the... It's just to imply that a girl could be this dumb Mahler. That is, that is rude of me. I'm sorry. But, uh, the... I think we should refer to them by their surname. They oh, yes. are of an opinion. And they could have gotten the answer if they wanted to. But now, I think it's amusing. This video concerns the four of us plus metal. What video okay. is it? I, I feel like it's unfair well, to make you guys Boba guess. Fett. Oh, 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 you're, you're Book narrowing in on it. Yes, it is Book of Boba Fett. Episode. But which oh, is episode? a particular episode? Which oh, the finale. Oh, episode uh, six. No. No, it's oh, going to so be an early one, because they're complaining we want everything explained immediately, right? Hmm. Um, so it's... What's the one with, like... Episode two, then? Maybe it's episode five. Well, I guess... Ra Ra Rag's got it. Uh, <laughs> it is the gun train. They are I upset right, with our it? coverage of the gun train, which, by the way, I thoroughly enjoyed watching back. I thought it was great, that little episode we did. But then again, I had it a lot of fun doing fun. the whole Those book about that thing. So, shall we discover what the likes were at at the time? Let's, yes. Let's, yeah, let's da, take da, a look. Da, let's da, see how much people da, hated da, the gun train. Da. Ah. Hmm. Dude, that's <laughs> ten people. That's almost a dozen. This is a this is one of our best ratios. <laughs> I think. Um, you bought it. All what's the, what's likes, a normal clearly. what's a normal EFAP like this like ratio? We hit like ninety five percent around about that. We um we're we're plenty controversial. This episode, I'd imagine, after everything we've said about Lego Moon Knight and uh, not Sonic. Sonic, everyone's happy with this Sonic take. This thing, will, I'm pretty sure. This will oh, test the faith of the righteous. Yeah. Like hmm. <laughs> Don't know if I agree with that. So oh, on this yeah. stream, we've currently got sixteen dislikes. Damn. Oh, so we're fuck already you. in excess of that. Oh, someone. <laughs> as I said that, someone undisliked it. Oh, <laughs> they what felt a Chad. guilty. <laughs> um, well, either a Chad or a coward. One of the perhaps two. I judged you too harshly. <laughs> now, since we're on uh, the topic of Boba Fett, I'm gonna read the first part out. It's my and then show topic. the actual image once I get to the second part because I just I feel like the timing on this. Needed, okay? So, I made a tweet saying, They made Boba Fett say he doesn't care about money. The man who only cared about Solo Han Solo's bounty value in Empire, agreeing to his freezing on condition that he get compensated for damages by the Empire. This was frustrating me. Of course. Hmm. Now, someone gave me a reply in the form of a tweet. And I'm gonna... Tuscan. I'm gonna give, give, you a little, give you a little post-it. There you go. So mm -hmm. it says, mm -hmm. If you have a problem with that, let me introduce you to Dickens, The Christmas Carol. <laughs> what? what? Oh, but here's the thing. Ebenezer Scrooge <laughs> went on a fucking journey. Yeah. yeah. He went he was visited by three fucking ghosts <laughs> who showed him the 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 Christmas past, present and future. <laughs> the, the whole story, the whole point, the whole story of Christmas Carol is basically how a dick turned into a nice person. Also, I'm I'm not I'm not vibing with the formatting of this person's insult, right? Um, because ultimately what they've said here is they've said, if you don't like that thing, here's another story that does it, which that, that doesn't, that doesn't have that to... That doesn't really help any. I guess it would just <laughs> yeah. be appealed to, you're not going to shit on the Christmas Carol, are you? Which, yeah, oh, that's obviously like, the idea. Oh, we totally, well, if we went, we went, we'll, we shit went and, we'll shit on Shakespeare, right? If we went well, yeah. and found, we went and looked we at Shakespeare would. and we're like, hmm, there are some problems here. We'd be like, well, that's not very good, is it? Who sings on a balcony? Three out of ten. Because, like, uh, baked into my perception is that there has been no arc to justify it, otherwise I would probably not put the, the comment that way. And he's like, let me introduce you to a film that's all about a character being affected by many sources of new information to change him fundamentally. It's like, yeah, that'd be great, but they didn't do that, so... Um, but I just mean, listening to that out of context just sounds hilarious. Like, you got a problem with Boba Fett? Want money? Time for you to see Dickens' A Christmas Carol. <laughs> like, okay? <laughs> Um, I did, I did, of course, consume it soon afterward and realized just how wrong I was. It's uh, quite a wake-up call, as they say. Now, um, I guess I'll just read this one out pretty quick, okay? So th there's a little article, and it says, Is Cad Bane really dead? Book of Boba Fett has oh. a secret clue. Like, oh... Um, Yay! I, I'm. Ba, 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 I, I guess I'll just show you the the image. Of, this is a portion of the article. Okay, there's a little more to it. But when I saw this, one quarter portion I of an article. 
resist just getting it to be showed. <laughs> I like it so I like it because it's so committal. For now the answer is yes. Cadbane is unless dead. Are. Unless he isn't. <laughs> that's great. That's how I that's actually hey, look, how they've I narrowed it down. School. It's one or the other. Go on. Appreciate the It is work. either one side of this dichotomous proposition. Uh, the article basically posits that there's a bleeping light and his droid might be on the way to heal him, but we don't know. So, as if they need that it's to probably... justify bringing him back. Yeah, somehow Palpatine, somehow Chad Payne returned. That's all they, they have. They don't to even say. need to give him robot parts. Like they don't even like need to every... give him robot parts. Is true. does like every Star Wars race have a longer lifespan than humans? It seems like, well, Probably Cat Bane was, like, 70 years old. Well, people are telling well, us he's supposed to be... be um, they're supposed to have shorter lifespans than humans, apparently, his race. Who, who are? He, him? Nemoidians. He's not a is that what he is? is he? Yeah, he's like, he's, like, were the... he's like the Trade oh, Federation he? guys, yeah. Oh, oh, wow. I didn't know they could be blue. That Maybe that's what threw me off. Were they always blue, or am I having horrific mental... I think they no, can they're be... Not, they're not blue in their trade. Colors, I mean, yeah. I imagine them, they can be different Because he colors, doesn't right? sound like a Asian at all. So that's what threw me off. Oh yeah, I see how they're the same species now. Yeah, I see now. Yeah, they, they just seem so different, you know. I used to I used to live in a world where all Nemoidians looked the same. Um, but then no, someone said my the, eyes were opened. The extension used to determine those dislikes only estimates are based on views and likes. Um, that wasn't my screenshot. That was some stuff I saw in the Discord. So I assumed whatever was used was accurate. If it's not, um. I can get the actual ones, but I don't think anybody's going to care. Extension used only estimates dislikes? Apparently. I, I've first I've heard of it, but I don't know. I'm going to check that right now, because I can go onto the um, public pages of my videos to see how many dislikes they, yeah, they have, and then go into the private analytics to see how many dislikes, you know, compare it. Oh, everyone's saying he's a Duros. I've never heard of that. <laughs> so, but since everyone's saying it, it must be true. Asian. Well, they're hey. showing the blue guys when you Google Nemoidians. Smaller is racism. Oh, no, I was told this, okay? I, how would I have found yeah. out about any of this? Duros. Like, First off, oh, it's yeah, not yeah, racism. That, he is a Duros. It's xenophobia. Get your shit straight. I, I, no, no, it's not xenophobia when they're different species. Yeah, isn't that what it is? <laughs> no, xenophobia, xenophobia is... Um, I don't know. Actually, that might have a broader definition. Um, xenophobia, in when my understanding of, of it, is... For people like from different nations, but well, yeah, that is uh, what oh, it's used for. But yeah. it's the same as how um illegal but the alien root word, and illegal the root word Zeno, the yeah. root the root word Zeno means you know from essentially from the outside, right? Well, well, so Greek. then wouldn't that apply to so aliens strange, as well, right? potentially? So yeah, it could apply to alien species. I'm I'm going to look up a definition for xenophobia. Because in sci-fi settings, that's typically the word that they used for having prejudice against an alien species. Is your uh, no? The, the definition on Google is just like a prejudice against people from other countries. Well, it's going to be the standard definition, yeah. Well, that's because we don't have actually have aliens to use it for, right? Yeah, but, but it seems strange the word to Star use Wars, for. It. I think, but in yeah, the setting yeah, of yeah. Star Wars, they would say xenophobic. Um, yeah, he is a Juros. That's that they are not. They look similar, though, the Nemoidians and Juros. Well, so I, I was they literally do told that. I don't know if it was in Discord or not, but... Um, so Maybe they're like the Vulcans and Romulans, where they're like the same but different. Um, oh, the well, here's the thing. So how old is Cad Bane? Oh, well, our chat, that was our chat when they when we were doing the Boba Fett stuff. They were saying that he's, he's oh. too old or whatever, that he shouldn't be alive, or at least should be much more frail, you know? He's like, yeah, so yeah. according to this, they live, um, it's like, uh, hang on, wait, their lifespan is, oh yeah, their lifespan is about 70 years. Well, it, it, I mean, I mean, clearly it's true. I mean, look at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is about 70 and he dies, doesn't he? That's true. The lore holds up. They all get stabbed by Boba Fett. All right, video time. Oh, you guys! Boy. Uh, I know oh, the Discord's I, yeah, aware I'm, of this I'm one. On it. I'm there. 
Look, what? I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to bring him back up. Okay, but it's a one-minute video. All right. Mm. Who's this? One minute. Okay. I'm tempted to try and force everyone to just listen to the minute and then crawl up into a cave and die. But okay. Um, at the same time, you know what? If you want to pause, you can. This is our old friend, the arcane analyst. Yeah. Oh God. He's arcane got some opinions analyst? to share. Oh, the guy who made the. He makes the shorts, right? He made Which one video on... is this, Wallo? So this one is called I'm a Dinger's Broken Characterization. One minute okay. analysis. Oh. All right. Oh. That's a hefty claim. Arcane is indeed back. We've been, oh. we've been jumping through a lot of eras, okay? So here, yeah, I just, I'm sorry about this. I really am. But ultimately, like, I've been forced to. I couldn't, I couldn't not do it. I'm sorry. Okay. So Oh. <laughs> Alright. Oh, okay. Nice. That was, that was great. Video. Okay, yeah, next. Uh, so Watch Together does not want to show us this. Uh, apparently. How do I... What do I do? <laughs> okay, so I was noticing something. Just reloaded it. The, the... No. Okay, let's try. Alright. Here we go. Something about Heimerdinger. This is a character we're told is a scientist, but they never show him doing science. We're told, or he implies why to us it, that he's altruistic. Why is it like that? It's for mobile. So vertical and pillory. YouTube shorts thing. It's, uh, is that they, how shorts have to be in this aspect yes. ratio? Yeah, pretty sure. Oh, I thought yeah, they were just like, pretty designed short. for um, they're designed for mobile. I'm just yeah. I'm so Probably. surprised that that took precedent over what he said, Rex. I, yeah, I well, I'm, I'm, Dinger I'm, doesn't do any science, but you weren't paying any attention because you were focused. I was on paying that. attention. I was distracted by the weird. <laughs> See, I was better. Than, <laughs> I was better I, faith. I, I said that it took precedent. Okay. I, I, yeah, it's like it's okay. it's. I just see something that looks weird, and because the light hits my eyes before the sound waves, my brain gives it precedent. You know what? I would imagine that the light waves hitting your eyes are comparable, like, that. It, it, it is a distinction without a difference with how close no, it is. No, it's way <laughs> different. No, it's way different. I know it Rags is way felt different. the I know eon between them. How far are you from your monitor? Huh? Well, it doesn't matter how far away you are, it's still, it's light. It's going to be moving faster than And do no, dogs are particularly enough. good if with the sound. If you're far you know? enough. If you're yeah. far enough, it will, uh... I'm like 16 miles away from my monitor right now. Yeah, even then, it will still be basically instantaneous. No, oh no, to... not at all. No, there's going to be a big difference for between sound and light. Wait, hang on. No, 16 I... miles. No, 16 no, no, miles no, 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 away. No, you misunderstood. I'm saying 16 miles away for a light perspective is going to be meaningless. For sound, it's going to be significant. Yeah, because we're talking be honest, about the difference that, between... Right, right, is it coming from... Are you hearing it from speakers from 16 miles away, or have you got... Well, yeah, exactly. That, but, but even no. But the point yeah. is that even even if you were hearing it, at, like they're they're very far away. If you were watching it from sixteen miles away, but you had your speakers on, the 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 speed at which light moves would be such that it basically would be faster. I'm pretty sure still, because um, yeah, light would it would the light would light definitely moves. be faster than the sound. Yes. Well, I know no light is always faster than sound. What I'm saying is like even yeah. if you had the sound stuff next to you and you were like a hundred kilometers You're away, the light would get to you faster. There are mediums that light like, can move through that slows it down, right? So that might be something that, to oh yeah, to, I'm, that well, I'm it underwater down right enough now. that it's slower than sound. Yeah, uh, well, not cream. that that, that works. Not going to do it, but yeah. doesn't it take like hundreds of thousands of years from uh, light to get from the center of a star to the outside? Uh, Many physicists in chat Sorry. back me up. We've got a lot of physicists me. in chat, I'm sure. Yeah, nothing takes hundreds of years in the solar system in terms of moving. It's like nothing. At all, I think. Hundreds Nothing thousands, takes hundreds of years for moving? What? What are you talking about? Like, I mean, uh, light well, in the solar system, like, a anywhere from any direction at any, uh, like, the solar system isn't big enough for it to take. Did people you say saying, yes, it does. Years hundreds of years. Are... Doesn't Chat it says I'm right. The light or the energy that's produced within the sun. What specific? So the energy, now you I'm said the light, that's produced, <laughs> your, the light that's produced in the sun, it takes... How long now? It takes anywhere from because our because I think 4, our solar system is about half years. a light year long. It takes anywhere from four thousand to millions of years from a photon from the center of the sun to leave it. No, everybody because people are saying eight minutes. It takes eight minutes from the surface of the sun to Earth. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about, um, from, from the center of the sun to the surface of the sun. How long does it take? Uh, you, I don't care. We, if you don't care, that's fine. We're invested. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. No, what we, you know what we need to do? We, like need, to, we need to talk about like, how... We need to, 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 to parade that person. Yeah. 
We need to berate that person for ruining the day of everyone watching this stream. Well, that was what, because, oh yeah, that's right. Wasn't that, what that, <laughs> that was right. Please this discussion for I do not care. Listen, okay, anything to delay this take. I can see that's why ah, this is like... happening. Let's now I've forgotten anything that's oh. been said. I remember the visuals because light is faster than sound, but I'm going to have to roll it back so that I can rehear the words that were right, spoken. I'm going to be honest one minute you. I think your brain was protecting what? you, okay? And the fact you've rolled it back, your brain is like, My no. brain always protects me. My brain doesn't put me in danger. Um, I think you'll find that that is more than possible because you've just done it. Definitely not. Put yourself in danger. Definitely You're, not. Get ready, so ready to enter a coma, Rags, okay? I'm just saying. Snafe is as safe as a bug in a rug. They're not safe there. Snug is a bug in a rug. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're snug. What if the house is on fire, Rags? Rugs? Huh? What if the house is then on the fire? Then the rug will insulate them from the spooky flames. What if the, what if the rug's on fire? Oh, there was. A, I drove by a house uh, just the other day. I think it was actually yesterday, and wow, it had changing, burned down. Changing the goalposts. The goalposts. Why did you burn down the house? Down. <laughs> right. The goalposts burned down. We just noticed down. that it had burned down. Okay. We just noticed the house had burned down. It was like, oh man, that's not good. Okay, here we go. All right. So I was noticing something about Heimerdinger. This is a character we're told is a scientist, but they never show him doing science. We're told, or he implies to us that he's altruistic, but. They never show him doing I thought we wanted to play it true. all the way to the end. It's up to you guys. Well, like the whole minute? Okay. Oh, I thought that's what we Well, doing. that's not fair use, is it? Um, well, it's because it's designed to be like a shot in the arm or something. Okay, well, we'll I don't know. then. He does do science, though. We Don't we see him like actively sort of working with, with like... Well, what does Jason it mean stuff? to do like, science, Fringy? Because I don't think we yeah, see him cause... put a potion into another potion, well, do sure, we? But that yeah, we don't, we don't see him use science. test tubes. Yeah. Ah, uh, so he's not doing science. He, and what he is clearly it seems to understand things that are told to him of a scientific, you know area and he takes a deep interest in observing scientific he's, processes uh, around him and experiments around them and he is also in charge of like the head of science but the, the the college yeah he's 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 the in he invented science <laughs> he's, he's, he's in the, charge of all science the scientific the pillar of, science. of piltover he's, he's the ceo of he always, science he always has opinions um of scientific on scientific matters he always offers his perspective and it's, it's ha has i mean well, the the, implica like the implication form? of the statement is that he doesn't do science. It's like, well, he definitely does. You just don't see him do it explicitly in like a lab with potions and stuff, which I it's think like, is irrelevant. Yeah, it's not like it's not like that. We're told, hey, this is Heimerdinger. He does science, and then he just never does. <laughs> it's that we can infer that he does science based on his interactions with other characters. He's a laboratory. He's familiar with all of the repercussions of this different pieces of tech. He inspects their tech several times to approve it. Well, I mean, are we, why are we pretending that they're... Because, like, a head researcher in a, in a team is not necessarily going to be the person who's, like, in the lab pouring all the stuff into the test tubes. But he's still a scientist. Well, you know who we do see ultimately... doing science? It's mainly Victor. And Jace. Mm -hmm. I wonder why that is. Yes. Probably because their inventions are revolutionary at this point in time. Mm. And they're they're more so forefront characters. It's like so weird thing to say, but what is this in favor of? What character what, what point are we making about this character? Mm-hmm. But they never show him doing anything to help people. We're uh, oh, we're gonna rewind uh, that. Oh boy. They never show him doing anything to help people. Well, That's well, just wrong. You but they never show him doing show, anything to I help guess. people. He, so helps, he's, he helps he's, Echo. He's supposed to be altruistic, but he's never shown doing anything to help people. So, so he, episode he two, he saves Jace from being expelled from Piltover. Yeah, like he, he didn't helps have to do people. that. And, and at the forefront of his mind when it comes to all of the science is protecting people. His it's safety, not actively yeah, going out and saving people. people's lives. Yeah. It's trying to prevent bad yeah, things his, from happening. That is that his characterization is, is that he's people. quite possibly the most altruistic. He just doesn't have enough information to be effective. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the things that he does from his position of authority helps a lot of people, particularly in the terms of safety. Now, uh, I the, don't, that's where dis the discussion comes in of, we, uh, you know, how helpful is it. But... We talked about this uh, in our coverage, but I don't think it's an accident that the beginning of episode four, he describes the uh, Stanley P Padidley, Stanwick Padidley or whatever, as a person who cared more about progressing everybody and, you know, fixing to be a great world rather than his own, like, legacy. Which, to me, is supposed to probably foreshadow Heimerdinger's fate in this, being that he's fallen completely from his high stature and power and position 
all the way to the bottom of, uh, li quite literally the bottom of society. That's where Echo and his people are. And he's probably going to help them quite a bit. And it's going to have cost him basically everything prestigious, but that's not important. So, I think it's pretty weird to say that he, he's also highlighting that, like, the show is trying to tell us he's altruistic, but he doesn't help anyone. It's just like, huh. Interesting take, but all right. What else we got? That's, that's the first two. We're told he's this great leader at Piltover, but they certainly never show him doing a good job leading. And we're told he's a more... Uh, we're, they never shown doing a good job leading. I would actually argue he does I, a pretty I'm... great job of being a, a leader that's not suitable for this council. They're all people who are willing to fuck him over. He's, he's... not willing to fuck anyone over. Yeah, I... How do you make... This is a guy who seems to have devoted a lot of time to this show, mm -hmm. but he gets a lot of very, very very basic facts about the show it was like he's like he totally missed them what was he watching during all this time so i mean like the just, idea to that... state all of these things like a machine gun so confidently and they're all wrong he's a very chill and normal dude and he wants everything to be done securely and safely and it's not about you know in a, in a like what could be implied that he gets it done on his own timeline or something he's just worried that when it's uncontrolled, it'll result in damage, which is like illustrated over and over again throughout the show, as well as his history. Like, I don't see how that would be evidence of his poor leadership, or him getting screwed over. It's not exactly fair, because he never thought that they would backstab him, so... Yeah, mm -hmm. but we've established now that he's a, a poor leader, poor character of, in terms of altruism, and a poor scientist when we're told the opposite for all three. It's like, man... Mortal, but we're not exactly showing him living forever either. So uh, <laughs> what? I'm gonna I'm replay gonna that. Go on, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I'll, I'll replay it. I'll replay it. Told he's immortal. Oh fuck! Sorry. Uh, God, this one's special. Mortal, but we're not exactly. Oh, fucking. Why would it go back? There we go. We're told he's a great leader built over, but they certainly never show him doing a good job leading. And we're told he's immortal, but we're not exactly showing him living forever either. Okay, so you can never show anyone living forever. That's just not possible. You can't do that. Is this so we'll a skip joke? over that. Second, is they this don't a say joke? he's a. So they don't say they don't ever say he's immortal. They say he lives for a long ass time. What uh, could? What is a better proof than telling us he was here when the city was founded? Everyone, everyone in the city readily accepts this information. They state it to be true. It seems to be true. There's how. I don't... He's the founder of the city, and it's a fully-fledged, functioning city. I don't even... I'm I'm so confused. Yeah, I'm well, with Jay. Is this a joke? That's a great question. But, Some but people are asking only... if this is April Fool's. It is not. Um, they don't show him living forever. Of course not, you nitwit. Well, so, to be fair, if they had a flash-forward and everyone's dead and he's sitting there really old, and, and he says, man, 10 billion years ago is when uh, stuff happened, that would have mean they're telling the truth. Writer. Right now... Seems like they could be lying to us. That's what I think. Let's feel my my best guess is like my, my best faith guess is it's just something that he threw in because he thought like yeah of course the, the, the like he he just threw it in because it fits the pattern. But he knows it's not a serious example. Like he wants it, to establish it fits his pattern of they show they tell us this thing but they don't show it. Yes, and he knows he this won't. one isn't serious. That's that's best faith. He he wants to establish a pattern that the show tells us things about Heimerdinger, but does not show that reality. That's what he's trying to do, so that he can then make his next point, which is... So what's going on? We all know the rule. Arcane knows the rule. Show, don't tell. So this is an interesting twist, but the way it works is actually very straightforward. Hang on. Show, don't... There's not, like, a scene where it tells you all of these things about Heimerdinger. These are things that you can infer from his... Di like, oh, this is such a poor... Okay, show don't <laughs> tell doesn't. Oh god, like to show First that off, someone is a, a scientist. I mean, yeah, not a rule, but like to show that someone is a scientist, you don't need to put like an insert shot of them doing science, right? Because that, because that, that, oh, oh, that, that's almost like following the, the, the letter of the advice without understanding the spirit of it would be right. Oh, this guy's a scientist. How do we show that, right? Well, we can't tell the audience, so let's just. When he's before he's introduced, let's just show like thirty seconds of him doing science, and then he arrives at the scene. So we know he's a science man. It's um, yeah, it's so locked in. You can't. He's fucking. What do you think? It was all a meme that they all think he's the science guy, and he made a bunch of things that work, but it was all a joke. Like he he wasn't actually doing like, it. Like, and then like the the equivalent is like to have a natural scene where it comes up. It's like, oh, have you done any science recently? And I like, I, I just a, a, a natural scene where it's incorporated into the dialogue and it becomes 
clear and the audience can infer this character is a scientist. He knows what he's Isn't talking he about when it comes Professor to science. Heimerdinger? He is called that, yeah. Oh, so, like, so yeah, so he, the fact that that's his title as a professor, which is not something you can just call yourself. Well, well I, I, I was going to say, like, you can't... You can maybe establish that he's not a scientist from when we see him onwards or something with crazy... But, like, you, I'm assuming we can't deny it's in stone. His science is what helps Piltover go from being not a city to the current way it is. Like, the, the, sure. surely you can't deny that. Like, the, Otherwise, the, that means everybody's under a false impression. Did he just steal everyone else's work? Also, what is the rationale here? Like, how does that work? Mm -hmm. So... Show don't tell is like is honestly just a poor translation of naturally integrate the important information into this story. That's a better phrasing, yeah. It's just not as catchy as show mm -hmm. don't tell. But uh let's well, it's... to be fair, Jay, what is his point? Let's see what it is. You don't know what it is yet. You'll you'll wombus. So this is an interesting twist, but the way it works is actually very straightforward. Show don't tell makes story elements feel real and authentic. Tell don't show makes them feel fake and inauthentic. Normally, why would you want that? But here Not it works perfectly. Well, so yeah, this, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're anyone who's familiar too rigidly with EFAPs, we've covered one. this before. We think show don't tell and tell don't show. It's, it, throw it all out. It's it's not um it's not as simple as that. It's well, it's a nice rule of thumb at best. It's it's built on top of. I mean, I feel like it is. I feel like it's a mistranslation of just it naturally integrating the information into the story. If you're if you're writing a story where a character would say the information, get them to say it. If you're writing a story where you would see it and as a part of the thing that you're doing, some, then put it on screen. It points you in the right direction in the same way as give your protagonist most of the influence for guiding the plot. You're like, do I have to? You're like, no, but... It's a reliable way to get the audience invested in the action of, of, of the events, I suppose. Take, um, like, a, a fucking novel, right? Obviously, in that instance, where the information is being communicated to the story via prose, you are telling the audience some things. It is, a, it is the nature of what you tell them, um, rather than simply don't tell them things. It is infer information through events and... Don't, don't just tell them what they need to take away, right? Dude, you're, you're repeating your points. You're reminding me of books. Hey. And hey. you mentioned books, too, so Jay stop talking about those like foul things. goddamn book. We here hate books. Boo! Books can suck my dick. Down with book. Down with books. Authentic. That sounds like Normally, a good book. why would you want that? But here it works perfectly. Why? Because this is how you write hypocrisy. It's how you write a fraud. And that oh, <laughs> really? This so has got to be a joke. We're getting to this the point now. Real. Here it is. That's how they want us to feel about Heimerdinger. We're supposed to feel like Jason and Victor are the real geniuses here. They're the ones who really want to help people. And this guy this is a This video has 520,000 fucking views. Heimerdinger is a past his prime celebrity scientist. Oh no! What the fuck? And you know, we saw his evidence. He had four pillars to support this. One of them was absolutely fucking batshit insane. The the uh, the one is like, if you're so invulnerable, how come I haven't seen you live forever? <laughs> like, what? Um, and then of course, there's uh, he's not doing enough science. He's not nice enough. It's like he's a fraud. You're like, wow. Like you were a reporter designed to do a hit piece on him. ...whose reputation has outgrown his abilities. He's introduced us as the mentor archetype, and mentors are supposed to have these qualities. But by never showing any of them, we become conflicted that about whether... He does reverse, show mental but... qualities. He's, he gives really good advice several times, as well as good quotes, as well as good stories. He's literally mentoring Echo by the end of the show. He mentored Victor. He mentored Jace. Why do you think they know all they know? Everything he says is wrong in this video. Like, every fucking sentence. How are you making these claims? One of my favorite scenes is where Heimdinger is trying to provide some comfort to Victor when everyone knows Victor's dying. Like, just desperately trying to work with him. The idea is like, yeah, he's a fraud, celebrity scientist. Like, what the fuck's happening? Jesus I don't understand, Christ. like, this This video is so mean to Heimerdinger, who's, like, <laughs> such a beloved and lovely character, I don't understand how it didn't immediately get more hate. Like, I'm not saying... People love this video! Like, like I, I just, I don't understand how this passed everyone's smell test. Like, this, if I was making this video, like, if I, if I genuinely had watched Arcane and come to the conclusion, all of these conclusions about Heimerdinger, 
and I wanted to put that to my audience in a video, I would be going, okay, the first thing I need to do is be really careful. Cause I'm like, I'm playing with fire here. Like I need to be careful how I present these points because people are going to get mad about this. Um, and he's just gone straight in with it. He's a fraud. Fuck him. He's a piece of shit. Um, I'm like, it, no, overwhelming. I don't understand. I, I feel like this is making me reevaluate my understanding of the world I, and people's perceptions. And like, it's got over half a million this? views, and people adore this video. And everything in it is just full of lies. <laughs> it's so fucking. It's so fucking I, depressing. Like, dude, basic I'm more willing to believe information about the show. That he, he's been watching so much arcane. He's like torn himself into pieces, connecting things together that are just. It's like that board of information from uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where he's just like. I figured it out. High mitting is a fraud. And you're all just like, huh? Where? What? Why? Why? And he's like, he's not even that old. He can live up to that. And by the end, we see that he can't. So that's three out of the four. Immortality seems to follow this pattern, but it doesn't actually fit into it's the It's not frog. immortality. What? 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 Why, why would you throw an immortality into there? It was totally arbitrary. You, there's no reason for that to have been in there. Sorry, what was the ending there? He's introduced us as the mentor archetype, and mentors are supposed to have these qualities. So by never showing any of them, we become conflicted. Also, this oh, was reversed. The immortality like, thing was there. The immortality thing was there so he could plug one of its other videos. Oh. And by the end, we see that he can't. So that's three out of the four. Immortality seems to follow this pattern, but it doesn't this actually- This fucker spent 12 minutes editing a video and lying for a minute. So that he can get think half he believes a million this. views. We're doomed. I just don't know how he came to conclude all of this. It's insane. Like the, he, it's like he clearly didn't watch the show. It's you're a basic scientist, information. Huh? You're not doing much science for a scientist. You're an invincible, in immortal, huh? Don't see you living forever. <laughs> what? <laughs> um. Yeah. So, I saw That's that depressing. by chance in my recommended, and I was like, "You are not serious. This is not." An actual argument. It's a is joke it? video. It's got to be a joke video. Um, he's just farming I, clips it's or not, algorithm or. So how can you watch? I got us. He, don't worry. We we'll leave Shani. I think his name is alone now. He can. He can go ahead and make some more videos. However, I've got something completely different for you guys. A short from YouTube about Arcane. But I don't. No, oh, we already did up. one, and it's an uh, no. It's not. It's, it's not Shane. This is this is a guy called. Am I stuck in a time loop? Uh, out of frame, I think is what he's called. I I hate to say it, but uh, all right. The title of this short is Arcane was good. Its characters weren't. What? what? So. Well, what? It is an interesting hook, isn't it? <laughs> It's oh. the kind of hook that I just don't even want to explore. I'm just like, I, if I see this in my recommendeds, I'm like, no, or you're so wrong. I don't, don't even have to watch the video. How can... I'm, I'm struggling to see... Like, I, I don't think I could picture a piece of media that I would describe as good if none of the characters were good. Like, the characters are the lens through which you view the, all of the other aspects of the story. Well, let's find out. If you can't, if you can't latch onto that, how do you... Have a good plot or message, or maybe. And they have a minute to explain why they it did. has no. I'm good sure they'll nail it. Come on. Bold, a bold view. I'll admit that Arcane ended up being pretty cool, but is no one else a little tired of movies and TV or streaming shows that are primarily centered around essentially bad people? For those who haven't seen it, bad people. I guess I hope well, he's so explained his That's the difference between saying that the written. characters aren't good. If Yeah, this is a totally different conversation. And so, yeah, if then the title means Arcane was of top quality, but its characters were of low moral standing, that doesn't quite ring that's as cool, like does it? Well, no. then that's like, yeah, I guess. But, sure. um, well, it depends. A lot of them. Uh, for example, like, Caitlyn, I'd be like, exactly what? I, mean, I think a lot of them are just Doing their best, right? I also, good, yeah, uh, that's, what, I, that's what I was talking with Caitlyn. I was like, she's pretty squeaky clean. I don't think you could be like, oh, well, she's done a few dubious things. Like, no, she's pretty good throughout. I'm like, a digger. Well, I don't know I was going to say, but really, if someone went, not going to count Vi, right? She like steals from people and blah, blah. And I'm just like, um, I mean, how do we, def like, what, if you commit one immoral act, you're not a good person? You know, like, it's it's a little bit more complicated than that. But anyway, let's let's see exactly who maybe we're referencing, I don't know. Because if it's Jinx, like, yeah, I mean, you, you got it dead to rights on that one, I suppose. 
And it Arcane opens with a group of kids breaking into someone else's apartment and stealing everything they can. One of the kids, Powder, takes a sack of mysterious blue orbs from an obviously special case, and instead of simply pondering an orb or two when she gets home... By the way, we're halfway done. Yep. We're halfway done. <laughs> yep. We're halfway, yeah. She drops one in her hurry to escape. Okay. It explodes. This... Which is, by the way, just so we're clear, not her fault. That's not a moral oh, act. You, you, you no. cannot criticize her for that. She had no fucking so, clue those things were going to fucking absolutely. explode. Yeah, the, the moral act yeah. so far is theft, I guess? Yes. That is a moral act, yeah. And you can but say as a consequence of her attempt at thievery, like, uh... there's an explosion, but the idea that she would have caused this, like, deliberately in any way, shape, or form is, is fucked. You can't say that. This sort of becomes a theme with Powder. Thing is, I kind of hate all... She accidentally drops orbs. Well, she does blow up a bunch of them again. Rags, you're acting in bad faith. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm going to agree with the video fun. maker, all right? I was having fun. No, cruel rags. Fun is not allowed. To be no, I was fairy. having fun. She's an orb dropper. She's a filthy fucking orb dropper. Don't <laughs> defend her. <laughs> that really it sounds a... like it means something, man. Like that. I don't know. Orb that sounds like... Her. Yeah. It, like, it just sort act. of... Rolls off the tongue in a way that you fucking orb dropper. Like, man, orb it, dropper. it just feels like a thing that people would be called. Yes. Breaking into my house, dropping my orbs. Theme with powder. Thing is, I kind of hate all these kids. And I don't particularly... He hates Clagger Why? too? <laughs> I guess because right. they stole from Jace. I don't really love the guy who got robbed either. In the end, oh. while the show's writing is surprisingly good for a show based on League of Legends... There are very few characters I actually This is care an about utterly at all. worthless. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> you worthless. liking this is them. Actually, this is yeah. a worthless video. This is the, a video about your shit taste. It's not main, a video uh, about how the characters aren't good. The main thrust of evidence is the opening scene where they rob Jace. And it, that he, he even takes the time to be like, I don't even like Jace really either. It's like, like how okay. can you argue that Jace is of poor moral standing? I guess that's like he got yeah. robbed, the piece of shit. He has that one moment where he's like, hey, fuck you. His orbs were droppable. Fuck you if you're from, you can't trust people from the Undercity. And Victor's like, I'm from the Undercity. Yep. And I think that's like the worst thing that Jace ever does is he says, says something that's a bit, mm, probably shouldn't have said that, mate. Well, and that's the thing. Like, he says something that was they, simply too based. Are they too human? Is that the problem? You don't like seeing anyone oh, do anything wrong. Writing yeah. is There's surprisingly no good for a show based on League of Legends. There are very few characters I actually care about at all, because most of them are just kind of horrible people. Thieves, killers, corrupt politicians. I'd love to- so What about the ones that I, aren't? I cannot, <laughs> I cannot help but notice that you simply didn't highlight all of the very morally upstanding people. It seems convenient, doesn't it? I just couldn't it? help but notice that you well, didn't He did. He highlighted Jace and then didn't say what his problem was, with him was. He was like, I don't like him, fuck him. And then moves on well, from um, like the guy whose whole thing is like, I want to root out corruption. I want to make technology that helps people. I, that's the whole point of my life. I just want to help people get rid of corruption. It's like... Why bitches got a lie for views? I don't get it. Oh, uh, to be, accidentally killed a kid. To be fair, I don't think you can hold that against Jace morally when, in terms of, like, he's under attack, he's desperately trying to defend himself from being fucking murdered, and one of his shots hits a, a kid. Like, that, I, yeah, I don't know how that would go in a court exactly, yeah, his, but I mean... It's, it's not a, yeah, it's not a moral thing, especially seeing how Jace reacts to that having happened. Yeah, it ruins him. Um, if anything, it shows that he, it shows that he's got a lot of uh, moral conviction that he wants to stand up to. Maybe that he wants to exude. It, like, it's very. If we're judging as a, as telling. the bird's eye audiency people, then we know that Jace did not want that to happen, and it changes his mind on war like entirely. So, call him a bad person after it's a bit complicated, isn't it? Keeps killers corrupt. I also like that the the main villain of the whole fucking season is being highlighted here. It's like, see, they're bad people. <laughs> like, yeah, he's yeah, this is the bad main stuff. Villains bad. Are bad. Yes, politicians. I'd love to meet someone. Her, why was the only highlighted piece of evidence in this video? Yeah, uh, uh, Powder, she dropped a thing by mistake and it blew up. He spent more time with the orb dropping than the breaking into the apartment, which is usually yeah. like, yeah, it's probably but, bad, but... That's not consider. actually connected to his point. Um, I know, it's almost like incidental. He said he accidentally sets up the thing that has a moral component to set up the orb droppery, which doesn't have one at all. 
and then he's just like, we need to do more Yoshi's. And he drops more herbs in the future. He would do. And he's like, I just. Oh, and as, as the Super Chat just highlighted, by the way, the image he used for politician is Toy Maker. Uh, he, he's just a guy who says, like, which toy do you want to give as a gift, remember? That's all that guy is. He's not anything else. I was, I was about to say, who is that guy? I didn't even, like, recognize him. Thieves, killers, corrupt po Yeah, that's just guy who's... That's a better example of a corrupt politician. <laughs> also, killers yeah. doesn't mean you're immoral. Murderers does. Yep, well... You can be a killer and be a good person. I'll give it to him. I, I, I'm more... Blo like, because the funny part to me is, like, yes, you use Silco so I can infer what you mean, but at the same time, why the hell do you use Silco? Like, the, if you're trying to prove there are, there are evil people in this show, why would... Show it's Emperor like saying Palpatine. there's no good people it's in Star like, Wars. Yeah. And show, yeah, exactly. Palpatine and Darth Vader and Boba Fett. Oh wait, that but he's a changed <laughs> man now, of course. But, yeah, Rags yeah, the Hell, he's he a good guy. Be, of course. Yeah, he's a good guy now. I was I almost forgot. Yeah, he went on a long journey. Politicians. I'd love to meet someone in season two who's actually worth rooting for. Who's with me? <laughs> <laughs> Just fuck off. What are you doing? What are you doing? What's this? Oh my god. <laughs> This clown world that we're in. Uh, interesting. Like, it was so a bad point made badly. It was so dishonest. Like, you can't think of one moral kid. How fucked is your moral compass if you can't watch a show like this and think and, and, and notice a good person? How fucked are you? Bizarre shit. That's yep. insane. That's insane. What is it with what is it with arcane and sh YouTube shorts that are just from the sample size of two? They're just they're crap. <laughs> Unfortunately, our arcane coverage is not yet over. There's one more. So this one's kind of just God funny. Damn it. It's a comment. Damn all right. And I think it just has to be appreciated all in one. It's quite a. It's just I I, I saw it after our uh, arcane coverage. In our little comment section, and I was like, "What in the world does all of this mean?" Uh, uh, free reign. Whoever wants to take it, you go right ahead. I'll take this one. Yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> well, I've learned this. <laughs> well, I've learned there's something wrong with me. I love Arcane and I love EFAP, but I couldn't listen to these streams. I can't bear all the platitudes. Omg. Did you look? Did you see this part and how uh, they? This was fantastic. It, word, it just makes me cringe or thing. I know. That's my favorite platitude. It makes me cringe. It just makes me cringe or thing. Well, duh. I guess I prefer, I just prefer to listen uh, to people criticize with accuracy rather than accurately praise. Anyway, yeah, Arcane is fantastic, but Stafu. This is a very Arcane confused is fantastic, comment. But shut the fuck up. Yeah, like, it's like, accurately praised. Shut up. What what is that? Just like yeah, so if it's good. But shut the fuck up. Good, like what? <laughs> yeah, I'm so, confused by yeah. this one. So it's, it's, I just I sometimes think of the comment section. They just I think some people write comments not expecting anybody to read it. It's just an expression of a thought they have, however unfiltered, right? However unrefined. It's like yeah, because I just read this. I was like, this sounds like. Just you, you know that. this is just feelings floating around. You haven't made the thought yet, but you put it on the page. Anyway, Arcade is fantastic, but shut the fuck up with your accurate praise. Like, <laughs> what? It's bizarre. Yeah, so, guys, it's, it's, this is the most raw expression of humanity, next to um, Octopus bathroom Man. stall graffiti. So, of all of the, so what is your favorite platitude? Is it like a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, or fortune favors the bold, or OMG, look, did you see this part and how they this? It was fantastic. That's my favorite one. Because that's my favorite platitude. Yeah. I, I, I've always loved that platitude. It's really great. I don't know. Yeah. Um. But if, if this is just a matter of I prefer it when they criticize stuff, it's like okay. That yeah, makes more sense. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Especially from an entertainment point of view, I, I see what you mean, but uh. And we did, we did criticize this accurately. There were some things in here that uh, the, the show uh, kind of faltered a bit, but for the most part, it was praised because it's a very, very, very good show, and there's a lot to praise, and it's good to explain why those things are praiseworthy. Um, and now we're done with Arcane, okay? We're jumping okay. over. Thank God, I can't take um, another short. I realize this; these probably should have been moved to earlier. 
because it would have made a little bit more sense. But we're going to Halo for just a little bit, just a little bit. And Yay. It's, first of all, Halo Infinite. I feel, Fring, I feel like you're the one that should read we're this. We're going to circle just feels around right. back okay. to Halo. This is okay. a Steam review of Halo Infinite, or rather a forum post on there, I think. Yeah, Okay. maybe that. Anyway, uh, let's, let's take a look, shall we? So titled, Complaining About Halo Infinite, uh, is like going to a concert, getting extremely mad because the beer is expensive and the selection too small to get drunk without overpaying, and then complaining loudly about it throughout the entire band set to people who are too busy enjoying the music and smart enough to know it's a better deal to get drunk at your local dive bar. Expect substitute, uh, except substitute the beer for in-game skins, titles, achievements, etc. Yeah, they might be overpriced in a crappy deal, but the game itself is fun as hell. You don't go to concerts at huge venues just to get drunk. There are better options for that. This is a very confused, and not, again, yeah, a very confused. Like, what is the sentiment that I'm? Analogy man strikes again. Well, it's a pretty, it's <laughs> so... a pretty poor analogy because what. What is my what? Are, what are the the substitute for the game? A different game, like a completely different game. I can't play Halo Infinite and then not get um, all of the microtransactions and the battle pass content. So, so like that's just stuffed. Yeah. So the the equivalent here would be going to a concert where you're not allowed to drink, right? Or without paying. You know, you can't have you can't have any. You can't get drunk beforehand. So a, a well, a concert where well, they're talking about um, the beer oh. is extremely expensive at a concert, right? Yeah. Well, you just and go somewhere cheaper to get drunk times. first if you want to get drunk at the concert. Well, that's not that doesn't work because uh, this concert is one where if you don't drink their beer, you can't you have drink to anything. drink it at their venue. Yeah, exactly. This is so. This and is that's, like that's saying, a completely I valid criticism. Band. Yeah, this band is great. I love this band. Every time they release an album, it's got all of these songs, and there's a lot of great variety to the songs, and man, it's just been great. I love this band so much. Oh, the band's got a, another concert that they're doing? Sweet. I'm going to go to the concert, and I go to the concert, and it's free admission. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, the band only has two songs that they play, and they're going to keep playing these two songs over and over and over again. It's like, yeah, they're pretty decent songs, I guess. Sure, that's cool. There's only two songs. And the beer is super expensive, and all of the merchandise is yeah, everything is super expensive. Really, really overpriced. And normally, the things you get for free at other concerts, they I have to pay for them here. So that's kind of that's kind of not too good. And also, I could have swore there was a lot more people at this concert a while ago, but I guess it's just a few of us left. Um, and they're still playing the same two songs, but they say in a few months they'll have a third song. So, so that's neat, I guess. There, that's your analogy. Fuck off. And some of it, yeah, go somewhere else to get drunk. He said, play a different game with extra steps, basically. Just, yeah, fine. Yeah. We'll, we'll take your analogy and just be like, fine, we'll do what we're all doing, which is playing other games. Um, Nobody's playing it. Yeah, simple as that. I, I like the emotes here, a, a clown brain. A clown brain. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I guess he was having a lot of fun, and he wanted to talk about how much fun he was having, but everyone was like, fuck this game, it's bad for this reason, that reason, this reason, that, you know. Now, this oh, has been brought up here and there, so I figured we may as well pop it on to make sure it was covered by us. The, uh, the quote oh in relation to why it is that good old Master Chief has indeed removed the helmet and is continuing to remove the okay. helmet. Here All it right. is. Um, so... Uh, Pablo Schreid Schreiber on finally unmasking Master Chief in hashtag Halo the series at Get Fandom Gaming. In order to know a character, you kind of have to take the helmet off. It's not like mm -hmm. in The Mandalorian where there's a rule by a <laughs> deadline. Uh, up slash <laughs> oh, just it dot L Y wow. forward slash three Wait, so a five Y S P. Do they think we can't get to know the the Mandalorian? Oh, yeah, there's the, so the much to that this. A rule? There's so much so that's much. wrong or with the, this. Or the, fact that, that, the fact that there is a rule means that we can get to know him with the helmet on. That's how it works. If there's a rule, then it you know it works in terms of storytelling. Well, no, no, the it's, rule it's just, is something that they made up. Exactly. Well, yeah. it's, wrong on multiple, it's wrong on multiple levels. In order to know a character, you don't have to take the helmet off. You can absolutely communicate character with a faceless person. It's been done many, Especially many times. Especially if you before. have a voice been, and a body. Holy shit. Yeah, Do you know how much power done, you have? By the way, it has by the way, this applies to robots. Chief. 
who don't it have the robots. ability yep. to express their face, right? They just have a static face, like Legion mm -hmm. from Mass Effect. Oh, Attack name a single like that. character that's a robot. You can't. Legion's like Tali, fucking Tali Zora Naraya. She wears a um, fucking mask the whole time. We don't know who she is. only got like eyes. He doesn't really have a mouth or anything. It's entirely in the eyes. But I mean, yeah, no, uh, Marvin, hers, Martian, uh, Marvin the Martian only has who, eyes. Who's everyone's uh, favorite character from Rogue One again? Yeah, the fucking robot. Mm, yeah. If and you I mean, have, if this yeah, is does such he have a, a static face? And also, like, so, yeah. unless this, unless this move. is a criticism, well, unless this is a criticism of the Mandalorian, it it must be necessarily. You must necessarily be implying that we can't get to know no. who Mando is. No, there's he a rule. Says, this there's, um, he says that there's a rule, so it's okay. Yeah. So, so, so what I rule, rule, you can't so take the helmet off. What I think happened is he realized, oh shit, that's kind of like an underhanded insult to a show that we've often said that we've drawn some level of inspiration from. Yeah. Well, no, man, no, it's okay. I think yeah, that's what happened. There's a rule here. that they made up for that show, totally arbitrarily. That doesn't even make sense. It's a What's stupid that? rule, and they made it up. And this is just awkward. You're implying that we don't know who Chief is in the games, like that we've got nothing on him, um, because we never see his face ever. I mean, you don't see Samus's face throughout, like, the vast majority of Metroid games. Well, to be fair, Fringy, they haven't played the game, so how would they know that? Wow, well, yeah, true, true, That's true. many people are mentioning. They're talking about this fucking weird guy in, in that Star War movie, the CP... CP3, oh, whatever. Yeah. He's... Nobody really right. knows who that guy well, is, they R forgot. RD, RD, RD... Yeah, what about Vader? Uh, 2D, right? Okay, D if... R2? If people are going to talk about the characters of the OT, no one's going to mention Vader or C-3PO. What can you even say as traits of those two? None. They well, had their masks on, like, the whole time, yeah. almost. I mean, like R2-D2 like doesn't even, he can't even, like, speak. He just goes, bloop, 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 boom. But yet, hmm. No, well, none of them have characters. You know, this, you know, like, fucking you know this is really, I'm really frustrated as well, because I've just realized that a medium I really enjoy is fucking audio drama. Like, uh, man... Oh, yeah, what's it yeah. like to enjoy a media that doesn't have characters, Jay? Oh, it's great. I hate characters. <laughs> I like. Well, the thing the thing about that medium as well is that the main thing that you can't really do in that is, um, well, visuals. But something one thing that I find really doesn't work when they try to do it is action based stories because you know you can't see any of it. Um, I I, put, I prefer the you know the more slowly paced atmospheric character based stuff and you know that's character based so yeah it's just someone in, statement. someone in chat said isaac from dead space however in the first game he isaac just doesn't have a character he's just not he's not a character he's he's a vessel for the player essentially things happen I wouldn't around use him, him as an example hey, hang on a second Hang on a second. What about us? Well, oh, I was doing the Isaac thing, right? So in Dead Space two and three, he starts taking his helmet off a whole lot more, and they actually like make him a character who has thoughts and perspectives and things. So not a good example to use Isaac from Dead Space because in the first one, us, he's just, he's not a character. us. I'm, I, you, you are... guys, a lot of you in chat have probably seen my face, but um, the rest of us here. Well, it wouldn't matter yeah, if they'd seen our faces at this point because. The whole point he's making yeah. is that he's going to have the helmet off during dramatic scenes, right? Um, wow. More than just that. It's off frequently. But like, Because obviously if we'd seen his face static in an image for years and then he, we see the whole show with it on, it's not like someone would say, oh, well, I know that's what he's talking about. It's like, no, he's talking specifically about taking it off all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what does this mean but Like, where there's a rule as if... His point about writing is subverted when a writer decides that they don't want to do it. It just completely undermines everything he just said. Absolutely. Because well, this is just an offhand comment that wasn't thought through very well to defend a yeah. decision that was made in a show that was filmed a while ago. And, and he probably knows all the fans did not want this for Master Chief. I'm sure that he does know that, yeah. Um, but it's not his choice. <laughs> no. Um... Oh, I don't know, yeah, that's, that is the justification yeah, for this, when we all know very well that, uh, and funnily enough, it's, lack of imagination. it's not Mando's helmet that makes him not have character. No, it's yeah, that it's, he it's isn't that, a character. It's that he's an idiot, loser, fool. 
mask or not, helmet or not. Oh, and, and for the record, we're not saying Just... Isaac has zero character in Dead Space. The fact that he takes action would characterize him. It's just that it's not really yeah, worth like comparing he, him to someone like C-3PO. He is, yeah, he's Isaac in Dead Space 1 is virtually characterless. He, um, it, it's, we're talking like bare minimum so that a story can happen kind of thing. Uh, it, they, they specifically talked about how in Dead Space 2 they were going to humanize him more give him like speaking lines and because remember he doesn't have speaking lines in the first game he goes up oh, and ouch a lot but he doesn't have he doesn't like have any lines right he's very blank in that sense yeah. uh, and they, they went out of their way to dead space two and three give him a character and you know also the dead space remakes looking damn good i hope so visually I feel like you and I will both jump on that, right, Rex? Absolutely. I Dead Space is one of my favorite games. I love the Dead Space series, so hey. I'm very happy to to see that it's getting a remake that at least looks very impressive. So we will see um, how that goes because Dead Space graphically is it's all right. It's you know it's aged okay. So we'll see. Um, We'll, we'll, I, I, I'd love to go back to the Ishimura with modern graphics and all that delicious lighting and shadows. And mm, I'm ready. I'm nom, so nom, nom. ready. Uh, nom, 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 is nom, everyone nom, familiar that. with Gal Gadot's cringy line from the, the, you know, on the Nile, that thing? No yes. One? Yes, of course. And all the champagne on the Nile. So, I was going to say, I Nile. probably don't need to play it, um, but there's the, I saw this underneath it and I was like, huh, it's just funny to think about this. This is a comment. Yeah, I remember saying that. So can we, as a collective, finally agree that Gal Gadot is one of the worst actresses currently out and has no right being in any movie, let alone being a lead? It's <laughs> <Based in> true. <laughs> like, the... However, consider, consider, she is hot. That's the... true. It's just so strange, right? Because it's like a collective sort of um, refusal to admit She's a because remember when we did the arc for uh, DC or rather like the first half of it, second half coming eventually. Um, the the one thing that we like got straight away from Wonder Woman, the first one was wow her delivery for several lines, you know. And then of course there's some fast forwarding to Joss Justice League where she's got some famously bad ones. Um, but yeah, there's not I I I'm not aware of any movie where she can deliver lines believably. She always comes across as though she's reading them from a page, and she never gets, like, inflections right. She just sort of blurts them out. And uh, a she big part like of it is... She sounds like a robot. She's, she's stone -faced. Been given the beta on inflection. She's often stone-faced. Yeah, the we... only explanation we can come up with is that she's been taught to be stone-faced. She's a model. That's how it works. Uh, but not when you're acting. You need that shit to move all over the place. Someone in chat said she isn't that hot, Rags. Listen. I mean, she you are, you, that is delusion. <laughs> like, post, not, I post think, face picks, I under, post face picks. I understand that it's subjective, but let's, let's be fucking clear. Gal Gadot is fucking smoking hot, well, all right? Like, like, you, you don't have to want to bang Gal Gadot, right? Like, that's allowed. Okay. Like, no one has to want to be, like, to think that she is hot themselves, right? But, but you, can't, you can't point at someone who is conventionally very attractive and be like, Nah, they're not though. Hey, look, she is. We'll just have to sell it. Some people don't find it hot, all right? Hot. They've all got a taste. Some people are just that's not it's not it for them, you know, and that's fine. Moving on, got uh, a video that people wanted us to to just check out because it's kind of funny because it kind of relates to how we've covered videos and stuff. But uh, this this video is called "Ad Transitions Are Getting Weirder." Ad transitions are getting weird. We may never know what truly happened on that fateful Thursday the 11th. But what we do know is that Dylan faces a lifetime in a dark, cold cell. An existence in an empty rectangle of a room. A lifetime in a dark, square space. Design a website that keeps <laughs> warning. <laughs> That's nice. The guy I like that, um, Very good. Every, every video starts... Like every video essay starts like this. I think so. He's done a lot of parody stuff, but that's just that's great. Uh, that's that's the guy who also did the Hassan parody ones. Oh, the streamers from the seventies and fifties and stuff, is it? Yeah, that would make sense. But uh, yeah, ad transitions are getting weird. Um, 
S some of them are really clunky. I was actually made fun of in the recent Goodell, but it was, Dude. uh, you ever think about uh, gravitational physics or something like that? It's just like, no, <laughs> but okay. If I, if I ever think of an ad transition like that, I'm doing it. Like, you can do it and it doesn't even have to be real. I've done two or three ads, four ads, I think. I've, I've done pretty much one pair of Goodell I, and two on EFAP. I think it's the, the rare context where it's, it's funnier if it's real. So the next topic, <laughs> I don't know which one of you should read this one. This is a tweet from uh, good old movie Bob. He's the next topic. <laughs> oh boy, we, this really is a little Bob media voice. medley. All right, let's click this link just so I make see, make sure I get the whole. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna like make Kurosawa, it. I make mad. All right. Tasty cooking isn't always pretty cooking. This double vacuum sealed marinade bag <laughs> contains an entire chicken that's been fridge marinating in a mix of three different hot sauces, sriracha, and hot taco seasonings for five days. Tonight I roast with savory sausage stuffing. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I just like the other bag that he just the, the bag, things into. It's like it's with duct tape. <laughs> it looks like Don't a serial like killer storage container, for a head. You weirdo. <laughs> Do you not have a Tupperware container? And he well, said this isn't been in the sink for five days. So the fridge. He's been marinating it. It's preparing it for cooking rags. Okay. That's this the is, chicken bag. That's Waller. the chicken bag. That's yeah. Rags was the one that was confused, Jay, not me. I understand it. This is all very strange. Yeah, it was just, I guess, it was odd, because it was in the sink, and I'm... It seems so appealing, his bag of chicken. Uh, <laughs> is the duct tape. It <laughs> uh, It looks like some sort of, like, a medical blood bag, maybe, you'd find yeah. in a video game. Some post-apocalyptic sort of... Like, oh yeah, this is a health kit. This will give you 30 health points. And you're like, oh, I'd never use this in real life, but in video games, I can't feel it or smell it, so it's okay. And now to appreciate this back and forth. And I saw it, I was like, this, is this real? <laughs> Lol, you're obese. You're not a person. <laughs> Wave. This, if you call someone fat, you, you don't even like, don't even the meat of, like, you're, lol, you're obese, just like, we got all right, but it's like you're not a person. It's like, oh shit, we cracked this up. Look at his, look at movie. It's the wrong your image of his. He did use. The yes, wrong he's an intelligent man. Yeah. Denying this. The only this. thing I can focus on in this image, I can't see any other aspects of it. He gets angry like on Twitter. To be like fair, a... this is pretty tame for him, actually. He looks like a weird Pixar person. I can kind of see that. Okay, oh, it's a shame that Rainy's not here. He may have, he's, okay, we'll have to do a different one. Uh, oh, I suppose we could do this one, but we're gonna have to do it quick, okay? The idea right. here, and you're gonna have to, okay. if you can boot up the stream, you guess you can see it, but we gotta, we gotta choose what would Movie Bob have rated these movies? It's called Quib Gift, Ooh. the Great Movie Bob Quiz. All right, but Ooh, there's, there's, wow. there's a decent chunk of them, so we're gonna games. have to go quick. Okay, I have to go quick. Okay, 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 right. okay. Gotcha. So if so you if you get the stream on... up, uh, okay. Let me press live. Let me click. Our the first one is here. Eternals. What did he rate Eternals? Ooh, Nine. I love this game. Uh, he gave Eternals a seven point five. I was gonna go with eight. Should we average out to eight then, or? I guess that for to eight. Okay. Uh, Shang Chi. Well, it depends on what the other. What what depends on what the other. What what did you say, Jay? I said nine. So we can, fast. Yeah, so we can go with eight. Shang Chi. What yeah, we'll, we'll settle with eight. Um, um, I'm gonna go with another seven point five. I'll go with seven. I'm probably yeah. I I can say seven. I guess we'll call that seven then. Go uh, with seven. Yeah. Go with seven. Venom. Let there be carnage. Ooh, I'm going to say four. six. I, I guess I'll just mi uh, go mid five. All right. Five it is. Kong and Godzilla fighting. What's that one? Six. Um, I'm going to go with 8.5. I was going to go with seven. So should we, should we call it seven? 
Seven. Then. I yeah, think seven, I could see him yeah, arguing that like this movie knows what it is, sort of thing. You know. Yeah. yeah. Army of the Dead. Seven. Um, I'm gonna pass on this one. I don't know enough about Army God, of the Dead. God, it's so awful. Even I'm like, come on, movie Bob must have hated it too, right? I'm, I'm gonna go five. Call it even. So we'll go with six, I guess. Yeah, I go with six. Wonder Woman eighty four. Even. Oh, uh, I could see ooh. him loving I it. See, that's I could see him defending this. That's what this. I'm thinking. Thinking. Eight. I'm gonna say eight. All right. Um, I'm actually gonna settle for that too. I, I feel like that's fair. Uh, Mulan. Seven. How? I, how do we all have like this movie Rob sense where we're all basically <laughs> in the same page? I'm assuming. I'm assuming we're all assuming on Mulan that he felt the need to defend this one too. Um. Yeah, he felt the need to defend it, but he didn't go too hard on it because, like, he, he you know, he, he does acknowledge that it has issues. But, you know, seven is a, is a good score for a film that he's defending, but he, um, he, you know, doesn't want to pretend it's perfect. Next is The Call of the Wild, which is the Harrison Ford Doggo movie. No or, idea. I, I, I didn't even know you would have seen it, so I'm just going to go with, like, a five. I don't know. Uh, do you give one rank? Sorry, what was it? Jay, well, uh, I said four. Jay, would you say above five or below five? I don't know. I have know nothing about this movie. Rate right, yeah. anyway. You all you have to go on is That's it's Harrison Ford and a dog. Oh, so we've got four, five, five. <laughs> so I guess it's five. Doctor Doolittle, yeah. starring Robert Downey Jr. Uh, six. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, try and go for a low one here and say three. I'm gonna. F I feel adventurous. Yeah. Think so? yeah, I feel Ooh. like I feel like he's got to give some low scores, right? So. I'll go with three as well. You know, I'll, I was, I'm going to change mine to five. So Sorry. We, I, if we... I just stepped down for a second. D Movie Bob said to someone, you're not a person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, well, they called him fat. Come on. So, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Dude, he, he wanted to genocide all of Republicans or conservatives. What, what is this, uh, what's this writing system that we're doing here? We're guessing we are... Movie Bob. We're actually halfway through, so now we yeah. have to average out four votes, okay? So, what did Movie Bob give Rise of Skywalker? Um, I, have, I have to pass on this one, because I've already... I know what he gave Rise of Skywalker. Um, I'm gonna say... I think... Was it high? I'm trying to remember. Was I it nine? I... I... I can imagine him giving this a high one because he's he's kind of ah oh. like a wild card. I think he did. What is low rags? I'm gonna say seven and a half, seven point five. I'm gonna go with nine. Bring you what have you got? Um, well, I said two, but now I'm not sure. I'm almost certain it's a high number. Um, the thing is that that's because I, I be kind of I'm a little bit biased, so we can average it out if you want. Put, call it like five or six, I guess. That's or... what we've been doing, yeah. Sure. We'll just call it six. Uh, 1917. Seven. Hmm. I'm going to go with eight. I feel like, gonna, I feel like what his... Nine. I think I feel like he thinks it's like, very good, good, but he thinks that, like, oh, guys, come on, don't don't go crazy with it. What do you reckon? You know, yeah, I'm I, thinking he'll give it a six. I Ooh. think he'll give it a nine. I think this is one... We got six, seven, eight, nine, eight. which puts us at what? 7.5, which would be 8, then? 7.5. Yeah. yeah, go up to 8. All right. That's fine, man. Joker. Yeah, I think he actually would... Ooh, I could see him being uh, mean to Joker. Ooh. I can't remember the score three, I gave you. It's going to be a third. Four, two, three, two. I'd go with 5, so we'll go... Uh, 4? That'll be 4, four? then. Okay. Average out, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. I'll well, we'll mm. probably give it, like, a 6 or a 5. Yeah. Let's do a 5. I'm going to do a 5. I'm happy, got all that I'm happy with five. I'm happy with five. Oh, yeah. Five, 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 well, I guess seven. that's still average. I guess that I, I'll happily I think, give it all to you as a five. Yeah, I think it's still still. Yeah, uh, Captain Plank. You probably rated oh, this like nine, a fucking seven. seven. Eight. Yeah, I think he thinks it's a seven. Eight. I said nine. Oh, so seven, seven, eight, nine, which means eight. All right. I think eight. I think yeah. So. Eight. Yeah. Aquaman. Uh, I'm gonna go five. No, I'm gonna go six. I'm gonna. Say I'm so. gonna go five. I'll say six. 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 The sixes have it. Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. Five. Four. I'm. Yeah, I'll say five. I think I'm on a four. Yeah, I don't think there's anything for him to latch on to here, but nothing yeah. for him to hate either. Mm-hmm. Solo. Six. Ah, uh, two. 
Um, eight. Uh, I guess no, I think I mean, no, 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 seven. I think seven. I think you probably like this one, but not cr a crazy amount. I I think I was gonna go with six or seven. So um, all right, I'll shade it to like a seven then. We doing wait. So well, if if we're doing, I'm six. We got a two, six, seven, and oh, I said six or seven. So should we just call it six? Oh, we'll go six. Then. All so right. We could drop it to a five because of the two. Oh, it seems no, like Fringy doesn't want to stick to the two. Yeah. All right. Black I think Panther. I, uh, I think I have a different impression. I mean, like, again, like a nine, right? Yeah, like a <laughs> nine This will be the one I choose ten for, I think. I think, yeah, probably ten. <laughs> I wouldn't so be we surprised. Got two tens, I'm seven. I'm happy with the ten, yeah. You put on you maybe nine, maybe then. he docked points for, like, the CGI in the second half. You would, I, I, I feel like... Because I know he has to give it something It's got to be nine or ten, right? You can mm -hmm. put it at a nine, yeah. If if you guys are that high and I'm the low ball at seven, then just give it a nine. Right. Okay, we'll go nine. Baby driver. Yeah. Uh, oh, seven. I imagine he really liked it. I'll give it an eight. I think he's is what he would do. Uh, I was gonna yeah. say seven. So eight. We got two sevens, two eights. So I give it to eight. Yep. Resident Evil: The Final Chapter. Um, I have no clue. Uh. Huh. Well, let me. Or five. I don't know that what well let's I, it's the i'm trying to my thought process is if i don't have three latch on to as my my thing right um Five? i feel like he didn't hate it but he didn't like it either i feel like he wouldn't so want to praise like this too much but he also wouldn't like want to just shit all over it i don't know yeah yeah in my mind movie bob doesn't see this as a movie it, he's maybe he's as like is this is like a fun silly movie Mm -hmm. That doesn't have anything to say, which for him will put it a little bit above average, I think. Because it's not a movie with like a, a, a any any fucking message, so it's it's like a popcorn crunchy movie, which I think for him would be at a five or six. So I'm gonna say, ooh, I'm torn between five and six. What are you guys at? Uh, I think I'm on a four. I was gonna say five. I, I think I'm. Yeah, I, I'm happy to just call it a five because I'm I'm cascading between all those numbers. So uh, Ghostbusters, the Whammon one, eight. like eight. Yeah, yeah, eight. I'm a, yeah, I'm happy with eight. Yeah, Sausage Party. Um, four. even I think though it's it star three. food, uh, I'm gonna go with four. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be happy yeah. with four. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, let us. See what happens. That is that is all the questions. Oh, I'm done. so excited. I'm so excited. Da, 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 oh man. Da, is, because we haven't covered him in a while, so I hope I'm not a rusty on my movie, Bob. Uh well these these are all empathy. like, you know, old movies though. So like if he's changed, then sort of. that would he throw off changed. our movie bob sense. He hasn't well, maybe, changed. If anything, he's maybe there are ways well. Well, that that would be a form of change, the rags. I don't mean like suppose, if he's improved. I mean if he's changed in any way at if, all, I'm that would throw off our changed, movie Bob sense for the older movie Bob. I don't think he's changed. I really don't. I th I don't think he has a personality that will allow him to change. It would be cool if they gave I, you. I assume there are ways in which he changes, but they don't affect the core. I mean, he gets larger. To be movie Bob. It would be cool if this gave you points based on the proximity to the correct answer. But let us let us go through. We have. Um, all right. We said Eternals was an eight. Turns out it was an eight. Nice. Oh, nice! We said Shang-Chi was a seven. Turns out it was an eight. Incorrect. Okay. Oh, pretty good. We're very nice. close. We said Venom was yeah. a five. Gave it a six. Oh, we're doing yeah. pretty good. I think we're yeah, doing we're pretty doing good well. so far. Uh, we said seven for Godzilla vs. Kong. We were correct. Was a seven. Yes! Look at this fucking go, man! <laughs> right. Army of the Dead, okay. we put it at six. His answer was seven. Oh, no. Not bad. Wonder nice. Woman 84, we said he'd give it an 8. The correct answer is 4. I'm surprised. Ooh, oh, wow. That one didn't, that is that one didn't slip, slip by him. He, he yeah. noticed. Yeah, he noticed. He noticed Wonder Woman 84. We said 7 for Mulan. It was 6. Pretty close. Man. Oh, one off. Nice. Yeah, cl close. We went with 5 for the fucking Harrison Ford Doggo movie. It turns out it was 8. 8? Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, I guess maybe that wow, movie's real I'm good. I don't know. I'm legitimately surprised. I'm legit surprised. Should, I don't know anything about oh, the movie. Bob's recommendation. Doolittle, we gave a four. Turns out it was three. 
Oh, oh. Yeah, close, close again. Nice. Rise of Skywalker. We get we guessed Ooh. six. It was eight. Oh, oh what? Why? Why? He gave it an Why? eight. He gave it eight. I don't it. know, man. I don't know how to explain it. I, I, I know to that because I keep I keep Was referencing films that he's given Rise of. No, basically his entire video um, is is on the crux that guys calm down. It's not that bad. Okay. Uh, it is though. It's, not it's that fine. Bad well, no, his conclusion ends with uh, guys, you're overhating this. It's really not that bad. It's fine. Eight out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nineteen seventeen. We said he'd guess eight. He gave seven. Wow, we yeah, are real one off. Joker, we said four. He gave four. Low, yeah. Oh, oh yep, we knew it. He couldn't like that. You're oh, hang on, just to be clear. Good. The Rise of Skywalker is better than 1917 in Joker. By <laughs> <Five>, four. <laughs> yeah. Godzilla King of the Monsters. We said he'd give five. He gave ten. What? That's, that's, that's our first full on that's miss. That's gotta be a meme. I'm, I'm curious really? if that's a meme answer because, like, King of the Bosses is definitely worse than God vs. Kong for the aspect of insanity, from what I understand, and monster fights. Like, so I don't know why he would rate yeah. this 10. I'm sure he has a justification my... for it. I think, I, I imagine he just says, like, you know, something like, oh, yeah, Godzilla vs. Kong, you know, it was, like, embarrassed to be a monster movie, but this, you know, it, it knows it's a monster it movie and it knows it's it. stupid. That's what my thought process was. The first one, he's like, oh, it's just meh. And we get some monsters here and there, but it's mostly human crap and it's dumb. And then the next one comes out and it's like, this knows what it's trying to be. Um, Captain Plank. We said he'd give it an eight. He gave it a seven. Oh, just oh, close. Man, so close. Off by one. Aquaman. We said he'd give it a six. He gave it a six. Yep. Yes. Oh, ding, ding, ding. Ant-Man and the Wasp. We said five. He said six. Damn, dude. We, right. I think we've oh, done really close. well. <laughs> yeah. You're doing really good. We only have, like, good. we have one miss, and that's it. Like one, yeah, because, like, cause so like the other, when you're off by one, it feels like it should be a win, honestly. Yeah. And, um, and the dog off, movie, the, we I haven't, haven't been even, off by more than seen, one. So. Any of, anything other than that. And to be fair, that is the outlier in his scores, because, like, he gave the other Godzilla movie the, the thing that we expected him to. Yeah. Um, huh, Solo. Yeah. We guessed he'd give it a six, and he did. Okay. Oh, Yay. nice. Yeah. Black Panther. We said he'd give it a nine. Yeah. He gave it an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Racist. Oh, so close. We had the right workings. Wow. We just didn't have the right answer. Very close. Baby Driver. We said he'd give it an eight. He gave it a seven. Wow. wow. We're, we're nailing Ser this seriously, so we late. know him really well, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> For how little we actually cover him, we do know him shockingly well. We said he would give Resident Evil Final Chapter a five. He gave it a five. Uh, God damn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we nailed it. It, it. We thought that one would be tough. Ghostbusters the Whammon one. We thought eight. Okay. He gave it a six. Damn. Oh, oh two off. I mean, still, I'm, so, I'm genuinely off. surprised. I would have thought you would pump those numbers. I didn't think you'd give it a six. No, I I I'm really surprised. surprised. Yeah, we're still so we on can the confirm, correct side of five, though. Rise of Skywalker is better than Ghostbusters 2016. Yes. And Sausage Party, and we said he gave it four. Gave it a seven. Oh, a seven, oh. really? Wow. wow, he really does like food. I guess so. So, we have two pretty big misses, and then one small miss, and then the rest were, like, within one. So I'm I, very happy with that. I think that if we're within one, I'm happy to count that as, like, a right yeah. answer. And I think if we count all the ones we were within one, we got like close to a fucking winning just oh, I would score. Say, how many questions were oh, there? Yeah, we did really well. I think we, we only got really three well. wrong. There were like, twenty-two. We did. So we got we did know, damn good. Oh, that's an we A plus got easily. Gotta be. I mm -hmm. I absolutely believe that if Movie Bob took this quiz, we would do better than he did. Dude, <laughs> we could tell you. We could tell you what Movie Bob would rate a movie if he's never even seen it within the accuracy of one point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we will be able to tell you. To be fair, a lot of my considerations about his ratings were just what these movies were culturally, rather than what's in them. Yep. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's that's a huge well, part of what my guesses were. Is like, what message can he kind of attach himself to, and what in it is a message he wants well, to you know, that repulses him? We we know his priorities. Um, we know, yeah, cu culturally, what happened. Um, relating his priorities to that. We know the kind of thing that he's also going to 
if a movie is really popular, I think that tones down in his, his score. And if it's really unpopular, it tones up his score because he is a contrarian. He does the thing. No, you know what he's doing? He's doing. He's basically doing the thing of when you see that a, a thing is like has like one out of ten. You think it's actually a five, but you give it a ten to balance out the score. That's like definitely what he does. But he does. I don't think he realizes that's what he's doing. I think, but like, that's the only way he can say, "Yeah, Rise of Skywalker, it's fine, not that bad." Eight. No, oh, also I can use the loot. I'll be right back. Keep Damn talking it. about movie Bob while I'm gone. Well, oh, we can't wait until everyone's here for the next bit. So now we just got to talk more about movie Bob, I guess. Yeah, go ahead. You think he's happy? He looks happy in his little happy? Twitter picture, doesn't he? Sure, but is that is that a true? I think he's probably angry. Do you think that that would be well, a good way to describe movie Bob? He had that tweet once yes. where he said, "Republicans stole my future from me," and he was referring to us being yeah. on Mars with robot legs and stuff. Um, I think what, that, like, like that because Republicans got in, that it was less likely that we were going to be on Mars with robot legs. If we got all of the non-Republicans in, we would have colonized Mars by now fully, and we would have I mean, all been transhumanists. But like the problem, I mean, that's like it seems like generally it's hard to get governments invested in long-term projects like space because it's hard to deliver results for that in four to eight years. Well, okay, that's um, that's your theory. He's said many times it's about stupid people. That is my theory, get... but you know what? I would wager that I have much more of an investment and interest in space exploration than Movie Bob does. Uh, no, so not. he's already explained it. He said that if we just got rid of stupid people, we'd probably be okay. What do you mean, got rid of them? What does that mean, get well, rid of them? Kill all the conservatives. Like, if they weren't around anymore. That's what he suggested. We just got rid of the conservative Thanos snapped. Can you help me out? Because I feel like I feel like I've seen that tweet, but it's at this point kind of a haze. What did he say specifically? I think he said like, just do what Thanos did, but with conservatives. Why would he say that and like <laughs> post that? On the Why would he platform? say it? Because he thinks that'll save the world. How does he not? How does he not have the thing that stops him? Like, <laughs> wait a minute, that's pretty fucking evil. <laughs> like, wait a minute, am I Palpatine? <laughs> like, what's happening? <laughs> man, I ah uh, man, I, d he needs to because when when he says something like Republicans stole my future, that feels like I always find it. Re I don't know, man. Like, give yourself a little bit more agency in life. Like that, if the political party gets in that you don't like, like it's not you. I don't know. Like, just find a way to keep moving forward. Well, no, right. You've got to. I feel like if you're going to make a claim like that, you've got to talk about what what policy did they enact. That actually affected you, and that what were the tangible effects of that yeah, policy, specific right? Specific policies, not just vague generalities. But also, like, because I don't you get well, used let's, to let's this. Go, fringy, fringy. If the Democrats had been elected consecutively for the last, you know, however years, many, I guess it would have been. Yeah, yeah, right. We would definitely be on Mars with robot legs, right? Yeah, probably yeah, not. Um, at least, okay, at least the robot legs. We would have gotten the At robot legs. The robot, well, we, we're getting the robot legs. The robot legs are happening no matter what. We're definitely going to get the robot legs. Yeah, we would have had them by now. We would all have robot legs, but we don't, do we? So yeah. I mean, but like, does does Bob like? Is he really invested in robot legs? Like, is that What's something that really matters to him? Who is? What's interesting to me is like the the people that seem most interested in colonizing Mars are like the Elonites, and they uh, generally seem to lean conservative, in my experience. Uh so I, I'm just going to say, like, I'm way more interested in the moon than Mars at the moment. Mars is really far away. It's going to be incredibly difficult logistically to go yeah. there to maintain a moon base. Well, uh, no, it's a Mars base. The moon's right there. Venus really, is also more practical than Mars. Venus is more um, practical than Mars for, like, certain yeah. aspects. But, like, obviously we can never well, go yeah. on the surface of, uh, of Venus. Yeah. Oh, that attitude. Wow, people well, are bragging that the they base, got their robot legs more, already. Um, it's much more practical. What, like in terms of an orbital base? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, um, there's no protection from radiation on the moon, though. There's very little on Mars, too. Mars has an incredibly thin atmosphere. Yeah, you need to live underground on Mars. Mars um, has uh, like a, a really goblin. fine dust, a really fine dust that's filled with a lot of uh, dangerous chemicals. Um, you got to deal with those Martian storms. On the moon, the main thing you got to worry about is asteroid impacts. But if you build in a cave or something, that's always an option. Uh, so, and also, uh, the moon the moon is super rich in resources that may well prove to be useful to us in the future. I think the main one is, uh, aside from like rare earth metals, is uh, uh, helium-3 that's like theoretically going to be useful in uh, fusion if that's possible. Um, so, um, another thing about um, well, Venus, 
ha is um there are uh so correct me if I'm, I'm wrong on any of this chat but um the if, if you have an orbital base you can there is a um uh, the correct layer in the atmosphere you have got um livable temperature uh the correct atmospheric pressure and it is non-toxic that's the one i'm least confident on but i think it's non-toxic but so if you had an orbitable uh, uh just a, a floating habitat in that uh, in that level of atmosphere if there was say a leak then some just gas would leak in but there wouldn't be any effect like any ill effect beyond just losing oxygen very slowly um effectively you would have a habitat on another planet where you could open a window if you wanted uh, but you'd have to close it before the air but the air wouldn't be sucked out or anything correct pressure mm. um you sure about that the the one i'm not sure about is non-toxic um but that's like frankly the least important one if you've got the temperature right and the um and the pressure then a leak okay that then you've got some toxic stuff inside that you don't want to breathe but uh ultimately that makes the leak incredibly easy to plug um you you, you the leak isn't catastrophic the, the leak isn't like ripping apart your habitat or anything and it's not sucking out all the air incredibly quickly okay yeah that's the pressure difference that causes that Jay, would you like mm -hmm. to read this next one? Um, mainly sure. because I want to see if you can get through the whole thing next without one. breaking up. Um, with laughter. I don't know. I think I may have shown you this before, but whoever's seen this before, it's fun to see it more than once. There's um, a subreddit called Confessions, and some people just post stuff there. I don't know if it's real. <laughs> I certainly hope it is. Okay. And, uh, yeah, someone just posted a little thing, and uh, just give it a little read. Just give, just give it a little read. All right. <laughs> I remember this. You show me this. <laughs> I like to creep around my home and act like a goblin. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just enjoy doing this. Maybe it's my way of dealing with stress or something, but I just do it around once every week. Generally, I'll carry around a snack <laughs> and creep around in a sort of crouch walking position making goblin noises. <laughs> then I'll walk around my house and pick up various different trinkets and put them in my bag while saying stuff like, I'll be having that, and laughing maniacally in my goblin voice. <laughs> Trinkets can include anything from shit I find on the ground to cutlery and other utensils. <laughs> the other day I was thinking, uh, I was talking with my neighbors and they mentioned hearing weird noises like what I wrote about. And I was just internally screaming the entire conversation. <laughs> I'm 99% sure they don't know it's me, but god, that 1% chance is seriously <laughs> weighing on my mind. I so very much hope this is true. I can see it right now. I can see- Oh, this is absolutely true. This, this was written by Mauler. Mauler lurking around after he turns off EFAB for just being like- a little, <laughs> Being a little loot <laughs> goblin. With a little rucksack. Don't knock Someone it till you try it. That. So, this is the kind of thing I would do alone, but the thing is I would only <laughs> do it once. I would, I would be, be like, goblin I would just get in a sack. weird mood, and I would pretend to be a goblin alone in the house. I would absolutely do that once, but I don't. I never make a habit of any of those weird little things I do. It's such a weird, specific thing that it just feels like it has to be real. Please be real. Like, like no, I fully one hundred percent believe this. This feels like a, like, like. Go on, chat. You you guys. So there there are people in chat who just do weird things sometimes when you're alone, right? There's, everybody does weird things, probably to some extent, that are unconventional when they're alone. Like, things that there is uh, broadly no reason for you to do. Yeah, just because um, you feel like it. Yeah, just like oh, I'm alone. I can go, and no one can. <laughs> Or be a goblin, you know? No one will say anything. <laughs> I'm like a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say goblin is a funny word? It just is. Like I remember goblin. I remember goblin realizing a funny word. I love goblin. it. I remember realizing once I was alone in like a house that was like really a long distance away from anything. So not only could I be weird, I could do it as loudly as I chose. <laughs> There's a reason so why I, I, I just, I just made alone. the I loudest like sounds I could. <laughs> Can you imagine if someone just, I don't know, they thought they were alone and they just screamed for some reason? 
just like they're playing a video game and went ah like in the top of their lungs. Well, I've or done did... that. What? But what? Just because you thought you were alone, or just well, I didn't? Felt... I wasn't even playing a game. I didn't have a reason to it. I was alone. I I mean I I believe I was. I still do believe I was alone. In I can't remember what co- like what context. Could what have been a little goblin like a hanging around. Yeah, must have been on a holiday somewhere secluded or something, right? Where I had for whatever reason been left alone in the accommodation. And I was just like, hmm, I will make the loudest noise I can. And I did. And it was very fun. Well, I mean, there's usually the awkward thing. I don't know. Do you guys talk to yourselves, like, sometimes? Yes. All the fucking time. All okay. the goddamn so, time. I, I, I don't feel yeah. so alone now. At the good. <laughs> so. what, I'll, what, I'll, what I'll do is I'll have, like, an internal monologue and, like, a... A, a, a conversation I'm imagining will like appear in my brain. I'm like just imagining a conversation just between comes out. like two people yeah, yeah. or myself and another person. <laughs> and then for some reason, I'll just say one of the lines of dialogue myself. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Sometimes I do that in, in I environments say, where other people it test out know. voices <laughs> uh, a lot. Does that count as talking to yourself? I guess it does. There needs to be a level of weird delusion to it, I think, to make it talking to yourself. It's, it's always something like that, that's just like vague and makes no sense out of context. Like, yeah, I, 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 I'll just be walking around, right, and I, just in my house, and I'll be going, "He will never expect that," and then I'll just carry on with my business. <laughs> yeah. Well, something I've noticed I, is sometimes yeah, I get I'll, it. I get it. I'll like, I get uh, it. For whatever reason, I'll be thinking of dialogue and the stories that I'm never going to finish writing, and I'll just start saying it when I'm meant to be thinking it. <laughs> it's just yeah, a little exactly. Bit awkward. But it's hey, look, all right. It's it's when the internal monologue leaks into the real world. Well, I've been I've been doing a lot of my thinking about my vampire stories recently, so a lot of mm-hmm. them are recently about blood and vampires. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure that bodes well. Oh yeah! Oh, that's that's genuinely. I've just read the real one. The I have a real example. Of, I was thinking through a conversation of um, <laughs> that that this uh, like the, the two characters might have in this world, and the only thing that I said out loud was, "I need blood." <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to hear yourself say that you need blood. Sometimes Father, I there's something blood. I don't know. Sometimes I, just I like to, to imagine out loud. I like mm. to imagine that the FBI agent or whatever was just like, hmm, okay. <laughs> the FBI agent. It's, it's like the rookie cop is like, it's not enough. It's like it's not enough. We need more. We have to wait. What else? <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard Jay and Friggy interact before. You must be new here. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What do you do? You think that? Do you think it's like Frodo and Legolas, where the only thing that Legolas <laughs> ever says to Frodo it's, is and, and you my, have bow. my bow? Yeah. In my bow, and that's it. And, and they, they just never say anything. They're they're around each other for most of like a movie, when, but they just never speak. Like Legolas shows up at the end. He's just like, "Oh man, yes, yeah." Oh dear, weird. it's you. <laughs> yeah. What's weird about that to me is that they they said this in the chat of a stream that we've both been on for for several hours. <laughs> For seven hours. And this is putting well, past the, 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 all of the other times that we've interacted like you over two, the course of years. You were in all three we've of the arcade ones. We've done together. There was a like, whole was... meme about how Jay was on for like every episode in a row for a while. Like, what? <laughs> I guess Friggy wasn't there for those ones, you know? Anyway. Well, we all... I mean, we also have done other stuff together outside no, of the chat, but I guess no, that's less never, relevant. Nope. Or just like hanging out yeah, in a conversation. But they didn't hear it. But they didn't Shut up, well, shut I mean, up! If I can't hear you, it's not illegal. <laughs> you've been on my channel a few times, I've been on your streams a few times. Well, you know. let's put it this way, we, we don't need to rationalize, like, you're just wrong. <laughs> Whoever well, no, said they're, that. They're, they're, they might be right, they said they don't, just well, no, they, they, for all we know, they're right. All they said Maybe was they don't just, think they've ever heard us interact before. Maybe I guess that they've just, just missed they it. They just jumped in right now, like, they just jumped in at this very moment. Like, wait, wait, the guy's like, this is my first EFAP episode, what? Talking to themselves. It would make sense. Well, yeah, first, I, I guess well, they, well, they just coincidentally... EFAP, true. They're just coincidentally, like, fans of both our channels, and this is their first EFAP episode. Maybe, yeah. Fringy Simpsons reference, you already got... Oh, it's not Go, you just got it. It's Homer. Sweet. Doing his taxes. <laughs> what was it that 
Flanders said, oh, taxes pay for, like, rainbow sunshine and people who just don't feel like work and God bless them. That's a great Flanders quote. Yeah, well, that, that... And then the part where it's, like, it's it's the last day they're all getting their taxes and it's like, why did you leave your taxes until the last day? Krusty's like, because I'm an idiot. Happy? It's like, <laughs> of course, not everyone is an idiot. Some of us uh, sent our files to our accountants months ago and then Kent's accountant, oh, does anyone have a calculator? <laughs> just there with all of these papers. <laughs> One of my favorites is that, like, he's just over going, look at these morons I did my taxes over a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> I did them last year. <laughs> but anyway, you guys ready for the next part? Yep. Ah. Oh, don't worry, it's not, it's not the whole video. Uh... Our journal Find. is far from the greatest Marvel movie. Where is, where is Time Stamperoo? 3.30. Okay. This was shared on the, on the Discord, and I was like, that's pretty funny. I'm going to throw it into the medley. So this is a part of someone's review of Eternals. All right, here we go. Okay. As much as I wanted to say this movie is a masterpiece, there is just some stuff that doesn't work, and I would definitely change some things. And that's why I'm going to explain how I would make... Eternals, the greatest Marvel movie. I got you there, eh? First off, I'm not a screenwriter. I'm sick of people who haven't written a script in their life thinking that they could do better than established Wait. filmmakers with years. Wait. Um. Hang on. What? So that feels like the interesting part so isn't I, here yet. But I don't see. Can... I don't see how these. I don't see how these two statements can be. Yeah, because this is a shit he's, point. He's clearly right. about yeah. to. He's clearly about to point, um, to deliver the, the line. He's clearly about but. to deliver the line. But oh, but I'm gonna do this for this reason. No, but, but I think. But there's no. But special no, pleading. Th these two well, so, statements can't coexist. I could do better, but I hate it when people think that they could do better. Well, it's it's a really easy sentiment for someone to express. Well, of course, like you, some random person can't write better than a screenwriter. It's like, well, maybe you could. I, like, I well, don't know, maybe you could. Yeah, I mean, especially I don't think you've ever been a when we're right, looking at, um, so quit I criticizing. Especially, especially when we're looking at, you know, what what's being pushed out of Hollywood at the moment. I thought you were going to highlight the fact that he said he's annoyed at people who think they can do a better job. When he's highlighting on screen, someone's saying, please remake it, and they haven't specified here who should do it. They just said they want someone to the remake it. Of which, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of a that, different that's, thing. That's just saying, I don't like it, please try again. Which, yes, mm -hmm. I think the most popular one for that was Season 8 of Game of Thrones. <laughs> I actually thought that's, maybe um, look, there was a chance they th would do it. An, now I'm thinking about something. I remember when uh, Mass Effect 3 came out and everybody hated the ending. I remember a video, it was Colin Moriarty when he was working at IGN, that like he, he disliked the sentiment of, I didn't like it, make it again, as like an expression of a perspective. That like you should kind of just accept the, uh, what, the story that you've been presented because it's what they wanted to do. Um, I feel like that's another one of those like instantly agreeable ones where it's like, well, no, like I, I think it sucks. Um, yeah, that was your idea, and that's cool and all, but I hate it. <laughs> like, well, we, th it, that is it, it literally happened. Uh, if I, if there were people out there who despised all of the extended universe content, they're like, I hate where Luke has gone. I hate where Leia has gone. Please do it again. Then they go, We have decanonized it. We're releasing movies. Be like, Oh, sweet, we get another chance. And that person was probably really happy with the result. But you see what I mean, like the. There's a sense of what is canon, what is it? It's totally Disney could have done it. They could have decanonized all the sequels and said we're going to do them again. They could. You know, like the, the idea you that it's could. too offensive or un, unreal or just like, come on, it's the story they made. It's just like I guess you know, there's uh, a sense that it's capitulating, right? That you've compromised the sure. artistic integrity by capitulating <laughs> to popular demand. What do you think Disney it's would do? Created though, this if... divide between fans and creators, like we're supposed to be at odds with each other, that kind of thing. If a wizard well, came I up mean, to Disney and said, it. "If they remake the sequels, it'll be guaranteed ten trillion. I'm pretty sure they'd do it. Yeah, of course they would. Absolutely, but that would just would. be because of money. I wonder what their price would be. But if they said, "Like you've got to decanonize the sequels and remake them, and I will make sure they end up being, you know, super profitable." Oh. Surely, surely, any it would just be whatever can confirm the net profit. Because right, the reason that they don't remake every movie they've ever made is that they well, know that like after the fucking 10th remake of the same movie that people probably wouldn't go out for it anymore you say that like the 10th but if the profit well, were let's I'm, say I'm, 10 million and it's like yeah, well is no, that exactly. is that worth it, well, the compromise so if they realized that all they had to do was release a new remake of fucking 
Lion King every year than they would. And if that was a very profitable strategy, then of course that's what they do. Well, but there's a certain amount of profit they're looking for, right? Like, that's kind of what I'm saying. I wonder what the price would be to make them do it because they have to weigh up yeah. the image of being like, well, yes, we're decanonizing our work because people hate it. Ultimately, the image is something that is just another factor for profit, right? That, um, yeah. And also, it, yeah. So, yeah. So they'd like, have to weigh it up. They if they thought, because I mean, they, they they put the concentration camp in the credits of their Mulan thing. I don't think they thought they would, that would do well for their image. I thought at best they thought no one would notice. It, and to clarify, someone could be like, well, why wouldn't they just do the alternate timelines that should be like, this is an alternate episode? I was like, well, so as part of the deal, they are forced to, you know, decanonize. That's like the requirement. Well, can they, are they going to do the same thing? It's like, it, this is Legends now? Or are they literally yeah, the, going to say, this doesn't count? Actually, fuck it, yeah, let's go all. hardcore. They go, no, they don't exist in any way, shape, or form. We're scrubbing them from fucking existence. If you have the Blu-rays, good luck. They're not going to be on any streaming service. That's all you got. They're going to erase them from history. Yeah, I wonder how much uh, profit to be promised would yeah. make them do it. I don't know. At that point, at that point you'd be, they'd be uh, stepping on actors, right? They'd be... Well, they're, they're just within their rights to do it, right? That. Oh, yeah, they are. But the, this is what I'm saying. They'd be so. I'm sure accountants everywhere would be like, "Okay, you got to weigh up the fact that you're going to do this." This, 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 this wizard has said, "What, fifty million profits?" Like, I don't know. I don't know if that'll be worth it in the long run for all of this. Can we buy the wizard? <laughs> anyway, uh, funnily enough, that's uh, so. Yeah, he said that. Uh, I'll roll him back a little bit as well. Let's let's see where he goes. Marvel movie. I got you there, eh? First off, I'm not a screenwriter. I'm sick of people who haven't written a script in their life thinking that they could do better than established filmmakers with years of experience. If I was in charge, I would explain every single thing to the audience. Alright, that's and yours. Leave nothing to the imagination. Yep. Some people don't Video. grasp how. Mystery boxes are great writing, guys. Why do you feel like you have the right to criticize Mola's capacity to give suggestions on writing either? Yeah, he screen wrote yeah. his yeah. fucking yeah. video. Well, it's so I mean, weird, right? We because do, we do this, right? I, ha I hate the idea that people think that they can tell established critics who have been at it for years that they can do better. Yeah, I've been criticizing for before you were born, boy. You, you, you can't be yeah. doing this. Yeah, let's not go down that road. But also, you have no idea how many stories I've written or screenplays I've given out. I could be under a fake name, could be ones I kept to myself or pushed around to different people of high positions. It could be that some of them have been made into movies. How would you know for sure? And whether, if I revealed that to be true, if I said, guys, turns out, I'm Michael Bay, and you're like, whoa, would you then be like, oh, I really respect your, your filmography, dude. <laughs> like, no. You'd be like, oh, you, you're, you made, man, do you hate Transformers? <laughs> like, the show? I'd be like, no, 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 I, I, you know, I had a lot of fun making them. It's, um, it's such a bad argument, and it's so weird, it's like, it's out of left field. I, um, I very rarely do any kind of script editing in my videos, and if it usually tweaks to a scene to try, only to prove you didn't have to uh, do the contrivance or you didn't have to do the, the poor dialogue, I'm trying to be like, look, you could do this that achieves this and this. Like, I, I oftentimes want to be able to maintain the scene as they intended, um, just to try and prove that it's possible. It was Because if, if you remember, a lot of people will defend certain bad writing as being like, well, what else can they do? Like the you know they they're stuck here or something. There's a lot of that for yeah. um, Rise of Skywalker, right? It's we like, have a lot of um, imaginationally stunted people, you could say. I'd be disappointed if you were Michael Bay. Well, that's kind of my point. Um, I don't think it increases my pedigree. It's just an outlet. Mahler just it's just an outlet for Mahler yeah. who wants to make those movies, and it's just for funsies, you know. Get um, it out of his system. I would explain every single thing to the audience and leave nothing to the imagination. It's definitely not my preference. He's, screaming, either, he's zooming in. Yeah, yeah, he's zooming into the angry white man because that's what, what you are. <laughs> that's me. I'm Hux. People don't grasp that's how you, hard it Hux. is to make anything and that it's only easy to, fair, to yeah, best I don't like movies, how you bro. don't grasp how hard it is to make a long Damn. form critique of uh, TLJ, I guess. Yeah, you suck. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of fair, but at the same time, um, I usually try and focus on writing, and I try to avoid saying, like, nobody put any effort into any part of the production. Jesus. That's like, absurd. Yeah, it's well, not, I feel it's like... really impossible to say that about any film. It feels like pretty much with every film, yeah. you're always going to have people who are working incredibly hard. Yeah. We often lament the fact that a lot of these graphic artists and CGI magicians yeah. and mus you know musicians and all these 
people makeup and costumes they they pour their heart and souls into these projects and then they hire some fucking clowns to write the so script and it's all an, for I'm, nothing well here's the thing though I'm wondering, all right go for it go for it I was, i'm specifically wondering who he has in mind what is he saying all of this me i'm not sure well i guess wait but, but, are you sure so you, you specifically referenced me i figure that me is one of the people at wait, least. did he show did he show your video or? but but i mean i guess yeah. it feels like he did you um, not see that bit a lot of a lot of the oh, right. really oh, talented, right. a lot of the really talented like creators who we sort of recognize, like uh, I mean, it's a common one from Jackie Chan, right? You're not going to go around to every theater and explain how hard you worked and how it took too long to get this shot, so you gave up and did something else. Like you're not going to go around and uh, I was rewatching the Bungie stuff. Some that um that uh, uh I uh, God damn, I've totally forgot his name. Um. Oh, I can't believe that Jones, Neil uh, Jason Jones, Jason Halo. Jones, um, where he just talks about like at the end of the day, nobody really cares like how hard you work. They don't care if it took you like an hour, if it took you like six years, and you know, I think he said like six years and twenty gallons of blood. Nobody really cares how hard you worked at the end of the day. Um, all they care about is like what you've created. Um, it's well, yeah, kind and, of an and, attitude that's <clears> super <throat> important to have when it comes to creating anything because it just puts things into perspective, like. I'm sure people appreciate hard work, obviously, and people don't want to shit on somebody who they know has worked really hard. But at the end of the day, they are receptive to good material and bad material yeah, and more again, so than yeah. they are receptive to your hard well, work. Well, you know, well, you know what we see a lot. We see people dismissing something as like soulless and made without heart mm -hmm. and, and just like a, uh, you a know what I think John Watts probably worked really hard on Spider Man. Yeah. We, we see, and we see the opposite. We see some. We see people saying love has clearly gone into something. Mm. Um, even when, you know, they don't actually know anything about the particular creative process that went on behind the scenes and they're assuming because it is a product of quality that it must have been a high effort uh, venture um, of passion but ultimately if they found out that it wasn't that wouldn't change their opinion of, on the, of the quality of the piece, right? And I, th I think it's worth mentioning as well that um, we could be flippant with the concept, but like we could actually be like, look at these costumes, the amount of effort that went into these. And then the, the little costume designer is like, oh, that that's like me on, I, I did that in a couple of minutes. Like, that's just some older stuff. I threw it together. Like, honestly, this is one of my lowest effort projects ever. And we're like, oh. And then we could review a script and be like, Jesus Christ, could they put any effort into this? And the guy's like, I worked for five years on it, but. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, like it, it can be used as a sort of flippant remark, but ultimately, if you were to like absolutely have us nailed down whether or not we believe someone worked hard on a, on an entire production and how does that factor into judging it, we would just be like, well, we try not to think about whether or not um, they put effort in, right? Uh, but at the same time, if we notice something that's really good, that is one of the formats for appreciating it. That's just, it seems natural. Well, I mean, you know, I think I have a perfect example right now from earlier in the stream. As I imagine, a shit ton of really hard work went into the Skywalker saga. But if we saw it without the context of knowing that it was crunched to a deadline, we probably wouldn't assume that. Yeah, well, you know, we like the, the, assume... the really bad CGI in, in Black Panther? The people who made that probably yeah. worked fucking hard. And that's how it ended I up. I have no doubt, yeah. Oh, because that was another crunch deadline one, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, and and it's it's really sad because um, you, you're just like, yeah, because it looks like piss and it will forever because it not, that one's not getting updated. It got um, rushed, yeah. Yeah, and at this point, it's probably not worth it to update that the cost versus benefit. Um, well, I mean, unless they release like a Black Panther special edition down the line or something, right? Yeah. Will it be um, like, you know, some extra footage, some updated effects, that kind of thing. Yeah, Jay, you fool. This is see, this is my video, but he's cropped out my name. I, I guess I saw, I saw. I, I had a, I had a he scroll back and a look. Yeah. George, I would explain every single thing to the audience and leave nothing to the imagination. Some people don't grasp how hard These it is. People to have make no imagination, and they? it's only easy to criticize once the finished product is already there. So yeah, I'm not saying this. What, would make what else perfect, are we supposed to criticize? It's a pretty common complaint that Eternals would have worked better as a TV series instead, um, and I agree. I think more screen time would have allowed these characters to... But it feels really weird to me that he had that spiel and now he's talking about the better format for this yeah. film. It's like, so you're already breaking so your own rules. <clears throat> well, he's done the disclaimer, right? And he's just saying, well, you know, it's not that I definitely know better, like, 100%. It's just this is my opinion and what I would do, right? Which sounds like 
as a disclaimer, all that does is is tell is is say I don't have one hundred percent confidence in this as like myself being a god. You know, it's it's essentially positing to the audience I have a reasonable amount of confidence in my ideas, not an unreasonable. But Mola does not. Which... It's like oh, all right. Well, yeah. So he, it's he like, wants everything explained, no mystery. I was just saying, like, why do people reason, say that? Is that all he got? There's a reason that I don't make these kind of claims in my video unless I'm doing, like, a joke. Because, like, yeah, I, I don't want to do a disclaimer. It's like, yeah, I'm actually being reasonable and other people aren't. I'm so, not being um, unreasonable. I'm being reasonable. Just may, may put, put that in your head before you watch. I'm being reasonable. Yeah, I guess you got a couple of people being like, why? Why with the pot shots? And so... You put a little comment on the video to explain the situation. All right, nice and easy. Okay. My issue with Mola isn't that he criticizes movies. It's his style of long-form criticism. He nitpicks so he hard beyond exhaustion. Yes, because that's how I describe my work. Exhaustion, and people only eat it up because it reaffirms their opinion that Last Jedi bad. He also made a 10-hour response to a woman who said she didn't like Joker, which is pathetic. Hmm... Whatever could he I really, be referring to? That thing he I, definitely watched. Hi, God. I have to make an edit to this cop. It's such a fucking shitty reality that so many people be believe that talking about a woman's bad opinion is just not allowed. What the fuck is Women that? Women are just allowed to have bad opinions. Which is an interesting view you have on women, but okay. Well, well, well we don't know where the emphasis is in, in this particular comment, right? You know, maybe, maybe, he's, maybe. Why mention faith, she's a woman at he's all? He's just saying, well, because that is the noun in the uh, sentence. He could have said person. Someone, yeah. He why is, said, why woman? Because you know, you know, with everything you've seen about this, the fact that Jenny is a woman is incredibly relevant. It's always, because the pathetic part is obviously trying to evoke well, that it's I a think, woman I has an opinion. Thinks it's relevant. I think he thinks it's relevant, but I wouldn't say that we can confirm to this that it's the crux. I think he might think that, yeah, this will help, you know, this will this will just make people, you know, slightly more on side as they're listening to what the actual point is. Some, well, there's there's so many key parts, right? It's the fact that it's but, 10 well, hours. We, we can't know. The fact that you're responding to someone saying they simply didn't like a thing. And then I'm pretty sure a woman is very deliberate in that sentence. Yeah, because... I mean, I assume it's deliberate. Um, yeah, it's just like, it's not even a man they're responding to, well, it's a woman. Which okay. means they hate women. This is they the, um, women. this is the edit that I wanted to make to the comment. Here it comes. Ah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. To a woman. That would a be woman. funny. So, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I would just. So, if you were at the call right now, you'd be like, look, 10 hours is excessive. And then we would just do a couple examples, things here and there, explaining there's more that's just blah, 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 until he concedes the 10 hours fine. Then, if he actually tried to argue you shouldn't be doing it to women, but you can do it to men or something, I don't think you would want to try and argue that because it would fall oh, apart yeah. in seconds. Then you would have to be like, all she said was she didn't like Joker. And then I'll be like, I've cited every time she said the movie's message was don't take your medication. Or something along those lines when she was guessing the theme. That is a shit opinion. I should be allowed to criticize it, okay? Simple oh. as that. Uh, and that's an example of many things she says about the movie. She, her video on Joker was really bad. It's not about whether or not she it likes it. Amazing. I don't care if she dislikes it. That's yeah. fine. Like the the um the the, the whole like um it's bad because it's a response to a woman thing is something that loads of people will say, but no one will actually argue because as soon as they try to make a point in favor of that position, it you know they have to think about it and it's like hang on, no one no one actually tries to argue that it's it's worse to respond to her because she's a woman. People will because it was never an argument to begin with. People, well, people will occasionally argue that you only went after her because she's a woman, and then you have to just um, point them in the direction of all the like very clear evidence that that's not the case, and then they have nothing. I mean, I can never convince them, but the reason I, I went for the video is because Joker was a new movie. A lot of people were enjoying it. Some people weren't. A popular creator has a video uh, tearing it down, and I was like, let's cover it. 
Let's see what she has to say. And I even think I said that I've liked a decent amount of Jenny Nixon's videos in the past. So, I, like, all I can, all my, all I can see is that my failure was to respond to a woman. That's because if if it were a guy, well, if it were like nostalgia critic, or even, you know, like someone that's got a better reputation. Um, fucking, I don't know. If it was critical, if it was moist critical doing that, pretty sure the ripple effect it still would have been there. I think chat would have been upset with us. But, um, you know, it, it wouldn't be remembered. It would just be among many. It's it's also just very clear deliberate wording, right? Because, like, got, he also made a 10-hour response to a woman who said she didn't like Joker, right? So that could be phrased if, like, the, te the podcast episode where he covers Jenny Nicholson's Joker video is 10 hours long. But that doesn't sound as punchy. It's 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 just very, I mean it's all it's it's I know what you mean. pretty much it's... dishonest wording, really. Well, to be fair, he might have been told this. That might be his only well, exposure yeah, to it, which is probably likely. To be honest with you, I mean, remember, <laughs> like he fucking watched it. You know, Chud Logic. What what I was just like, let's just have a chat. I was just like, there's just so many things that you would know about us that are not anything you would have confirmed. And I think that's not his fault. It's not anyone's fault, really. It's it's the reality of how we information as a civilization there's a lot of things that the four of us right now probably assume to be very true that aren't at all the varying degrees of importance of course what, what i'm referring to more so is things that we're told to be true we don't check we're just like oh yeah that's that's that i know that and then like it's not that and you're like it's not that for example cad bane species somebody told me that and i <laughs> confidently said it to you guys and it's like that's not true it's like fuck whoops it's, yeah, I, I guess, because I just, I believed it to be true, which we do with a lot of stuff. Whenever you see, like, a factoid in an article header, I think all of us are willing to be like, that's true then, right? That's true? I mean, maybe not so much anymore. I feel it's, like I think a it's lot gone of worse of, over time. I've <laughs> got rid of that instinct now. A, a, an article headline is now worth nothing in my mind. Yeah. It's cause, that's because we're not idiots. Um, it can be very difficult to reason people out of a position that they did not reason themselves into. They can just, they latch onto something and that's just the way that it is. And they'll just, they can hold on to it. Some people are just like that. And it's unfortunate. Yeah. Some people know, are man. full of pee. Uh, it's, I, I, I would hope the video was more appealing than just to the people who already disliked The Last Jedi. Uh, obviously the point of it was to be far more definitive about just just why I think it failed to achieve what it was trying to achieve, let alone whether or not it's just con inconsistent and that's my metric for thing being bad, but it's, a lot of people have just said over time, it's just like, all the videos are, you're just repeating this bad over and over again, and people love it. It's like, alright. Um... So, um, this comment found its way onto our coverage of a certain Spooderman. A certain Spooderman who can't find his way home. Uh, take it away, oh my goodness. anybody. All right, let's see. This is Tamax the 10th. He is the latest in a long line of Tamaxes. For the first 40 minutes, I thought the CFAP was everyone just ironically claiming to have liked this film. Then it slowly dawned on me that you guys must have been paid quite a bit for the CFAP. <laughs> I thought it was horrible, and I'm wondering how much Disney and Sony finally paid you guys to sell out and praise an awful film. I guess everyone has a price. Just curious what that final price was. Like a meme troll comment, or I think what is people... the film? Sorry, Spider Man No Way Home. Um, ah, uh. so it was a hundred K, but it was split between anybody who appeared on the podcast and spoke positively about it. So it was, yeah, you know, split in lots of ways. But yeah, when Sony Disney contacted us, I was just like, I mean, why not? But why I made well, them agree yeah. that it couldn't be for longer than literally today is the end of the contract. So uh, we can now speak freely about Spider Man No Way Home. You guys want to go ahead? 
Oh, it's it's terrible. It's, it's, terrible. it's horrible. I I hate it. You know who I, um, um, who actually has the the right idea about that film is um, Tomax X. <laughs> You guys should like and subscribe to Tomax X. He's he he knows what's up. Um, yeah, I mean, He's a smart cookie. I feel like we went over a lot of the flaws of the film, you know. Um, uh, yeah. And um, and we we even specified we felt one of the characters was dramatically assassinated. Uh, which is not something we take lightly. It's just that there's a hell of a lot of character work in it. I like how it couldn't just be that we liked that movie. Yeah, and we spent many, 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 many hours explaining in anal detail why we felt the way that we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we. I guess I just find it funny that it would be like, oh, you like this movie? <laughs> Sold out. Like, what the. F like, what, a, what a bizarre conclusion to jump to. Well, yeah, yeah like, so. Go back to your Snyderverse buddies, whoever. Didn't you average out a five Even out of ten? Yeah, we did. I think even if we all had an extremely so, like, bad yeah. take on something, I don't well, think that yeah, that's more the assumption would then. be that we were paid. Yeah. That's just funny to me, that's all. Um this next one is um it's mainly looking for clarification, and I figured when I saw it that I guess it could be worthwhile because it kind of relates to the adaptation stuff. That was a big uh, a big boy last media medley. This is um the only instance of it this time. I just thought be interesting to I'll, I'll I'll go over it and hopefully explain anything, but you guys can chime in if need be. This is on the Reddit. I said while doing super chats for oh, EFAP 164. Ooh. This is the hypocrisy of EFAP, by the way. Mola said there wouldn't be an oh, EFAP nice. breakdown of the Netflix what Cowboy Bebop because he hasn't seen the anime and feels unqualified to talk about it. Now, before carrying on, I would want to make sure I qualify that to be unqualified in my head can mean a bazillion things, and in this instance, I was talking about having a passion for the original and being able to explain where they're going wrong with the adaptation because that is what a lot of viewers would be invested in and that's not something that I can fit the bill for. However, I am qualified to watch the TV show on Netflix and talk about whether or not it's working in the same vein that I'm doing with Halo. Um, though I don't care because I haven't watched it and I certainly wouldn't end up caring about this new one from what I'm gathering. Um, so that's what that means. But going on, they say, the problem, in the exact same episode, he, Fringy and Metal, broke down Dune 2021 without having read the Dune novel. By his own logic, wouldn't that mean he's unqualified to talk about the film? Um, I don't feel the same way about the Dune movie because it's been adapted before, and I haven't read the book, sure, but I can at least talk about the movie. In that instance, I felt like it's a sci-fi movie and a lot of people are looking for everyone's general opinions. I don't think people were looking specifically for how good of an adaptation it is. Or rather... Only that. People were also looking to see how well it stood on its own from what I was gathering. And I had, I have a level of passion for like fantasy, sci-fi, all that stuff, more so than I did um, whatever that looked like, Netflix's Cowboy Bebop. I was like, Dune looks cool. I like Denis Villeneuve's look and style. I was just curious about how his script would go. Um, and I think I, I did give Dune a positive rating overall. Um, I enjoyed it. I will be watching the next one. So... Yeah. Yeah, I assume that's clear. But it goes on. Um, this has been bothering me since BVS EFAP movies. Muller and crew will go on and on about how a piece of media has to stand on its own, which I agree with. But then he'll allow meme repository to put in edits of uh, Supam. Does that sound something? Supam the animated series? Superman, I'm supposed to Superman the animated series, maybe? Yeah. Uh, to showcase that Lex Luthor is uh, a w Lex Luthor as a way to shit on the BVS Lex. The, the point here. And we've, we've gone over this before with memes, edits. He's just showing an alternative as far as we're concerned, not um, why you've adapted poorly, but it can double up as that. Remember, we don't mind people talking about whether or not something's faithful. That's okay. And we will talk about it if we're aware of the source. For example, if they make a Bioshock movie or show based on the first game, you can bet your ass we're going to talk about whether or not it was faithful. But we're also probably going to talk more so about whether or not it's actually any good. In the same vein, probably. Um, I imagine uh, when we do the Halo episode, we're going to talk about how they've mm -hmm. deviated from the original law. I won't be, but they will be. And then that's probably going to help inform how they've got missteps if you looked at the thing in isolation. This is something that came up with Game of Thrones um, and the Taisha plotline. Many in the chat will know what I'm talking about. They only took pieces of it, and so it got butchered because the story doesn't... Uh, stand on its own until you have all of the pieces. So you can see how they did it by adapting poorly 
it led to the thing not being able to stand on its own. It's a, I can see how you might get confused, but ultimately we're still talking about whether or not it stands on its own. Lex Luthor, fucking terrible in BVS. And it's like, would you like to oh, see yeah. a Lex Luthor from Superman the Animated Series to see how Lex Luthor could have been done? And at the same time, it does appeal to those who wanted to see that Lex Luthor adapted properly, whether it's accurate to the comics or accurate to the show, whatever. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it says, I just really like him as an actor. However, the problem isn't that the BVS Lex is a gender-bent Alice from Batwoman. The problem is that his plan makes no sense. When I went to see BVS, which I'm pretty sure we went over a lot, um... Oh yeah. When I went to see BVS, the theater owner didn't sit me down and have me read all Superman comics and watch S. Tass in its entirety. I had to judge the film on its own merits. That's the same for me. I, I have no real stuff to work with for Lex Luthor. I just knew that he was a powerful guy, really. Um, just like EFAB constantly says we have to, you do not have to do that. Um, but you're gonna need to if you want to talk about how it, whether or not it stands on its own. Like you need to not just appeal to the source. Because that's how you judge films objectively. You can be, um, you can appear, you, you, you can strive to be objective when talking about how faithful it is if you've defined faithfulness as basically just being how close do you match the source. I think you can probably try and do that with as little bias as you can try to. There's got to sure, be like, you have a, you, you a, have scale a standard there. that you're judging something off of. Yeah. Um, trying to be objective is just a matter of trying to remove whatever biases might be uh, fucking up your viewpoint, that's all. And so you, you could talk about adaptation, or you could talk about whether or not it stands on its own in terms of consistency. Um, it, get, it gets memed a bit, but like, we're all aware of trying to talk about something while removing our own feelings and talking about what we perceive to be the craft or we've agreed upon with others to be the craft. Uh, if I made a review of Lord of the Rings films and only talked about how they differed from the books, that would be subjective because not everyone in my audience might have read the books. So not necessarily. Um, you could, in a very robotic way, be like, this is the dialogue from this scene and this is how they changed it in the film. This is, uh, you know, you could talk about whether or not the spirit is maintained or whether or not the information that's given between characters is changing. Um, you know, there's, what I'm, I'm saying is you could do that, and then the other extreme is like you go, uh, Tom Bombadil was in the books, he's not in the films, and I don't like that. Bad. You know, and, and it's like, well, that's not very helpful as an argument. We're going to want a little bit more. So there's still a sliding scale as far as I'm concerned with that. But again, it would still be all in the realm of adaptation rather than whether or not it stands alone as a product. And one of the ways to sort of look at this is um, if a lot of people ripped into the Spider-Man trilogy, like, by looking at its uh, accuracy, you just want to ask them the hypothetical. How do these films do if Spider-Man never existed outside of these films? There was no content at all except these films. Now, it can be hard to imagine that for a person, especially if you're, like, really, really yeah, into Spider-Man. Yeah. I understand that. But that's a, that's a possibility to answer, Right. Like, how do the sequels mm -hmm. do if you, if you pretend for a moment the OT doesn't exist? I shouldn't have used that example because people are going to get confused. It's the same continuity. Adaptation yeah. isn't. Um, but at the same time, that, what I'm trying to express is that could be difficult to do. Like, how do, I, how do I think of Luke in TLJ without knowing him from the OT? It's like, well, yeah, could you? And what, what result do you get? Um, I would argue that those films fall the fuck apart regardless of the OT. But when they're using the OT as continuity to benefit themselves, they also take all of what rules were established in the OT, and thus you can judge it against how they're uh, contradicting them as well. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Um, I'll be I had assumed Mola didn't like the adaptation argument because it's entirely subjective and he's all about objectivity. I'm actually fine with people mm. talking about whether or not something's faithful. It's just dependent on whether or not I can do it. Like, if Rags and Free talk extensively about how faithful Halo is, I'm mostly just going to be listening and being, like, like vibing. Just being like, yeah, I don't know what a, mm -hmm. a prophet is, really, but sure. <laughs> like, what a... What does he do? All I know of him is from Halo Wars, and he fires a big laser. Um, he's the boss of the bad guys, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I, I've already picked up bits and bobs from having played Halo, but <coughs> I'm more than fine with people having that discussion. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not, like, anti it, but I can see how that may have come across, because there will be times where I just couldn't give less of a fuck, right? Like, and I think everybody has that sometimes and sometimes not. It just depends on that, if that's the conversation. But I guess when you assume... You really do make an ass out of you and me. All I ask is the EFAB crew is if they'd be consistent with this judgment. 
I've posted something similar on the Moolah upload, so between this post and the comment, Moolah will be able to respond. Hopefully that explains it. I don't know if you guys have anything else to add to that. No, I think that was uh, very thorough. The reason we do something in one scenario is not necessarily the reason we do it in another scenario. Yeah, if you want to, because like we didn't talk about how well Hill House was adapted in our coverage of that, but it's just because none of us care about the original work. None of us really know how well it was adapted. All I've been told is it was poorly adapted. Like, all right. If someone out there makes a video exclusively going over how poor the adaptation is, uh, or the adaptation is, I, I don't think that's a waste of work, and I don't think it's exclusively subjective. I think they're going to des describe a lot of things that are, uh, you know, just reality. They'll be like, this is this, and it's not this in the show. This is not faithful, like, by descriptions they give, and that's totally fine. Um, do, do you want me to put that on screen, Jay? Yes, please. <laughs> it is. Kind of summarizes everything we just went over. Basically, if we were to sum it all up, yes. Um, we say this every time it comes up, and that's okay. We're going to have to talk about that again sometime. Because <laughs> we always do. The complicated one. We're, uh, we're like the only people on the internet, I think, that have this sort of view when it comes to trying to judge everything. Um... But yeah, all right, we're 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 closing in on what you could call the end here. Oh boy! But we still got some fun, wow. fun, fun, fun idea I had. It was totally my idea. It wasn't because I was watching things that happened on Jay's channel and realized, oh, that would be neat. Hey. So um, you know, it shouldn't take too long, but I feel like we should all just just have a go. Uh, you guys have heard of um, Akinator before, yes? Oh. No, I haven't. Akinator, Akinator is a little game. Uh, dude, I first played this in high school. Like, this is an old boy. No. The idea is he's a little internet genie. And um, what he'll do is ask you a series of questions, and once you answer them enough, he will try and guess who you're thinking of. So you put someone in your head. Like and so, a reverse so, 20 question or something? Or Yeah, I'll, um, I'll go first to give you an example, right? But if you, if you get the stream up, he says, he says, does your character really exist? Which, Jay, I'm going to need help. What does that mean if you know? <laughs> what does he ever really exist? Because if it were me, it would be yes, right? But Yeah, so like, are they a person in reality or in fiction? Fiction or, so, yeah. Yes. I assume that's what they mean. The character of Gil. So who are we asking? No. Who, who are we, who this we is me. For? We're trying to get him to guess Mauler, all right? Because he knows YouTube personalities. So we'll see what happens. Is your character from YouTube? Great question. Yes. Is your character American? No. Character British? Yes. Character known for Minecraft gaming? No. Is your character live in Canada? No. Is your character in the Sideman crew? No. Is your character live with their parents? Uh, that's going to be one of them you hit don't know, because that's not really something that... I don't think that's entered my channel at all. Does your character have a gaming channel? Probably a no, right? Um, yeah, I, think well, so yeah, I guess the I would say would be a specific no. one, right? So no. Your character white? Yes. Unfortunately. Is your character linked to music in general? I'd say no. Character linked with sports? No. Character have superpowers? Well. Yes. <laughs> kind of. I mean, it depends on the <laughs> law. Well, the funny thing about Akinator to me is that we've already established that you're a real person from reality, and it's still asking if you have superpowers. Yeah, it's not perfect. I'm really, really going to narrow superpowers. it down. Well, look what he just asked me. Is your character a YouTuber? It's like, e hmm. yeah, I kind of, yes. Your character play Gbod? Not really, no. Character from Tokyo Ghoul? No. Character use swear words? Yes. Character over 27? Yes. Character guitar player? See? No. Oh. Associated with Nick Jonas? No. Linked with cars? Definitely not. <laughs> Is your character dressed like a maid? No. Is your character completely hairless? Um. I mean, it's with the mask, you can't, like... I, th I think that people are either going to click no or don't know to this one. Probably don't know. Do your character rage often? I guess so. With the titles. Unbridled Rage. Yeah. Wow. Okay, people so... Could pro I think people will probably click, um, probably not for Hairless, to be fair. It believes I am Danny G from Smethwick, Birmingham. <laughs> what the fuck is Danny G from Smethwick, Birmingham? <laughs> Smethwick sounds, Smethwick like, a Birmingham. <laughs> sounds like a Wombo place. It sounds like a Wombo person. 
Um, it's a person. Oh, that's all Smithwick over there. We'll get. We'll give him another shot. Because well, what you do then is you go. No, that's not me. And he's like, continue. Sure. The character wear red. Um, a little bit sometimes. You're a red tie. Yeah. So does that count enough? Do you reckon or? Yeah, I think so. But yes. Character have a YouTube silver play button. Yes. Your character hide their face. I, I suppose you'd call it hiding. I yes, don't. It's not really it's hidden, but so. sure. Hide. Hide. Does your character wear a bandana? Um, no. A character banana. a clown? <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you linked with speed? No. Hmm. Between 20 and 25. Didn't I just say I'm older than 27? You did, so... Is your character no Pew PewDiePie? No. Character of red eyes? Yeah. Your character of numbers in their name? Close. My... My name sometimes well, has a 93 in it. 93, yeah. So... What should I say for this one? Mm. <laughs> That's confusing, actually. I don't know. Don't know? Actually. We'll go with don't know. Well, yep. the thing is, it, it's not gonna give, like... It, it might, you know, it's going to expect mixes of different answers for some different people. Because questions. I'm thinking of if it's drawing it from my YouTube channel, I'm pretty sure I'm called Mauler on there right now, so it wouldn't be numbers, but... URL is Mauler 93. Oh. Well, well don't know is fine. don't know is fine. you say I don't know, you don't have to commit one way or the other. Does your character use guns? Not really, no. No, it's, it's more tentacles. Your character linked with cinema? Yeah. Your character have over 400k followers on TikTok? No. Character of purple hair? No. Character from Austria? No. Felt like we were getting somewhere there. Oh, film critic? Yeah. <laughs> oh! He got me. The, I, think I, I think when I did this on uh, my channel, it oh, got yeah. you quicker than this. Yeah, you oh, got him in the first round, I think. But um, there you go, Akinator guessed me. Good job. So who would like to go next? I'm guessing it's not Rags. Guess not. Wait, so like, where's the... I, I feel... I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want to do this right now. I, I, I've already been on my channel, you know. Okay. Do you want to do it, Fringy? There's a I chance. Would, I would <laughs> rather not. I I imagine it's not going to work, but sure, if we can give it a try. All right. Is your character real? I I don't know what that means in the context. Well, Jay, Jay of me. said it means that they're not from like a. You I think Fringy, do you exist? Well, I do exist. Yeah, as far as I'm aware. We're gonna go with yes. Yeah, all right. Bullshit. Yeah. Is your character male? Yeah. Is your character a YouTuber? Yes. Is your character American? No. Is your character Indian? No. Is character British? No. Is your character of a gaming channel? Um. You know, Twitch I mean, kind of counts, doesn't it? I have a gaming channel, I guess, but like, in part. The fact that he asked if you were a YouTuber implies to me that. He's asking if you have a YouTube channel additionally that's gaming, which you don't. So. I know, that implies so. I don't really know. Not yet, anyway. I assume no is the correct answer. Is your character yeah. Muslim? Nope. Does your character live with their parents? Uh, I think that's an unknown. Well, what I don't know. Um, is your character Asian? Man, I'm trying to get around the whole planet. No. Oh, ooh, it's loading. Is your character Australian? Yeah. Hmm, oh. Yes. Your characters swear a lot. Uh yeah, I guess I swear enough that it probably counts as a lot. Is your character part of a comedy duo? That's interesting. I, I, I guess if you count like Felix the the <laughs> the flush koala, but I doubt that counts, right? So I, I don't know. I uh, I'm scared. Should we say don't know? Hmm. Maybe say I don't know. I wouldn't want to send Akinator in the wrong direction because I don't know if he's aware of. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Does your character perform on stage? Uh, no. Unless he interprets the internet as a stage, but yeah, I'd say no. Mm -hmm. Your character linked with video games. Yes. Mm hmm. Is your character dating their student? <laughs> um, <laughs> there is no student. <laughs> so the answer is no. <laughs> Does your character play Fortnite? No. no. Well, I mean, I played it once, like, several years ago, but mm. I don't think that counts. Does your character have a beard? Uh, no. Your character from Toontown Online? Nope. Is your character linked with the color blue? No. Your character, does your character hide their face? 
Uh, I guess it count. Well, yeah, because I, I think canonically in my head, there there is a face underneath that plague Dr. Mask. All right, we'll go yes. Yeah, um, does your character live in Romania? Didn't he ask if you Did, live in Australia? No, I asked you in Australia. <laughs> The, the I'm surprised. This thing has been going for like two decades or some shit and it's still asking questions like that. Is your character his, a historian? No. Oh, is your character known for Minecraft gaming? Nope. Uh, does your character play video games with a group? Uh, sometimes. Hmm. Not really, so like, maybe probably not. I mostly just play games on my own. They probably not. Um, so, he's guessing you're Code Bullet, the YouTuber. Well, I mean, that's not correct, so I guess I'll have to try again. Alright, let's see what else he's got. Um, to be fair, you do have a similar vibe to Code Bullet. Yeah, I, I don't can. know who that is. He makes really good videos. Yeah, he's great. Okay. Does your character want rent? One rent, like, do I want to be a landlord or something? I have no clue what this means. I mean, I, I guess, no, not right now, anyway. <laughs> do you want rent free? <laughs> is your character... <laughs> what kind of question is that? Is your character an adult man? Yeah. Alright. Does your character have over 10k TikTok followers? Nope. I realize I now that it's probably filled with TikTokers, isn't it, this database? Probably. Does your character have black hair? I don't, I don't, uh, I mean, that wouldn't be like a, you don't I know. do, but I, I don't know that that would like count. I as think, a, I yeah. think people are going to answer it for you in real life. Um, right. I'm and I think people sure are I'm... probably going to guess that you have black hair. Well, naturally. Uh, well, maybe like probably. Maybe well, because I guess the problem is that like the fringy character, that's something that you never see. I was going to say, it's probably better to go for don't know because you really don't know what. Yeah, probably don't know. Yeah. Is your character rather round? No. Uh, no, no the, the mm. art doesn't imitate life in this case. Does Fringy, your... Fringy be like, I'm round and want rent. You'd <laughs> 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 be right. <laughs> round um, renter. Does your character have any children? No. Does your character have very dark skin? I mean, I have... Dark skin, darker than like a white person, but I don't know. I feel like that's a non factor with the character, so I, I don't know what like that. Actually, that's true because this fringy the character you wouldn't call green. I feel like, dark I feel skin, like people I are gonna be people are gonna be counting. Like I think that people are gonna be imagining that like like the re like the I think people are gonna be imagining their picture of what they imagine you to really yeah. look like under the mask. But what yeah, think but that's I'm what people are going to be doing. Yeah, but here's the thing. I'm pretty sure, like, there are still people who are consistently surprised uh, by well, that. And, so. and also just, there's plenty of people that could just it's answer it as though yeah. they're saying the Greenman, so... They're saying I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Green, yeah, I'd say I don't know on that one. Has your character changed their hair color? No. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, what is this? Is your character a frog? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm pr it's probably going to be a yes, right? Like, it has to be to fit into the... Uh, Presumably. It's not true. It's not true, but it's probably got to... I don't know where this is going to take gonna... us. Does your character live with friends? I... Uh, no. Or unknown, I guess. Does your character play Just Cause 3? I played Just Cause 3. I think I uploaded a video once that was Just Cause 3. Uh, I played it. I played Just Cause 3 and I <laughs> uploaded a video of it on YouTube. I mean, so, I mean, should we go with yes then? Or? Uh, yeah, maybe that's the thing. That's, good. that's an oddly specific question. <laughs> I wonder if that's going to narrow it down. <laughs> it's out your Martin Cytopads, the frog. Well, I feel like it's been totally thrown off because of my answer. <laughs> yes, the frog. Is it, is it, it never gets thrown off by just one answer, I think. Yeah, it just true. looks at statistically what people generally give. Yeah, he does give up and eventually. And that's why it works. Um, so, is your character linked with the C? Again. No. Is your character a senior citizen? No. <laughs> no. Is your, is your character a member of Robust? I, I don't know what. No, I was gonna say no. Is. Your character use swear words. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I thought we already answered. We, we, that. we did. Yeah. yeah, I guess let's ask again in case you got questions wrong or something. Was your character born in Australia? Yeah. Uh, is your character associated? They already with... asked me. If is your character associated with fashion? No, I don't think so. Your character a member of the Wild Wild Pussycats? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Now you know it's true, guys. Uh, is Damn. your character part of the AMP squad? No, th none of these sound familiar. Is your character linked with the color red? No, I thought it hasn't asked about green yet for no. some reason. Does your character have a nickname linked frog. with animals? No. Does your character have more than one channel? Yes. Ah. Is your character an internet meme? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I even don't know for that, just in case. I don't know. I don't know, yeah. Does your character have a tattoo on the back of his head? No. Does your character wear a mask? People probably asked surprisingly yes. not for that question, surely. Does your character have a body? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what am I, a floating, floating cloud? Head, yeah. Does your character play Rust? No. Does your character live in Australia? You already- it's already <laughs> asked that! <laughs> yes. Are you watching your character right now? I mean, I guess I've got my screen pulled up. Um, so I'm watching I don't know my little- what he's thinking when he's asking that. Yeah, you know? maybe like- Yeah, how could that- how could that help? Mean, how could the information- Yeah, yes I am. Okay, cool. I don't wanna send him the wrong direction, I'm just gonna say don't know for that one. Yeah, Does your character have brown hair? We don't know. We answered this before. Don't know. Yeah. Does your character play Ark Survival Evolved? Uh, no. I haven't played I that. Your character links to the Call of Duty franchise. I don't know what links would be. I guess I've talked about Call of Duty before, but I feel like that's not a link. So I guess it would be not. like if, it, if people associated it with you. Like, I heavily. doubt. No way. No way. Alright. Does your character sometimes wear a mask? What? <sighs> <laughs> Yes. Is your character a hair color, yeah. uh, a mixture of red and brown? Oh. I thought we already said that that's, an, that's like, no, or unknown. <laughs> it is guessed you are Faceless, the YouTuber. Well, that's incorrect as well. I feel like this is not going to work. <laughs> he usually um, does give up eventually, but if we just say no to continue name, who are you thinking of? It was, uh, Rangy. Ah. Hopefully we help the database. Bringy. Well, after Bringy. playing it on stream in front of 2,000 people, you're probably entering the database oh, pretty soon is what people try to get. You are in the database, apparently. Oh, okay. Just I guess didn't the, fucking... the factoids aren't exactly... Uh... <laughs> um, anyway, well, so Jay, you said you didn't want to because uh, you can actually find Jay playing this and looking specifically for well, Jay. On, yeah. on the, uh, on, Wouldn't on it be channel? dubious sanity? No, it'd be Fringy. I have the Fringy... My channel is Fringy on YouTube. Fringy. Um, Rags, do you, would you like to play? Oh, nah, it's alright. I, I'm, I'm amused by it. It's a, it's a very... I wonder if, um... You know, the, if, if, if it's ever been updated. Do you know if it has, Jay? Because it seems about as shit as it was back in the day, <laughs> like... I swear I remember it used to be better than it is now. Because I feel like people must have fucked with it. Um, well, you know, like, Clever what used to be better than it, than it is now, because enough people discovered it that they gave it really shit answers, and it learned mm -hmm. from them. Um, well, all we've got left now is one more little, uh, little screenshot that was posted in the Discord from uh, someone oh. in Europe. I, I don't oh, know. Uh, but they screenshotted this, and I read it, and I was amused... So I, I decided to pop it on here. Um, you guys want to? Um, well, you know, it's up for anybody. You go right ahead. Anybody who wants to. Um. Oh, this uh, guy. I okay. So they have said in response to Theo. Uh, I don't think anyone, as far as the eye can see, understands the essence of character de development or the essence of stories. Nor is there anyone on this planet who understands game design except myself. <laughs> Therefore, I don't think there's anything useful in the Critical Drinkers videos. What he proposes isn't mind-blowing. It's still boring and under 
I feel like it kind of peters off at the end when we go past that nobody on the planet understands game design except myself. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put that up on screen. You got it. All right, it's on the way. <laughs> we got some incredible artwork from the fans. Um, it's it's uh, I don't know what, what could you say other than uh, exquisite. I, I would argue. It rent. <laughs> this is me in the future when I become a landlord, the lord of the <laughs> land, with all of the all of your property belongs to me. I come the out of the apartment. King. I can't. You're all my serfs, and I own everything. I own everything. Yeah, and in uh, the, hey, look in this country, all right. That's not like that's going to be impossible. <laughs> I did not mean look to me. distract too much there, because we did th th that. That quote. Sorry. Sorry. Did, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the only person who knows the game. Why? What? What makes <laughs> someone say that? <laughs> like, so, what? Th this is a crazy person. This guy. He has mentioned DFAT before. He is a crazy weirdo. Well, who is he? Uh, he's, I think he's um, some YouTuber who people have seen him before. He's, he's the just... one that said uh, there's no such thing as bad graphics. I think. No such thing. Yeah, he's because he said I like mean, a pixel. Like, make... the pixels. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wait, what? Yeah. Well, that's true of every aspect of a game. Then that's true of every aspect of existence and reality. If you want to go well, like, like, that far, right? if you wanted, yeah, if you wanted to go that, I don't know why you would find that enlightening. Cause it's just like, Oh yeah. So what about colloquially? Are there anything such thing? Well, it's like, well, what do you, what do you think just, everyone's um, referring to collectively when they say bad graphics versus good graphics? Yeah. Like on a universal scale, the universe doesn't recognize good or bad graphics, but I mean like, People, when they make broad, general, qualitative statements collectively, there's some value in that. I mean, it's complicated, right? Like, what looks nice and doesn't is super duper complicated. Um, because why is it now that, for instance, there's uh, there's like a developer who made a Bloodborne for PlayStation One, to where like PlayStation One, that if you asked ten years ago, it'd be like insane graph, like it, it, you know, really bad graphics. That now that's become a style again. Kind of in the same way that eight bit and sixteen bit um, is a style. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he's, he's people have shared different strange things that he's said uh, over time in the Discord. And when I saw this one, I was just like, "The or is there anyone on this planet who understands game design except for myself?" It's like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy who thinks that you stole Molly. You stole all your TLJ critique, like from him. Like you got the idea for it all from him. Oh. We've discussed we've, channel we've now and he's got a very about him before. He is a crazy person. I am got, on this channel. He's got a very popular Force Awakens video and a very popular Rogue One video, both titled This is the worst movie of all time, but about their respective oh, films. Oh yeah. Well, one of he... those has got to be incorrect. Did he have one for TLJ then? No, he has a video called Update on my last Jedi review. And no last Jedi review. Alright. Well, I mean I'm working through uh Force Awakens gradually, but um I doubt his videos are as long as, is even one of mine longer than his? And, and what I'm saying is that it's a good chance I've got some extra stuff in there. So don't you worry. But um, I would have, honestly, like, I know how it sounds, but... Um, he's got an hour the, long, he's got a he's got a Last Jedi video. The Wait, biggest... Yeah, where is it? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's in his videos and the third line. The, um, I have a look. Nine months ago, I would argue the biggest the inspiration the for the TFA oh, video. Oh, so he does. Would have been ER. I missed that. Um, man, that that update went like that. There was three years in between that update and that video. Oh, hey. Uh, this is no. The update is, is two months. Wait, unless he had another update. Hang on. No, he has a, he has a video called. Um. Update on my last Jedi review, um, and it's from four years ago. Oh, so this is this when he says update on the last Jedi review three years later, and that was two months before it came out. So, man, he really is letting us know that uh, it was coming. Well, that's nice. it was coming. I, uh... How come when I mouse over his video, it plays your hmm? Well, when I when I mount because you know you can mouse over videos and it plays the little preview. Uh -huh. It's your video. It's it's your Tarkin talking to. Oh, uh, it is. Thing. Was he like responding to it or something? I don't know. It's just a preview. It's that clip. Okay. Um. I was uh, just gonna say that like I actually 
I checked out a metric ton of people's reviews across like the entire sequel trilogy for the TFA project. Um, I was I was invested in seeing what uh, what it was that TFA did, you know, that that worked so well because obviously it worked on me as well. Um, and it was super interesting to gather all of the the sort of reasoning. I'm actually looking forward to getting those um, final parts done someday. Because there's a lot of stuff to do with the coverage of it once I get through the actual movie. It's gonna feel weird. You guys are gonna go back from being in the summary of the plotline portion to the conclusion where there's gonna be all kinds of shenanigans happening. But, um, I've said before and I'll say it again, I'm pretty sure it's even mentioned in the video, that the ER's video was the one that completely changed my mind on Force Awakens. And it felt a little like, wait, how the hell didn't I see all of this when you watch someone, like, go, Hey, you know how, like, nothing makes any sense in this movie? And it's like, huh. Um, well, for me, TLJ was that sort of, it kind of just changed my perspective. That was the movie that oh, sort yeah. of got me to think about things a lot differently. Because before that, I was pretty, I was kind of normie when it, come to, when it came to movies. And then, then TLJ happened, and I just, I don't know, it just changed my perspective. And it just, mm, it so I think um, all think. it was with TLJ was that there was something that was really felt wrong with that film that was hard for me to hone in on when I first saw it. And I think even yeah. when I first saw it, I was like, that was good. Like, you know, that kind of reaction. Walked out of the theater confused, and I drove yeah. home in silence. Yeah. And I was like, and I think, what? Uh, what I think it was just a, a matter of um working through that. And I think it was, because uh, I, I remember... Uh, I remember that even like in the early days I made a video I think it was like what you like versus what is good or something that that was like the broad topic and it was just highlighting that I always felt that there was a distinction between a preference versus um you know something that you could uh hone in on um in the game itself like a separation a distinction between um your personal feelings on it versus like a more I uh, I guess describe it as something that because I think I think the the point of the distinction between I guess like a your feeling on a game versus what you think of it overall as its quality is can you present a perspective that if somebody doesn't know what your preferences are they can still find value in it rather than just well I liked it and these are the things that I like so I liked it and it's not super helpful for everybody. Yeah. What is what, what I clicked on his TLJ video and this is like the first thing that comes up. I, I, of male I played it with that audio. <laughs> what? I played it with that audio. I have no idea. I just clicked the la that last Jedi video, and this is the frame I was confronted with. Um, man, that's a rabbit hole. Then, uh, well, yeah, I was just more so. I was just interested by the fact that he refers to himself as pissed what his stats game design. I didn't know that there was all this stuff like to this degree. Uh, okay. This feels like a backup slowly sort of situation. Well, it feels like it's a sponsor, but his channel doesn't get reviews reliably enough that I that I, I don't imagine that people would want to sponsor his videos. I don't imagine he'd be getting offers. Am I still looking to give me rent, Fringy? Of course you are, because I am eternal. <laughs> I, am, I, am, I am all seeing, all knowing, all consuming. All I am fringy. everywhere, uh, looming. When you're walking down... Like in Moon Knight, when we were talking about how he was in the little hallway and Konshu was there. That's me. But in reality, in the real world, it's just me just saying, give me, give me rent. Give like me that. Rent. Saying it like that. Give me rent. Just following you. And then, of course, because I'm very circular, there's a lot of dong, 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 like thud sounds. You hear me coming. But you can never see me until I'm right next to you saying, give me rent. Yeah, you're the one that's after the Omni Friggy. <laughs> yeah, it's not like that. Friggy's just around the corner at the end of No <laughs> Way Home. Funny. I think what I like about the image as well is that for some reason my hands are green. My hands are not green. I wear gloves. My character wears gloves. Green gloves? And they are grey. No, they're grey. I wear a, I wear a if you would know this if you read if you, if you read my comic or looked at some of my art... Oh, the so there's no other gloves you ever wear that could be green, I guess. Aren't ever. I don't think I've ever drawn my character with them. They are... I wear a green button-up shirt, a light green one, and then I wear a dark green vest, and then I wear a, uh, a brown uh, coat that has, like, a little hood for it, just for me. I notice you guys do this, particularly Fringy. You'll describe things as little... 
Yes. When there's just I not often, really anything little about them. Yeah, but know? make the saying little makes it sound quaint. Yeah. Like a cute little I I figure yeah, that's kinda exactly. why you do it. Like look at him with his little feet, you know. Yeah. Like that that's of, yeah. that's that's how I would describe the Fringy character is lots of little things, even though I'm not small <laughs> by any by any stretch of the imagination. I draw Fringy with green skin once because he said he's green. No, the the mask is green, and there is green as primary colors in the design. But Fringy, the Fringy character, I'm pretty sure is a human being. <laughs> I, I just so, haven't decided yet. I went and I watched that Last Jedi video for about a minute. Um, and the quote that we're confronted with at the beginning is, there are a lot of plot holes in The Last Jedi, but to um, fix them um, wouldn't be... <laughs> a meaningful priority because to fix bad mo- to fix bad movies you don't go and fix every plot hole logical consistency and cohesion isn't what make what makes a movie entertaining what makes a movie entertaining is great ideas and plot twists great ideas great ideas now, let, let me let me get that <laughs> accurately again because i want to I mean, there's plenty of plot twists in tales it doesn't need logical structure coherence isn't what makes a movie entertaining so the problem is that um, oh, it's great the, ideas for character arcs and, and plot twists. That's well, so, I, I mean, that, that's such an interesting... I'm pretty sure there's a book series. I don't know what it's called. Someone in chat will know. The, 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 the book is like explicitly okay. was the author... Well, I, the book is about... Um, it was an author got challenged like, this is yeah. a terrible idea that he came up yep. with. And then... Uh-huh. Can I no? Like I actually want to talk on this topic without having to weave and navigate through like this weird comparison that's going on here. Um, the the book was a terrible idea as a premise for like a story, and um, and he was he, the guy said like I you write a story, is it called Codex uh, Alira? That probably is the one that it exists because it is a terrible idea. It is like a terrible shit idea. That um that the author decided to take on to tell a good story. I haven't read the book, um, but it's like you can you can start with a really bad idea and turn it around, and you can start with an amazing oh, idea. It's a, a six book series make... now, apparently. Well, it's just it's execution. That's that's like it's all about how you execute the idea, not just nope. having one. I wonder what the, the the premise is. Well, there's a television series. Is there? Right. Uh, the the point being that ideas are cheap. It's all about what you do, what you make of the idea, how you use it. Yeah, I mean, like of course, it. you can have a great idea, but if it, if the prose sucks and the characters are flat and don't make any sense, and like nothing is following logically then it doesn't really matter that you started with something cool. It's easy to come up with a cool idea. It's harder also, to make it into something... I would never pretend to know what will guarantee to entertain everyone. It's just, that's not something that... Uh, and and if someone point. said, so you you don't exist. think coherence and, and coincidence-free and plot-hole-free narratives will be entertaining then? There's no guarantee? I'd be like, no. Entertaining an no, audience is entertaining complicated. Entertaining could mean anything, yeah. yeah. For, and conversely, you could present a film that's like phenomenal that just doesn't really interest me that much. Yep. It's entirely possible. It's not an irreconcilable problem of like, ha, what about that bad film that you like? I <laughs> gotcha. It's like, it didn't. Or what about that good film that no one cares about? It'd be like, yeah. Well, yeah, but yeah. What the, about it? That doesn't change the anything. The whole scale a film exists. Could be beloved by nobody and be good. Mm-hmm. A film can be loved by everybody and be terrible. Um. Yeah, that's it for the multimedia oh, medley boy. too. And we're not wow. getting any super chats done today, are we? Uh, we are past eight hours, which is yep. yeah. Um, <laughs> eight. You were hours. meant to talk about Lego for an hour. It took three. What a bunch of chads. Yeah, yeah. Lego went a bit longer than was intended, but uh, it, you needed to get it off your chest. I could tell. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you needed to just let that we out into the again, sure. It's okay. The to let loose well, I mean, I'll just uninstall it right now. There is no reason why that should be on my hard drive. <laughs> bye bye. You have besmirched my hard drive. I've I'm set free. I'm offended that it's on there. Get going.
boot. I imagine we'll get a super chat sometime in the future. We'll be like, they really did a big update, and the game's all weird. And I'll be like, that's fine. I hope it's good now. Good for you. Um, but yeah, uh, so I suppose the plan will be that we're gonna try and do the Hassan remaining ones on Wednesday, and then we do these ones. And I know it's like, wait, but now they're they're flowing back the other direction. We have a ploy in place that will very likely end the super chat wars as time yes. goes on. So do not do not you worry. A secret weapon. A death star. Oh no, I gave it away. Fuck. Um, we'll be able to kill five super chats at once with our laser beams from outer space. Yeah. Um yeah, thank you so much guys. I hope you had fun Thanks with this around. crazy set of topics as well as Very crazy. crazy takes that range from all over the world about all kinds of things. Because we're from all over the world. As well as the people we're talking to. Ain't that great? Um, mm -hmm. It's okay. Uh, Super Chat Wars. Hey, I don't know what to call it. And we were just kind of like Star Wars has been around for this whole stream kind of in different ways, okay? It's best I got. Back to the Super Chats. What are the films kind of reference? It's the soul really. It's Star Wars. Um... But yeah, thank you so much for, for hanging out, and thank you so much for the kind donations and the, the company. Is there anything you guys want to say? Oh, there's probably something that wants to be mentioned, right? Yay! Oh, gosh! Do you, do you mean the, the thing? I just remembered it before considering hitting the end button. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, right, it's too close. Got, uh, so, you guys have got your, your EFAP audience, you've got your, your rags plush? And you've got your Mauler plush. You can now round out your collection with a little J plush to be friends with them both. Mm, go same place, makeship, JXE plush. You can give that a little Google, or I, I imagine there might be a, a link appearing in chat if I if I'm quicker. And literally and you kick can, J. You can literally kick J. That's true. Um, I also have. Um, on my chest of my plush, uh, the timestamp of my longest video, which is actually an hour longer than Mauler's longest video. Uh, could you believe it? Hey, hey, hey. Wow, hey, don't, competitive in here. You, you, you're angry about the truth? Is that what's going on? Bring take the rent. Um. <laughs> <laughs> take his rent. Take the rent from and his of video. Course, uh, I come with a rhino for milking. Naturally. Um, yeah, nice. link is at the top of the description. Go nuts. And you've only got 12, well, a little over 12 days left. Terrifying. And, um... Spooky. Yeah. Suppose, um, suppose it's a cute little one to add to the collection. I assume a lot of people here have the drinker one, too. So they can all yeah. get merry while watching movies, playing games, or just hanging out. Um, but yeah, I suppose that's that. That link, description, uh, rags, free. Is there anything you guys want to say before we g g g g g go out? Oh, I don't think so. I guess not. No, I got nothing. That's it. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We shall see you Wednesday, uh, more than likely. If not before then, I guess, because I'm on Real BBC. So I'll see you then that on Tuesdays. Um, yeah, good night, everybody, and goodbye. Bye, goodbye, bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. See ya. Ciao.